brothers and sisters, we're here again in the studios of Transatlantic Productions. Was it family? No, you can leave it up there. Okay. Uh, talk some more. You move it. So. Testing, testing. All right, it's still working. Uh, we're here in the studios of Transatlantic Productions, and it gives me great pleasure again to introduce uh, Bobby Hemmett from Atlanta, Georgia. The makeup woman. <laughs> Today, um, Bobby is going to be talking with us on the history of the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, Bobby, uh, welcome to uh, our school. Yes, thank you. Always great to be in the great center of consciousness, New York, where we would say that basically Afrocentric consciousness started, not just in the late 80s, but also going all the way back to the Harlem History Club and all the way back to the 20s, what I hear, maybe in the early teens. So it's always uh, great to be here. And also with Transatlantic Productions to take my um, place in the library or the archives of so many thousands of Africans are uh, ancient gods, if you want to put it, uh, that has been recorded throughout the years here at Transatlantic Production. With the guru of film and audio and all, Minister Clemson Brown. <laughs> <laughs> the Minister of Information. <laughs> I like that name. <laughs> I think I will adopt that. The mm -hmm. Minister of Information. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so Bobby, yeah. what are you going to, to uh, talk with us today? Well, basically, I'm going to go into the history of the Klan, but in order to put that in context, we have to give you the history of modern-day secret societies all together. Now, are you saying that the Klan is a secret society? It's a very advanced secret society. That's the reason why we can't draw a parallel, because we always have these rednecks etched in our mind. And as a result, we don't understand that the, that, that the secret society has its origin in the Morris system. As a matter of fact, the actual outfits that the Klan wear, I'm not talking about the one where you see somebody cut some holes in some sheets, but I'm talking about the real Grandmaster outfits. And the ones that's really done up with, you know, with, with the actual cross and the, uh, um, the, the, the robe with the cape and the pine cone um, hat. That's all Egyptian initiation outfits um, brought up into Europe by the Moors. And so in order to give you a history of that and a history of what the Klan is as well as a history of basically how they operate now, we have to give you the general history of modern day Masonic organizations, you know, uh, which is separated from the Camite thing, which is the origin of Masonic, or origin of uh, secret societies, but what we call modern day Masonic um, um, organization gets its start in Moorish Spain, mm -hmm. and Moorish occupation of Europe period, out of the 16 universities that were set up by the Moors. So we need to go into all of that uh, also today, mm -hmm. um, as well as a, a, a prehistory or a little bit of history on some other aspects of the Moors and how this whole thing um, came about as far as how it started. So we need to go into some of that too. So um, I'm ready when you are. Uh, let's roll, Bobby. Okay. Um, in order to do this, we need to understand a little more about the Moors and the, and the concept and ba basically what was the divine plan. Uh, the Moors are nothing but a consortium of Camite Egyptians, for the people that don't know what Camite mean, or Kemet, or Camites are Egyptian priesthood, mainly the Temple of Komongo in Egypt, or Kemet, the Temple of Isis, or Aset, the last Temple of Isis, uh, which was one of the last temples to be closed at Philae, um, as well as other Sufi orders in Arabia that have their origin in what is called Kushite Arabia in which Muhammad's father was a Kushite Arab. You see? Mm -hmm. And basically the Arab religion became basically a moralistic lesser repertoire of greater mysteries that the ancient Kushite Arabians had. And when I say Kushite, we're talking about the people who originally inhabited that Arabian land, your Ethiopians, which can be traced all the way up into uh, 
East India as the Dravidians. So we're talking about the Kushite Arabians and the whole Sufi order. As a matter of fact, the word Suf is something that describes a people. It's not the actual name of the people. It is basically, it means woolly-haired one, a woolly-haired one. So who were they talking about? They were talking about the Moors. They come from different names like Alcamoria, Camamoria, Lamoria, Mu, Moor, Mari. And we have the origins of these Moors long before we get even Islam. The Greeks talk about the Moors. The, the Christians talk about the Moors. Uh -huh. The Moabites. The Moors. We have these, this, this, these, the, the, the name Moor that is way longer. Even Jeremiah in Book of the Beginnings has the origin of comedic origins of Mari in Book of the Beginnings, Volume 2. And in there, he, he, he shows Mari, of Mar, Mari is all a form of more. Mm -hmm. The word morals comes from the word more. You see, uh, the, the word morals come from the word more. Morgan comes from the word uh, more. Might I add Morgan Freeman play the more in the movie Robin Hood in 1991. All of this particular stuff has its origins, but it's long before Islamic, the Islamic aspect. Now, let me explain what went on here. The Egyptians or the Camites knew prophecy all the way up to, to, to date. They understood when the, the, the Camite empire started shutting down that they would need a newer religion to couch the mysteries under. So Islam being the newer religion and being one that had a, with the Islamic laws that were set up for an Arab, which was a savage people at the time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. these Islamic laws civilized them. They knew that they were going to have to take that same type of political system into Europe to civilize the, the, uh, the European. And Christianity, although it has its... Um, effect on Europe, they would need something a lot more powerful as far as Islam and the, 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 the submission to Allah. So it would be more of a political system when you talk about the Islamic thing. More than it would be the religious doctrine of the Moors. So in so many words, it's no different than a people of different organizations going into Democratic or Republican Party. And we fail to realize that you can take a religion as a political system and couch what you want in it. And the religion would just be the banner in which you would bring all of these ancient disciplines from the ancient world into that religion. It's about like the Santeria. Santeria is basically the Yoruba religion woven into the Catholicism. So those people could remain keeping those African practices in the Caribbean and in South America. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with the Islam. Moorish history did not start with Islam. It was just the Islam only became a tool of civilization for a certain amount of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? These priests that went up under the banner of Islam is a consortium of Egyptian priests, a Camite priest, as well as the ancient mystery systems from Arabia, um, Zoroastrianism, which would be from ancient Persia, you see, mm -hmm. um, newfound Gnostic movements, because Gnosticism is basically this. Gnosticism is esoteric Christianity, mm -hmm. but it's called pre-Christianity. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this? To get a synopsis on what I'm talking about is a couple of hundred years, maybe a maybe hundred years before the last temple of Isis, or Aset, that was, uh, Aset was closed by Justinian. The Egyptian priest spent that last 100 years translating Egyptian mystery texts from hieroglyphics into Coptic religion, or into the Coptic language, and Coptic means later-day Egyptian. And they translated it into Coptic, they trans and they used several functioning languages around the Mediterranean at that time, as well as Africa, to, 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 to basically transfer the Canite or the hieroglyphics of the Metanetta and Heretic and Demotic into these particular 
uh, other scripts like Arabic, Greek, Latin, even Hebrew, mm -hmm. Aramaic, but mainly a wide body of Coptic. These particular um, doct uh, doctrines was found in 1945 when they dug them up in 1945 um, called the Nag Hammadi Library. And these were supposed to be the original teachings of Jesus. Where were they dug up at? They were dug up at a place called Nag Hammadi Kemet, uh, Egypt. And, and they were found in, in, Egypt. In, in, in Egypt. The original teachings of Jesus are the Christ, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. found in Kemet mm -hmm. in 1945. Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church denounced them as heresy. And this movement is out now, Stigmata, mm -hmm. is dealing with the suppression of these ancient scripts by the Catholic Church. And this was a page, Demon Seed, Hollywood and the Catholic Church at War. Dealing with these ancient texts, you can find these ancient texts in Barnes and Nobles and Borders in a book called the Nag Hammadi, Hammadi Library by James, edited by James Robinson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, you can find those particular texts broken down in a book called the Gnostic Scriptures by Bentley Layton. Now, a funny thing happened, because these texts were dug up in 1945, they weren't translated into English into 1977. When they were first dug up, clearly in the book, Jean de Rest, which is a papyrologist from, 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 um, from France, translated some of the first texts. Him and a guy by the name of Hans Jonas wrote a book, Gnostic Religions, in the 1950s. So we have a book called Hans Jonas's book, The Gnostic Religion, The Beginning of Christianity and the Alien God in 1950s. And we have Jean Dores wrote, wrote a book called The Secret Books of the Egyptian Gnostics in 1950. And clearly in his Secret Books of the Egyptian Gnostics, we got names like Horus, Seth, Abraxas, Mithra, and all these different names for the Christ. But by the time these particular texts was translated into English by 1977, we have the word Jesus substituted for the other names of these Christ figures. You see what I'm saying? Now, are you saying that Christianity comes out of an Egyptian exactly. worldview, an Egyptian science? It, exactly. Uh, but what I found, that Christianity is not just an Egyptian science. Christianity is a consortium of different other aspects. Hebrew, Greek, Coptic, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Coptic, Camite, it's a mixing pot of all these different disciplines. Let me give you an example and give you a short bit of history before we go into this on what ha actually happened. All right. Thank you. Um, basically, what happened was you got your Hebrews in Rome at the time, mm -hmm. raising hell, these black people. At that particular time, your religion was no different than the Democrat or the Republican Party. If you didn't have a spiritual system in order to get the people to believe your political idea, the people wouldn't follow. Because the politics was always woven into the actual spiritual aspect of that day. Mm -hmm. The only way you get the people to follow your laws, you better show them some aspect of it on the spiritual realm to make your law seem just. Mm -hmm. Well, the Romans at that time had our ancient mysteries, the Romulus and Remus and other mysteries of Jupiter, and but they had forgotten that the, the Romans were so busy killing people around the whole world, mm -hmm. the Mediterranean, Africa, owning up into Europe. And they became experts at one thing, killing people. Meanwhile, their mythology that they started out from, which was invented by black people. That's what we need to understand. Your Greek mythology and your Roman mythology was invented by black people. Then later on, the Indo-Europeans came in and basically converted to it. But the Indo-Europeans that consisted of Rome in the time of all of the major killings of the great Roman Empire, 
these particular people had basically neglected the actual mythological phase of the religion until the religion suffered. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, they have a deteriorated form of spiritual awareness and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you got your Hebrews over here cutting up and they have a, basically a newly found uh, united religion under the banner of the Torah or whatever. And the Roman citizens say, hey, we need to, um, we like what they're doing. We need to follow them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the Roman government said, well, we got a problem here. Uh, we got to get something what these people got. These people willing to die for God or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, listen, um, it's interesting because um, we conquered both Greece and Egypt. And the Greeks plagiarized all of the Egyptian texts. And now we have conquered them. And we got all these texts in which even Hebrew is made up of. We got access to them. So they hired a bunch of scholars, Paul and all of them, to come in and basically put these texts together. And the problem in which most Christians and most people in the world cannot break is these religious doctrines, which is the fundamental basis of Christianity, always existed. It's just that they did one thing to mess everything up. For the first time, well, they copied the Hebrews. The Hebrews were the first to do it. Mm -hmm. They historicalized sublime mythology. Mm -hmm. There's a text. Sublime mythology makes grotesque history. Mm -hmm. So, let me give you an example. They will take, let's just say, for the sake of argument, there was a historical revolutionary freedom fighter of that area. Mm -hmm. And he had a history of going up against the Roman government. Mm -hmm. Whenever he gets executed, well, that's the first thing to make a person immortal is to kill him. Let's just say, mm -hmm. but whenever he gets executed, or whenever he, whenever they decide that they want to make this particular person into a mythical figure, Remember, General Massey says, historical Jesus, mythical Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically what they would do is take the age-old teachings of the mystical Christ, which goes all the way back 10,000 years in Kemet, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And maybe 100,000 years beyond that, there is no record of this, this, this same story that is in all different cultures. And we take the teachings of this mystical Christ and we weave it into the historical story of the actual person. Yeah. Then basically we will make that particular story exclusive to this one person. And basically the Roman government tried to get the monopoly on the Christ story which every culture had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the mystical spiritual teachings of Christ had nothing to do with the revolutionary freedom fighter. So it's, it's, let me give you an example. Let's say a hundred years from down the road, I get shot in the head. Let's say I'm a Let's just say I'm a revolutionary freedom fighter. A hundred years from now, and somebody killed me, and they said, "Well, we want to make this person immortal." So what we'll do is we'll go take the teachings of Malcolm X, which is a totally different system, and we will say that Bobby Hemet did it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a hundred years down the road, some people could be worshiping me, Bobby Hemet as a person that broke off from the nation of Islam who went to Mecca and the whole nine yards, a person that was in jail and all this. So basically, the historical person, if there was a historical person, life is different than the mystical teachings of a person born from an immaculate conception. That is Horus. That is Heracles. That is Apollo. That is Perseus. That is Dionysus. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, that is Osiris. Mm -hmm. That is Obatala. Mm -hmm. You see, that is Obatala. Mm -hmm. That is Jason. Mm -hmm. That is all the historical figures of the divine hero mm -hmm. around that all cultures had that same story. But they took that story, and for the first time, that story became a historical person. And that means that they tried to get the monopoly mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. On the Christ thing by throwing a historical person up in there and saying, mm -hmm. there's this historical person that did these same things, mm -hmm. in which we can find the same things in every culture. Mm -hmm. You see. But but you're saying that the origin of that is where? Of the origin of this divine creator, the story in which Jesus the history. It has its roots in dynastic Kemet and beyond dynastic Kemet into what is called pre-dynastic Kemet or Egypt, which is called Typhonian or Draconian or Ophidian. These are names of the worship of pre-dynastic Egypt that there was tons of this particular information around until 1907. Gerald Massey went into the British Museum and copied tons of this Typhonian material and wrote Six volumes, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, which is the last volume, 1907, Natural Genesis, 19, um, eight, uh, um, 1888, and the first volume, Book of the Beginnings, 1881. So Book of the Beginnings, 1881, Natural Genesis, 1888, and Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, 1907. After 1907, the government came in and locked down all the secret societies in Europe and America, locked down all of the pre-dynastic texts. Then they went to, those were the texts. Mm -hmm. Then they went over to Kemet and went down to Abel and they had 200 Typhonian temples. Mm -hmm. And they built the Aswan Dam and flooded over 200 Typhonian temples, which is the pre-dynastic origin of this stuff, to cover up this, because they found Hebrew writings in the texts in those temples. And they found a lot of things that's contrary to history. So, you know the white man don't cover up nothing. But why is it that he covered up 200 temples, that, like Dr. Ben mentions, under the dog on Aswan River? So you're saying, that, but, but, but the Russians built the uh, Aswan Dam. Didn't matter who built the dam. We're talking about all one secret society. Whether it's the Russians, the Swedes, or whatever, that's just the contract. They ain't gonna build nothing if Britain or the Illuminati or these particular secret societies say no. We're talking about people that's ready to go to war. Now, are you saying that this was a planned conspiracy? It's a conspiracy. The dam is built where it is built, built in order to wipe out a history of a people. history of people because it's one thing. They somehow had built a cohesive system that can somehow fool people into thinking that the Egyptians was white. But there was no way they could do it down in Nubia. Where the same text is up in Dogon Cairo and all this is in Nubia, and it's all black. And it predates. And it predates. That, that is. Yes, exactly. Predates it. And so they had to cover up 200 temples. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And this is one of the reasons. But we, but this Christ origin has its origin. We will say, well, let's put it this way. Let's give what Manetho said, which gave a very brief history of Kemet. He said we've got, what, 300 pharaohs in the dynastic period. No, 500 in the dynastic period, which is 3,000 years. 800 in the... Uh, in the pre-dynastic, he gave all these things. He said, roughly, we're talking about 10,000 years of history. They said, well, who used to rule before then? He said, that used to be a whole bunch of gods used to rule. Now, wait a minute. Manetho said that. Where yeah. can you find that? You have a book upstairs, um, Basil Davison's book. Mm -hmm. I saw it when I was sleeping in your room the last time. Mm -hmm. It's a little light blue book Basil Davison did in 91. It's recorded in that book. I think it's called Africa. It's got Africa on it. And it has that particular part of Manetho says it. He said the Basil Davison book. And he says that there was 800. Roughly, I, the, the number was roughly, um, he said it was, let's see how this goes, 500 pharaohs in the dynastic, which represents 3,000 years. 800 in the pre-dynastic, which roughly um, um, estimates about 5,000 years. He said, well, that's about 8,000 years. He said, roughly, we're talking about about 10,000 years of history, of physical history. He said, well, who used to rule before then? He said, that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule. 
Now, most people couldn't understand that because most of your uh, African, people in the Afrocentric community were historians and they're not metaphysicians. But when you understand what happened, um, there's a good book, Rudolf Steiner's book, Universe, Earth, and Man, mm -hmm. uh, which explains the, mi the, the, the migration from us coming from a spiritual level to a physical level. Also in his book, Cosmic Memory, Rudolf Steiner being a great cult scholar who basically was one of the people that benefited on a lot of this stuff that the Moors left behind that we're going to get into in a few minutes. And so basically, in so many words, in our original origin, we were not necessarily a physical people. The spiritual world was visible because we were semi-spiritual. The and that's where you get your Atlantis, Memoria, Alcamoria, and all of that stuff from. The vibratory rate, which is everything vibrates, that's in the first laws of Hermetics in a book called the um, the book called the, uh, by the three initiates, the Kabbalion. Mm -hmm. Not the Kabbalah, the Kabbalion by the three initiates, which is these same hermetic laws we'll get into in a few minutes. And everything vibrates, even this pencil vibrates. Correct. This pen. It just basically, when you slow down the vibratory rate, it becomes solid. Mm -hmm. It's like ice going to steam, going, you know, evaporating. Um, we used to be in a spiritual world and the physical world was, was like a shadow. Mm -hmm. As the vibratory rate slowed down, we fell more into a physical world and the spiritual world became a shadow and later on disappeared. But in that pre-physical time, that's when we were gods. Is it not written in your law that ye are gods? John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. And that characteristic is the origin of the Christ. So we're talking about something that goes back thousands of years. Mm -hmm. At least 10,000 years of physical history. Mm -hmm. And hundreds of thousands of years in the spiritual history. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. Of the spiritual history. So this text predates Christianity. Hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the thing that Christianity did to get the monopoly on this was they historicalized the ancient text. Mm -hmm. And before that, it was a title that basically your soul is the Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the Christ is. It is a process of your soul going from one level to its illuminated level. And you went to school in Kemet to learn how to become the Christ. All right. You got the word Christos. Mm -hmm. Now, how is it that the, the, the Christians, if you ask any Christian, give me the origins of Christ, he will go, well, Christ is Greek, which means Christos. Now, hold on. That's already a contradiction because I thought the Greeks was pagans. Well, if the damn Greeks is pagans, what the hell are they doing with Christ? That's a contradiction. You call these people pagans, you call the Egyptians pagans. Well, why the hell when you got a, why can't you give me the Hebrew origin of it? Mm -hmm. You got to give me the Greek. No, the Greeks were pagans now. You can't damn have one thing, tell one lie, and try to get about of it. Mm -hmm. Then you have Christ in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Christ. Anointing. Anointed with what? Or olive oil. Olives are black and green. The carbon in both is what makes them black or even green. And basically that's talking about the origins of melody. The word Christ has its origins in a discipline out of Kemet or Egypt called alchemy, which is the study of melanin. And the crystallization of melanin going to its highest form is that's what you call the Christ. No melanin, no Christ. In Blavatsky's two versions of the secret doctrines, there's a, a thing, no shadow, no God. The shadow in you, um, um, psychology, mm -hmm. is talking about dark substance, the shadow. Melanin has several names, the negrito, the primal materia, the soul, nigger, or nigia. You see, are the nigra, nigrum, nigras. These are Latin terms for this black substance. 
which is the anointing oil, carbon. Six protons, six electrons, six neutrons, which is the key to the Bible, which is the Christos, the Christ. Mm -hmm. The Christ is the beast. The way is the beast? The beast is the sphinx that sits in the middle of the earth. Par market, Horus on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Horus is the Greek, Heru, which means great faith. Mm -hmm. Faith of God. Well, in Genesis, Jacob wrestled with the angel all night. At daybreak, he saw the face of God, and it was called what? Pineal, pineal gland. Mm -hmm. The pineal gland brings the Christ, light of the world. Mm -hmm. It is the light bringer, Lucifer. Lucifer is the Christ. That's why in the Conference of Nicaea, as Alvin Boyd Kuhn, the great Massey scholar of the 1940s, say, they had to take the amount of times that the word Lucifer appeared in the Bible and get rid of it down to one time because you would draw a parallel that Lucifer and Christ is the same. Whereas in Genesis they said Lucifer fell like the morning star. But by the time you get to Revelations, Christ said, I am the morning star. Mm -hmm. You see? Then you get an aspect of what they're talking about is two polarities of the same soul. Mm -hmm. And mainly, they had to split this into good and evil so they can get the control over people, mainly in the Roman era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? One is a political thing, and one is the quintessential aspect you can't have light now unless you have dark. Mm -hmm. We'll get back into that in the esoteric portion of this particular program. Now, going back to recap this, what happened was, is all of this great information during the time of the Temple of Isis of Philae, when it was the last temple uh, 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 closed, they took all of this information, mm -hmm. translated it into Arabic, Translated it into Coptic, even into Greek, Latin. Then those particular priests migrated out of Kemet, hooked up with a brotherhood from Arabia, under the banner of Islam and Morocco, and these mystery systems went on up into Europe. Now, why was that? Well, number one, they understood prophecy. Now, we will, we will prove this in the, in the prophetic aspect of the program, that they understood that the European was inevitable. The European would come into power. Now, the reason why we know that, because we have 5,000-year-old papyruses that deal with this, called the Hermetic Text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it got past the whole Afrocentric movement is because the Hermetic Text was translated into Greek and into Latin. So, therefore, we just avoided it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We just avoided it. But we have tons of this particular information. And I was talking to um, Dr. Charles Finch. He was saying, you're right, we need to go back and re regain all of the Greek stuff because we also know that the Greeks, the original Greeks and the original Romans were the Etruscans, mm -hmm. which were a Phoenician group that came out of Babylonia, Mesopotamia, and have their origins in pre-dynastic Egypt. Uh, are you saying... That Mesopotamia predated in terms of its contributions to civilization Egypt? No. See, there's migrations that happen. Let me explain. You have your dynastic, pre-dynastic Kemet. Mm -hmm. Then you have this particular skirmish, if mm -hmm. there was one, that brought on dynastic Kemet with Menes. They suppressed the pre-dynastic Egyptians. The pre-dynastic Egyptians, meanwhile, were there so long they was able to migrate. Mm -hmm. So they migrated on into Samaria, Mesopotamia, and became the Tyranians, Eturians, Etruscans, Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, the Berbers, and all of those ancient black people of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. They got their origin in pre-dynastic Egypt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, why did they migrate? Well, number one, they, might, they had been there so long until they migrated for the simple fact that they had been there for thousands of years. Uh -huh. um, another migration is that you had the younger Egyptians, which is your dynastic period, taking the land. 
And so you had other ones that migrated based on that. Even if you're talking about it, we ain't talking about nothing but one damn family mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that had their origins at the beginning of the Nile. Kilimanjaro. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're not necessarily talking about necessarily what predated the other ones. We understand that we got the Egyptian script that they found um, in November. Last November or December, they found an Egyptian script that predates the Sumerian thing. Because, you know, the white boy was trying to deal with the Sumerian being older. And saying Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. And they was doing that all because these white Jews wanted to fake themselves which we know that they get their origin in Spain. You see what I'm saying? In, mm -hmm. it, it, they get their origin in Spain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These particular, uh, these white Jews uh, get their origin in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, you see, so, uh, but they can somehow fake it with the Mesopotamian thing because the key is to get everything off the continent of Africa. Because mm -hmm. as long as you put it on Africa, there's some discrepancy on what color these people were. You see what I'm saying? So everything is to try to get it off the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. We can somewhat put it in Babylonia, Mesopotamia, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then somehow we can fake this shit being white. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If Egypt wasn't in Africa, it would be over. Everything would be Kemet. Mm -hmm. They would bear witness to everything being the origin of Kemet because they could front that, well, that's not an African civilization because it's not on the continent. You see, so that's the whole reason by that. But if we, if we talk about all of it, Mesopotamia, Greece, Rome, India, and even Europe, mm -hmm. we're talking about Africa. Because at one time, the, the land was one land mass. Correct. And it was one people. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. We are the people. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. So, um, this Moorish thing is a consortium of different systems, and these people travel up into Europe. But they understood based on the text that the white boy would come into power. Now, what you gonna do? If they understand that we're gonna go into this hibernation period, and they understand that there's gonna be this land that's gonna be established at the ends of the earth. We'll get into that when we go into another part. And they understood we damn well better make the white boy semi-barbaric as, as opposed to barbaric. Mm -hmm. We will give him a form of civilized barbarism than to just bar barbaric. So can you imagine us coming out of slavery with this mug being a damn caveman down there or a viking? We would never get any knowledge. So the best thing to do is to put him in a position that we can benefit from or that we're going to catch hell to benefit from it. At least when we get some of the damn gravy, it damn damn sure will be some of the gravy that we can lay to the past. You understand what I'm saying? Now, mind you me, we're talking about a people that's looking at the whole picture. Thousands of years ahead. Ahead. So these moors, uh, these particular moors, go ahead, go, yeah, go, more, go ahead. You said that they saw through prophecy right. that they would go into a sleep. But exactly. why were they doing, why was that? That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a good question. We'll give you two aspects of it. One, it was, one is the divine aspect of nature. And how everything goes to a degenerative process mm -hmm. to regenerate into a new form of life. Okay. The phoenix rises from the ashes. Mm -hmm. The Christ rises from the grave. Mm -hmm. You see. And mind you me, the Christ and the phoenix is the same story. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? This is supposed to be the land of the phoenix. Mm -hmm. Because you have the, 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 old, the Native Americans worship the phoenix also as a bald eagle. And you see that ball, that white head represents the halo of the, the, the halo of light. You see. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, let's get this straight right now. First of all, we didn't fall from shit. Mm -hmm. We didn't fall from nothing. We gave this up. Let's say if you're on one state for 
millions of years. And you need to go to the next metamorphosis, the next paradigm. In order to go to the next paradigm, you got to give this up. Let's say you've been drinking Kool-Aid for years in a doggone chalice. And you want some doggone wine, some Cristal, or whatever these rappers call it, the most elite, Moet. It was Moet, Cristal. Or you want some 5,000-year-old wine that's, 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 that's the most elite stuff. You got to pull that Kool-Aid out. Your cup is running over. So in order to get to the next spiritual paradigm shift of a new existence, as you call the New Jerusalem in the Bible, mm -hmm. you have to give up the previous civilization mm -hmm. and all forms of civilization so you can be an empty vessel to receive the new illumination or in Christianity, the kingdom of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have to give up that particular aspect. So we're talking about, we're, we're, we're spiritual people. Ultimately, civilization means nothing if we're not talking about a spiritual aspect. That's just the way we are. Now let me give you an example before I go back into that. I'll give you a good example. Now, based on the, the, the text, if, if we knew we were going to go into a form, or a hibernation, or we're going to go into slavery. And we had 5,000 years to prepare for it. Why is it when we go and look into our ancient civilization, we don't find no economical system, no political system written down that we can, we can benefit from? We don't, we don't find nothing prepared for us. Only thing we find prepared for us is a whole bunch of spiritual stuff. See what I'm saying? And a whole bunch of history on what we have done. Most of the stuff we find is a whole bunch of spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. But since then we got hit in the head. And we want what the white man got. And he don't have nothing but the leftover ruins of what we left him. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to understand the concept of a people... It's like Dr. Ben said, we didn't fall, we deteriorated, mm -hmm. degenerated. You got to understand a people that basically don't even have a record of the origins of how old we are. None. Basically, when Abu Elijah Muhammad says 66 trillion years, mm -hmm. that's what they're talking about. But you're saying that there is no record of their economic system. Um, their political system. No, I'm not saying it's not wasn't a record of those things we had back then. I'm saying if we have five thousand years to prepare for the time that we come up out of the sleep, mm -hmm. which is now, mm -hmm. why we didn't put? Why you can't find an economical system for today? For tomorrow? today, yeah. if you got five thousand years to prepare for something, seem to me you can prepare an economical, political, social system that your people can get when they come up out of the sleep. Okay. Plastering throughout the walls. Mm -hmm. Why is it that the only thing we find is spiritual material? Mm -hmm. Because the key a, a, a caterpillar don't go into a cocoon to come out a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A baby don't go to kindergarten through 12th grade to come back out from infant wearing diapers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about a process of spirituality. You hold your whole your whole Egyptian mummified thing with Osiris being the mummy and a mentor is the cocoon stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So we didn't come back. To raise the civilization back to what we had it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We came to metamorphosize on a new plane of existence. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, we done got hit in the head with the white boy. Mm -hmm. 
And he ain't doing nothing but trying to imitate us. And down the road studying all our information, he's understanding he can never go where we're supposed to be going. And yet we're following him. And yet we've done this for thousands of years. Even if you look at the average white civil, they said that the average white system, let's just say white Rome and white Greece, when they became white, they only lasted about a, what, a good 200 years, 300 years? Maybe 200 years and then, and then the rest of it was a decline. America was 200 years old in 1976 and now we're talking about a decline. But yet we, we were in Kemet conservatively for 3,000 years in the dynastic period, but when we just talk about the whole period, 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. Now let me give you another scenario. We raised a civilization for, couple, for millions of years to the height. Then we started deteriorating because we was going to another level. And in order to go to that other level, you have to degenerate. You have to have what is called an involution other than an evolution. If you ever notice how the rest of Africa, I often thought this in the Afrocentric movement, I know this crossed your mind. You see all these magnificent monuments in one corner of Africa, mainly Kemet, and you ever thought about it? I said, damn, why the rest of the Africans didn't build those monuments that right. yes. oh, Although you might find a little bit of places in, um, you know, a little, little bit of stuff throughout Africa. Mm -hmm. But you don't find the same stuff you have in Kemet. Correct. And I often wondered about this until I got into the esoteric thing and tried to understand. The Egyptians was not building those civilizations for the, for the sake of just building monuments. The Kemites were the Africans that decided that they needed to build a civilization of record keeping. Mm -hmm. That they could teach the rest of the world the records of knowledge mm -hmm. so the rest of the world could be set up on a knowledge base when they go into a hibernation period. Now you say, well, why did the other Africans then do this? Because the other Africans, all of the knowledge that you see in Kemet, we had in our head. They were called detail files. You ever see the Terminator? He said, I have detail files. You see that computer that the white man got, that internet? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the average citizen of Africa, Africa having this in their head? And the only thing you got to do is tap into detail files. You get a remnant of it when you see the actual grill sitting on a rock and giving you 5,000 years of history off the top of his head. Mm -hmm. And that is a degenerated part. Can you imagine that the melanin records, the records of melanin as a cosmic computer, that you can tap into all forms of knowledge mm -hmm. in your head? You can go to all different dimensions in your head. Mm -hmm. You can go to damn Japan and you can go to damn Mississippi in your head, moving, traveling through time and space without moving. It's in the movie Doom. You're saying the Africans could do They could do that. Now, uh, and then if that's the case, why can't they do it now? Well, can I explain? They could do that for millions of years. Then there was a degeneration period where that particular stuff, they started losing memory. Then there was a race for time. So they hightailed it over to Kemet. And they built all these records of what was in their head. I want to ask you a goddamn question. Use the expression. Where the hell did it come from? Think about it. Before the first hieroglyphics was on the temple, did they have other records to put on there? You got to understand. They got to be some type of origin of where these records came from. How is it these people can have enough knowledge and hieroglyphics and metaneta, paratic, demonic, and papyrus that can wrap around the moon three times where did it come from? Before they had writing. Mm -hmm. It had to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. It came from out of them. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Genetic memory bank. Mm -hmm. Which is the melanin. Mm -hmm. They were only, they took 10,000 years to record all of the knowledge that they had in the universe which was inside of them. The kingdom is within So are you 
now saying that the monuments of Egypt are no more than written records. That's all it was. That's all it was. I mean, they're nice buildings and stuff, but ultimately, you see, we we looking, see, we're looking at white man architecture. See, we always take a modern mind and try to look into the past. Mm. Instead of trying to understand the concept of what the past was doing. The modern man builds buildings just for beauty. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Egyptians or the Africans, they built those buildings as records and monuments. And as a result, we benefit from them now. Mm -hmm. Just like Dr. Ben said, you can talk about all that shit you want about Christianity, but I'll take your ass to Egypt and put it right in your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now, first of all, let me say something before I go on. For those people out in TV land, yes, I am cursing, but guess what? There's only one curse word. See, this is a series of programming. you got to free your mind. There's only one curse word, mm -hmm. and that's damn. And isn't it funny that the curse word that you say damn is the least one that people least get offended by? You can say damn on TV. Hell, a preacher can say damn in the church. And that's the one that people least get offended by. The other ones are just British slang or European slang. But because somebody's programmed you to react to something from you because from a child, you think I'm cursing. So even when we're talking about this, we, we're getting through years and years of programming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And even when you use the word damn, it has to be a certain way you have to damn a person. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as curse words. As I also make the other thing, even you Christians out there, if you say I'm cursing, well, how is it that the English language wasn't even around when most of the scriptures was written? And how is it that something didn't exist before the scriptures were written can be a curse word now? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, let's get back to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These monuments we built were nothing but libraries of records that we used to have in our mind. You remember I told you that Manetho said it was a whole bunch of gods used to rule? That wasn't nothing when we had detailed files. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it not written in the law that ye are gods? Mm -hmm. John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. Correct. Our God standeth on the congregation of the mighty, and he judges among the gods. Mm -hmm. Just as I have done great works, greater works, ye shall do. The process of melanin and alchemy, once it is completed to the highest Christ form, is called the great works. And man will be judged by his works. Mm -hmm. It means whether you have a soul to be worked that can work or not. And the gospel of Thomas say that a seed that my father did not plant cannot be plucked up. Which means you got to have a soul to even be resurrected. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The gospel of Thomas might I add is one of them texts that was found in, that was found in 1945 that the Catholic Church is trying to suppress or saying is heresy. Now, they recorded these detailed files that was in their heads because they understood that no matter how high they were, there was another level that they had to get to, which would be God of the existing known and unknown universe. And that's what we're going back to. But in order to get to that stage, we had to complete the system or the stage of being human. Mm. So in the context of our humanity starting to slip, we used the monuments as a race of time before we lost all that information in our detailed files and became regular humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bobby, i got to ask you something. Yeah. We got to put the white man then into context now. Yeah. Because before then, there is no white man. Right. How old is the white man and really what is he? And how does he fit into this process right now that we are talking about? Okay. Let me give you some. Degenerate process. Well, let me give you. What role does he play for us? Let me give you two or three concepts of what, what this thing is. Um, dealing with new information coming from those nag hammity texts coming out of Egypt in 1945. First of all, hands down, we have more information on him being created than we do this evolution thing. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. um, my point is, is number one, this is a book coming out of um, 
This is a book that you can get in most comic book stores mm -hmm. called The Nephilim. And this is, and so, this particular book explains how, and I'll read some to you, on how Charles Darwin was a part of a secret society who made up this whole thing on this We Coming From Apes, just so they could put the white boy up in there and conceal that we are the origins of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the Nephilim you will find is in the Bible. In Genesis, they talk about the Nephilim, these giants. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, even the Greeks, Herodotus and them call us giants, the Ethiopians giants. Mm -hmm. You see, the Greeks talked about the Africans being giants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? They sure did. Yeah. So the Nephilim is nothing that you see in the Bible. We are the Nephilim. Now, this book says, uh, ages past, you lived many times. Your slaves built the pyramids to honor your death. You died for your sins of Jerusalem. You lost your head suggesting they eat cake. You are the Nephilim, a demigod, a prophet, a saint, a magician from the mystic past. I'm talking about black people. Mm -hmm. Again, you incarnate to continue your ancient struggle for enlightenment against those plots of the occult societies, which is the white boys, who seek to enslave you and steal your magic. Mm -hmm. Your magic is your knowledge and your magic is melanin. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Now, in here, the book says this. Among the first great secrets of the Nephilim are black people. Because they say, well, who are the Nephilim? They say, well, you can find the Nephilim today. Mm -hmm. They say, you'll find them in the jail houses. That's mm -hmm. black people. They say, number one, they're in the jailhouse because subconsciously they can't adhere to the white man laws because they have been around on the planet so long mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until they have seen laws change so much until they realize that the white boys stuff really ain't the law. Mm -hmm. So subconsciously they rebel against that because they know that they are greater than that. Mm -hmm. Although they might not know they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So it says, among the first secrets that the Nephilim learns is that history is conceived, that is conceived by the majority of humans is incorrect. Well, we know that based on the Afrocentric movement. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. uh, most perhaps all of historical events have their origin in the mis mystical world of the Nephilim, i.e. black, mm -hmm. African. Human history and books only describe the surface of things as lived by individual groups who are unable to comprehend the true implications or simply refuse to face the truth. That's, that's white people. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, secret societies have fabricated false historical scientific truths to protect their influences and activities. Mm -hmm. These exceptions have been accepted as true by the majority of society. Now this is in a comic book. Now why is this in a comic book? Because the white boy studies us he understands us, and, he, and not only just black people, the average white person. Because they got to keep the average white person stupid to rule over us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. You see, the average white person don't know. You go to the average white person, and he just is stupid. Mm -hmm. But they are those of the white race that know us. Mm -hmm. So he'll put it in a comic book because he'll understand that I'm just a professor at Harvard. I'm Mr. Professor at Cornell. And when I'm talking about my history, if the truth, if 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 if, if, the, if, if the truth of my history is in a comic book, well I'm Mr. Professor at Cornell, I can't talk about that. You see, they, that's how they get that's how they put it to you over iron. You see where I'm coming from? Mm. They put it in a comic book, they know that the professors and the so-called people of academia can't go there. <laughs> You see? So therefore, put it in a comic book, and that nigga better not get on my damn podium and we ask him where he got this shit from, and he say a comic book. So this is the way to tell the truth. White boy always got some tricks for you. That's why don't never be a part of the institution. And you can say what the hell you want. We are reality and we are truth. And fuck the white man's standards mm -hmm. on how things are supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. love right? It. Love it, love it. So, a blatant example is that of Darwin's theory the natural sele of natural selection. Incurably curious, Darwin discovered 
Atlantean or African documents. Do they say uh, African? They say Atlantean. Oh, you're saying uh, African. African. I'm, I'm recorrecting it. Mm -hmm. Documents which hinted at the origin of human development. You see. See, Dr. Ben just said, well, we don't we need to pay attention to Atlantis. He said because the only thing that the Greeks got was from one of the Egyptian sages that had mentioned Atlantis. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that there wasn't an Atlantis. He just said that we don't have enough information on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He never said that we, that it didn't exist because the Egyptian sage said it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just said that we don't have enough information on it. Well, they don't have enough information on it because they were historians and histori um, history is always conservative based on we get the framework okay. on which we present history is based on European collegiate structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's alternative history in fields of the esoteric world, which if you are in the collegiate faction, a factor you can't mention. Because you'll be, that'll be scholarly suicide based on the white man. Mm -hmm. So now, so Darwin discovered African or Atlantean do documents. Now why did he discover this? Because he was a part of a secret society. When we get in there, we're going to find out some stuff when we go into this. Which hinted at the origins of All right, let me start again at the top part about Darwin. A blatant example of this theory of natural selections is Darwin's nat theory of natural selection. Incurably curious, Darwin discovered the African or Atlantean documents which hinted the origins of human development. During his numerous travels, he was eventually initiated into a Masonic lodge aimed at bringing the humans and the Nephilims together. Well, that might have been the, the uh, aspect. When they talk about humans, they're talking about white people now. The Nephilims, we are a higher breed of that. We'll go back, we're going to get to the white boy in a minute. When he learned the origins of humanity and desti destiny of the Nephilim, because we have a destiny, uh -huh. Darwin destroyed the observations which he had brought, which had brought him to enlightenment, afraid of betraying the Nephilim Lodge in, uh, in their hostile secret societies, he guided them, um, uh, who guided him. Darwin built his coherent system of biological evolution and further obscure, and obscure the track. Uh, basically, he made this particular trip. And provided with the weapon which could be used to attack the Masons, sworn enemy of the Catholic Church, Thus, Darwin protected those whom he called the miracle selection of the Nephilim. So in so many words, what he's talking about here is, um, he created this whole thing of coming from apes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To cover up the fact that, number one, we didn't come from no damn apes. Mm -hmm. Now, see, this is, see, but we got this same foolishness still to down in the Afrocentric community, because half of the Afrocentric scholars, by them being in a part of a collegiate structure, and now this is the, 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 the foundation of all colleges, is you got to believe in this Darwin's theory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be considered a scholar. Mm -hmm. So the Afrocentric movement was talking about all these different eight type people up to black people. We don't have no records. And I'll debate any black person that'll come up to me and show me some shit in Africa and then Kemet, well, we came from apes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, this is the problem I get. Oh, all of a sudden, we stupid. When we wrote our history two, three thousand years ago, we couldn't tell or we didn't have enough damn sense to know where the hell we came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't find it in the Bible, which is basically a consortium of ancient scripture. You don't find it in the Torah. You don't find it in no, the Book of the Dead, the Book of Coming Forth by Day. You don't find it in no shit where we came from no apes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yet all of a sudden, we got the Afrocentric scholars 
They went to this bull job. Even 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 Charles Finch. Did his two books on us coming up from apes. And yet, I'm telling you, I'm just as much scholar as any of these niggas out here, and I don't find this shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as a result, I bring you the information on how that's all a lie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That they still do when you see them people up in there like you showed me the video of some of these crackers now trying to say that the, Ch- the, Jap- the Chinese came from white people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And i show you some some talking about because of the wool and the clothes they had on. Now you know damn well I got clothes right now. Ten years ago, this dry rotted. Walk down the street, shit tear up on you. Mm-hmm. Dry rotted. In my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And yet you're gonna tell me that they're gonna get some fully clothed crackers out of some snow and the foot and the clothes ain't dry rotted? No, they said that they came out of the dry climate. Of the deserts of uh, China. I don't care. And that the salt, I'm in dry California. The salt, the salt preserved. Oh, uh, uh, see, I tell anybody a lot. I'm in dry South Carolina. I'm in dry Georgia. Hell, Atlanta ain't got no beaches. And clothes dry rot. Mm-hmm. You done had some clothes to dry rot. Now, how the hell you gonna have some clothes to dry rot and you ain't 100 years old? And yet they got people stuff a thousand years. We supposed to believe that, but because the cracker right policy on the standing on what you supposed to believe, you just supposed to believe him and don't even question this bull. And yet he's proven to be a liar. That's his whole civilization is based on a lie. That's what they just said here. The first great secret that, that history is conceived for the majority of humans is incorrect. It's a lie. You see what I'm saying? So he Darwin. Puts this thing about the eight thing up there. Number one, it's the best thing to do if you can put it all down that we came from apes. Then that can cover up the history of the doggone uh, black man and how we came about. Because people still ask this question, if black people are the origins of civilization, then where the hell did white people come from? Correct. That's what I want you to get into. We'll get into it in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. But the key is, I want to just dwell on this. Um... Well, on this thing, now some people say, but no, no, Bobby, we got pictures of, of different types of eight species. I'm not denying that there's different pictures of eight species. I'm just telling you that they might have a hundred thousand different lengths of eight. I'm telling you that ain't got nothing to do with our history. They got different lion species. Mm-hmm. They got different dog species. But that don't have nothing to do with my human species. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, you can have all them bones, but that ain't got nothing to do with my history. Mm-hmm. See what I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. So this is how the white boy can confuse things. Mm-hmm. Can't confuse things. Now getting back to this particular science, getting back to this particular science, um, majority of the information that I have uncovered mm-hmm. based on our ancient science. See, I, see, first of all, this is the way I feel. I can't go by the white man's science. Correct. Because I know he's a damn liar, and ultimately, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can't depend on him. Mm-hmm. So that means that if I'm going to do a record on finding the origin of the white man, I'm going to have to go by what we said. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, like I said, if an ape could talk, why the hell we don't see no apes in the damn zoo now going, hey, I just learned how to talk. <laughs> if an ape learned how to talk, Seem to me, in the history of just the last 700 years, we have seen some apes talk. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a new, that's some kind of ape that learned how to talk, and the rest of the apes didn't learn how to talk yet. Other bull about us mutating in some ice age. First of all, and all of us say we mutated in the ice, it would have to bear witness that we were some type of stupid ape-like people. That if the ice age came, that we wasn't civil up to go civilized and go, uh oh, here come the ice. Well I guess we just have to stay here and turn white. <laughs> Hell, if that ice come, you know how to just Hell a retarded person know when it's snow outside to get out of the damn snow. But they got trapped. Well that's what they say they got trapped. But my point is is if you are an advanced civilization like Egyptians, you will know when the ice come to a point that you don't have to get trapped. 
See, then my point is that certain things just don't add up. You see? Because still, because you got to understand something. See, when we still deal with that, because the Eskimos been up in them ice and they lighted in the down. Black man was, and you don't see him turning white. Mm -hmm. Ended up looking like Richard Cunningham. Mm -hmm. And he been up in the damn ice. And he's lighter than you. And you ain't seen him turn in looking like Richard Cunningham. How is a blue black man? Black is this here going to turn to be white? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, to me, an ice age, when it comes, it's gradual. It just don't come one night and you trapped in the ice. Mm -hmm. See, to me, they know that the climate is changing. And if these people are advanced Egyptians, mm -hmm. they would know how to travel out. See, to say that these people were not advanced, People on the planet is to say that we were some type of semi-barbaristic cave people. Mm -hmm. That we didn't have enough sense to migrate. Mm -hmm. If we had damn detailed files, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We had enough sense to get out of the ice. Certain shit don't hold up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see, then again, on the other hand, that's a theory. You see, you got to realize the whole two crater theory and Diop stuff and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that's a theory. Uh, when they try to explain what you call it, even Charles Finch dealt with. That's a theory. Now, in knowledge, you have a theory until you have anthropological, archaeological mm -hmm. evidence. Mm -hmm. We don't have no anthropological or no archaeological evidence of us turning white based on trapped in no ice. Mm -hmm. So I got to go by the only anthropological and archaeological evidence we do have. Mm -hmm. One is at the temple of Seti One, where they talk about the four races of men, mm -hmm. the Ruti, the Suti, the Himu, and the Tamahu. Mm -hmm. The Ruti, which is the East African, the Suti, which is the West African, the Himu, which is the Semitic type person, which would be my color. Mm -hmm. Not no Jew that was converted into uh, uh, thing in Spain. The Semitic type person, and then you have what is called the Tama Hu. Tama meaning created, and Hu meaning white light and bright. Wait a minute, it don't say that though, do it? It does say this. Verbatim. Jeremiah, Book of the Beginnings, Volume 1, page 27. Let's just go over that one more time, set the record straight. There are four races of people. It says that the temple or the tomb of City One, which is in Abydos, mm -hmm. First Holy Land, mm -hmm. there are four races of men. Mm -hmm. The him the Ruti, West Africa, uh, Ruti, East African, the Suti, West African, which is your most ancient race of men, the Himu, which is a Semitic type person, which would look like me. And the Tamahu. Tamah meaning created, and who meaning white, light, and ivory. All the Tamahu thus, it says the next caption, the created white people. It goes on to say that the Ruti and the Suti was issued out of the eye of Amen Ra, because the eye of Amen Ra, the eye of Set, or the eye of Heru is still melanin. And they were the original people. But on the same text, on the same wall, it says, but the Ruti and the Suti created the Himu and the Tamil. Now that's the temple walls. Now who I'm going to believe? I'm going to believe some cracker, or I'm going to believe some Diop who was married to a white person who later on got killed. That's what we got to sit straight to. They killed Diop. Killed him on the plane on the way coming back. We'll get into that. I'm going to believe the white man, I'm going to believe the Egyptians. We can't say that the Egyptians are the greatest scientists of all, and I ain't going to believe what they say. But there's more. Mm -hmm. There's tons more. So let's talk about it. Okay. Uh, in your Nag Hammadi library, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dug up in 1945, mm -hmm. it goes on to say that there were some counterfeit spirits that was created. Counterfeit spirits mm -hmm. that was created. Mm -hmm. 
And they've been holding the original true spirits down even to this date. Mm -hmm. Says that in the Gospel of the Apocryphon of John in the Nag Hammadi Library. It goes on in the Nag Hammadi Library and says that the people on earth are separated by two essence. Mm -hmm. By a single essence. The counterfeit spirits and the original, original people are separated by two essence. And that essence, by one single essence. If you study alchemy, the word essence also goes back to melanin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also says in the Nag Hammadi Library, that you got the original spirits of the original beings who have the original true blueprint of the universe. And then you have the counterfeit spirits who have a mock nuclei with one ring of consciousness. Repeat that, please. A mock nuclei with one ring of consciousness. Anytime you get the word mock, it means it is something other than the original. It is a copy of the original. and one ring of consciousness. In the Hermetic text, which is some of the oldest texts on the planet, and it says, our problems as Egyptians are man's problem is man learn how to create another man. Now you got it in black and white, Hermetica, 1935, Walter Scott. 1935, Walter Scott. Says, man, the problem with Well, the problem man. with man is man learned how to create another man, mainly the Egyptians. And what was it, what, how, why did he come about to say that? Hmm? Why did he come he about? He didn't come about to say that. That's what the Egyptians said. He just wrote, translated the text. Now, Egyptians said this in relationship to the problems that had befallen them. Right. Where do they say this at? Where can I find this information? The Hermetic text mm -hmm. is basically these texts that was in the Library of Alexandria mm -hmm. that was wrestled out and translated into Greek and into Latin. Mm -hmm. Well, I get you on another thing. I don't even believe the Greeks translated all that stuff into Greek and Latin. Or they wouldn't be able to understand it. They even translated. I think the Egyptian priest, knowing prophecy, translated these texts for them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I believe that half the stuff that was translated was not translated by people that didn't know what they was dealing with. I think that the stuff was translated for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when we first went off the, um, as a matter of fact, when we went, when, when, when my mate Ginger. When we first got off the mount, off the Indian mound, she was getting all the psychic channels. Mm -hmm. The spirit realm told us the white people ain't never even initiated in no mystery system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got two conclusions. Maybe the, the people that initiated it was Greek, was black. Which goes with your boys thing that the Plato and the Socrates is some made up shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they never initiated in no mystery system. Because the first thing I asked them, why the hell y'all niggas put some damn white people in the mystery system? And the spirit said, ain't no white people ever initiated in no mystery system. That's what they said. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. If they do prophecy. Mm -hmm. You see? There was black Greeks. Mm -hmm. Black Romans. Mm -hmm. I saw some Greeks in 1995 with nappy hair. And I said, now, if these people had nappy hair in 1995, how the hell did they look 2,000, 3,000 years ago? If they got nappy hair in 1995, I, got, I know niggas ain't got nappy hair now. Depends on who's writing your history for you. So the Hermetic text says that the Semitic text also says there are people with souls and there's people without souls. Without the souls are the people, the Europeans. In the Nag Hammadi Library, in the in the stuff called the Tractate, tri, the Tractate, the Tripartite Tractate, which is some 
book in these in these things they say. They go in and say that you got two kind of people. You got one person who is a spiritual being that has a soul. It goes on to say you got another person that's a physical being that has a spirit but does not have a soul. And there's something different between a spirit and a soul. Hell, a dog got a spirit. A roach got a spirit. A spirit is just something that animates you. That emanates in you and animates you to move about. White man say, you cut me in, I bleed. I cut you and you bleed. Well, hell, a damn hog bleed. That ain't saying nothing. A hog got a spirit. There's something different between a spirit and a soul. Well, but but the mating, you can mate with a white person and have a child. Yeah, that's because the energy of that black person carries the soul. Explain that, Father, in terms of that mating situation. And what then what is the baby? The baby's black. Mm -hmm. That person has a soul. That melanin is nothing but the soul. First of all, let's get this dumb shit right. All the niggas out here thinking these crackers is on the same equal. If you don't have no melanin, you don't have no soul. The soul itself creates melanin as a form of shadow around it to protect that seed of God. That's alchemy. That's the royal art of ancient chemistry. You can't have a soul and not have melanin. Even you got white people, maybe 2% of white people that's got a soul. That's because they ain't white. They're just some black people that's light on the outside based on some gene mixing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that melanin itself carries the soul. Mm -hmm. So in the final analysis, no, we won't. You're saying, but you're saying that white people are created. Created. By whom? By us. If we were advanced scientists, if the white boy got gene splice and now what you gonna get on in? Mm -hmm. And he does. Hell, if he got gene splice and now, what you think we had? See, the problem is. See, a part of our slave conditioning is to always think that people outside of white society is still kind of stupid. Even when we look at Kemet or Egypt, with the greatness we think it is, we still don't think that the Egyptian society was advanced as the Europeans' technology now. Correct. That is true. That's what is. That's the problem. That's, that's the problem. problem. Even Amos Wilson said that's the problem with you. The reason why you think that the white man is so great is because you think that he is synonymous to technology. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And even we can't get that. So when we look at things like that, we see the white boy can damn cross make animals, fruits, humans, mm -hmm. hybrid. All types of experiments that they can do. Mm -hmm. And yet we can we, we don't have a problem saying, no problem, they can do that. Correct. You hollering on me, anybody goes, yeah, they, they can do that. Mm -hmm. But that's the white man. But you don't think that these people who are only operating on a byproduct of what we had, they don't even have the ultimate information on what we had and we couldn't do it? That's insanity. Mm -hmm. You gonna say this white man has got Half the shit that we got. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Can do what he does. Mm -hmm. And yet we had the whole of it. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. See, this is a form of the same slave man mentality that we always fail by. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So we couldn't dread a white man. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When the white man can create a white man now, mm -hmm. in a short period of time, clone shit. He been cloning since 1945. Humans. Mm -hmm. 
We'll get into that when we go into this, because that's a part of this whole clan thing. You see what I'm saying? But if I went on, I could spend the whole next two hours giving you documents on this white boy being treated. You see what I'm saying? Being treated. Every culture got some of this. I wrote a book, The Human All Officials, in 1994. Since then, I got to go and update the book because there's just that much information came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got archaeological, anthropological evidence, tons of it, of this white boy being created. Mm -hmm. You see? We even have a stuff called abduction extraordinaire created from the Chester Bailey papyruses out of um. British Museum and the Chester Bailey Papyrus of the British Museum talks about above Egypt abnormal people. Below Egypt normal people, normal people. It was talking about the Europeans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, so we got tons and tons of that type of information. And uh, we can back that up. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. We got more documents than the so-called Negro scholars got theory. Because that's still only a theory. A theory is only based on a theory until you find some fucking evidence to suggest that your theory is right. And they don't have none. Yet, I got all of the stuff that the Egyptians say, the Mesopotamians say, and even the Greeks say, talking about there's a created people on this thing. And do you know that the Hermetic text, text is what Western uh, academia is based on? So how the hell are you going to tell me that the damn byproduct of Western Africa, that, that, that is Western academia could be right and the source, which is the same hermetic text, can be false? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the evidence, see, 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 see the problem here, it's very interesting because this is some stuff that's being redeemed. <coughs> this same stuff I'm telling you, Armalaj Muhammad told us 60 years ago. But because he didn't have an education, and we so degree conscious now, we couldn't believe what a man without an education would say. And a man with a fourth grade education say that, that means that's divine. Mm -hmm. you know that, do you know that the United States government gave this man a motorcade, a congressional parade down, um, down Washington, D.C. in 1950 something? Do you know that the, in 1971, Colombian Pictures put out a movie on the life of Muhammad Elijah Muhammad? And they picked the top black actor and wouldn't take nothing but the top black actor of that time to play him, Sidney Poitier. Played Muhammad Elijah Muhammad in a movie called Brother John. Get that movie, Brother John, 1971, Columbia Pictures. Brother John, get that movie. So my point is, we couldn't bear witness to the stuff he said because he didn't have an education. And to this day, everything got fit in this little white man's education, and we miss out on all the stuff. Because all the white man education can say is, that's not the way the education is done. Well, since when in hell we get this damn beast? The authority to tell us what's educated or not. And so whenever we exclude our own science, which a lot of time is rooted in spiritual things, that means that we'll say that the white man is superior. So when niggas say, I can't get with that spooky stuff you're saying, because it don't come by the weight of the white man's authority, that means that you are saying that ultimately the white man is the ultimate in reality and what goes on in reality. Get where I'm coming from here? Mm -hmm. You see, so... We got more than, enough, more than enough evidence on that particular science. Now, in so many words, the Moors understood prophecy of the Egyptians, and they knew that they had to fulfill this prophecy by going in to educate the Europeans. Mm -hmm. This was a mixture of several priesthoods coming together under the banner of Islam. And went up into Europe and set up 16 universities to, um, to educate the Europeans. Mm -hmm. In these 16 universities, just as you go to college now and will initiate into a fraternity, 
They initiated into fraternities too that the more was set up for them, and those fraternities were your first modern Masonic groups. Your York Rite, your Scottish Rite, your Knights Templar, your Grotto Rites, your Cathars, which is a group, and all of these particular secret societies as they learned the science that they learned. Mm -hmm. A group of Europeans decided to do an alternative thing based on religion and all of that mm -hmm. was inducted into Judaism. And that becomes the origin of your Hebrew Jews who ain't got nothing to do, your white Jews who have nothing to do with the original Hebrews whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they was conducted into a secret society of Kabbalah, mm -hmm. which is the same stuff that your, your Lababa witcher Jews or your Hasidic Jews practice today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Kabbalah. Get the movie uh, A Stranger Among Us and listen to the Cut that off for a minute. Uh. <laughs> so these secret societies were set up under the Moors as an alternative institution within those 16 universities. They set these secret societies up. Your, 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 your newly um, converted white Jews converted into Judaism had nothing to do with the real Hebrews, which were black. In your book, Thirteen Tribe, of Arthur Cox talks about that, uh, uh, the converting of those, those white Jews. They were initiated into Kabbalistic system, a Kabbalah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And your Hasidic Jews and all practice that today. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I said you get the movie, um, um, if you get that particular movie, uh, a Stranger Among Us with Melanie Griffin. Griffith, they talk about that in the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Griffin or whatever the name is. Anyway, um, these particular secret societies came up based on that. Um, the Eurosacrucians, mm -hmm. who later on became the, the custodians of a lot of this particular information, including an uh, ancient word for Christ that they cut off. You get the word Christ, there's an ancient word for Christ called Chrysomelos. And Chrysomelos, the word melos means, is Greek for black and apple. Because you know apple got melanin in it if you cut it in half. Mm -hmm. And God said you can eat from all the trees except the one of the tree of knowledge. And they've been in the apple, that's melanin, tapping into the third eye. They tapped into the third eye and what? They saw. But there's a God... There is a, a name of Christ called Chrysomelo. So the white boy got enough power. He said, well, I just want to, I'm going to make a word extinct. So they just take it out of the whole language. Mm -hmm. The Rosicrucians still use it. It's called Chrysomelo, which means black Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that the word Christ originally was called Chrysomelo. Mm -hmm. That's in the Rosicrucian aspect. So the ancient Rosicrucian order, all as Moorish, institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they set up those particular things uh, in, 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 those, uh, in those particular societies. So what are some of the sciences that basically the Moors brought? Well, we know of all the learning and all the stuff that the Afrocentric movement told you, all of the stuff that the Moors brought. But let's get into some of the esoteric traditions. Mm -hmm. Basically, when you go in those New Age stores mm -hmm. and all that stuff that they got the New Age stores is, is dealing with, it's nothing but the, 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 all of the stuff that they basically conserved from the more science of all of the stuff that the secret societies had. And when you see all that stuff, they get a new name, esoteric teachings, new age, and all that stuff. All that is nothing but more science that they basically became the custodians of. Right. And now trying to fake as being white in these so-called New Age bookstores and what they call occult bookstores. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's all that stuff is. Just put a new name on it. And you thinking it's some white people shit. So your tarot cards. You see them just fortune telling the tarot? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is coming. That was introduced by the Moors. From the tarot cards, you get the playing cards. Mm -hmm. Introduced by the Moors. 
You see what I'm saying? All your divination systems, they got little stuff they throw down, little stones called runes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Introduced by the Moors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The crystal ball. This is real deal stuff that works. Divination introduced by the Moors. Your incense, frankincense and myrrh, all that introduced by the Moors. Gun power. Mm -hmm. You thought it was China. It got its root in alchemy. It, got, it has its roots in alchemy going back to Kemet of the study of metals in and out the body. Also introduced into Europe by the Moors as well as your fire stick, which later on was a gun that they didn't have no use for. Introduced by Moors. Um, spiritual music. The word music comes from the word muse. What do you mean they didn't have any use for the fire stick? Well, based on their nature. You know, they, they, they didn't conceive of this thing as being a weapon or something they want to kill a lot of people with. I guess they figured, you know, white boy picked it up after them and used it. All we know is they didn't, they, they invented the gun, the fire stick, and didn't use it. You see? You know, and didn't use it. Music. Classical music mm -hmm. that we thought was a white, that's the Moors. Brought that up because the scales was invented in Egypt. It comes out of hermetic science and ultimately out of alchemy. It is melanin put to scale. You, you're talking about music. It's yeah. musical scale. The word muse is a Greek word for components inside of the melanin. These angelic beings called muse. You get the word music. Something that inspires you. Melanin inspires you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is all coming from the Hermetic teachings or the teachings of Tahuti. Because her Hermes is Tahuti in Egypt. Which is the teachings of alchemy. Which is the study of melanin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The dark night of the soul. And so music, which is the components of what's here, heard in the body put to scale. is introduced into Europe by the Moors. Classical music. They call they call um, Beethoven the, the, the war of Russia. You see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some stuff called the greater key of Solomon. And some stuff called the lesser key of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Which is these magical texts. Mm -hmm. Introduced into uh, Europe by the Moors. One of the benefits of Moors teaching was Nostradamus. His teacher was a Moor. There's a movie came out, Orion Pictures, Nostradamus, 1980, 1994, when it came out. It's called Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. And in there you'll see he'll go to this teacher, and this teacher gives him all of this stuff and literally cultivates his psychic ability. Mm -hmm. Although in the movie they show him as a white boy on an NBT, NBT, NBC TV special earlier that year, they show he was a black boy behind him. So anytime you see these pictures in Europe and you see the, the, the white boy standing and they have a black man behind him mm -hmm. in basically Arab dress, the black man behind him was his teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you go get the movie Rob Roy, mm -hmm. and in that movie Rob Roy, you will see the king of, of England or well, this, this particular king of that time, a noble man of that time, he got a little black boy behind him. You think the little black boy was a slave, but the little black boy, as a little boy, got on a turban. That's his teacher. He's a moor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robin Hood is traveling with what? A moor. You see that in the movie Robin Hood with Kevin Costner, Costner and um, Morgan Freeman plays the moor. Morgan Freeman also plays the moor again in the movie um, Maul Flanders. He plays the Moor. And he says how they, they were dealing with alchemy mm -hmm. in the actual movie. Mm -hmm. It's always the Moor, and, uh, which is the teacher. So the Moors taught Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. He said, if you take this, this, this elixir, your psychic powers will get better. And he put his hand in it in the movie and said, ooh, that's nutmeg. And he said, among other things. Well, the spirit gave us the other thing is nutmeg, honey, and some lemon. I know it's nutmeg and honey, cayenne pepper, 
boil into a tea and drink it and your psychic powers will get better. Um, um, y'all want to get us a little cup of nutmeg <laughs> and honey uh, at our next break. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he, they just say nutmeg in the movie, but the movie Nostradamus, just remember the one from 1994, Orion Pitches. So Nostradamus, basically all of his ancient wisdom mm -hmm. is brought to him by the Moors. And he mentions the Moors throughout his whole text, especially when you get the book of Complete Prophecies of Nostradamus mm -hmm. by Henry C. Roberts. And you'll see the Moors all through that particular text, as well as the word Mavis, mm -hmm. which is also another name for the Moors. Mm -hmm. All of that is in the actual text. You see, all of that, as well as Nostradamus mentioning that in the 1990s, black people were coming to their own. He says that? He says that. He also says, near the end of the year world, Saturn shall return, let yet, let yet late to its return, the empires will be changed to black nations. And it goes said, Nearborn will have his eyes pecked out by a hawk. I'll break that down esoterically. Mm -hmm. And another thing it says, throughout all the U.S., all of the United States, cannot save her by sea. Which means you can't go and fight your wars overseas no more. Mm -hmm. And be victorious. But between two rivers, and you see, he, he said I'll write everything in code. Atlantic and Pacific, she will Fear a furious black hand will make America bend to her knee. Mm -hmm. A fearful, wrathful black one, it says, will make America bend to her knee. Right in the actual prophecies of Nostradamus prophecy. Can you tell us which prophecy that is and where to find that? Condition? It's all in the book, Henry C. Roberts' book, The Complete Prophecies of Nostradamus. Okay. We'll move. We'll yeah, the complete the prophecies of Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. All of his training was based on the Moors' training. Mm -hmm. Your coat of arms, mm -hmm. your whole royal setup of all European countries is based on the Moors. Mm -hmm. And thousands and thousands of black people that were still up in Russia up until World War II, where your boy, um, What's the guy from Russia? Stalin. Supposed to kill 100 million Russians. Black Russians. How the hell he gonna kill 100 million people? Or uh, if that's a number, how he gonna kill millions and millions of people? His own citizens and they don't turn against him. They was doing ethnic cleansing and was killing leftover black Russians. And they're doing that even now. There's still some Exactly. What happened was the Cathars, which was a Gnostic Moorish people that settled, settled into, they settled France, they settled Ireland, and they went on up into Russia and on into Bosnia. And from 1996, 1991 to 96, they killed off that black element in Bosnia. Of the leftover Cathars. Mm -hmm. The Cathars of these Moors first also settled Ireland. Mm -hmm. So when they said it, uh, what's his name? Um, ran the snakes out of Ireland. Mm -hmm. He was running the snake people out of Ireland, St. Patrick's. The Moors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They settled Ireland. The river dance, you see that river dance they doing? The Irish people doing that river dance? Mm -hmm. That's black. You'll see African tribes will do a dance with their legs are moving and their body standing straight, their torso straight. It's the same as the river dance. Mm -hmm. They found a cross in, a Celtic cross. Because they talk, oh, see, you hear these white people talking about, See, if you go to the, the, the esoteric stores, you hear Celtic, Celtic, real the Celtic, 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 Celtic. Celtic is another damn name for Moors. That's just the, after the Moors trained these people, they became the Celtics. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, these were the early people who benefited from more civilization. You see what I'm saying? So Celtic, 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 Celtic. St. Patrick's Day was put in and was also upheld by the Moors, by the Pope, and the Irish Catholicism to cover up the fact of the Moors that was there at that time. Mm -hmm. You see. In Scotland, your bagpipes mm -hmm. and that those robes they wore. Mm -hmm. You know that your, your, your little kilt, what you yeah. call it? What's that called? Kilt? What's it called? Kilt. Yeah. Kilt? Yeah. That ain't nothing but the Egyptian robe. Mm -hmm. Redone in the fabric of the land. The bagpipes and all of that. There's a there's a there's a cross. Celtic cross with the name on it, Bismillah, which means Allah. All of this brought up by the Moors. Your King Arthur's and the Round Table story. Your King Arthur and your Round Table story. Which first introduced into Spain. Into Spain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to stop and let him set up? Or? Yeah, we'll stop and let him set up. Bobby, we're going to be ready to roll. Okay. Also, the Moors also instituted the uh, King Arthur and your round tables. This all came out of Ireland. Then when Britain took Ireland, took over Ireland, um, they, the, the Camelot became Britain. Mm -hmm. But before, it, when it was in Ireland, it was supposed to be a new city at the ends of the earth. We'll get into that, which is supposed to be America. Mm -hmm. uh, it only became Britain after. Uh, get your movie Excalibur to try to get a, a, a Excalibur, 1981, to try to get a a synopsis on the King Arthur's Court and the Holy Grail thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, get the movie Excalibur 1981 um, to try to learn about what the King Arthur's Court is. Your Grail is supposed to be this mystical cup that's supposed to bring magical healing as well as uh, a form of the Christ energy. All of that stuff introduced into Europe by the Moors, mainly into Ireland by the Moors. So the Irish, the original Irish which was a lot of black people, was also settled there by the Moors. You can get the movie Secrets of Rowan Ish. Secrets of Rowan Ish, and when they talk about the black seal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's the Moors, uh, that's the Moors also. Uh, they'll talk about a black seal, that's also the Moors. Um, your, uh, your hermetic text that I talked about was introduced into the, uh, which is called the Corpus Hermeticus, which is basically the basis of European knowledge, which they sifted the Corpus Hermeticus and give you the byproduct of some other greater my um, uh, mysteries. It's introduced by the Moors. Your Nookian magic, you, you, you'll see, is supposed to be this magic that was supposed to be um, hooked up by a guy by the name of John Dees, which is supposed to be Queen uh, Elizabeth's uh, soothsayer, a magician. And he supposedly got gotten contacted by these uh, Inukian entities and gave him this system of magic where in actuality he had full run of the live, the, 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 uh, the uh, British Museum, which became one of the main custodians of all this leftover stuff from the Moors. And by him having full reign, he just went in there and just translated texts. Anytime you see some stuff in these met in these um, metaphysical bookstores where they have these old ancient texts, like the Great Key of Solomon, and they'll say, "Well, these texts just mysteriously showed up in Europe." That means that they were from the Moors. There's some stuff called the Magic of Abra, Mar Ab Abra Maryland Mays, a book called the Magic of Abra Maryland Mays. Mm -hmm. If you ever get into that little book on the Magic of Abra Maryland Mays, you will find all of the stuff. It's in that book is more science, numerology, mm -hmm. astrology, mm -hmm. astronomy, mm -hmm. your Kabbalah, your Kabbalistic text, 
which the Jew, which is Jewish mysticism. The first books of the Kabbalah is the Zohar, Sefer Yesera, Sefer Behar. These particular books came out of Moorish Spain. The first book came out of, out of Spain. But how did it get in Spain? They talk about the Spanish Jews. Good book on this, more science and stuff, a book called People of the Secret by Ernest Scott. In that book, he'll talk about the Sufis, the Sufis, the Sufis. He won't say the Moors, but he'll also say the Sufis in Spain. He's a master of the English language. You will see it up in there. But he also goes in the book and says Sufi, Suf means woolly-haired one. But Camelot, the word Camelot, comes from the word Cam, Egypt, Lot. Mm -hmm. It means the new state of Egypt, which would also be America. Mm -hmm. Get all that into also, you can find out about America being broken down and, and being the new state of Kemet, Washington, D.C., and all the other cities in America bear witness to that on the Masonic um, architecture. Manly P. Hall wrote a book, The Secret Destiny of America. There's a new book called The Return of, Return of the Ancient Serpent of Wisdom, which is literally the Kundalini energy, but at the end of the book he talks about the new destiny where this ancient serpent of wisdom is supposed to end up in this America, which is talking about black people. Which is talking about black people. Um, so uh, all of this particular, all of these texts, um, the Book of Enoch, the Ethiopian Book of Enoch, brought to Europe by the Moors, which predates the Old Testament and was not put in the Old Testament because it's coming from Ethiopia. The Slavic Book of Enoch. How do Slavs get a book of Enoch? Because all that's more science. Mm -hmm. You see. Turkey was a Moorish providence. Then all of a sudden Turkey get hit with the damn earthquake. But then again we all know that based on the heart project and the white boy got the actual the, 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 the type of science to create her, her, her earthquakes, hurricanes and storms. Tornadoes and all that. You see. All of that. Um, coming from ancient. Uh, Moorish science. Your Jews. Your white Jews. Mm -hmm. Introduced in the Moors. Or converted into Judaism. By the Moors. Given the Torah. And given the, the other higher text. Which is your Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All that's Moorish science. Mm -hmm. The Kabbalah comes from the Temple of Komombo in Egypt, where they got the Pharaoh holding up the same tree of life that the Jews say that is supposed to be Jewish mysticism. On the Temple Wall, they got him holding up that same tree of life in the Temple of Komombo in Egypt. Right. Uh, also, too. Mm -hmm. um, the plan of the Moors was to civilize a semi- Barbaric people, or make a people that's halfway civilized so we can be the benefit of this particular information once we come and get set up in America, which is also prophesied in the Greek story, Jason and the Argonauts, which this story, the guy Apollonius was the curator or the director of the Library of Alexandria. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, this story, Jason of the Argonaut, where he take the best of the Africans, put them in a boat, to sail to the ends of the earth at a, at a land called Caucasus mm -hmm. to get the golden fleece, mm -hmm. which is a lamb's wool, in Christ with the lamb's wool, a woolen fleece. It's called the woolen fleece, or the golden fleece. And when you translate all that, it means melanin. And it also means the Christ. Mm -hmm. So shall the sun, as the sun rises in the east, so shall the son of man rise in the west, mm -hmm. which is the Christ. The son of man is the son in man.
the hidden sun or the black sun, which is the manifestation or the crystallization of melody mm -hmm. in a people in the West. The hermetic text, which is the prophetic text, that is assigned to Ascalipius. And Ascalipius, as you know, is the God Tahuti. No, excuse me. Ascalipius is the is is the is is the God and the physician Imhotep. And Imhotep, as you know, is Ascalipius, who the Greeks pray to at the Hippocratic oath as Ascalipius. In the Hermetic text, they got a whole sermon, the perfect sermon of Ascalipius. And in there is the prophecy of how we was going to go into slavery. How Egypt, which is the temple of all the gods, would become one big graveyard. And how the pious man, which is righteous man, would be, would be looked on as impious. And how the impious man, which is the wicked man, would be considered pious, righteous. And how the weak man would be considered strong, and the strong man would be considered weak. And how everybody would look up to the wicked man would be considered noble. And how the righteous and pious man would be treated like a common criminal. And all of these people in this faraway land will look like Egyptian. They will have the mind of another race. Mm -hmm. now, that's all. That's all in the prophecy. Imhotep starts crying. He said, well, we ever get up out of this. And Tahuti, who is the person that Imhotep is divining to, giving him this spiritual knowledge, say, yeah, Maya will be established. He said, where? Well. He said, it will be a land that's not established yet. That all nations will speed towards in all types of transportation to get there. And in that land there will be an extremities or an appendix or an annex of Egyptians that will be in that land. Mm -hmm. And they will establish Maya. Now, Bobby, just for versions of it. Okay. One, same perfect sermon of Ascalipius in Walter Scott's book, Hermetica. Okay. The other book, which might be hard to get, but it's by Shambhala Press, but you still probably can get it in 1992. It came out again from the 1930s. The other one, new book is by Copenhagen, another Hermetica, which has the perfect sermon of Ascalipius in it, which you can get the other book is Three Volumes, Thrice Great Hermes, 1907 by G.R.S. Mead, which has the perfect sermon in it. Another book, which might be out of print. No, you can get it from Kessinger's Press now. Mm -hmm. they, so it's in print. The Kessinger Out of Print Book Company, you can get it. Another one is Anna Kingswood and Maitland's book, mm -hmm. The Virgin of the World. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also in there. Mm -hmm. But the one that you can more, and ready, read, more readily get is the Nag Hammadi Library, which was dug up in 1945 because a portion of the Corpus Hermeticus is in the back of the book. And that perfect sermon of, uh, of, of Ascalipius is in the back of the Nag Hammadi Library, translated by James Robinson. Mm -hmm. Now, the original text was an Egyptian text that came, but give the, me the original source. The origi well, the original one, we, the original one um, we don't have the hieroglyphic version because, you know, the Library of Alexandria was burnt. But we do have the translated version in the Greek and Latin that was translated out of the Library of Alexandria. And that's the text I'm telling you about, mm -hmm. okay. the Hermetic text. All right. So there's more than enough stuff. The ones that you can get right offhand, you might have to order the Copenhagen's book, mm -hmm. which is the Hermetic text, which is probably the latest retranslation of the modern stuff mm -hmm. 
But also you can get the Nag Hammadi Library, which is all these original sayings of Jesus, of the Christ, let's put it that way, that's in. But a part of that Nag Hammadi Library is that same Hermetic text is in there. He said, my app will be established. And, but if you go back and get, I told you there was a guy by the name of Theodore P. Ford wrote a book called God Wills the Negro. And he explained how when the Arabs, the last invasion of Egypt, of Kemet, when the Arabs invaded. Come on, let's have a big hand for Brother Dawood. Come on. Big hand for Brother Dawood. Introducing Brother Dawood. Do we need uh, this thing? Yeah. Maybe it's, uh... Anyway, uh, we've been doing this for about uh, uh, 12 years. This May, we started out in Long Island City with uh, Dr. John Moore, who was assassinated by uh, some Harlemites and some uh, Detroitites and some Tuskegeeites. Tuskegeeites. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuskegeeites. Mm -hmm. And Okay, I just hold it. Up. Yeah, just hold it. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. And um, this May will be the 12th year. Started the Fee Foundation, uh, Foundation for the Education and Enlightenment of Dark People. Well, you see, we didn't get too far with that because obviously they're not enlightened and they certainly ain't educated. So, but anyway, valiantly, we've uh, continued on. And when we first started, you speak about the Illuminati. People would run from me. People would run from me. They stop me in the street. They say, Well, Brother Dawood, they ain't killed you yet. You ain't dead. They say, You're supposed to be dead. So, within this type of uh, movement, reformation of uh, enlightened uh, individuals that come up, a lot of confusion. Since then, you got so many folks, Delbert Blair and folks coming all over the place, and they present things the way they feel it has to be presented. Uh, just like anything else, people have different techniques, different styles, different ways they present certain information. We're just saying that you have to use your spiritual principles to use that. With that, we talk about uh, during this period, uh, Bobby, brother Bobby Hammett came out of, out of, out of Georgia uh, with a number of observations and he tends for, it's easier for black people to digest what he's saying only because he always brings a lot of books and a lot of visual aids because black people are kind of slow. So Bobby has a kind of patience to do that. <laughs> See? I don't have that kind of patience, so that's one thing I, I have to take my hat off to him, okay. is that he will take the time to go through all these books. Like I said, Dr. Clark read himself to uh, 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 read himself blind, and I think at this particular point in time, you shouldn't have to have somebody to come and give you this over and over and over, give you 19 books. Well, you want to see? The group says it here, you hear, you hear. Everybody write now. What book is that? What year was it? What publisher was it? You should be on that. But everybody got different styles. So if some people can disseminate the information better with Bobby Hammond, because he's still dealing with a style where you're dealing with a lot of the uh, intellectual uh, get this bookism and get that kind of stuff. Hey, if you get some out of it, fine. But like anything else, you're always going to have some kind of controversy. So I'll leave it at that. All we're saying is when whatever brother presents anybody else, you have to apply it to just two dogmas we always say. How does this apply to the destruction of Western civilization? And that the sum total of an origin of evil on the planet Earth is the dead world of Caucasian. And with that, uh, not so much a disclaimer, we're just trying to explain things. Uh, we're going to give you brother Bobby again. Yeah, we've been dealing a long time, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Dawood and I, um, you know, uh, 
the uh, whole AWAS factor and all that type of stuff. He was the first person to actually, first black person actually to even deal with uh, Crawley's thing. You know, even deal with Crawley's thing during that particular time. Uh, I think, uh, especially if you get the, the, the uh, interview with Clemson Brown, the one he did with Clemson Brown back in 88, and he did one with Burke too. Um, uh, like Colin Wilson say, this is some of, probably some of the, the greatest occult um, information ever given um, to break this thing down, starting from Atlantis and Lemuria on in. If you get a hold of that tape, uh, uh, if you get a hold of that tape, um, this is probably some of the uh, greatest occult stuff ever put down on the tape. Um, and, it's very, and, and, and it actually inspired me. What happened was, in actuality, um, back in 91, back in 91, uh, we used to sit up all night trying to find out how we're going to get black people out of this stuff. You know, and basically we was dealing with the physical and the mundane, and everything we would deal with, we'd come up with a common sense going, you know black people ain't going to do that shit. You know, so basically what happened was is one day I was walking through uh, a room full of people in, in a, uh, uh, a room full of people in a, in, in sitting around trying to discuss the problem, and the spirit just told me, this shit is a spiritual thing, not necessarily a mundane thing when it comes to taking this, this beast off the planet. And another brother said, hmm, it's interesting you say that because that's what the brother Dawood said also too. We talk about a spiritual thing and um, in so many words at that particular time, I think he was like one of the few people out here um, even telling people even in the Afrocentric thing that there is also another way because, you know, we had people talking about the mystery, but no one could actually ever explain the mystery because the thing about it is most historical, historians is not a cultist. And I remember going up in, in Brother Downwood's apartment, and he had this book uh, by uh, the Geiger book. Uh, <laughs> the Geiger book. Geiger is the guy who did the artwork for the aliens and all that stuff. So he had Geiger's Necronomicon, and I remember uh, sister, I think it was Sister um, Myra was like, man, ooh, that was a scary looking book he had up in there. Because uh, the Geiger stuff, if you haven't seen it before and all this, it's really some spooky looking stuff and all, uh, you know, the alien stuff you can deal with, but his Necronomicon, boy, he really gets into it. So, uh, like I said, dealing with the Tarot deck, um, the, the Corali Tarot deck and all that type of stuff, this stuff was actually unknown and stuff until Dawood introduced this stuff, Brother Dawood introduced this stuff. Um, like I said, most of the people who came and presented um, the information presented it from a mundane or uh, physical level, including, it's, it's even the same thing with uh, Steve Coakley. Um, he could tell you about the Illuminati, but I don't think that he ever actually um, dealt with uh, the occult realm. So also, all of a sudden, when you when you see these white people dealing with this stuff, and you don't study the occult, you'll think that everything in the occult is evil, and the occult means only that which has been hidden, uh, only that which has been hidden. So uh, to no further ado, what we want to do right now is we want to give the uh, Ancestor, some I, I, uh, Clemson Brown rode off with my um, with my suitcase with all my stuff in it and all. And I had my little rum and all the stuff to do the actual ritual. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically call out the O'Shea, our shades and stuff. So we're gonna kick this thing off with the Vodun energies, and I just do it off the top of my head. You know, you give the Ashe, and I guess uh, um, uh, well, we can just hold on one minute. I guess we could just take some water and uh, All right. just set it right here. I get there. That'll be it. I got a big jug somewhere up under here. And all right. And that's enough. They uh, <coughs> that's enough also too. That's cool too. You know, uh, you want to light them, brother, and just you know, do some things and also, you know the deal. We're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the uh, the arches. Uh, give give the voodoo and energy the actual power. So for no with no further ado, we're gonna start off with Ishu Elegba, who's the open up the opener of the gateways and stuff. And we're gonna actually deal with that tonight also too. So Ishu Elegba. Ashe. Razuli. Ashe Gatoedo. Ashe Zaka. Ashe Alafi. Ashe Namawalawedo. Ashe Bridget. Ashe Rafa. Ashe Rasha. Ashe Adenwergi. Ashe Bafaman. Oku Pirelli. Ashe Ushingo. Ashe Razuli. I say what gay? I say Papa gay. I 
declare at war on the United States government and the cracker and everything else on this particular planet, and eventually humanity itself, for those people that know what I'm talking about. And so this is actually a manifesto to, it's time for at least me to shit or get off the pot. So basically, I, was, I received a certain amount of power. Um, I couldn't do nothing up until this time. I hit it and it was dead on the money, and I will go into this tonight. But as a result, I'm not going to use this shit for personal gain. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, no, personal gain, I mean, and, and I'm talking about as far as money and stuff, and God knows I sure, sure as hell need it. Um, you know. But um, this power came, and this power came for one thing and one thing only. And that is to go to war. Fuck the dumb shit. So basically, uh, is uh, um, to go to war, and I will go into this, and I will explain what this is. Also, I will explain what this is. is am I transmitting right? Uh, I got you on the open mic. Mm. Okay, okay, you can okay, hear straight. So uh, I will go into this magical adventure um, of this record of magical operations that transpire between the years of let's say 1994, actually between, I mean, the last 10 years, but basically the real certain effort to do this between the years of 1994 and now. And uh, so basically what we're talking about is, I'm, I'm, this is a celebration because we hit gold, but I'm saying in actuality, um, I found a breakthrough and a contact from the outer dimensions to learn how to kick this cracker straight in his ass. And that's what we're talking about doing. Uh, all bullshit aside. Because, and I, and I will get into this and all, because we stand to lose by the end of 2001, if we let it go to 2001, we stand to lose just about all the Africans off of the continent. That's right. Now, they're talking about 75,000 cases a month dying from AIDS. That's 900,000 cases a year. Now, um, I work for Outreach, which was, they pass out condoms in the ghetto. I worked for the shit about a week until the spirit told me, hey, if you're going to spread AIDS, put it in the condom. Mm -hmm. So I worked for about a week back in 91. You know what I'm saying? Back in 91. Uh, because they was paying our ass good money. So why the hell are they going to pay us good money to pass out, you know? So I worked for about a week and got about a check out of it. But they told us something at the little retreat we had. You know, they'll have these retreats, like once a year. It just so happened when I got on, the retreat was the damn week after I worked. So I went to the retreat. And they tell you if you see any AIDS case or you see any case, always, like if you got one person, always add nine more to that person. So I always count nine times. So we know that the government is only going to give you a third of what's actually going down. Whereas in actuality, if he's saying it's going to be 900,000 dying, somebody do the math, nine times 900,000, uh, so you got a calculator or something. 2700,000. Huh? 2700, that's 2700,000. Now, that's 2700,000 on the AIDS alone. That's not including UNICEF reports of 5 million children dying from famine a year that they kill. That's not including 5 million babies, infants. That's not including gang warfare that they, they, they started. You see what I'm saying? That's not including famine to kill adults and all the other stuff. That's just in the AIDS department alone, 2,700,000. You see, that's just one area. Meanwhile, we know that they only have to give you a reason, and that means that they can wipe the whole continent off. And the reason why is because we as black people, and not necessarily you in here, but the majority of us, suffer from a brain atrophy, which means that our minds don't work. And what we have, after, we have to even question whether we have been thinking the last 130-something years from Emancipation Proclamation, which was 100 and. 30 years in 95, so the last 135 years, we must even think and see what we were even using thought at all, or what we was basically running off of was basically instinct, emotion, 
And then the white boy is not the specimen to base whether you are thinking on a rational level based on having him as a model because he is a grown up juvenile delinquent. So that means that we are doggone primary schoolers. But what we're saying is we got to even think whether what we even call thought itself. You see what I'm saying? That we probably haven't thought since they put our ass on the boat, knock us in the head. And we literally have to push the envelope and say, am I really functioning on the normal level? You see what I'm saying? We must rebel against all comfort zones. We must question happiness. And we must rebel against happiness. Because it's your pursuit of happiness to get your ass in trouble. We must rebel against finances. Now, I'm not saying that you got to go and get some diapers and walk around with a big ass stick. But I'm talking about this mentality. This mentality that I got to get all of this commercial shit just to be human is out of the question. You see what I'm saying? We're talking about bare basics. We got to rebel against what we even call being human. Because obviously our, uh, uh, our uh, explanation of what is human is based off of what some European taught. We don't know. We don't know what our mind was previous to the European's mind. Because we know we have his mind now. We have to question everything. We even have to question love. What the fuck is that shit? And because the black woman is failing miserably at finding that motherfucking superficial love, then you gotta reject that shit. And maybe pain and suffering is the only clear and true thing that is on this planet. You said, oh, that's some crazy shit there. Yeah. So let's say, reject love, reject humanity, reject happiness, even reject black people. <laughs> then you ask the question, wait a minute. You said, but this is insane. Yeah, it would be insane if you were a human. But let's say that you are God or some entity rejecting those things that I call a characteristic that make you human wouldn't be such a bad idea if you was God and somebody told you your, your ass and told you that you were human. You understand where I'm coming from here? You see the concept? Now all the ancient mythology says that at one time you were advanced entities. Rulers of the omniverse. So the things that I just told you, the things that fundamentally make you human, now, if you were God, it wouldn't be no problem rejecting that shit. It's only when you are told that you are a doggone human, which in this case, obviously, the God thing has got to register up because we fail miserably at being human. At least now, shit can't work for us. Right? We the masters of screwing up everything. So if things don't work for us, that means in actuality, they're not supposed to work for us. And we must even question the very existence of reality. That's what the Matrix told you, question reality. Right? These are the things that we have to get our mind on a certain level. Because nothing seems to work. We'll go to lecture after lecture. And yes, everybody comes before you. The comprehensive plans that the black scholars and everybody has, all of them are right. They do work. Common sense, they make common sense. You know what I'm saying? But they don't apply to us. They might apply to some younger race of people, but not us. And that we, we must go and we must try to find what applies to us. And obviously what applies to us is not in the realm of human existence. And if you eliminate everything that you think makes you human, then your ass is free. What's that, brother? So, what you said, everything that is, that is part of our creation. Speak up, speak up, can't hear you. I'm saying, 
before we can physically do it. And we're not talking about the masses of the people. So don't think, like Connick said, we can't tell the masses about it. I said, no, we got to reject moralism. He said, you can't tell them, you know, in the conference, right. you can't tell black people to uh, accept, um, um, uh, reject communist, uh, 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 moralism. I said, first of all, I'm not talking to black people. I'm, this is not a black leadership conference. This is a conference for the conscious people that have just trying to get a grasp on this thing because you're the only motherfucker that is. Everybody else, you can hang it up. Ain't no each one teach one, and we ain't gonna take it to no streets. That's right. You are the best there is, and the gods to come back is you in this room. Okay. Not out there in the street. So we're not talking to them. I wouldn't dare go and tell a nigga on the street that you must reject, reject moralism. <laughs> I'm talking to you. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking to you. But I wouldn't dare be a fool to call myself a black leader. You know what I'm saying? Lead who? Right. A bunch of niggas that I don't like? <laughs> we even have to question whether we like each other. And because innately we don't like each other, there's a reason for that. Maybe that's spiritual, the reason why you don't like each other. Oh, we got to do the unity. You know, all the same old rhetoric, but why don't you like each other? Because your spirit is rebelling against human existence. Now, if you're rebelling against human existence, I don't suppose to like you. I suppose to like your soul on the inside and the freedom of your energy and your soul is going to another existence. But anything human, I suppose to rebel against him because we're the only people that hate each other. We're the only people right for this fucking task to get the fuck out of here. Think about it. So we just broke up a whole lot of damn laws here. Everything that we say is wrong with us is good. We don't like each other. Let's deal with that. Why don't we like each other? Because we've been on the planet as humans about 13 billion years. So we are tired of being human. And now it's to go to the next paradigm shift. No, no, no more shit than what the Bible said. The good Christians. This is my home. I'm not I'm just passing through. The flesh is weak. You see what I'm saying? So now, if we don't supposed to be here, if a caterpillar don't supposed to go into a cocoon to become a damn caterpillar, but supposed to become a butterfly, then the caterpillar has to hate the goddamn caterpillar. Because it don't supposed to be a caterpillar anymore, it's supposed to be a butterfly. You get it? We've done the fucking caterpillar thing, the cocoon stage, for 13 billion years. Now it's time to metamorphosize into a new reality. A new monster, a new demon, a new thing and everything that you're scared of in the movies. But from the demon perspective, it's very superior. Like on the on, on, on um, Hellraiser 2, when he met up with Leviathan, he said, to think I hesitated. You get where I'm coming from here? It's only if you're thinking like a damn human. But we're talking about two lives and up to you that we ain't going to be able to take the cracker off the planet physically. All you got to do is get the movie Hunt for Red October. That's a movie that made it give you a reality check. Might ever saw Hunt for Red October. Just go back and watch that movie and see how them crackers deal. It's like Layla Africa say, this man is a warfare specialist. But he's a warfare specialist in his realm, the physical realm. We are spiritual warriors, and so therefore you can't become a physical warrior because you are a spiritual warrior. And what I'm talking about is spiritual warfare, and I'm talking about I'm going to do the shit my goddamn self if I have to. But I'll give you the method on how I'm doing it. I advise you not to fuck with this shit because you will die. But don't worry about it. I did it a month ago, and I'm here standing here talking for you. But I'll go into those endeavors, you know what I'm saying? But for the mere fact I'm here talking to you and it didn't dissolve my body, that means that the shit I did was successful to come back from the grave. Because the whole origin was to go to death. So we'll go into that. But the key in what I'm talking about here is, is we, the reason why this sounds strange because I can't come before you and give you stuff that makes common sense. Our brains do not work on common sense. You see, this is some of the greatest times in the world because we are standing before black people and we are dealing with shit that is outrageous. If it was to get out to the national public, 
And they would air this on TV, they would say, this guy is insane. But what is sanity? And, and insanity is only what you told yourself it was. That's right. <laughs> it, it, it's right. You see what I'm saying? Now, um, if Clemson Brown gets back in time to get my books out the car, I got a book called uh, Melanin People, How to Eat Them and Drain Their Energy. And it goes into how they take you and get, when they get you in them churches and, how, and, and drain your energy. It's a Luciferian group and all that stuff. Uh, so we'll get into that also when we get the book. It's going for 10 bones, but um, you need to get the book. You need to get the book and all. So now, let's go into a question and answer. Anybody, now wait a minute now, before we go on, now see, this is the thing also too, we cannot be cowards. We cannot, you cannot sit in the audience and deem this man crazy and then sit the next three hours listening to it you need to clear shit up now if you don't understand what we're talking about because that's what understanding is. You're supposed to ask questions. We're not talking about questioning anything. But what we're talking about here is a new paradigm shift to get to the God realm. And the God realm means it's got to be anti-human. We have done the human thing. You understand what I'm saying? We've done the human thing. I'm telling you, we are on the brink of whipping this motherfucker ass. We, we, we have made this shit, and we have made this shit, and, I, and, 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 and so tonight is a manifesto to say that I'm going on the offensive of declaring war on the United States government, white people, the European powers, and all black people who want to stand with white people, and eventually humanity itself. That's right. We, we're talking about so, what I'm saying is that, okay, I've come before you the last, I came, I, I started speaking here uh, in February of 94, that was the first time I spoke in New York. So, we always talk about the future and what's going to happen in the future. So I'm quite sure you're saying, man, we heard this shit before. We heard you come and say that this stuff is over. <laughs> now this is 2000. But now I'm telling you that the shit is on. And I'm going to go into my endeavors and my magical thing and what I hit and crossed over, we're going to go through all of that tonight also, too. But first of all, let's go to some hard copy just to see how Cracker is rolling on this thing. First of all, that Ilion shit. Little Ilion ass. <laughs> now, first of all, you got to understand, number one, it's, number one, it is a form of mind control. It's twofold. It's mind control to distract you. But on the other hand, it's a great big ritual going on. Yeah. Moses was fished from the water. They got him up out of the water. They showed the Ten Commandments. One week, they raided on Easter to go get young Elion's ass the next week. Now come on, the cracker don't damn do nothing on his holidays. Or he'll go home for the damn, you know, one, day you can, one thing you can set your clock to. On his holidays, he ain't gonna do shit. Cause he know that's the time that we gotta indoctrinate people. So he'll come back on Monday, not to fuck with his holidays. You see what I'm saying? So, but on Good Friday, which consists of this shit, you see what I'm saying? Leading on into that Saturday, they made the offensive on the ass. And that was a ritual. Anytime they go in on Easter, and they showed the Ten Commandments the week before, usually it falls on Easter weekend. You see, but anytime they go in on Easter, you see, that's the resurrection of the Christ child. He wasn't white. He was a white Cuban, but he got some little mixed up, contaminated blood in him, has a white man say, you know, a nigga is a nigga. Although he ain't one of us, don't get me wrong. Because there ain't no blacks in no fucking little Havana. You know, the little white. You see, he just wanted to, yeah, right, but still, yeah, they know that by him not being total mutant, that'll do for the Christ, because the Christ got to be something other than a mutant. Okay? So this is a ritual going on, and they got everybody locked in. First of all, I was kind of happy. Crackers come over here. Now, we know if the white man come and say, uh, give him up today. <laughs> 
and you disobey their orders and you black, they'll be in there at night to get this right. shit. Right. So I figured there was a million to, to, to wait two weeks. They ain't never gave a nigga no two weeks now. <laughs> you, when, that, when that judge say, you got 10 days to get out, now you might, it might be a day that the sheriff might have slept too late or some kind of shit, but on a certain day, I know down in Georgia, they sent you, it's different up here, because Georgia's still a penal colony. They sent your shit out on the street. You see what I'm saying? So they were lenient, they were lenient actually on this Ilion thing. But it was all a big ritual. Uh, a uh, vernal equinox, spring, uh, 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 a vernal equinox, which is spring equinox ritual. You see what I'm saying? They didn't find a motherfucker on damn Thanksgiving. Come on now, get the hell up out of here. They find somebody, now isn't it interesting that they find him on Thanksgiving and then they resurrect him on Easter, two holidays, come on now. We saying that the whole shit is set up and Castro is the only thing too because he ain't nothing but a government agent. He showed you that when he bucked dance for the dog on Pope. I know you crazy. Hmm? I know you crazy. Huh? I know you crazy. Oh, please, come on now. We not now. Come on now. We can't get emotional here now. No, we know damn well. Let me tell you something, so we can not be funny with this damn mess. They got the real revolutionaries. They don't never show you on TV. They done killed 400 African leaders since the 1950s, and we don't even know about it. For the mere fact they stubborn and cast throw down your throat. You best believe Castro was in on the shit from the get-go. Don't let, now come on, we can't be funny with this damn mess here now. Look, didn't they kill a lot of African leaders on the continent from the 60s and the 50s on up? Did you ever hear about them? No. You be 50 and somebody will tell you about some black leader that died in 1960 and you don't even know about it. But a mere fact they give you Castro, that was a doggone diversion and everything in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? Communism and capitalism, what in the fucking same? That's right. You see? Che Guevara ass dead. You see? You see? You see, so the point I'm trying to make here is this whole shit with Castro now, well, just to make a long story short, he might have had some noble cause in the beginning. We know it was hooked up with the whole Yoruba thing, but also Castro start, was over there trying to, after he let the Yoruba thing take him to power, supposedly. This is where I'm saying, do you know Castro was over there and he tried to destroy the, U, the Yoruba priesthood? That's right. Yeah. Come on, the dumb shit. You ain't, he, that's right. Castro was over there trying to outlaw Santa real. So we should not be funny with this damn shit because he set up with some damn Mal Malcolm X and some hotel guy down the street. That don't mean shit. We talking about, these people don't give you a revolutionary person that you can latch on to that's the real shit. Never. They got people on the planet right now you don't even know about. They got white people right now that you don't even know about. And you think that they got Castro and they got all these crackers and that whole shit going down, it ain't a part of it? Then this asshole go and send three little children, some little black children, little black boy. I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell you doing sending some little black kindergarten children? Yeah, I don't give a fuck who he is as long as the room full of toys. He showed that shit. <laughs> he showed that shit. He was crying and shit. You know, the, the, the week before, he, he on the video talking shit. Pop, 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 pop. I didn't want to go back to Cuba. Pop, 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 pop. You, you, I didn't want to go back to Cuba. Just talk, he was a little Ileana just talking shit. They done coached him. He all pop, 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 pop. You want to go back to Cuba. The next day, we did bust up in there and get his ass. He up there with his papa grinning. Because they had a whole plane full of toys. You know, coming in there and broke his little race car bed and that other family shit. <laughs> toys of us outfitting him. You know a damn child. Do you know his daddy? Now he's figuring out, I'm concerned daddy because ain't no toys, but daddy plus toys? Fuck them niggas. <laughs> you know that shit. Why he was grinning? The government saying to set that nigga out with a whole bunch of toys. From the Disney World? All that stuff.
what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say this whole thing is a fiasco, and uh, what's the name is in on the shit? Castro. He in on it. You see? Oh, let's put it this way. Let me show you how things go. This might have been a noble person that was over there in the 60s. But we got to even question whether that's even Castro now anyway. Because Cloning, they didn't have it since 1945. They could have slipped in there and killed that nigga ass a long time ago. So now he walked dancing with the Pope. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the last person to let up in your shit is the Pope. <laughs> you see, the Pope, you see, so I'm just saying this whole thing is a form of a, uh, this thing is a form of a, uh, of a, a government conspiracy. And we can't be emotional enough to buy to think that what's on that TV set is really what's really going on. Like that's some real shit. If it's some real shit, it ain't on TV. TV is for deception at all time. Didn't biography do a damn thing on Castro? Let me tell you something. When the Jewish a and &E Network do a biography on your ass, you government agent. You see what I'm saying? They did one on Firecon. You know that nigga called Billy Graham up a month ago or two months ago and apologized to Billy Graham? Mr. Louis Farrakhan called Billy Graham up and apologized, said, I'm sorry about talking shit about white people? Billy Graham. That nigga called Billy, not uh, the ultimate. You know you done buck dance to the up to umpteenth. Fifth, the fifth power. <laughs> you call Billy Graham? He called Billy Graham up the first of the year and apologized for talking shit about white people? What? Oh, Farrakhan. What? You can take it or let it alone, as he used to say. <laughs> and the whole thing with the whole thing that went down and all. Uh, uh, the whole thing that went down. You, you, but we, 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 everybody should know now. Conscious people and people with common sense should know now. Homeboy been so loud. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Wallace Dean. One thing about CIA Wallace. Wallace don't come nowhere near your ass now unless you even down on his party. See what I'm saying? He don't come nowhere near your ass. You see. So these are things that's actually going on. What we have now is we have a turn of a culture. This basically. Let me explain something to you. Um, about 30 years ago to 40 years ago, Uncle Tom used to be a person in the community. You had one every 100 people, or one every 90 people, and they were like a social pariah. He the Uncle Tom. This is the, you know, he was, he was, the, he was the outsider. He was the persona non grata. You know what I'm saying? He was the, he was the minute, or uh, he was the exiled, but he was the complete minority, he or she, who was the Uncle Tom 30 years ago. Nobody even wanted to be labeled an Uncle Tom 30 years ago. Now, Uncle Tom is the paradigm, it is the racial identity. It is the, minority, it is the majority, and now the conscious brothers and sisters are somebody who's just black aware, you know, aware, black awareness is now the social pariah, the persona non grata, the exile, the minority. They flipped the script where Uncle Tom is now the racial identity. There is no such thing as a black race, it's just Toms and Thomasinas. Uncle Tom is what, what the race is now. Tom Bill. So Uncle Tom is the majority of every nigga you see. And the class now is the clandestine, persona non grata, the cancer, the lepers. You get it? 30 years ago, you was pointing your finger at the other time. Now, no one wants to be named, labeled black and conscious. Oh, you doing that black thing. Yeah. So they had flipped it. Now, Uncle Tom is the paradigm. It is the thing to be. You see? Now, you can sell out and nobody don't even miss no sleep over the shit. Because everybody's doing it. And it's called Korea. 
education and what we, you know, or what we call education. Success, or what they call now uh, prosperity, um, 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 inspirational prosperity. You see, all this bullshit. Now they're doing the whole census thing. Now number one, they're doing this census thing, number one, to see how many black people they killed in the 1990s. <laughs> and how many black people that they need to kill to make the damn shit right. Now you know that any time all the commercials on the census is black, even got a damn census paper talking like a black person, we should be offended by that shit. Or they think about you like you were just a damn fourth grader. They said, no, we just we know, because you know, obviously the children is not the one to sell it, putting out the uh, census. They are saying, we are thinking that grown people in their 50s, their 40s, and their 30s, they will literally get a kick out of a census form talking. Ooh, did you feel me out? <laughs> this is a, you in, this, this is the year 2000. You were world class people. This is a blatant insult. To say that in actuality, you a 40 year old rusty ass nigga or rusty ass woman and you walking by to go get you some damn beans off the stove and you go, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way they think about your monkey ass. And then all, this is what you'll get, nothing. You know, the, the nigga that gets the actor, he bombed out as an actor, you know. Too many police officers or, or whatever, you know, little background shit. So they got him on the census thing, some black actor nigga. He show all these, all this building up the community, and if you don't feel this out, this is what you're going to get, nothing. Now, wait a minute, hold on now, wait a minute. We know the last 10 years, the last 10 years, they have gotten rid of every entitlement program a black person can lay down on. Yes, sure are. They done got rid of all the permanent action. They done got rid of everything. They done got rid of welfare. They got, but all of a sudden, they gonna give you something based on you filling out a census form? At least the niggas in affirmative action was building their civilization for them. That just make common sense to you want to get your slaves in on building your civilization. But they took that from your ass. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, you mean to tell me they're going to take all the entitlement programs? You know what I'm saying? Construction workers, this and that. And yet, then they're going to come back to you and say, if you feel this out, we're going to give you the world? And we are stupid enough to believe that after what happened the last 10 years? That's right. That's how they got the Japanese. You see? And we believe this shit? Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said two things on how this is going now, because they always kill two birds with one stone. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that he's going to give you everything, including his woman, in the last days. So when God come to kill them, to kill you too. This is a metaphor for a lot of things. Now, two things happening here. The whole reparation thing is up. That's in court now. But now, they done politely done pull out that Sally Hemings bullshit with Thomas Jefferson, and they having all kind of specials on and DNA things, and they saying that black people, your white chromosome, you got a lot of black, um, um, one nigga on there from Harvard say, I, I traced my damn roots back to Europe and Nigeria, but my male, but the male stuff went to Europe. So what they gonna do is on the, on, on the little thing, they gonna come up and say, you can't get no money from some reparations because you ain't 100% black. You European. That's one way they're doing it. Then again, on the other hand, I couldn't give a shit about you all getting some money. That's right. See what I'm saying? Damn some fucking reparations. Like I told you before, uh, like I told you before, is that what it all boiled down? You got kicked in the ass in slavery, your mama got raped, and that's all it boiled down to is a billion dollars? So you can go to the mall? What's that, sister? If they come up with that, wouldn't it be fair for us to come up and say, then you owe us for raping our grandparents, our great-grandparents? But the point is, it is here. Humane-wise, you shouldn't want to put a price tag on the rape of your grandparents. Do you think if you go kill 
one of their down. You can have a billion dollars. You go kill that little white bald head child in that damn crib. You can have a billion dollars. He say death penalty. And you can't buy your way out of that shit. See what I'm saying? If you a nigga, we got a price tag. That's what Joseph Cipollone says in his book. That Joseph Cipollone in his book, Make a Sister of Madness, What's Going On? And um, on the website, Joseph Cipollone say that the true beings will do anything for money. That's right. I see, see we trying to be humane here. Somebody break in your house and rape your little boy, stick your TV up your little boy's rectum. You mean to tell me that this person can compensate you with a billion dollars? That's what I'm trying to say. What's the difference between now, if they did it now, because they rape little boys, raise them for pedophilia, and the ancestors before. The point I'm trying to make here, too. Don't go by how you feel. Go by, no, 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 don't, no, no. Go by the spirit. We talking spirit. See, see, we'll go to church. We'll go to church. And we'll believe in what the spirit say. But then the cracker can pass out money. And we just disregard the spirit. And we're trying to get up out of this on a spiritual manifestation. Now, I understand what you're talking about now. Logically, rationally, economically, it does make sense to get paid reparations. But spiritually, your Bible says don't make no deal with the damn devil. But that's the basic fundamental Christianity. Muhammad didn't believe that. Muhammad said he wanted reparations. Mr. Muhammad believed in reparations. Mr. Muhammad put that theory out Who? about the devil. He believed in getting due pay. You said about Elijah Muhammad? Yeah. Elijah Muhammad was yeah. dealing with a system of 30 years ago. He also wrote, but he was conscious enough to write the theology of time and the fall of America. And he said, after me comes God. Now we're in the God stage and you want to get paid off. You understand why we got to destroy humanity now? See, wait a minute. First of all, what we're trying to do with this here, take a deep breath and try to understand something outside of logic and rationale. Logically and rationally and common sense-wise, it makes common sense to get paid. But we're not talking about common sense because common sense don't work for us. We talk, didn't I tell you the first that you must challenge even your own human thought? You understand where I'm coming yeah. from here? Try to think on a higher fucking level than some goddamn dollar bill. Right. Does anybody understand what the fuck I'm trying to say here? Yeah. Yeah. You the richest people already on the top. How much more shit out tomorrow you need to buy? How many more cars you need to buy? <laughs> See, the money's going out. listen to me. <laughs> this is the problem. There's something based on inspirational theology to make you feel good. What I'm trying to teach you is to be a God. What you ever see Godzilla? You think Godzilla give a damn about a motherfucking truck full of money? What are you gonna do, sit up at a bar? I'm Godzilla, I'm drinking some damn cognac. Hey baby, you wanna drink? Think on a higher level. This is what we do. We talking spirit here. Don't go by how you feel because they have tampered by the way you feel. Yes. Come on. Do you know that the elite don't even live off money? That's right. That's right. Tell it. Don't need it. And you mean to tell me that if the white man can produce your happiness based on economics, that means that the white you saying to me that the white man is God. And we trying to get our people out of this shit. See, we got to start processing. See, what happened is when we're talking about getting to a high level, I said that we must challenge the question, even our thought patterns. That means that data has to process. Now, let me explain what I'm talking about here. I first started out telling you that they're getting ready to kill 
Yeah, I told you that by the end of next year, there won't be no Africans left on the continent. You have to process that. Then I came with the reparations, and you asked the question based on the reparations. Well, up against them doing mass genocide, reparation is foolish. And the only reason why he is even to the point, yeah. Glad you came. I'm straight. Okay. The only reason why he is even to the point is because, uh, okay, we, we, we wrote it. We wrote it. Uh, the only reason why he is even, this is what I'm looking for right here. Oh, nah. We need to get a God some real deal juice. Then, so you might as well go on down there and get your check. 
<laughs> but don't say that this is based on compensating you for your ancestors. That's a fucking abomination. Your ancestors died because of money and property. And you mean to tell me that? That they died for is going to be your redeeming factor? That what put you in slavery can never be your redeemer. But we have to dig beyond. See, the thing about us now, we are unprincipled. We didn't have a lot of money 50 years ago, but we had principles. We done lost principles. We done came and we done gone savage. We done came and we got the white man stink on us. So we think like the white man now. You see what I'm saying? We think like the white man now. That's why all your black leaders can sell out a billion people based on money. You see what I'm saying? Now, so they're going to try to say that ain't nobody in this doggone land is pure black and we're all one ancestry because we all got this genetic link based on slavery. Number two, that's one thing based on the whole reparation, but what they're really trying to do is that they're trying to save their ass by trying to say, if somehow we can prove to the gods that we got some black in us, then maybe we can be saved. But the saving ain't got shit to do with the physical body. We're talking about the soul. And that which don't have a soul cannot go to the next realm. So it don't matter what kind of bargain you got. If you ain't an original, and in order to have a soul, you got to be from the original point of origin. That means that at one time in the universe, you were a star. Now anybody that came about on the earth plane after that time, don't qualify. We're talking about you. They're not capable of, even if they were good enough and we wanted them to go. They cannot do it. There's no way a dog can ever be a damn human being. It just ain't happening. You see what I'm saying? But a fucking canine got a better chance of being raised up than a fucking white man. At least we made it. We made the white man too, but at least we made that as a as a, as a form of the ecological system. Now, how many people saw the movie The Skulls? One thing about the movie, you know, they told you what time it was, but there's one key about the movie. They also showed you that the brother up in there, the one that was a police officer that ended up killing the guy then, that was the Boule. Remember now, the Boule leaves the, the, the white man of his civic duty. He was connected with what? The senator. So we come in contact with the Illuminati people. Okay, go ahead. Shit sticking on my face like this, and I'm talking to motherfuckers this shit. I said, y'all let a nigga talk for 30 minutes with some fucking paper sticking on his face. So if that happens, y'all let me know. Now. You all, you all. Okay. So they showed that that black guy in there was a Boule member also, too. But it also showed, you know, because it was another little black boy hanging out with the white boy. Then the damn white boy. Uh, he said, don't tell me you're going to join the Skull and Bones. The white boy looked at him like, see your, your, your nigga ass. And then realized he wouldn't be tripping because they killed no black guy. You know what I'm saying? But they had to put that all in the movie. But you just draw the line on what's going on. But there's one thing about that. The reason why I want to say that is this. Um, uh, the guy that wrote the book, Our Kind of People, and boastfully bragged, well, that's the same thing, boastfully and bragged, the same thing and boastfully told us that he was a doggone Boulay member. Whereas 10 years ago, that would have been unheard of because we didn't know about it until Steve Coakley unmasked it. Now we gotta give Steve Coakley credit for that because Steve Coakley is the one. He did such a good job until this is what happened. The reason why the boy on the movie, the, the book, Our Kind of People, Otis Graham or something, yeah. uh, that guy, the reason why he announced that he was a Boule member out publicly, because the Boule is no longer the conspiratorial organization that it was. 
See, what they did is this here. Steve Copeland did such a good job unmasking the boule until what happened is the boule, the real conspiratorial people, they go underground and form a new organization, and the boule just become a regular fraternal order, like the AKAs and the Deltas, you see what I'm saying, or the Elks Club or whatever. You see what I'm coming from? Yes. So, because now you, you literally see them saying that this boule member, and it's out, out in the public, that means that the, the people that conspire against you, the advisors of the king, that's no longer the boule. They got a new organization that you don't know about. Same thing with the skull and bones. The guy unmasked the skull and bones, and really, a lot of this skull and bone information came out based on a white boy that went to Yale in 1985, started doing these reports on it. Mm. So basically what they did is they went up underground, and the skull and bones is just a regular fraternal order. But remember in the movie, they was talking about, there was about six other orders, and they showed one with a snake on it, but they didn't tell you the name of it. So they got other orders that they can go and be up under, but that would just be a fraternal order. You see, so that's a, once one is, one, once one is exposed, they let that just become a regular institution, and the other one goes up underground. So when you're looking for a boule member now, some people that now join the boule just gonna just be regular people in a regular postgraduate fraternal order. But it doesn't mean that they're conspiratorial people, because the simple fact that real conspirators and even going deeper underground. You see what I'm saying? So that's how that goes. Uh, you see. Uh, so now they got the movie Gladiator. They started today. Now, first of all, two things happening. Number one, they're trying to do the Christ story, a slave. But basically, it's the same being hurt. Her and Spartacus combined. You get Spartacus and Ben Hur, I'm quite sure this movie is going to be resemblance to that. But also, it's about that whole Roman order again. And so if they can reestablish the Roman order, which is white supremacy, doing this lineup, the movie will be their ritual. But now the movie is going to have some esoteric part, esoteric part relating to you too. So go get Ben Hur. Ben Hur is the black man. All the stuff that Ben Hur goes through, if you look at the stuff he goes through, it's the black man totally. And Spartacus. You see. But also on one line, they're using it for this time to reestablish the white boy as the ultimate gladiator. You see? And I think the good guy, Hyman Yunsu, or whatever his name is, he even dies in the movie, I believe. The black guy. So that's, there you go again, just like kill Jim Kelly at fucking End of the Dragon. Yeah, I never got over that shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, and it came out when I was in junior high school or elementary school, so I just thought I was young. But now every time I see it, it bothers me that they killed Jim Kelly in that movie. But what happened was, is we come to find out it was a ritual. They showed the three races, white, Asian, that represents the Arab and all that kind of stuff, and the black man, and they killed the black man. And he was better than the damn cracker. The cracker couldn't even fight John Saxon. That's right. Yeah, you got that right. That's right. So that was a damn ritual. I mean, one of the greatest martial arts movie ever. But yet, that part right like there, I can't get past that damn part to this day. And I thought, because I was young, I saw that shit. Where I said, "Well, this is some fucked up shit." Yeah. They gonna kill Jim Kelly ass. You know what I'm saying? You know, I became a fan after that. Well, give me some three the hard way, some Black Belt Jones, or Black Samurai, whatever. But anyway, the whole thing with the whole uh, Gladiator is another part that they released at this particular time based on this lineup. Now this planetary lineup is, this planetary lineup is in actuality this entire, from today until the 18th, you see. So they said that the lineup today, the one on the 18th is going to be even closer. But even the one closer, they are not even nowhere perfect than the one they had in 97. The one in 97 was a real planetary alignment. These, it's like a zigzag, it's like a snake. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and ultimately, you use this energy to go on the offensive, but nature itself, by and large, cannot destroy itself. In order for this thing to be destroyed, it has to have, a, have an alien object from the outside, like a cancer, that will ultimately destroy it. Fortunately, that alien ob object came to the Earth when you first came on the Earth, and that alien object is your soul. 
We'll get into that also too. But still yet, this is a good time to start the offensive now. We gotta go into this tonight, and I'm gonna show you how I was able to do this thing and what I'm gonna get down with. But I advise you not to do this shit. You like I say, don't try this shit at home. Please don't try this at home. Because it might burn down 16 city blocks. <laughs> Kill everybody in your family and your state. But I was able to survive it about a month ago. So I guess I need to carry this shit out. So I'm going to tell you what I'm getting ready to do. You see, I'm going to war. And don't need no guns or no bombs. As a matter of fact, the spirit told me today, they said they're going to try to kill you on the goddamn plane today. And here come a little rolling up a little old Learjet little shit. Wasn't even a regular plane. You know what them uh, express things? Little Learjet shit. I said, God damn, what is this? I said, well, don't worry about it. I got it covered. I already had the hookup. Got on the plane and showed up. Soon as we got in New York, they circled for 30 minutes, and the plane started shaking like this. And I said, they about to crash this shit. And I said, oh, I get it now. They didn't put the regular commercial flight. They only about 50 people on the plane, so they said, we won't miss them crackers. So they didn't have a big 200. I'm telling you, some stuff going down. But then again, on the other hand, if you rolling on the spirit realm, you, you exempt from all the dumb shit. You see what I'm saying? You exempt from all the dumb stuff. So we'll, we'll go into that in a few minutes and stuff. But let's go on to some other things we need to deal with right now. Um, get Wishmaster Volume 1 and 2. Wishmaster 1 and 2. The movie Wishmaster 1 and 2. Wishmaster 1 and 2. Now let me explain this. The Wishmaster is a gin, or the gin comes from the word genie. And the word genie is in a bottle. You ever heard of the genie in the bottle? And you take the genie out of the bottle and you aren't the wishes? Well, that's an alchemical, that is an alchemical mythology. The genie in the bottle represents melanin. The bottle is the pineal gland. And when you unleash the genie in the bottle, you get the wishes or you get the glory. So the genie is short for gin. Gin becomes, you see, then by the time, uh, by the time um, it becomes with Islam, Muhammad and them outlaw all of the ancient Persian and Zoroastrianism, ancient mythology of the Kushite Arabia. So this stuff is some much more advanced stuff that later on was degraded and turned into something evil. You getting it? So the genie in the bottle is basically, when you unleash this spiritual melanated energy, you get the wishes. Three wishes, three, three glands, and three major glands in the brain. Three stars in Orion's belt, three crosses on Calvary, three pyramids in Giza Plateau, three spears of the Kabbalah, Jubilee, 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 three wise men. You see what I'm saying? Three blind mice. What's a blind mice? The three blind mice is the three pineal, the three glands in your head. It's blind to the physical world because you need these two eyes, but it is, it can see in the spirit world when you tap into it. And old George Clinton and them did a damn song, Three Blind Mice on Your Ass. Dropping this shit. Now, that's what that's talking about, the three glands in the head. Anyway, get, the, get that movie, because they said, told her, he said, if I get enough people to make a wish, and the last movie was really dropping. She said, what will happen? He said, if you make your final wish, not sure you're going to kill him and save the world. It's always a ritual going on. He said, the gins walk the earth again if we do this wish. You are the gin. The gene just means your inner self, one's own genius. You see, all this stuff that was outlawed, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism outlawed the inner nature of man. You see, okay, let's go on. Now, do you hear this, hear this thing? See, this is why we got to take the earth off. We got to really use this time to make a stand and a manifestation and all and make the spirits do this. And it can't be done, you see, at, uh, uh, at all. So now, they said now the other night on um, uh, Politically Incorrect that from 1776 to 1990, 214 years, 214 years, it took them to get a million people in prison. It took them 214 years to get a million people in prison. 
and it only took them 10 years in the 1990s to double the million that it took them 214 years to do. It only took them 10 years to double that, to 2 million. And you best believe that's because they throw all our behinds in jail. You understand where they're coming from? Now, um, we find out some other information based on the uh, melatonin. I want to get this right quick. Now, now listen to this. Because see, y'all all right? Yeah. Okay. This is the new book, Melanin People, How to Eat and Devour Their Energy. White New Superior Group Reveals Their Secrets. Uh, reveals Their Secrets. Also, we have some more of these occult technology of power left over also, which how the white boys say, how you put a nigga in slavery. If you give them freedom and make them think that they are in charge, you can immediately put them in slavery. Now, but I want to show you something. I slept on this book for a while. Um, I slept on this book for a while. Um, you see. Um, I slept on this book, and number one, the reason why we give bibliography and books is because the government can exploit you if you don't give bibliography and books. And if you come up and you run off at the doggone mouth, the government, they already know that the people out here don't never believe what we're saying. They're only going to believe what the people say on TV. But they don't mess with you if they know you give them bibliography. This is the difference between them exploiting Farrakhan and not even mentioning Dr. Ben's name. Because they know if you give a person a book, you can convince that person that night that that nigga on TV is crazy, but if that person can go to the library and read the book and turn to the back and get other bibliography, he can start thinking for himself. You see? So in actuality, you should always appreciate somebody coming and giving you bibliography, even if you don't even go and buy the shit. You at least know you got a paper at your house that's got a reference that you can go to in the future if you want to learn something about it. But at least you can quote that shit to some no good niggas that's gonna try to dispute you, even if you ain't got the book in your house. You just quote what Dr. Ben and them say. Go get Christianity before Christ, John G. Jackson. You see? Let them go get the shit. <laughs> That's why Phil Donahue couldn't do nothing with um, Dr. Dr. Jeffers. They got him on there, they started to do that shit. They thought it was going to be some thing like some crazy person, and he came with the ammunition. And at the end, Phil Donahue had dropped his head. Because <laughs> you ain't food, food, dealing with no food. Now, here's a book called Melatonin Your Body's Own Natural Wonder Drug. Now, I slept on this book by. Um, Russell J. Reader, Ph.D., and Joe Robinson. Russell D. J. Reader, Ph.D., and Joe J. O. Um, Robinson. But Reader is R-E-I-T-E-R, Reacher, a writer, Reacher, I guess, I don't know. You know, I read it like it says in Africa, Reader. The white boy say W to E is silent, so that would be Reacher. You know what I'm saying? Because he's got a bastardized language trying to justify that shit. And your brain is telling you, you know, so this is called melatonin, your own body natural wonder drug, by Russell J. Reader, Ph.D., and Joe J. O. Robinson. Now, um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to read something up in here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clear up some shit, because see, there's some black doctors that got some excuse that the white boy gave them. And they got this, this, this excuse, but I'm going to read something here in a minute. Number one, I want to say this. Do you know that the melatonin pills that they got, guess how they figured out how to make them? First of all, they initially put the melanin and the B12 in the crack cocaine to get it to you so it can get up in your brain and you can't ever get rid of it. So after they were successful with that, they said, hey, wait a minute. We have discovered a way on how we can break these things down in pill form and give them to regular white people. So therefore, based on the, the doing this initially with the crack cocaine, they came up with the melatonin pills. Because even cocaine, they say if you originally see it, it's black. And then they bleach it into what you got white like that. Now, this is the shit. 
Synthetic. Huh? Synthetic California. Uh, yeah, but this ain't no, this is stuff here. It's straight up from synthetic niggas walking down the street. They <laughs> that feature. Because this book proves it once and for all. This book proves it. Now, number one, everything that this book says that melanin cures, we got. So the book proves that we don't catch no disease at all. Everything is administered to us by the doctor. Now, anti-aging, we know that. Prevents AIDS. We got AIDS. But we know that they're giving us the bullshit and telling us that whole thing, you know. They're giving us, they're killing us and calling it AIDS, but they say because melanin prevents this so-called HIV. Built-in protection against cancer. Niggas got cancer. Now, you hear what I'm saying? They're saying that there is a cure for cancer, AIDS, built-in thing against diabetes. Niggas got plenty of diabetes. That means if melanin is the cure, that means that they got to be giving you, they have to be giving you um, this shit. They got to be giving you that. Because what they're saying, that melanin, Cures all of that. It says, it says, it works against PMS. It's a birth control. The niggas got a lot of babies. And extending sexuality in later years. There you go with the Viagra shit. I mean, I told you that the Viagra was made this way. Well, they're saying it right here in the book. So their result after this book came, you can get it now, it's for like six dollars, well twenty-two dollars, but you can get it now for like six dollars. It's the same book. We're right. We're right. Now the thing with diabetes is this. Where? Right. Right. Any place sells. You can get this on any Barnes and Noble, any of the places. This book here. When I was a child, I thought the only people got diabetes was born with this shit. Then they come out and saying, you got diabetes since you're overweight. Now they got niggas 25 just coming down with shit overnight. Now there's a diabetes epidemic that's breaking out in America amongst black people. You see what I'm saying? And nobody else. That means in actuality, when you go to the doctor, what they do is they shut down your pancreas. Then they put you on insulin that keeps your pancreas shut down. Insulin destroys the pancreas. You see what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, but they saying in here, melanin cures diabetes. That means every disease has to be given to us based on the melanin, based on the doctor. They go into, now it's interesting, remember I told you about last year, the, the summer solstice, uh, the summer solstice, uh, <laughs> that they had a, uh, uh, first of all, we, can, we got a cure for all that too. We give, give you a cure for the people who got these diseases. You can write your own ritual out, and I'll go through this in a few minutes on how you can do this to get rid of any kind of shit. Uh, and all. But then I told you last summer during the summer solstice, they came out with um, these sodas, yeah, um, and they put these sodas in the black community, sure. 12 packs, 99 cents, oh, niggas had two and three baskets. Chocolate well, in here. <laughs> huh? Chocolate well, I'm just saying, any sodas, period. In here, they talk about the number one thing, one of the number one things that shuts down melanin is soda. Joe, Mountain Dew, Tab, orange juice, I mean, some kids orange, Dr. Pepper, Diet Dr. Pepper, Pepsi Cola, Diet Right, Pepsi, uh, uh, Coca Cola, 7 Up, Sprite, Diet 7 Up, Fresca, High Group, and some kids, I mean, goddamn, that's everything. So, they know that the soda shuts it down. Number two, Sleep deprivation. Remember I was talking about the sleep the last time? Sleep deprivation. Not getting enough sleep <clears throat> shuts it down. Fluorescent lights. And we understand why I couldn't. And they got a whole thing in here based on <clears throat> certain, they got a whole thing in here based on certain um, uh, 
electronic devices, just about everything in the society shuts down melanin. So the white boys built a whole civilization just to shut down melanin. Now, in here also, they go in and they give you foods high in melanin, you know, that tryptophan that they had to take off the market, because, you know, turkey is in that, spirulina, seaweed, soy nuts, cottage cheese, it says high in melanin, so, um, chicken liver, pumpkin seeds, turkey, tofu, watermelon seeds, all that, um, almonds, peanuts, brewer's yeast, malted milk, uh, um, they got ice cream and yogurt. I don't know, they must be um, enhanced white people shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I do happen to know sometimes stuff like yogurt, anything you got like a, a fungi, and stuff like any kind of fungus, like to uh, mushrooms and shit like that, any kind of fungus is great with melanin because that's what melanin is. It's an it's a ancient fungus left over from the time when we were gods. We'll get into that type of stuff. So that stuff usually uh, uh, does that. Um, but it's just interesting, the, the bibliography in here and the references is almost down near 20 pages long on that much stuff on how much research they're doing on melatonin. It's the number one shit around the world. Right. You see, all the research is, is based on pioneer research. Now, this is the key on what the damn doctor tried to play on me. I was telling him that every time you look in the, in the, in, in the uh, supermarket and you see those pills, those are black people. No, nah, that's bovine. A, a cow got a pineal gland and they get it from cows. I say, you know damn well a cow ain't walking around with that kind of melanin. Well, number one, everything on the planet has a form of melanin, including white people. But the kind of melanin and shit, that, this shit ain't coming from no cows. So, it was interesting, um, cause this book, in the chapter called the three million dollar, the three billion year old molecule, they go into the history on how the white boy tapped in melanin with Aaron Lerner at Yale University in 1953. Some say 59, this book says 53. See but book? it says when he tapped into it, they had to get melanin, and for some reason, uh, they wasn't into killing for melanin like they are now. So as a result, what happened was, they had to go out and get some cows. Now look at this. Now this, see, see the only thing the white man got to do is give you an excuse. You believe the white man. Because yeah. you programmed yeah. to accept him as the authority right. when basically he's been just a liar. Yeah. Big lie. So the only thing he has to do is say, oh, we're getting it from cows. And you go, okay. The white man say he's getting it from cows. Hey, the white man say he getting it from cows. You mistake. <laughs> no, the white man say he getting it from cows. You won't even question. You must support anything the enemy opposes and oppose anything the enemy supports. So, you know, uh, your boy, um, uh, 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 Kwame Ture told you the white man don't lie some of the time. He lies all the time. That's right. Every time. So now, in here, it says, and I quote, page 14. It says that when they went to get the cows, it took 2,500 cows to produce 100 milligrams of pineal extract. Now, 100 milligrams is a third of an aspirin, a tenth of an aspirin. You know, most, they tell you most vitamin C's, they say, if it ain't past 500 milligrams, you just will not even buy the shit. You know what I'm saying? Most everything got at least 500 milligrams. They saying that it took, do you believe this? It took 2,500 cows to produce 100 milligrams of pineal extract. They didn't even say melanin. So that means to get a shelf load in the supermarket, you would have to kill every cow in you, in, to get one shelf load in one supermarket, you got to kill every cow in the whole state of New York. And because cow is used now for damn hamburgers, they done got rid of the original human cows probably in the 1970s. And this shit here straight up cloned me. 
So therefore, anytime you clone something, you know it don't have the damn pineal extract no more. It's the 1952 cow head. So this destroys this thing that they're getting it from bovine because it took 2,500 cows just to make a damn eye drop, no, a magnifying glass full. That means that they're only getting it from black people. You see? They only get they only get it from uh, 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 black people. Now let's go on. Uh, what time is it? Uh, you got about a six o'clock. Huh? <laughs> got a half an hour. About half an hour. It's a quarter to eleven. That's why you don't mess with dairy products. Huh? Yeah, you know naturally. You know. Yeah, you know, but um, like I said, there's ways to override that shit. Also, uh, uh, there's, old, there's ways to override that also too, but you, you are right, uh, you are right about that. Now, because it's interesting that you said that because now the new lactose intolerant commercials that they got that lactate, they show on an old fine ass black woman up there. See, it ain't, ain't nothing by accident. Know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing by accident. 99% of the time, they gonna give you that old pine saw woman. You know, uh, that answer mama shit, they ain't gonna give you no, Fine ass sister. <laughs> Going places, sister. Her ass up there and they're doing that for they're trying to drive it home. But that fine ass sister can drink this lactate shit, you can too. But why would they pick the black girl for that? So that is interesting you said that type of thing also too. Now let's go on. Um, um down in Atlanta they got this thing going down with H. Rap Brown. That's gonna be the new shit. That's gonna be the new OJ thing. Mm. If it's H. Rap Brown thing. You see what I'm saying? First of all, they, they came on the news the night down in Atlanta and said, we, this guy who shot the police officer, we, we returned rounds and shot him and he fled a trail of blood. But by the time they get H. Rap Brown, they ain't got a shot on him. But all of a sudden, they're not saying that now about, you know, they, you know, they, they, they spoke too soon. But that's going to be the new thing that's going down, you know, so they can bring that like the O.J. Simpson thing and, you know, Black, Black Panther. You know, so they'll be dealing with that whole thing. And he connected with the Islam thing that already put him in the whole terrorist thing. You see? So that's the new thing that you can watch out for that they're getting ready to get down with in a few months. And it'll be nationwide. I'm just telling you to look out for it also, too. Because uh, 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 it's going to be nationwide. Let's go on. Um, let's see here. You know they're selling um, human protein in the in, in GNC. Human protein in GNC. Um, now, so you know, that means that the leftover stuff that they got from the melanin, after they clean the melanin out of the body, they pack all that stuff together and boom, they, they, that side effect shit, or the stuff, the side I had them, the scraps, they, 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 they're using that and they sell in all parts of the body. Now, let's go on. Um, since we, we, we pressed the time, I want to get into this particular science right now based on this particular warfare. So to start with this, um, to start with this, first of all, um, let's see here. Y'all all right? First of all, I want to deal with this right now. First of all, in this book, there's always two schools of thought. So Dao was right. He'll have a way of presenting some stuff. Valentine will have a way of presenting some stuff, and I'll have a way of presenting some stuff. Ultimate is just knowledge. You're supposed to at least go out and study for yourself. And by me saying don't follow what I say, I'm, I'm, I can stand up here and basically give you my side of it, and if you don't go study it, that's up to you. Now, my side of it is a little bit different. Now, this is nothing disrespectful, because we can agree as Africans to disagree. But my thing is, is based on my research, and all the research I got, is that the menstrual is normal. This is based on my research. You can take it or leave the shit alone. Now let me explain. Because most people menstrual cycle. Most people, because you are looking at it from a physical or physiological or a medical perspective, it don't make no sense. But when you look at it from a spiritual perspective, it makes all the sense in the world. It just depends on what angle you're coming from. 
Now, in this melatonin book, they tell you about melanin is also for birth control. Now, the reason why a lot of the menstrual cycle might not make no sense physically because you have to go through it now, but it makes sense astronomically because there's a 28 day cycle of the moon, 28 day cycle of the doggone menstrual. So if it's that fucked up, why is it lining up with the damn moon? Huh? Now, the way I'm gonna break it down tonight, we'll give it a little, a, 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 a little bit, a, a little better perspective. Now I can say in defense of Valentine that maybe he's right. Maybe the, the menstrual flow was not is as heavy as now, and that can, based on diet, can make sure that you have, you can gauge what kind of flow you have based on diet. I'm, I will probably agree to that. But what I'm trying to say here is, but for the mere fact that a lot of the scholars are saying that you didn't have a menstrual at all until a bad diet is some bullshit. Right. Because I got the damn Smin rights in ancient Kemet dealing with the menstrual. We got um, you, you Mauricia Eklund's book, Deal with the people in Papua New Guinea. These motherfuckers live in the rainforest. <laughs> eating leaves and branches and trees. You can't get no more nation in that shit. And they got a menstrual right. The aborigines got a menstrual right. The Africans got a menstrual right. The Egyptians, you mean to tell me that our diet was better than the Egyptians? And they got a menstrual right. And we got these menstrual rights old as back as pre-dynastic Kemet, the Typhonian line. So I want to know. You see, and I still want to know right now, uh, how many people are staunch vegetarians? I'm talking about sisters, I ain't talking about hardheads. <laughs> how many sisters are staunch vegetarians? Do you still have a period? That's what I'm trying to say. When the motherfucker gonna stop? <laughs> now, what I'm gonna explain to you now is based on when I give you this information, it'll make a lot better sense. The system had a built-in mechanism of birth control. And the built-in mechanism was when she wanted to abort spiritually, she would, could bring on her period automatically based on her biological makeup and her social condition, rites of passage, and the spiritual know-how being semi-gods. So she had the, this mechanism to bring on the menstrual cycle to avoid whenever she felt that she didn't want something to come down, because a motherfucker coming down here don't mean shit. Incarnation is the worst motherfucking shit you could ever go through. So let's not be funny with this damn mess. Ain't no God since you shit. You decided whether you want to have a baby, and if not the damn baby, because it was if it's a spirit and it's not physical, it just go to another motherfucker. That's right. That was solely up to you whether you wanted to incarnate or not. So if you decided you didn't want the baby, for whatever reason, you might have not just didn't want it. Because we weren't dealing on no moralistic bullshit based on some patriarchal bullshit. About babies being all goddamn sacred. Have one and see if that motherfucker's sacred. <laughs> now, there you go. All you gotta do, sisters, is tap into what, what reality is other than what you was taught. Fuck the dumb shit. Motherfucker waking you up four o'clock. You know? <laughs> if that's a burden or what, that's an asset or a damn liability. But we chose the time when we wanted to psychologically put up with the dumb shit. But if the life flow says this doesn't suggest the time, you could bring your period on and get rid of it. Just basically by sealing into the body. See what I'm saying? So if the missile originally was a natural birth control and you lost the science to it, and now it comes on or whatever, you don't know what's going on. 
Don't just say it's abnormal because some male, and I'm not talking about Valentine, I'm talking about the patriarchal system of Islam and Judaism to tell you that shit is unclean. It's the most sacred time you got. Because the male says some dumb shit like this, and the fucking, most of you Islamic motherfuckers, the white Arab was homosexual. They hated women. <laughs> the white Arab, the motherfucker that Muhammad had to change. The Muhammad's father was Kushite Arabs of Arabians from Ethiopia. But he had to, the whole reason why you even got a Quran, because they had to be submissive to Allah based on a savage white man. You don't supposed to even follow no damn so Quran. Right. Or no other fucking holy book to tell you to bow down right. and not become God. Right. That was for another people. That's why the shit came right. after, your, right. after you fell. Right. 6,000 BC, your human history was over. Right. If you didn't need the damn book to tell you to bear witness then, what the fuck you say? Introduce you to one of our teachers that are here for some of the lectures, uh, Brother Icky, who uh, has done two lectures and a half. The half being the uh, opening for Booker T. Right. Okay. Uh, well, brother, we're gonna have to do you next time because this is brother's here. <laughs> All right. Well. Okay. Let me. So this is brother Icky. Hey. You know, the, you know, the, that's, a, that's a lecture right there. That's I told you the people. You'll be back in about ten minutes while I deal with. What's going on out there? Okay, so this is Brother Inky, profound brother in physics. Give the brother a hand. Yeah, right. Um, last week we touched on some. Um, I was actually trying to do a lecture on my first book. I got a couple of books. Um, I have a nine-book series for the book Evolution that goes into a lot of physics but physics in a way that relates to how we live every day. Because that's the way white folks disassociate us from certain things that we need that's crucial to our survival. That it make them seem like it's going to be long-headed, drawn out, boring. I have a few people that I know that tell me they don't read because it hurts. Physically hurts. They get headaches to read books like it's crazy. And so when I was in school, physics, you know, was lame for me just because it was just like, when am I going to really use that? So we see how it works in our everyday life and we see the importance of it, you know, especially in the conscious community. We study in the science everything. You know, we're breaking this down, we're breaking that down. Oh, they got microscopes, they can use to send signals in your brain off the water dripping in your faucet and like we're just going crazy. But at the same time, it's like, you know, trains are now 250. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to go so far into outer space that we're not dealing with the issues that's every day. And there's no more of an everyday issue than how we relate to one another in the household, our families, our relationships. You know what I'm saying? Because this is where everything is at. This is where the power is at. Like we need to be building our uh, businesses out of our families. Our family should be our number one business. Everything should come out of the family unit. But we don't really have a family unit, so we have really kind of lost that science altogether. And the, uh, the way to get that science back is to, um, you know, we just have to touch on some things and make things public and, and have group discussions like this about male-female relations. You know, this is one of the most taboo subjects, male-female relations, you know. I was um, at Monday night over here at the National Black. I was doing a lecture and um, same subject, you know. And... Um, it was interesting because the first 20 or 30 minutes, it was just like you could have heard a pin drop in there. Mm. Everybody was looking at me like, what's this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking back at them like, yeah, because it's the most natural thing we do outside of breathing that nobody discusses. And it's killing us. This is the reason why we have the single homes. The single homes is why girls are sliding down poles and why cats is in jail every five minutes. You know what I'm saying? It starts with the, the man and the female. And you look at a lot of the situations, you figure people's mind is what throws them off because, like for instance, somebody would be in a relationship five, six years, man and female. The man is A, the woman is B. Or rather, let's, let's make the woman A and the man B. 
right? So now she may find a number in his pocket and I'm out of your way. Like, no, no, wait. 30 seconds, brother. Um, and they may break up over this number in his pocket and throw away a five-year relationship. Maybe they got two kids, yada, yada, yada. Because he went to the club one night and got a number. And of course, he intended on doing something wrong with that number. But we're looking at throwing away five years now for this one night and the future of the children and the family for this one night. And the reason being is because we have this white programming that precludes a lot of our sexual nature from our everyday reality. Meaning certain things that we want to do deep, deep, deep down on the inside, we don't feel comfortable bringing it to our partner, so we might slip out. When really that's not real love, that's not real trust. You know what I'm saying? If I'm with you, I want to spend my life with you, I should be able to do everything with you. You know, we should be able to talk about everything. So these are some of the tough subjects that we tackle and my children are not in the room, you know. Brother has some guy. heavy DVDs out that you want to get. Brother Aki with Dr. T. Coleman in the back. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I have that outside right now. So the brother did some excellent work. But give him a hand for now the go ahead and let him I just wanted to ask, um, what were they, um, when earlier you was asking me about like um, the moonlight and the rituals, I wanted to kind of open up y'all conversation to everybody, because we were all kind of like ear hustling to see what you guys was. She was asking why is it that we worship the moon, um, and she knows that the moon is representative of the woman, so what's the purpose of us giving homage to the moon, like the full moon, the cliffs? We don't worship with science. Mm. You don't worship. That's a later day concept of people looking back to our ancient people and all the matter thinking, oh, they worship the moon. See, that's a Christian mindset. That's right, that's right. You see, they didn't know these people had advanced science, but you see, in the modern world, I always teach you that the people back then were stupid. And that's a concept of mind control. They didn't worship no moon. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They were dealing with the scientific aspect of the phases of the moon with the menstrual cycle and all of that. Mm -hmm. And they use different deities. You see, they use different deities to explain that because those were formulas. And that's the problem with a, uh, the modern person always looking back. Right. You see what I'm saying? Trying to probe and thinking, you know, trying to uh, uh, give a diagnosis on ancient thought and they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But it all starts from the messed up aspect of Christianity. Yes. Okay. It's mm -hmm. Islam and Judaism, those later day religions, right. you see what I'm saying, that were actually created out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see? Well, you, you see? <laughs> and, and, uh, right. You know, so it's, it's no different than the Egyptians being evil all right. to the Christians. Yes. You see, yes. so that's what those concepts, so they never worship no moon, they never worship the sun. You see what I'm saying? Right. They just understood the importance of it. And we're looking back now because they venerated the importance of certain things. We're looking at now like these people are stupid. They just worship the sun and worship the moon. And that's how right. they are, and, and that's the way they're able to predicate these modern religions. You see what I'm saying? By leveling the ancient stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, ancient stuff. So it's never no worship. When we say these things, we're speaking from the same Christian model that we've been taught all our lives. And now we got on all the African stuff and the mm -hmm. arms and stuff, but we still got the same Christian blueprint in us. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. There you go. Yeah. And, that, and that might take a lifetime to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, it might take a lifetime to work out. That's right. You see what I'm saying and all, because it's a form of mind control. Especially at a young age, you're given this stuff. You're given this false information. And all, you know, so that's what that is, that's what that is about. So uh, you come back up, bro. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on up here, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Like and I'll be right back. Yes, it's, it's, it's the, the backdrop okay. of the sunlight. Well, it, to pick it's up it's a little bit. Off. I mean, um, yeah, some of the um. <laughs> oh, I I, I'll, I'll help answer that that one but, question about the full moon also. Can you let her ask her question? Because I don't think I posed okay. it in the proper manner. So it was really her question. I think Thank we should right. ask. Okay. Um, I was. What I was saying was, um, as far as with Whitaker, right? Whitaker. 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 And um, I was saying with the with Egypt, 
you give homage to the sun. So witches seems like they're the opposite of that. So they're giving homage to the moon. And you, that's when you stated it's just a reflection of the sun. So yeah. both goes hand in hand. And I wasn't looking at them like that. That's, so that was your <coughs> question. Yeah, and then also in that aspect too, you gotta remember Wicca is more like a European thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of rituals, like the the brother was touching on, a lot of what looks like from our our vantage point now as worship back then was actually science, was technology, like sun gazing and sunbathing, things that we should be doing now mm -hmm. that a lot of us are getting back into. When you take the spirituality aspect out of it, it just looks like niggas staring at the sun. You know what I mean? <laughs> And if you don't have the physical technology, you don't have the deep carbon, you don't have the deep melanin, you don't have the deep hue, you can't get any spirituality out of staring in the sun anyway. You're about to get cancer if you don't put on some glasses or blink, you know what I'm saying? So for them, it's a lot easier to practice some of the sciences and rituals and our technologies, because that's all they're doing is practicing our stuff. It's easier for them to practice it in the moonlight, which is in the lesser light than the sunlight, because then they have better chances of coming out of there without getting sick. Um, but yeah, so a lot of that, a lot of our stuff was, a lot of the stuff that they're doing now is old technology. And that's what I teach, the geometry and the physics of things, because if you look at feng shui, feng shui is sacred geometry. Feng shui is understanding how the magnetic fields move in a given space, how the electricity moves in a given space and being able to capitalize off that. A lot of people right now are going, you know, they're having sleep trouble. And that's because the magnetic fields are shifting around the planet. You know what I'm saying? My son is going crazy. He's up all night now. Like, Me too. Yeah. So what are you doing? Um, well, what I did was I just, because um, my daughter was going crazy too. Well, what I did with them is I moved their bed and have them sleep in a different position. So their head is right. facing off now as opposed to like, um, like they were just crazy. But now I got them lined up north, south, north, south, north, south. And they, they seem to sleep better that way. You know what I'm saying? But um. These are a lot of things that we gotta get back into because again, like I said, we've been disassociated from these things. You know, science has become, the first thing they did was take the fun out of science, which is taking the reality out of science. So that's why a lot of these subjects are long head books and if we don't get our 12 year olds, 15 year olds and 17 year olds interested, if, we don't, if we're not able to change the trends, all that we're doing is a waste anyway. 30, 40 years, we dead. Then what? These young niggas with their pants on their kneecaps, because no longer on the butt no more. It's down here now, on the kneecaps. That's what we're going to leave our movement to. And they're going to do what they could do best, which is teach the babies what they know. And we know what they know. So we got to figure out a way to change the trend. We got to make it cool to be intelligent, cool to be articulate cool to be clean, you know what I mean? Just hygiene, nails cut, like, you know what I mean? You know, hygiene, we gotta put those things back into the forefront, and then once you get that right, the mind will be clear. Things line up when your mind is clear. That's the purpose of the food and the bad diet. Yeah, but no, my sleeping problem started since you changed your time. Mm -hmm. That's when it started. Yeah, there's two. There's, they the started, started um, like maybe October, November they yes, started. Yes, yeah. it's when I started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's going to pick up as we move through this, um, through the 2012 event. You know, but the 2012 event is not like everybody's speaking like it's going to be December 22nd, 2012, boom, 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 boom. It's an event that's a, it's an, it's a progressive event. It's a sequence of events that have already initiated. That's right. We're already in the middle of it. That's what these snows and the, you know, like there's a state, like right now we good. In New York, we're so used to snow, it's like second nature for us. Georgia, where I just left, they have a state of emergency. City shut down. Like they don't even know what to do when snow hit the ground. South Carolina, North Carolina, these places is asking for government grants. Like they need all the soldiers to come in. Like it's crazy down there for them. You know, there's places in Europe where they never had snow and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, well, not never had snow, but the amount, right. you know. So they happen to get used to a lot of things. The birds falling out of the sky, like, if we look around, the signs are there. And there are a lot more signs that are there than even we can acknowledge because of the fact that we don't have a stronghold on the media. You know, we gotta wait till Tuesday night or Friday night and get it from Red Pill and Blue Pill or, uh, <laughs> you know, abundance on Thursday night. 
whatever the case may be. But you know, this is the situation we're in. So now the challenge is is to make, you know, we had our, our forerunners, you know, that are still out doing the work. Bobby Hammett, Phil. I'm not a forerunner. <laughs> Well, I know you're talking about. Icon. We look up to you, brother. No, That's no. what I do. I got all your stuff in the house. Yeah. But we got to make it applicable what we do now. We got to do a lot more walking. So. Mm -hmm. They taught us. So we got to walk this stuff out now. We got to stop taking the DVD home, watching the DVD, and going to sleep after. Being satisfied and complacent with sounding smarter than the guy next to us. We got to actually make this stuff. We got to show it. We got to make it. People ask us about our diet because our skin looks so good, not because we're talking so much. Damn, your skin look good. Did you, you vegetarian? Oh, you know me? Oh, okay, let me try that out. No, we military. Right. <laughs> yeah. Brother. Give it up for the brother. Brother, brother. brother Inky. Give it up for the brother. All right. I got to give a lot of shout out today before I even get Bobby up here. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to my queen, my Jane out there. Let's do it. Questions, where we got the email, I told y'all to make get the questions ready, close and intimate. Y'all know how these classes go for those of you who've been coming. You know, you never really get to a whole lecture without getting back, you know, back and forth interaction. Bobby, I'm gonna put this. I know you already got one. Yeah, but, but here's another one. You oh, yeah. The thing with the old goon. Yeah. Liquor. We actually gonna be carrying that here. Okay. So, but it's not. For, I, need to, I don't have an alcohol for call license, so it's not for drinking. Okay. 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 It's for collecting or novelty. Yeah, Just wanna get that on tape, there. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bobby, have it, y'all. Give it up, right. Because we don't have it down there, I got two, so that's that's better. That's better. And my mama always said, you know, you don't read shit. You just, you know, I grab some diet. I just saw the cherries. Anything with cherry on it, I go I go crazy. So this is some black cherry, and I grabbed it. And when I got out the store, and I taste it, I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. Right. That's that diet stuff. And, it's, and they talk about this stuff. Here's a killer. Yes, that asparagine, what they call that stuff? Yeah, aspartame. Aspartame or something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, I was like, you know, but I'm famous for that. Mm -hmm. You know, just looking at the first thing, you know, so that's good. Uh, one thing about it, last night, the lecture was going to be about, what was the name of the lecture? <laughs> the uh, ancient Orisha Omec. Omec thing. Well, and I didn't right. get, you do the Omec, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I said, you have to change that because I'm about to get the tape and take it home and we wait for the Omec stuff and it never show up. <laughs> and stuff. So we're going to do the Omec thing. It's a real short piece. That's why I left it at the, at the end. We're going to do that. Uh, right now, Beautiful. Uh, to try to understand, to explain what this thing is about, because it's breaking a, a, a major mystery of the Omec. Um, so we, we're going to do that. So, uh, and I'm glad I got the water, because you know, you got that aftertaste in your mouth with that stuff there, you know. And uh, but I was um, I was uh, I don't know why it was. I, I think from the last twenty something years, like anything with cherries. Whatever cherry I buy it, I don't care what it is, you know. And then we come, then come to find out when they started um, actually uh, making the coming out with the sour cherry syrup, and they explained that the ch sour ch cherries was high in melatonin, mm. with the, you know, with, which is melanin. You know, the melatonin mysteries happened um, um, after the melanin conferences started in the late '80s. Then the Europeans started calling it melatonin. The pre-melanin conferences, the Europeans was calling it melanin. Mm. You see, um, the, uh, Gabriel Cousins, one of the guys that does the tachyon energy, he had a book called A Rainbow Diet that came out like in the 80s. Um, um, spiritual Rainbow Diet and the Spiritual Nutrition, I think is the name of it. 
and he talks about the whole melanin thing because he mentioned something and it might still be online. There's a thing called the Mind Brain Bulletin. The, the Mind Brain Bulletin. It was a group of white scientists that came together in the early 80s to start talking about melanin. And they mentioned in there, he who has melanin is God. Mm. He's white scientists. See that? And it was all this melanin stuff up until like, what, what was the first melanin conference? Like 87 or something like that? And then after the melanin conference started, by, by, by 1990, they started coming with the, with the whole melatonin thing. And it was interesting here because like I even said on the blog talk, we know now that the precursors, uh, uh, in the, the precursor, oh, I don't want to say precursor, the what we would call the original uh, launching of crack cocaine had melatonin in it. Mm. Yeah. You see, that's why it, it devastated black people. Yeah. And so people, so so somebody that's cooking up their cocaine, they'll go, I don't know about no melanin and stuff like that. But what you don't realize is. By the time it got to the people, even with black people, it was cooking the coke, uh, cooking up the rocks and stuff. It was already prepackaged or what have you when the government brought it in. You see, you know, when when the government brought it in, we talk about how McDonald's down in Atlanta, one down in Five Points. Five Points is is our. If you ever want to see some black people behave in a certain way, you go down to Five Points in Atlanta. <laughs> Them niggas walk around with exactly. green weed and shit on them and acting like a fool. But they got a McDonald's right behind it. And, and the brother hit me to it and he said that, you know, that McDonald's, he said, I went down and got a fish sandwich at that McDonald's and my lips got numb. And he said, now, anybody know anything about cocaine that numbs your lips? And so... Apparently they was putting it in all, even the burgers or whatever, but... Somehow the fish sandwich, because um, the burgers could mask it, but the fish sandwich and stuff, it couldn't mask it, so your lips were getting numb. So it's ironic. He told me that in the, in the late 90s. When Linda, when Linda came, McQueen, we, was, uh, we went to a, a famous McDonald's, one of the first black-owned McDonald's on Cascade, and we got a fish sandwich. We were sitting there eating it, and sure enough, I thought this was some stuff with the one behind five points, and that's where all the black people get to congregate. Sure enough, I know our lips got numb. You see what I'm saying? So obviously we was already predisposed to certain aspects of cocaine addiction. You see what I'm saying? Um, cocaine addiction, and, 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 that, and that was just with the McDonald's. We don't know what they put this stuff in. Because they target everything, but we were predisposed with cocaine addiction. So the first time, because people was like, "Hey, this person took crack for the first time and was hooked." You, I've heard stories about that. One guy, he went off one Saturday, hit the rock, called his wife back, said, "I'm on crack now. I won't be seeing you." No more. Oh wow! And she, and and, and, she, and next time she saw him, ten years later, he was dead. So the point I'm trying to make here is we we know that these these some of this stuff is, is already they already target the diet for this protective stuff. I don't know why that came out and stuff because I think this whole thing with uh, uh, with this uh, on the blog talk was talking about this whole um, uh, melanin thing, and now we realize now why it was so devastating and why white people could get on it and get off it. You know, you know, um, not even get addicted. Not even get addicted. You know, it was like the ecstasy thing. You know, this is you know this is just an experience. You see, so it's just amazing on how that whole thing, um, that whole thing went down. So, but um, uh, I want to go into this uh, OMEC thing. It's going to be short, and then we can go into some question and answers, um, a question and answers. And, uh, and I was, uh, I was telling the story about how somebody mailed me this mint coat in the mail with the tag on it, brand new, uh, uh, you know, brand new, back in oh, oh six. And it's ironically, ironically, when I was up in Baltimore, we met a brother. There's a Native American, but they, but they, but what it is is they had to fight to be recognized as Native Americans because they got something down in City Hall where they have to where they recognize all the Native Americans in the area. So this black group 
had to fight to be recognized as the Native Americans and stuff. But they won. They won. They won what they had to do, and they and and they they uh, recognized. And so we was at a botanica, and the guy was saying, "Look, you know, he was like, um, that fur coat man. That's the very spiritual thing. So the whole thing that is, you remember when it? I think it, it started in the '80s with uh, Bob Barker." Was, uh, he was um, protesting. He it was in the Miss America or something pageant, or Miss Universe, or one of those. And he started protesting furs. And then it snowballed. Now, it, this is a spiritual story because they got to the point where as they beat white people down so bad, too, you don't even see white people in furs. You go to you go you, you go to the airport. You might see an older white woman, and the only people you see in furs is black people. And I think it's based on. It's, it, I think it's a fear thing. They know they ain't gonna step to no sister and ask her about her fur coat. Might be might be a beat down. <laughs> see what I'm saying? You see, or they might think, well, they, they don't know no better. Or something. Whatever it is, you go to the airport, the only people you see in fur coats is black women. And rare you might see a brother like this jacket here, but it's interesting here because um you might see, uh, uh, every now and then you'll see a brother with one on, and you know they're not going to step to no brother. You know, th then they start complimenting, oh, I like your coat. <laughs> you see, like that. So, but what Native American was saying, you know, the, all the shamans, the shamans wore the furs. You see, they wore the furs, and that's being one with the animal. You see, and so that's what Mitchell Gibson is talking about. Um... When you eat an animal, what, how does this thing go? It's like a, a, a cabalistic scale. So if, a, if, if, if you eat an animal, then they say that, animals, that animal spirit can incarnate as a human in the next cycle. If a bull, you see, eats the grass, then the grass can incarnate as a bull in the next cycle. Now that might seem hard to grasp, but if you understand concepts of all this is an illusion, yes. and uh, 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 appearances, the apparent world, um, that what a, it's uh, it's the world of appearances, but it's not necessarily the actual uh, entity or energies that's actually permeating us, and that's what we're fighting against right every day, is to find out that particular part of ourselves. You see, um, that. We can't see. So in 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 the, in, in the what they call a the magical universe, all these types of things can go on. Can go on. Now take for instance um <clears throat> what they say here is that all we are is a bunch of planets and solar systems bumping around out here that on this plane appears to be a human. So your soul has its own solar system. The problem we have is we are so locked into our personality till we can't even get to the point where as we are a solar system, a planetary system, and all this cosmic stuff in which we really are because we are trapped in our personalities. You see what I'm saying? And so in order to rise up, you got to take off layers of these personalities. Yeah. These personalities. And after until you get back to that cosmic substance that you really are. But too many times, too, too often by us in the human experience, we got locked and imprisoned into this particular personality. So now I look and I say, well, you know what? No person's behavior has anything to do with what that person really is and what spiritual path that person really is because ultimately it's a, we, we, we're cosmic molecules, yeah, that makes sense. you see. And we've been trapped in, and so the later day religions, unlike, which is piggybacking on what we were talking about before, unlike the ancient religions, the ancient religions ultimately, uh, ultimately, the goal was to get back to that essence on what you were before you incarnated down here. The later day religions, to, to enslave people, yes. 
They started focusing on the personality, moralism, don't do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You see. Now, uh, uh, Charles Finch said something years ago, this was in the 80s, he said, um, the Egyptians didn't look at animals as being subordinate. They said that they said that the animals were equal to them. Was equal to them. And I didn't, I, I had problems with that because that's the ego. Until I got some cats. Oh, yeah. Now my cats live outside. I don't have the cats in the house. But I got some cats and these cats went from a variation of different color cats into all black cats. So we got, we got mostly all black cats. And then I thought about what he's saying by just looking at them. And I said, you know, these cats are the gods. These, these cats are the, dog, are the gods. I said, you know, you got the goddess Bass, Sekhmet, Pashet, and these particular, uh, these particular, you know. And in Islam, they would call it the 99 attributes. You see what I'm saying? You know. And I'm looking at these cats. And it finally dawned on me after four years of feeding them, or five years of feeding them. I said, wait a minute. This cat gets two meals a day. day. And if he wanted three, they'd be getting three. But they, you know, they're not like, like, not like dogs now. Not like dogs. A dog's behavior is the same as a male's behavior. I'm not talking about men or dogs, that kind of thing. I'm not talking about that. But there is a, there is the cats, you, you, you think female. And dogs, you think male. Now the dogs, they will eat everything you put out there mm -hmm. in one setting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as long as you put it out there, they, they, them dogs will eat it. The cats, you know, they'll eat, then they'll you get full, and then they'll eat again. So they'll, they'll, they, they, they have about two meals a day. We, you know, when we first died, we was getting them. You know, uh, just you know, just feed them all times of night and stuff like that. And the food, and the possums and all that was coming and eating the food. You see, so uh, you tell I'm down south. We get, I don't know if you all even see possums up here. <laughs> okay, so and after about four years of eating these cats eating, I said, you know what? These are the gods. I said we feed them twice a day for the only for the sake of their cats. They don't do no work. <laughs> we can't say they can train a CNI dog. They can have, they got dogs pulling carts. They got dogs pulling sleds. They got police dogs sniffing out dope. Mm -hmm. You see, but when it comes to a cat, a cat is like a black person saying, when I feel like it. Right? Especially after we got out of slavery, look. <laughs> when I feel like it. You know, I might defy you in what you're saying to the simple fact that based on how I feel today. Yes. You see what I'm saying? You know, God said, you know, I go and go to go to work, go on a break. He said, I'm going back to the work off the break. He said, wait a minute, I'm gonna take two breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga said, I'm gonna take me another break. And these cats, I'm looking, I said, oh my God, these are the gods. They lay around and we feed them and we and they they run us. Only for the sake of being cats. Nothing else. It's not like they got an attribute. You see what I'm saying? And these are these are these are, and these are outside cats. So we don't touch them. See, if you if, if you get a cat and you touch them and start rubbing them, you'll domesticate them, and they won't be able to live outside anymore. So you don't touch them. You just let them be. You see what they, you, you let them be. But the, and, and the only thing that's domesticated about them is they they got their three hearts in a cot. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? But the point about them, I'm looking, I'm looking, oh, I get it now. These are, these are the deities. We, you know, these are the deities, and these, are, these deities are higher than the deities we worship. Because when we worship the deities we worship, we want something from them. We don't want nothing from them cats. But they do provide a service. We haven't seen a rat, a mouse, since 06. You see? And, that's, and, and what I was saying was that was the essence on what um, on what uh, Charles French was saying about we are one with the animals. We didn't look at ourselves as being above. And in so many words, if we're in a universe that contains all of this stuff, 
You see, it's an ecological system. We just have certain things that we do. And so we might say we are superior, but we're not superior for the simple fact what we're supposed to be doing, we're not even doing. We don't even live up to the potential. Exactly. You see, we got to have a plan B. Because whatever you was going to be when you was a child, you are not that now. What you thought you was going to be as a child, you ain't that now. You see what I'm saying? You got to have a plan B. We. So my point here is we... We function the least of the entire ecological nature. Everything else fulfills its, you see, its purpose. Here go again. Except that mysterious cat, we still try to find out what the hell he is for. Exactly. And that's why the Egyptians used to feed them and domesticate them. You see, and they trace the origin based on DNA. They trace the origins of all domesticated cats back to Kemet. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it's a mysterious, it's, it's, a, it's a mysterious thing. And then it gets to the point that they communicate. Now, our cats is a little, our cats will start to communicate when they know the food, that bag of uh, friskies, uh, what's that other one? You know, the other is another one. Marina? Marina, whatever the thing is. When that bag gets low, they'll start communicating. They will send signals to Linda. Like, hey, look now, hey. <laughs> but how would they know that the bag is getting low? The bag is inside of the house. Sure. They know, they, 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 that means that they are on a higher plane. Right. They are on a higher plane. Right. So when that food is getting low, they start signaling. Now it's interesting here, because <coughs> Linda lived in DC. So she moved in with her sister before she came to Atlanta. <coughs> and so what she did, she moved in with her sister. The sister had a little dog that was old. So she said, well, I'm going to move. She said, well, the sister said, well, you can come in and you can take care of the dog. Because I, I, I work at a, you know, I, I work a certain hours and this dog needs care. She said, you can take care of the dog, you know, try to help me out. The dog came to her and said, look, listen to me good. She said, it's a whole communication. Remember the guy that had the... Remember the guy that had the tigers and the lions and all right, that shit? Right, right, Up right. here, and he said he, they could talk to him? Right. So that whole beast master thing is real. Dog came to Linda and said, look, this the deal. You are here because of me. <laughs> <coughs> Take care of me. She said, don't be caught. Because when I leave, you better have plans to be someplace else. Because after I leave, your sister ain't having it. You see, she said, so, you know, whatever the deal here is, and I know the sister asked you to come in and help, because mm -hmm. you were staying someplace else, but you either better go back there or you better go someplace else, because so you are here because of me, and when, when I leave in a couple of months, you see what I'm saying, you better make the way to have your, your path, you see what I'm saying, or whatever, whatever the deal was, right. and, so, and, 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 and it was spiritual because she moved to Atlanta with me. But the key was the dog talked to her and told her what time it was. So now we got these cats, and the cats, they don't really communicate. They, they, oh, yeah, they do. Sometimes you'll hear something like, look out the door. And you look out the door, and they're standing there ready to get fed. <laughs> so that's the first level of communication that, and then you might ask yourself, how did the Africans live, live with them lions? Right. And all them dangerous animals, and never was prey. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's because they had a communication. You see, they had a communication. So we are the true beast masters. You see, um, you know, uh, uh, and the PBS used to run that damn show every month for years. You know. So, but the, the key here is not PBS, TBS, uh, uh, Turner Broadcasting. But the key here is, is um, this is also showing this whole concept that if you're looking at 
us being a, a group of molecules or a group of, 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 of your, your soul as a solar system, you see, then you'll find out that anything is possible. And like Mitchell Gibson says, oh yeah, Harry Potter is a true entity now. You see. Now if you don't know anything about magic, first of all, for the person to perceive and to conceive the concept of Harry Potter was probably a transmission in the first place. It was a channel. Right. So that it meant that it was an archetype that existed outside of the physical. Then when they made it into a physical book and then the physical movie, it enhanced it. Give me some tissue or something uh, when, when they get it. Oh, now this, no, this ain't going to work right here. That's a Kleenex towel. I need something to wipe with. Yeah, this could go for the snot, but... <laughs> no, 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 that ain't going to be here. Some buffalo wings. Oh. <laughs> you get some either a towel or a paper napkin. Solid. You get some solid or something else. But anyway, um, you, you get a board, the right board, the white board? No, 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 I, no, I, no I need some tissue. Yeah, tissue. Just a brown. A nap, no, no, this tissue right here. No, okay, no, 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 here's something a little That's a little thicker, that's the LL. Oh, I guess this will work for you. Yeah, the nap. Yeah. So anyway, where was I? About the communication with the lion. Yeah, and so, um, so, the concept here now is we are supposed to be getting back to that cosmic being of what we are, which is actually a solar system. You say, well, how can uh, uh, one soul be a solar? Well, you got shock. You got 160 chakras. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You know, you got cells. You got all this type of stuff. And that itself is actually a microcosm of the Milky Way because that's the galaxy we live in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the concept here is getting back to that, but we're still trying to act human, and trying to act human. Now, let me explain what I'm talking about here. I know some people that used to make all kind of money in the in the eighties and in the early nineties, and then they went through a void. Something shifted. Maybe, maybe something was activated in them. Okay? So as a result, the methodology that they used to use in the 80s is a dimension of weight. They have gone to a whole nother cycle. You see what I'm saying? Or gone go through a whole nother cycle, and all of a sudden, they can't make no money. Because they have acclimated themselves into the cycle that they are in. And what is needed, they need to find out what it is that's applying to the energy, you see what I'm saying, that will be conducive for me in this particular cycle. You see? So it's the same thing with outmoded knowledge. We got people, you, you first come in, you learn the history. You see what I'm saying? Then we supposed to go into greater knowledge because the history was just to tell you who you were that was lost. You see. Exactly. Now we are still saying it's knowledge, but we got people that stuck. You see what I'm saying on the first level. Mm -hmm. You see, in the first level and stuff like that, then they start going crazy, or they got people getting no on them. You see, because now we got people that's pimping people with the same pimp game. With the Kimmich. You see what I'm saying? You see. Or whatever type thing. But what it is, it was a cycle, and we, we have to not be pleased with the information that we have. We got to keep going on. And so and, and you must face the strange and the unknown. You see what I'm saying? And strange and the unknown. You see. So like I said, you got the new Black Panther Party, and they got this cat. He's gonna be on. National Geographic, he's on Fox News all the time. He's the black guy that's standing up there in front of the polls telling people they better vote for Barack Obama with a big-ass stick. He's on National Geographic talking about how he hates white people to death and all this kind of stuff. And he's been on TV a while, so they had some, some, some meeting at the uh, black, New Black Panther thing recently, the other day. And this guy come up there talking about kill the babies. and It's an old college line. But he's enhanced the stuff to a vigorous <laughs> contempt. 
You see what I'm saying? For white people, kill the babies and kill and, and, and the whole time now, this guy is a government agent that's infiltrating. Yeah. So that they can come to your event and he acts out and he don't understand it's the homeland security. And they got all kind of laws against us and hate laws. So whenever they want to target you, they want to target you. They will show this fool at your event. And, and that's the whole thing. He's there at your event to infiltrate your event to put you on the terrorist watch list. Yeah. You see. Put you on the terrorist watch list. You see. And all of this, because there's whole kind of new laws now. You know. All kind of new laws. And so this is, this is, this is, so, but my point here is, here we go again, because we are still pondering to these outmoded systems. It's there now for mostly vanity. You see what I'm saying? For mostly vanity. So we have to go on. We have to keep moving. You see what I'm saying? We can't just fall prey to outmoded systems and outmoded groups. And these particular days right now, you got another human being you following. You're just the biggest fool ever. Exactly. If you can read, now I can see if you are illiterate. <laughs> you need somebody to translate your life for you. But if you can read, there's no reason to be in no group. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're a staunch Christian, you got a Bible at home. You see what I'm saying? Interpret it yourself. If God is everything and everywhere, you see, so it's just interesting on how, how things is going. But here goes again. Going back to this thing. The universe, the solar systems, and the cosmos is changing. They found a blue star the other day with a new universe. Stuff is changing each day. They got a new universe that they just found, um, just found the other week. It's old, but it's new to them. But it, it just became visible. So obviously there's some stuff that's changing, but what's happening to us is our personalities is getting in the way. We're still running after trying to modify our personalities, and our personalities is something that's unreal. It's just a series of appearances that's taking form, you see what I'm saying, based on this realm needs forms to identify itself as being real. But it's not real. You see, so there's so many things, and so in so many words, it means that basically, if you just give up on most things that you hold dear to you, you'll find a whole nother universe there. You see, sure. you know, I was talking about Linda. Now, Linda, like I said, I cleaned up <laughs> a week and a half when she was moving down to Atlanta. She came in and cleaned up for three months. You see, so a man's clean is different than a woman's cleaning. My thing is, little hell, I didn't know I was supposed to get that dust on up under that couch. You see what I'm saying at all? You don't see it. It may be like, but you can't see it. Ain't no need me going up under there. You see. But then again, come to find out, she notorious for cleaning houses and throwing away all the people's shit. <laughs> so I, I, stuff just come up missing. But the concept here is... When you eliminate the clutter and eliminate the stuff from around you, exactly. you'll find new avenues. Mm -hmm. So it was a spiritual thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, it was a spiritual thing. If you eliminate new avenues, you see. And so that's, that's what that whole thing about. Even Farrakhan said that one time. You know, hey, a man will be content with a room and a bed if his woman were up on top of the bed, up on top of the bed. But she'll come in there and say, wait a minute, we got to broaden our horizons. She can make you move out. And that's when you find whatever you've expanded, that's when you, that's when you get the benefit from it. But the same thing with this particular knowledge. We get trapped in these groups. And they say, what is insanity? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again. You see, that's what insanity is. You see, and so we get into these particular routines. Meanwhile, there's things that's changing around us, and we are suffering, and we don't know. Hey, man, you went someplace else a couple of years ago, and you don't know. You see, that you're on that road to travel. You still stuck on the side of the road, thinking it's 1974. 
You see, so this is how these things go, and you know uh, how these things go. So you must push yourself for the unknown, the strange. You see, and all uh, because the strange and the unknown is just ignorance. It's fear. You see, so it's interesting. I want to go into this particular part. Um, we're gonna spit this up. Since so we got that one for the present, y'all. Uh, we're gonna spit this old goon wrong. <laughs> I guess. Well, I guess this is. I guess. I, well, I guess I'm up north where you can't turn down heat once it get cold. I guess I'm not going to go back because we turn it down. It's going to be zero degrees in a couple of minutes. So I guess I got to suffer through this. Uh, it's going to be 60 degrees on, on Wednesday in Atlanta. You see, so. Our shade. Okay, we'll do a little libation. He got the drums and stuff. And then we'll go this one part. Okay, so like I said, we're going we, we to gonna give a shout out to old Shosi. Old Shosi. Uh, Ganesha. This Raziel cat that, 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 that's come through. Um, old Hume, old Goon, Yemen Yam, Oya. Ashe, 
Don't call on your ancestors. Ashe. 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 They had a, uh, the Nation of Islam was, had a debate on cable TV down there with the SCLC. I talked about this yesterday. But they, you know, and, and SCLC, so they had, the, uh, they had the guy from SCLC is the Southern Christian Leadership Conference that was started by Martin Luther King. So they had a brother in there, and I admit, I, I was Elijah Muhammad man, so I talked shit about Martin Luther King too. <laughs> but, uh, um, but this guy was there, and from the SELC, the brother from the nation and all this, you know, we, we need to separate, we need to do this, we need to do that. So what happened was, um, so what happened was, the, uh, the SELC brother said, look, he said, I see Farrakhan traveling all over the world. He said, let me let you in on a little bit of history. He said, before desegregation, you couldn't just jump on the plane and go all over the world if you were black. He said, that was segregated. He said, so you need to thank Martin Luther King, Farrakhan needs to thank Martin Luther King for opening that part up. You see what I'm saying? And you gotta realize, you gotta realize what's going on. And, I, and, and then it all came back to me. I said, look, when I started, um, when I started going to these metaphysical bookstores down south, they opened up these things, they treated me with open arms, these white people, man, they would be waiting for me to come up in there. So now, let's say it would have been 40 years before I wouldn't have been allowed in the place. That's right. Then I come to New York, go to the go to the magical child, go to the enchantment, and get treated like a doggone criminal. Mm -hmm. You see, uh -huh. get treated like a criminal. Mm. You see, and all. And from the 90s, we used to go we go to the magical child, and, you know. A guy didn't even want to show me some, uh, some stuff in the case one time. You see what I'm saying? I um, want to buy a book, the guy questioned and stuff, because you know, so the point I'm trying to make here was, <laughs> had these things not been opened up, you see, I wouldn't have been able to do those particular things. So you have to think back sometime historically yeah. just to see what was going on to, got, to get us to a certain point. So yeah. we know that Martin Luther King is also St. Martin, and St. Yeah. Martin is a form of a leg bar as we talked about yesterday. And Alegba, like I said, he opens the way, but he doesn't necessarily go to the promised land. <laughs> Shango and Ogun are the warriors to do that. You see, but he opens the gate. You see, same thing with the Moses thing before it became historical, he opened the gate and then, the, and, and then Aaron and all and took the people into the promised land. These are metaphysical terms that was historicalized but these are concepts that they're talking about that happen in everyday life. You see, like that. You see, so there's always these people that open the gate, but their job is not necessarily to be the fulfillment. So Martin Luther King was that person, he opened the gate. You see what I'm saying? But we fulfill that in the particular aspect. We enjoyed certain freedoms, not necessarily that we wanted to live uh, 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 around white folks, so the simple fact, the civil rights movement wasn't about integration into other communities. That's right. Now we ran, we took the ball and ran with it. You see what I'm saying? But the point about it here is, it was about not having those doors closed just for a little type of thing. And like I said, I would go, man, they, these people would see me coming. It's like, we going to England, um, you want us to bring you some stuff back? He go to the list of stuff we going over to get on that. Yeah, give me some of that, give me, they'll jump on a plane and go to England and bring me some stuff back. And these are people from the South. Yep. I'm riding around in a guy in all black. Black, he's a chaos magician, magician. He got on all black and stuff. And he said, yeah, you know, I used to be one of the junior representatives of the Ku Klux Klan mm. back in the day. <laughs> and I, got, I said, I get it. That was a part of the culture. It wasn't necessarily that you was a hater. It was a part, it was, it was just like going to church. You was down south, you, you, you're supposed to be in the clan. He was like, yeah, I was a junior member. And uh, he said, let me tell you something. He opened up a big thing of pills. He said, 
you all go to jail for your, drug, your drugs. He said, well, what you don't realize is all kind of legal drugs you can get. You see what I'm saying? That you can get. To get you just as high as anything else, and it's totally legal. <laughs> you know, so, but it was just interesting here. I'm riding around in the car with this guy. This is years later, and he used to be a junior member of the Ku Klux Klan. Mm. Let me show you another uh, thing. I was working in Columbia, South Carolina, in a record store. He's called Peaches. I was in college. This white boy would come, and he would have these jokes for me. And that would be fun. I said, but y'all little jokes is a little corny. I said, what I need for you is what black people are into. You need to give me some ethnic jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you need to give me some ethnic jokes. The jokes that you wouldn't say, that's the ones we want, because that's the one the black community likes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, what, what, what is what, what is what? Um, what has six legs and go holy do, holy do? Three black men running to the elevator. Did that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, Kunta Kente translated Willie Washington. You see, so he started giving me these good ones. My brother was getting some off of some jobs that they didn't have black people to work on. He graduated college and he was working in this little small town on some job and he would get them and we'd give them to the black community and people fall out down. So I said, that's what you need to give me is some of them, them jokes like that. You know, because we had the ones about the black man, Chinese man, and the white man. You see, and this cat, this cat, man, this cat loved me to death. And he, he said, look, I got a new job. I'm going to have to quit. I got, a, I got a new job in my profession. And I want you to come to this party. <laughs> you know, so I said, um, I want you to come to this party. I said, well, too bad, man. I'm going to be working that night or what have you. And the white people in the store was like, we baffled. This guy is in love with you. I'm saying, well, what's the big deal? You're not talking about no gay stuff. They say, no, no, this guy loves you. And I said, so what's the big deal? They said, that guy, that is the top. He is the, the top youth of the South Carolina Columbia branch of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you to pause for like yeah. that. The, the, the electoral, well, I wasn't even conscious back then. This is like close to 30 years ago. You see what I'm saying? And But he's picked something up in my essence, what my potential would be or whatever. And it shook him to the core. And they were like, man, you, that guy there, it wasn't like the other guy told me years later, I used to be about 40 years ago the junior member of the Ku Klux Klan. They were saying that this guy was like the heir at that particular time. This was in the 80s. He was like the heir to be the, the next grand master. You see what I'm saying? He was in his mid-20s. He was the heir to be the next grand master. And this cat loved me to death. But what it was is, like you're saying about the whole Michael Jordan thing, that's how they do them because they, they don't consider them black. Yeah. Right. They, you know, they consider them a hero yeah. or something. But whatever it was with me, it was some type of spiritual thing. I wasn't even aware of it at the time. You see, I wasn't even aware of, of, of it at the time. And, and, and it was amazing. And they were so scared. To take, doing the relationship with me and this guy coming to work, he worked in the store about three years. But no, about, 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 no. He worked in the store about six months. And obviously, obviously this guy must have was fearful and notorious. Because during the time of the relationship he worked in the store, none of the other white people had enough guts to tell me. That's how afraid they were of this guy. <laughs> Only when he announced he was leaving and on his last day to work, they told me. You see, they told me. So it's just interesting how things go, on, on, on how things go and all. But then again, on the other hand, there's things that happen behind the scenes. Yes. You see, the things that's happening behind the scenes, which is very interesting. Now, I want to get into this particular part. I was supposed to say this. I was supposed to go into this um, last night. Now, ironically, it was in New York about four years, five years ago when this mystery first came down. The first person to break part of the mystery, because the Omex are uh, a mystery. Yes, the Omex are uh, a mystery. They left no writing, you see what I'm saying, and what we can gather. Now, you can say that, oh, 
If you want to study Omen culture, study Mayan culture. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. It's in a nutshell. There it is. Right. That was the human aspect of it. What happened? The brother Rudra, I think, was at the, when the lecture he did, the first lecture he did here. Mm -hmm. He said, the reason why we don't know nothing about the Omex and we got these big heads, and I guess you can. Oh, it's getting, let me know when they get a little cold. Mm -hmm. And all, yeah. And they got these big heads down in Mexico, what, parts of South America. Um, South America, Brazil, Mexico, and, 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 and so but they don't have any writing and it's still a great mystery. He said, he said, you getting cold or somebody getting cold? Mm -hmm. She's got it. Yeah. No, no, we can close that now. I'll be all right. Cause I, you know, cause it, like I said, the temperature just gonna drop. That's just some southern stuff. You see what I'm saying? I, I, you know, when I when I first came, when I was first coming up here, you know, um. When I, uh, you know, I, uh, like I said, I spent the summer down here in 1970, me and my three brothers and my mother. You know, all I know is we had to fight. Every day, there was a new, I made the mistake, because back then I, I used to fight. And I made the mistake of uh, punching this nigga in the face. And I think I was like in the eighth, I think I was like about nine years old. So every day, we was in bed stack. So every day they have a new brother standing on the front porch <laughs> waiting for me to come out. And he would follow me around uh, to about 12 o'clock when they had those sprinklers used to get in the park. And they had those sprinklers and I think they were cut on that. He would follow me around <laughs> to about the time those sprinklers. And then I'd have to go and hit him in the face and beat him up because I, I wanted to go into the sprinklers. You see, and this happened the whole summer. <laughs> and all, uh, you know, the whole summer. And all, uh, so that was proper. When I started coming back to New York in the 90s, in the 90s, I be like, um, what's the temperature like today? And it's like October, November. They looking at me like, why do you want to know? So I, I said, I want to know what, what I can, um, how to dress. Yeah. It was like, wait a minute, hold on, man. Hey man, you up now? What's this cold? It's cold. Ain't no. <laughs> you talking about May or something? You know, so, you know. Because see, in Atlanta, it can be freezing one day. Just wait three days. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be all, almost overbearing. You see what I'm saying and all. So we got to have two different coats and stuff. A light coat. You see what I'm saying? A light leather for you know. This is this is in this is in January. You see, and a heavy coat for when it gets cold and stuff like that, and all. But so, so, so I, I'm, I'm kind of um, <laughs> misconstruing things, trying to tell you to open up a damn window and, you know, so we can, we can close this. You see, y'all got to, <laughs> don't mind me on that, you know. I'm thinking I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> okay, so, so what Rudra broke, he said, when we see the Omex, and we see those heads, we don't know much about them. He said, that was a time when the gods used to rule. You see, when the gods used to rule. So in Egypt, when 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 when, when they was asking Manetho, Manetho's history, he was given to uh Philadelphius, the uh what's the what they call Mr. Kings. The Mr. Kings. He said we had so many. Uh, uh, pharaohs in the dynastic period, which was 3,000 years, and we had another one in the pre-dynastic period, which was about 8,000 years in the pre-dynastic. He said, so we're talking about roughly about 11,000 years. He said, well, what used to, who used to rule, and what used to be that way, who, who used to rule before then? He said, that's when a whole bunch of gods used to rule. <coughs> but the gods is us, prior to us falling deeper and deeper into the physical plane. That's right, that's right. So it would be Atlantis. Okay. I like that. You see, it would be Atlantis. That's when the gods. So all when you hear Isis and Osiris, what made them gods and different from you? That's a part that when they were in Atlantis or Lemuria. They got several names for these particular things. And the only reason why they don't really play it up <coughs> is because they know, and the European knows that he wasn't around at that time. You see, but. 
So they always give you the physical instruction of Atlantis, but this is some stuff pre-physical days. But the key here is if the Omex were the gods, and it were the gods, and this guy here, let me get him. This guy here, David Hatcher Child Childress, um, got a book out. Let me show you the name. Let me see the name of his book. He made an observation. He wrote a book on the Omex. It's one of the few books that deals with a more of a. Uh, let me see, it's another book. That's, <coughs> this is a Nexus magazine, but they, they're reviewing his book, so it's best to get the book. This is February 08. The Mystery of the Omex Civiliz Civilization by David Hatcher, H A T C H E R, Childress, C H I L D R um, E S S. David Hatcher, Tr Childress. The name of his book. Um, the name of his book is called. Uh, um, it's got a book on Adventures Unlimited. So you can go online to um, www.adventuresunlimitedpress.com. AdventuresUnlimitedPress.com. <coughs> but I want to. Um, I want to. Let me let me get the name of the book. It's in the back of the book. This David Hatcher Childress has this book out on the Omex. It's one of the few books that was written outside of an archaeological standpoint of view. Most of the people give you the archaeological standpoint of the view. And also, but I, it's, it's a book, that's his name, it's, 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 it's called the uh, it's called the Omex. Um, and I was trying to get the name of the book. But just the only thing, a lot of times you just need the actual, uh, you, you need the actual, just the, just the uh, title of the, or the author of the title. So in this particular case, um, David had the children, but this is, he made an observation. Now what happened was how the second part of this mystery was broken. We knew that they were the gods. Second part of the mystery was broken was this. Um, I, I did a uh, lecture on the 5th of December in Birmingham, Alabama. A uh, real magical city because they have a 20, they got a 10 foot mural in uh, uh, Egypt, it's, it looks like where all the um, Cesar Bigger Mills and anybody that does anything on Egypt, as far as the scenery, they have to access this guy's picture. His name is um, Sir Edwin Porter. And the name of the picture is called Israel in Egypt. But what it was was this. He made this 10-foot long picture of the Temple of Luxor with all the paint still on it. He made it in the realm of in the time before the erosion, uh, it would be the actual time when the actual pharaohs was ruling. So he made this big picture of the uh, pharaoh's procession, where they got the pharaoh, they got him, and, he, and he's going into the temple, and they got all these, these people in this procession. So he got back to England, and at that time it was in the 1800s. And he was trying to sell the picture. And the guy offered him an enormous amount of money for the picture. But the guy told him he had to paint the Israelites in the picture. You see what I'm saying? Being slaves. So he put a little piece in there. But it wasn't enough to cover up what he was really trying to convey. So the name of the picture is called Israel in Egypt by Edward, Sir Edwin Porter. Porter. He even got served because of the picture. Knighted. What's Sir, it called? It's, it's called Israel in Egypt by Sir, by Sir Edward by Sir, Sir Edwin Porter. It's about a ten foot long picture, huge. It sits in the Birmingham Museum in Birmingham, England. Huh. Now we get Birmingham, Alabama, and they call it the Magical City. Mm -hmm. Now, Birmingham was supposed to be the same metropolis as Atlanta, and, uh, it, it even bigger. It was supposed to be the city of the South. Atlanta ended up being that. Birmingham was supposed to be bigger because Atlanta don't have no water. It's landlocked. Georgia, most of Georgia is landlocked. Mm -hmm. It has a river run through it. Has a river run through it. 
And it used to be a steel mill town. Was, uh, so Atlanta is more of a hotel than a convention town. You see what I'm saying? This was, it was going to be a steel town. It was going to be like Pittsburgh. You see. They were going to build it. See, this is the deal about Atlanta now. Atlanta, after the Civil War, the people, the financiers of New York, so we going down south and we going to build a New York in the south. Mm. Not going to be New York, it's going to be different. Mm. But it's going to be a New York in the south. So they was picking, so they was picking, they picked Atlanta, they picked Birmingham and they was putting in this northern money. What, and so, the first thing they had to do, they said, well just wait because they got to, they, they, they had it on hold because these was northern and say, well let's, let's wait a couple of years until this whole civil rights thing get done. They say, can we see these niggas brewing up some stuff? <laughs> they say, they, they, they're getting ready to get, you like, like um, Richard Pryor said, they said, what y'all niggas waiting for in the 50s? Said, we're waiting for the 60s. We're going to put your bitch in the 60s. So they were like, well, wait until, you know, and then we're going to pour in the money. We're going to build on, uh, we're going to start building on New York. It wouldn't be like New York as far as naturally, but they was going to build it with northern money. So what happened with Birmingham was slated to be one, be even bigger than Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But the Bull Connor shit went down mm -hmm. and all the racist stuff when they were, you know, the Bull Connor was beating people over the head and all your pictures of the dogs and stuff like that and it squashed it. Yep. And then, so they just, they, and they took all the rest of the money and said, well, let's just settle on Atlanta. And then, and then, then in the 90s, they starting to do that with Charlotte. You see what I'm saying? Like that. Uh, 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 like that. But it was a magical city Birmingham, because of this picture in the Birmingham Museum from the 1800s. You see what I'm saying? In the 1800s. So, they, in, in the 1904, they built a big statue of Vulcan. And people say, man, they got the statue of Vulcan. I said, did you ever try to study what Vulcan is? We don't know what Vulcan is. <laughs> so I studied Vulcan. And Vulcan is the god of metal. The god of metal. So I said, well, that makes sense because it's a steel mill town. So they took this god Vulcan, they built this statue of Vulcan, and he got nappy hair. <laughs> and they aired it at the 1904 World's Fair, and then after the World's Fair, they brought it to Birmingham. So I was like, wait a minute, this is the god of metal. I said, oh, this is Ogun. So I did a whole thing, I went on the fifth to do a whole thing on Vulcan and Ogun. So Ogun said, well, you doing this for me, let me reward you with something. So he, the book, this was a book that I had since 08, and it fell up on this page. And this guy makes, David Hatcher Childress, makes an observation that he in England used to play rugby, well, soccer, with a bunch of Nigerians. Hmm. He said, and he got the aspect of the phenotype of the Omec heads being Nigerians, and then all of the all of the archaeological community agreed. <laughs> it is the West African. It could be, but Nigeria could be, if you take it out of the modern sense, it could be Ghana, it could be the Congo, it could be the Dogon. You know, but you know that Nigerian has got the thickest features. <laughs> You see, and that's the prototype. Uh, that was the kingdom of the homie, and all that, you know. So when I read this, then Ogun said, "I put it together. You got the first part of '95, but Ruth said that that was the gods, and now they're identifying the people as Nigerians. But this was a time." when it wasn't the physical world, but they identified it with the Nigerians, so who are they talking about? Okay, they identified the Omega heads as Nigerian, or West African. That's the first part. But you've already identified that the Omegs were the gods that live in a pre-physical time, and they're gods. So who are the Nigerian gods? We are. The Orishas, no, the Orishas. 
Somebody must agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reason why I know that? Affirmation. Uh-huh. Reason why I know that? Affirmation. They, uh, I don't know. They don't have it. Oh, you, you, all, you don't have that TV one up here, do you? Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. And they got this. They, they got this show called Unsung. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we recorded the Unsung on Phyllis Hyman, and we was watching the Phyllis Hyman um, um, documentary, and she came in. Kick the, you know, like uh, we got a big speaker and they got the little phone screen that they have on, on the speaker. She kicked the, the phone screen off, the, it flew across the room. Wow. And she said, You know, I just wanted to be recognized. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> you see, so when that kind of thing happens, you see, when that kind of thing happens, that's the, that's the God. They said, That's why a lot of times when if some food fall on the floor, you're supposed to leave it for a minute. Okay. That's them. Okay. They will knock it out the bag <laughs> if it's something they like. <laughs> if, if it's something they like, you see, um, you know. And then oh, 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 Sometimes she would just come and just take a ring off a person's finger, and it would disappear in thin air. <laughs> see, she was very famous for that. You see, so the gods of that area were the Orishas. You see, so the Olex is actually. The Orishas, mm. you see, and like we said again, there's so many, in India. There's seven holy Orishas. There's seven African powers. There's seven holy Orishas. So how do you get the seven African powers called the Orishas? Then in India, you got the seven holy Orishas of the Pleiades. Mm. There's seven African powers, but there's an eighth one. Oshosi, which is, which is Orion the Hunter. And Orion the Hunter with his dog is the dog star. It's got, they, they say that the seven holy Orishas and Orion the Hunter, they are connected. So, so Oshosi was Orion the Hunter, and there's the seven holy Orishas of the Pleiades and Orion the Hunter. In the middle of Orion is the star Sirius. To show you how this thing breaks um, breaks down. Now, in this uh, Oshosi aspect, if he's Orion, Orion in Egypt is Osiris, or Osa. Now, in 2000, the show because it's just the Oshosi thing, he fought to come through the last month, last two months. You see. He's come up now and come to find out that Oshoshi was, was the God that they took so many people from his village in Africa to his legend died out. And they know very little about Oshoshi on the continent, but all Oshoshi stuff is based on in the West. Those Africans that they took, you see, they kept Oshoshi in the West. And it's about like our situation, where as they took us from Africa, the people know very little of us mm -hmm. as identification. We, we, we not them. Mm -hmm. And we look back and say, I ain't them Africans. Mm -hmm. You see? And they said, we ain't them niggas there. <laughs> <laughs> you see? And so that's that whole story of Oshosi. Now the key here is Oshosi is Orion. Like Osiris is Orion. Now there's a guy by the name of, um, I talk about him, uh, Dan Winters. You can get some of his stuff on the internet. And all, but they kicked him. He's one of the few people got kicked out of the c country for Teach giving a certain amount of knowledge. Yeah. White boy. Two, few many white people got kicked out of the country. First, they tried to sue him, say he plagiarized somebody's stuff. I got his book. He was going off. Yeah. Talking about the blood and everything. All that was going off. Then they so they they said no, you got to go. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> you see. Yeah. So they got white people to kick out the country. They got Philip Agee. Which was that guy was the CIA agent? Yeah. They kicked him out. Mm -hmm. I think they kicked your boy out. They did, did, did Ice Man inheritance. Mm -hmm. Michael Crichton. Michael Bradley. 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 Yeah. Michael Bradley. Yeah. So you got to go. You don't talk shit about us. <laughs> you moved to Canada. So they, they will kick you out of the country. Don't let nobody fool you. You know, it ain't no land of freedom. <laughs> it's a land of what you can get away with. You see, so. But in his book in the 2000, I think, and this is what got, got him kicked out. He kept saying, 
There's a black hole in the heart of Orion. In the heart of the Orion star system, there's a black hole. And in this black hole, it's either we getting sucked into it or something is being birthed from it. You see, then all of a sudden this Oshosi cat comes through. And Oshosi really just represents, if you look at it as an energy, it represents us supplanted in a new world and forgotten in the old world. And sometimes forgotten in the old world, it's kind of, kind of hard to not know who the African Americans is because that's the template for the whole planet. They're going to show somebody black, they're going to show African American around the world. We celebrate it that way. It's not talking about that. It's talking about they don't recognize you as a, as a culture and customs that they are identified with. Because that, because we are foreign. You see, we are foreign. You see what I'm saying? You see. So, that whole Shosi thing, it goes again based on this black hole in the heart of Orion, then this old Shosi shows up. You see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, he's sitting at the table as the eighth Orisha, as the eighth Orisha, I'm telling you, there's a debt. See, they got people, they got, in, in Italy, they got tarot card companies, and they celebrate us. So they got an African-American tarot sold in Italy, the Llewellyn Book Company here just picked it up. It's been out about two, three years. Um, they got Cleopatra to rope. They got a Ramesses to rope. You see. And they got Afro-Brazilian to right. rope. But they got one company. Now, that's a company that creates to rope cards for everybody. But there's one company. There's one company in Italy. I think it's in Italy. And the only thing they, they create one tarot deck, it's called the Lucame Tarot Deck. And in this tarot deck, if you get it, it tells stories of stuff that's happening in the future. And so they got Oshosi sitting at the table with all the other seven Orishas. And like I said, they drinking, they drinking from this skull some kind of beer. Or some kind of well, some kind of uh, liquor or something. And then they got Obatala turning up the bottle to his head, which he don't suppose to do. Because Obatala, whenever he get drunk, he create retarded children. Now, it's ironic, because the retarded children doesn't might not necessarily mean retarded, you know, that kind, but it could also just mean deficient. Mm -hmm. Because there was a bottle out down in Virginia, he wasn't a racist because he had, a group, he had a group of black people and he had a group of white people in the same class. So you can't say that if you were racist, you wouldn't have white people in your class. Exactly. Right. So whenever they would give the reading or who their head was, he would tell all the white people, your head is Obatala. Mm -hmm. but why our head can only be Obatala? And this is and, and, and this guy is good. This guy got a this guy got a, a he had a box coming in this country with a spirit in it that talks. Some spirit. He couldn't get it through customs. <laughs> if you ever heard me talking to, uh, in the London tape, there's a brother that opened for me named Israel. Now Israel is a king in Nigeria. His father was over a little small village. And he's a king over there. He might go visit him once a year, but he, you know, he lives in England. He don't want to live in Nigeria. No, you know, um, he don't want to live in Nigeria. He got one of those box, he got one of those heads, a box with a talking head in it. That talk, it's a spirit to talk to you. He got one in Nigeria. So they, this brother in Virginia is, is real hooked up. So when he say all of y'all Obatala, he's not talking. He means your deficiency. You see, your deficiency as far as, you know, not having a certain amount of melanin or, uh, you know, or, 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 or something, you know, or, or something like that. So, but, so that's, that's, that's very interesting um, on, on, on that particular part that, uh, uh, about this, um, about these Europeans and all of them being the children of Obatala. Mm -hmm. But in this, in this particular deck, the Lukame deck, they got a bottle out chugging down a bottle. And they make sure the other ones just got their little glasses. 
and they, they dipping this with whatever this bill, something out of Big Skull, and uh, uh, Lemba was at the head of the table. But in this particular one, they give a bottle a bottle. They're like, well, you, you ain't been able to drink for so many years, and we're going to give you the, the big fifth. You see what I'm saying? He's chugging it down, too, and all. So I'm just so my point, but the point I'm trying to make here is, is the Lucamate that is talking about. The Lucamate is a Brazilian type um, outfit as far as the uh, Canton Blair or whatever, or uh, 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 whatever. And what they might be saying here is, with Obatala chugging down that liquor, is what became of us. You see what I'm saying? Us being a bunch of lushes and stuff, or drunks, because. They do have the Temple of Barubador in, and I got the book of the Temple of Barubador, and it's got about a thousand frames, but they got us on the temple, of, and that's in Java. And Java is an island off the coast of, um, <coughs> I think, Thailand, and, and Indonesia. And anyway, um, they got a, the Temple of Barubador, looked like a spaceship. And in there, um, they got us drinking liquor and playing sax, blowing saxophones. Black people in that temple, you, they got Eugene Adams tape, you know, and I, and I actually, and the thing about it was, I said, I got to find uh, a book with the layout of the Temple of Arumidor, and I found a big, thick book, and they wanted, they wanted $80 for it used, <coughs> used, and the Spirit said, you're you going to get this book. <laughs> so when I, I said, hell, I'm going to pay the $80, and I went up to the counter, to get the, and hand him the book, and he opened up the book, and the binding broke. But the book was still together because the binding, you know. He said, he, he said, well, I can't, I can't charge you eighty dollars for this now. He said, so you, can you give me thirty? Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's the spirit. <laughs> he said, that's the spirit and stuff like that. So, so this Luca May deck got some stuff in there. In there, it's called the Luca May deck, and it's unbelievable, and stuff. And, and um, How it's got all that body. Uh, L U C A M A, the Lucamate deck, deck, and you know, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Um, uh, and, and they got all kind of stuff in there to be studied, because remember the tarot, the tarot is uh, actual, it's a study system of the soul and the surround and, and and the mystical surrounding, but it's also a divination system. So a lot of people buy, talk about it, and when they find that they can't divine because they can't, they, they can't study, they give it up, and they don't go and study the actual cards and stuff that was going on, uh, and stuff that's going on. So, Obatala chugging back that liquor can mean a certain thing too. It can also mean it can also mean that we don't have necessarily have to. Uh, deal with human concerns that would make someone inefficient. With them sitting around the table and all of them drinking, it means that, hey, this is now the return of the gods in the West, because they said it would rise in the West. Yeah. So when you get a chance, to, if you can get this Lucamate deck, you got to go online and try to get it. And, and, uh, and when you get it and stuff, just start studying the cards. Because it comes with a little book, and half the book is in in Spanish, and then they got a little piece in English. In the, in, you know, so you're going to have to basically, it's a picture window, in the, and you basically going to have to just look. They give you a little bit of information on the actual cards, but you're going to have to really look and just to see what your spirit tells you, and all, or what, you, what your spirit tells you on that particular thing. So, um, uh, uh, let's see, I just want to uh, I'll see a few other things. A few other things we need to do. And then we're going to go to a massive um, question and answer. A massive question and answer. So I think we can go ahead and, and start on that and get the ball rolling. Um, get the ball rolling on that. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through some stuff. You know how sometimes something just pop into your head out of nowhere. Yeah. And I was just looking at commit, 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 and I was watching um, CNN online, and they got the science stuff, and they were talking about the comets. And I was saying to myself, a comet is something that comes here from out of space, and the only difference to me, phonetically, between comet and commit is how you spell it. 
So I just wanted to see if you could touch on the illusion, you know, the, well, the similarity you know, between the thing, comet in and comet. In etymology, a lot of all of that stuff adds up. Right. If it didn't, how could they even get codes and all this kind of stuff now these days when they get, make these Bible codes and they make all this kind of stuff? And it doesn't necessarily. And, and, and they say this Bible code works. Well, it's still even though it's, it's a later thing, it still was taken from ancient scripts. You see what I'm saying? And it might have been translated umpteen times, but nevertheless, it was an actual Same. script that yeah. once existed in the ancient world, ancient Egypt mostly. And, uh, and as a result, they can make codes from it. So if it's one of those things where um, uh, 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 codes can be made, made out of these words, then you can also say the etymology, everything has a connection. So yes, it, 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 it could be that, you know, it could be that, um, you know. Uh, on that particular level, so yeah. Um, uh, what's that? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. When you were speaking about that we're molecules and everything yeah. like that, well, there's a film called The Last Minute. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. If people would get that, yep. they would get the whole get the whole jump. thing. Last, last Minute. Yeah, yeah. that's and, exactly. And, and then the other piece to it is when we were talking about Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Now Disney made an anime movie called Atlantis, and yeah. the people in it looks like us. Yeah, yeah, in, in, in 2000. Right, so if you can yeah. get a hold of that, yeah, in that, 2000. that's you know what? story too. They got a channel called the, the Chiller Channel. Mm -hmm. Come on right before CNN. And one night I recorded it, but see? See, technology every now and then fucks up. <laughs> I recorded this thing on Atlantis. And they was trying to find the origin. They was talking about Atlantis and they did all the type of stuff, but they was trying to find the origin. They were saying, well, could the Mayan temples be Atlantis? But we got Atlantis in different parts of the earth. Right. This would this would happen, because we know it was all one landmass. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they showed something that they never showed before, and I was recording it, but I got that damn DVR. When you get to a certain amount of <coughs> movies or pictures, it starts to delete. Yeah. But you got to mash protect, put a protect on that shit. But I swear by the DVR now. Because you can go backwards, you know, all kind of stuff right. like that. Yeah. But you, but you got to put, if you get up in the 60s, you got 60 entries, it will start deleting. And I had this thing and the DVR deleted. Now, if I put the, 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 the I, I could have put a, 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 a DVD in the DVD player recorder and recorded it, or I could have put a VHS in and I'd have had it. Oh, mm -hmm. But this is what this thing said. They said, could this Mayan temple be Atlantis, these, this whole, and they went with, the, with that big one, Tiwakan, whatever thing is called. Huh? Tiwakan. They went to that big one. They said, well, let us show you something. They went off the coast of Ghana. I was bullshit you not. And they had the same temple complex in a space about big as this room. They say, could this be the model that they was planning to build Till Water Con by over in West Africa? I said, look at this shit. They had a mount, it was about as big as this room, but it had the whole temple layout as the one in Mexico or wherever that thing is, Peru or whatever, that part Tijuana Khan was. With the pyramids and all. In West Africa. I say, why we never saw this? Because if you saw this, you would know that that was an African culture. And you would know who built it. And why it's so much like ancient Egypt, or ancient Kemet. And they had it, and the damn thing got deleted. But I go, I go every night, and it's going to come on again. <laughs> I mean, inside, that, inside that pyramid, they got the pictures of the people who lived that during that time. Yeah. And the lightest brother is your complexion. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So inside that pyramid, they, they trying to tell the story. Hey, I met a whole group of people from Greece. A whole group of people, and they were no color. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. In Greek town in Detroit. Right. And I said, well, um, I said, well, um, what you, I said, well, you all, yo, he said, my family been in Greece since the beginning of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, since the beginning of the time. Now, Oxford University, you had uh, Martin Bernal and the, uh, 
uh, Black Athena thing went off in the late 80s, right. and Black Athena in 1980, 1992. Hmm. And that went off, so they quietly did one in Oxford. See, they will tell the truth when they live in a society where we are not in mass. So over in Britain, they had a conference and put the, and, and put the end to the Greek thing and showed how Greek culture is nothing but an extension of Phoenician, Carthage. <laughs> well, you're right. If the damn Athena, if Athena is uh, first comes, they trace it to Carthage, or what you call modern day Libya, you see, and that's what Athens, the center of all that stuff was, then obviously, and they, they, they did it through the mythology, they showed the mythology, of the, of the, the Greek mythology, they showed the uh, Phoenician mythology, and they were like, wait, this is not but an extension of, the, uh, of those people. And so to have a person your color in, 19, in 2003, it means, it, it, it means that it took them years to sequester those people, you see what I'm saying, to the point where as when you go over there, they got you in a certain part, you see, right. you know, they got you in a certain part, you know, so this is interesting here. I was on the plane coming here. Flew out from Atlanta, had to make a layover in Charlotte. Got on the plane to Charlotte. Uh, got on the plane to Charlotte. Now, when I was in Atlanta, I always request an aisle seat. So, when I got to the, when I got there, they didn't have no aisle seat. So I went and, and so I went and got me an aisle seat. She said, "Okay, now, I got the aisle seat coming from Atlanta, uh, coming going to Charlotte. When you get to Charlotte, they got one aisle seat on the plane. Um, one aisle seat on the plane, but it's at the back of the plane. I said, I don't care where it is, as long as I get an aisle seat." You see, um, you know, so I'm sitting on the back of the, uh, uh, the plane, and there's an East Indian couple beside me. They like in their sixties, and they just they just speaking mostly East Indian. Mm -hmm. And so this girl came, the stewardess came back, or what you want to call them, my flight attendants, you know, or uh, what have you, came back, the white girl, and she said, uh, "Hey, would you like to sit up there in that seat there?" Um, you seat there? She said, because it's only two of you all in that seat. You could have the room between you, you know, and stuff like that. And I said, well, yeah, fine. But I said, I thought they didn't have no more aisle seats. So I got up there. It was an Asian girl. It was an Asian girl. And she said, well, I was sitting in the seat, but I moved to the window. And all. I said, well, cool. We started sitting there, plane flying. I pulled out a book. She looking at the book then, because she wants to have a conversation. <laughs> and she later told me, I like to have a conversation when I'm flying. But I'm like, baby, hold on now, you're Asian. You, you, how many times you get an Asian to actually sit and speak to you? <laughs> so, so, right, right. so we started flying, I said, wait a minute, this is a Kwan Yin moment. <laughs> <laughs> because now, when I first started dealing with Kwan Yin, Kwan Yin said, I want to come to the, to, the, to the Africans in America, they need to know me. Yeah. So I started talking about Kwan Yin, and I was in D.C. back in 06 with Brother T.J., and, and, and we went to the, uh, what's it, uh, the Old Country Buffet or some shit. He takes you, you know, I guess get more bang for your buck. Right. <laughs> so we in the buffet, and an Asian girl comes up to me and goes, hi, how you doing? And I'm looking over there, she's sitting with a white man. <laughs> And I came up there to teach you. I said, teacher, that Asian girl spoke to me, asked me how I was doing and stuff, and she's sitting over there with a white man. I said, I thought, he said, yeah, that's, that's odd. An Asian girl gonna speak to you, you might speak to her. I said, oh, that's Kwan Yin. Okay, so, so. I said, okay, this is another Kwan Yin mo moment, because this girl, she asked me about the book and she wanted to talk. So she started talking, and she said, um, I'm Japanese. She said, I bet you ain't never spoken to no Japanese. <laughs> like this. I said, you're right. I, 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 ain't never, I never could tell who you all were. I ain't never talked to no Japanese. Maybe a Korean telling me some chicken wings. And we do have an a, a upper scale Chinese restaurant we go to that's got these, 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 these Chinese. Uh, uh, 
But I said, I ain't never talked to no Japanese. <laughs> so she said, I bet she said, I, she said, I know. She said, we are the British of Asia. She said, we, she said, we are the British of Asia. She said, we're the most arrogant people on the planet. She said, we don't mess with no other Asians. We That's shut them true. out. She said, and we think we better than all the other Asians. I, I said, well, I'm, it's a pleasure talking to you like that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, um, so then, so then, this, so then she started telling me her family life and stuff. I said, so what you doing in South Carolina? She said, well, I'm over here. I'm, I live outside of Charlotte and so well and stuff like this and stuff. You know, I accepted Jesus Christ and stuff like that. So it's going to get interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, how did you get to Charlotte? And then, and then she said, okay, let me tell you what went down. She said in the 80s, the Commodores, um, whatever black groups was coming over, Shalimar, because you know what's name live in Japan now, Jeffrey Daniels. They was coming over. But they had a group of brothers that would come over and help them win the, win the concert tours. And they would stay over during the remainder of the year, but they would be roadies and there'd be people that help. She said, I met up with this brother. And she said, we started kicking it, and I got pregnant. And she said, I had to flee Japan because I knew I couldn't have that baby in Japan. It wasn't Japanese. They don't play that shit. Oh, no. She said, a family? <laughs> they took her, they got what they call a deed. Might be like a family register. Rich people have a register who's on the register of the family mm -hmm. so they can get the inheritance. Mm -hmm. But they call it the deed. And she said, my grandparents and all the deed to come down to us, they said, they cut me out of the deed. Yeah. Dropped me from the deed. Mm -hmm. And I had to get the fuck to South Carolina where the brother was from. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I couldn't have that baby in Japan. Uh, it might have been some. It might have been some genocide stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all. And she was your complexion. She said another thing. I'm your complexion, and the Japanese calling me ugly. I said I already know what it is. See, the racism with the Japan is it used to be a black culture, mm -hmm. and they fought against. Remember, they said half the veins, half the half the blood in the veins of a samurai war must run black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's in the Ivan Van Sertimon book and mm -hmm. Renoko Shida and all that talk about mm -hmm. that stuff. So they got a real racist thing going on because they fight against, they fight against their past. See, so I came down here and I had, you know, I had four children and I accepted Jesus. I said, well, what were you into? Because she said she went all the way to college in Japan, through college. I said, so what was you into before you accepted Jesus over here? Right. She said, my family and all my surroundings they were into some new age stuff. I said, oh shit, you done left the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, that Shin dude, she was talking about all this stuff that was into. She said, but her parents, and she said, her parents just on it for years, but later on they're in their 80s and she done warmed down and they done accept Jesus. <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> but, uh, she was saying, you know, her husband later on in the 90s got on crack, and so she divorced him. And so she come up here to heart. She said, well, I said, so where'd you come? So I come to New York. I come to New York at least once a month. I love New York. I said, well, she said, I come up to Harlem. Come up to Harlem. I done hooked up with a church up here. I done met another brother and all that type of stuff here. And I, and I come up here, and she said, I, and, 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 and I go to the Schomburg. She said, because my children, I've been going to the Schomburg, say, look, y'all better learn something about your history, because... I still, she said, I still know my history, but they kicked me out of the country. Mm -hmm. So she said, no, they're going to learn about this. It was African-American history, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. that's more than most black people know. So she mm -hmm. come to the Schomburg to get the history to teach her, her four children. Now, they are all grown now. So she's kicking it with this brother and all, but she started talking about how they were into the new age and all this type of stuff. Then she said, well, cause, since I'm a Christian, she said, when I went back, when I was going back to Charlotte, I opened my, I opened my ministry up. I opened my, 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 my friendship up to the rednecks. What was she saying? She was like, she said, when I first started going to the rednecks, going to their church, they was preaching, don't vote for Barack Obama because he's an antichrist. And then she said, 
She said, so I got a close relationship with these rednecks down there. And she said, so we might be thinking, you know, this post-racial society. She was like, look, I'm in where you all are not. They don't love you. She said, all they do, the stereotypes and stuff they do, you see what I'm saying? She said, that's what they live by. I say, they bred on that. Yeah. And if you don't learn anything about a person's culture, that's the only thing you're going to perceive it for the rest of your life. So this whole thing about, oh, you know, I ain't into racism or whatever type thing here. Look, if, if you have got a certain stereotypical notions and preconceived notions about a people being low, if you don't take the time out to learn that history, they're going to always be that way. Mm. And, when, and, so, and, 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 when she's, and, and only when they're around you will they quail their mm. thoughts about you. She said, but they're around me. You see what I'm saying? They're around me, and that's all they do is talk shit about you and, and their, opinion, their opinions on, on you. She said, well, you know, she said, the black community has, has embraced me. I said, look, you fucking light skin with long black hair. Not <laughs> <laughs> about two years. Black people is color struck. <laughs> you, you, you the Asian girl around there, and everybody want to, you know. So I said, yeah, they gonna embrace you. <laughs> 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 That's right. You see, you know, you might be a little darker than the average Japanese, but you. That's some bull. <laughs> them niggas love you because you the red, you the new red bone. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Harlem and man, they treat me. Oh, it's so wonderful. And the white friends are like, Holly, you go up in that ghetto and all this, you ain't there to get shot and all, all the stuff they see on TV and stuff. Right. And so, she said, but they embrace me. I said, man, you the new red bone in town. She said, yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's just interesting how, and so we had a conversation about an hour about the culture and all that kind of stuff here and all. And the only thing she said was, now, you know, Japan is um, went through the same thing that America's going through now as far as the, 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 the bottom fell out in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And so they ain't got the money they say. And so now Japan is the richest nation on earth now. They're the number one creditor nation. Mm -hmm. Not Japan, China. China. Mm -hmm. China. So she's saying now China, and they're saying what's the name is on, Korea is on the upswing. So all right. of a sudden, the Japanese is now opening up to the other Asians because they own the lowest on the t totem pole. She said, so we seeing this interaction between the Chinese and, and the Koreans and stuff that you wouldn't have seen 20, 30 years ago. So she's saying, but now they the, they, the, they, the, they the broke ones. And Japan is running things. And the funny part about it was, and she said they're opening up the black people because you got the youth that grew up on the rap. Yes. Right. They grew up on all things black. Okay. So these people, they are now coming into power. You see what I'm saying? And they are hip hop. Generation X people. They went through all of that. So she said, so that now that becomes black. She said, so now I had to flee over 30 years ago. You see what I'm saying? I uh, know, but she said about 25 years ago, you know, in the mid-80s, mid like 1985, she had to flee or she had gotten killed. Now, shoot, it, it ain't nothing. He might have all kind of, let you know, me, let me babies here. Yeah. Bobby, it's interesting you say that because my cousin that lives in Jacksonville, Florida, hooked up with a Japanese girl. Three months ago, they just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Then they had insurance here. They went to Japan. She had the baby there. They stayed with her mother for a while. Right. See, for a while she and, said, but if yeah. it had been in 1985, it was a different story. So, but you know, but like I said now, the, 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 that age group, they grew up on hip hop. Uh -huh. You see them in that, oh, 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 you know what this is. Give me some questions. I would like to go into the more mystical. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm interested in knowing about uh, the powers that we're supposed to have inside. How do you go about getting them to work better for you? Because you can bring about. Things well, on the there's like no substitute. Stuff like that. You have to, you, you, you gonna have to study. And the reason why I say that is this: you have to get certain books, get certain books on the chakras, the kundalini, the different metaphysical things, um, the seven powers in man. There's se several books you you can get. I, and the reason why I say that you have to study because if you don't know what these things are, you have the experiences, you won't be able to translate them. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of people have experiences all the time and think they're going crazy because they don't have the knowledge of the experience that they're having. Right. You see what I'm saying? And stuff. Because I'm telling you, it, 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 it's going to get to a point it's going to be phenomenal stuff to start happening. It happened to me every day, but I'm acclimating in to say, well, 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 what is this? You see what I'm saying? And where is this going? You see, so I, you see, but the point I'm trying to make here is you're going to have to get a few books of any kind of, and DVDs or anything you can get that, that explains some of these, these latent powers and different things like that. But it starts. <laughs> Um, uh, anything that any anything that's dealing with the Kundalini or dealing with the chakras. Um, um, there's books called Living with Kundalini, and anything um, dealing with the chakras and dealing with those things. Um, any books that's dealing with with recognizing the spirits. Uh, um, re recognizing recognizing the spirits and, and what the whole thing is about. Um, is a way to do it because because you. You must acclimate yourself to the point that you recognize what you're doing, but if you don't have any knowledge, the crazy house is full of people that just had spiritual experiences, you see what I'm saying, but they're in a, uh, but, but they're in a state of ignorance, in a culture of ignorance. And so therefore, you know, they think they're crazy and they're not. You see what I'm saying, they're not. So, yeah, what's that? Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back to the um Part when we're talking about the animal kingdom. Yeah. Now, the difference between us and the animal kingdom is the animal kingdom is six sensory. Yeah. They they work with their intuition and yeah, they can and tell us. You know, we were feeling like we're so much better than them, but right. we're actually six sensory beings. But because we have become disconnected, right, right, with right. nature, right, we are inferior we to are them inferior. now. Inferior. So if you yeah. want to get more spiritual connection, connect back with nature, watch nature, acknowledge nature. I think at the heart of what shuts down everybody mm -hmm. yeah. is the religions that we are under. Right. Okay. And the foods. But, because the religions, you know, because you, because even you got people down, hog mall eating people down south that got all kind of spiritual stuff. You see what I'm saying? And they get certain things too, it's just that they don't have they don't have the knowledge of it and stuff. And then what happens here is that the religion is designed. The religion is designed to make you afraid of anything that is going on spiritually. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, it's, it's, it's going on spiritually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also within that same Bible, there is information such as crystals. It's, but but in the, it's in the also part, information. In the chakras. It's information saying that you don't supposed to eat no pork. It, and I don't know how the hell the exactly. Christians that dog everybody else about exactly. every damn sin get around exactly. that one. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You going to hell because you wear a short dress. But goddamn it, it says they don't say about short dress in no Bible, but they right. tell you about pork. Right. You know. Mm, yeah. Mm. No, but in the Christians talk They'll say that when uh, one of the said had a uh, vision, then he had to go to um, preach the gospel to those who were eating pork. Uh -huh. So that was the New Testament. Okay. So it's okay for the Gentiles to eat pork. Right. Let me tell you something. <laughs> they talk about Paul. Paul was a government agent mm -hmm. for the Romans. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they say anything about a, a government agent or somebody that's tricks you, you're going to double cross the people you're working for. So Paul double crossed. Mm -hmm. The Romans and had to get the hell running away from the Romans yep. and ran into the Christians that he had double crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and they was going to kill him. <laughs> and Paul said, Whoa, I found Jesus. I, I saw Jesus. This is after so called that Jesus died or uh, either whatever or uh, whatever the thing they was dealing with or uh, uh, whatever uh, cult they was dealing with. And he said, I saw Jesus. And they needed a Roman to, uh, to, to justify Jesus. And they let him in. Now, they're saying that, now, we're not talking about, a, see, the physical Jesus took almost 200 years to create in Rome. They were talking about this mystical Jesus, and Paul started turning it into the physical thing, but what happened was is this. Paul, the, 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 the cult, uh, it was a Jewish set that was preaching on this Jesus thing at first. But they were talking about a mystical Christ. Paul came in 
and created a, he said, now I'm, I'm Roman. And he created a Christianity for Romans, the Gentile. You see, so even the one that the one that the, the, the original set was work, was dealing with, Paul created, designed a whole set. You see what I'm saying? You see, like they right now they got um, uh, 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 somebody trying to open up a gay mosque. Uh, you see uh, what? Yeah, that's yeah. on the news. Yeah. 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 They actually they actually petitioning for the one down that the one that they're building up. Down okay, there so, by the uh, so, World yeah, Trade. So you can bring new elements into something. And Paul whole thing and he said that's what it was. He fashioned one that the Romans could later accept. And the Gentile. And he made it more of a cosmopolitan religion. It's the same thing about all that stuff for Christmas is spiritual. The Christmas tree, all that shit is spiritual. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, there's a Christmas spirit you get to this day, even if you're conscious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. And, and, and the next day, that thing leaves right after Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Along with your money. Now, what happened was this. Now, what happened was, was this. Well, they made it commercial, but the motifs started before the commercialism. What happened was when they went up into Europe, because these, 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 a lot of this ritual stuff was put down with the Druids and all these black people that lived in Europe. You see what I'm saying? When when we reported that the first first uh, Europeans were black, and all these traditions were handed down for years. So when they when when the church came and they said, okay, this is what we'll do. We're not getting rid of none of our traditions. But what we'll do here is we'll incorporate Christianity in it. And so the church said, we'll allow you to keep your traditions if you put a Christian myth around it. The problem here is we now are throwing away the, the, those traditions but mistaking it for Christianity. Two different things. The traditions go back thousands of years before Christianity. Mm -hmm. Now, I was in Baltimore, Maryland in 2005. We did the lecture, went to this brother house named Ray, did the sit down, where we did a sit down thing on camera. A sit down thing on camera. So we went to uh, his house the next night. So, he immediately started trying to explain away why he got a Christmas tree. <laughs> he said, well, my wife, you know, his wife wasn't conscious. She wanted a Christmas tree. Spirit said, no, uh-uh, you got to fix this shit right now. And God hand came, you see, which is actually best in Egypt. He's the leprechaun in Ireland. He said, you gotta fix this. He said, that was my holiday. <laughs> and the lights and stuff, that was the fairies' holiday. So you gotta realize the fairies. Remember um Rosalind Jeffers went to Africa? <coughs> went to Africa. She's been going since 1963. She went to Africa. She started getting into my metaphysical stuff. And in and in 94, she went back to Africa to tell her about the metaphysics stuff. In Africa, in Ghana, they looked at her and said, look. And they pointed at little people in the trees. You stop been coming over here for about 40 years and <laughs> you never told me that they say you never asked. <laughs> hey Bobby, let me get you to pause. I, I, I have a what is called a picture packet that you order on you order uh, about phone, which has 50, 50, 60, 54 pictures in it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah, we give you the, oh, okay. we'll, we give you that. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, for the people that want to order my, my information, uh, you can call 678-358-1055. Uh, 678-358-1055. Six, seven, eight, five, eight, five, five. Five. So that's the stimulus package. The stimulus package that you're going to buy today, if it start working for you, you might want to get your family member some. So you can call 678-358-1055, and we got the picture packet that we are dealing with now. And it's a 64 pictures of... East Indian gods, Asian gods, African gods, Egyptian gods, Egyptian temples. There's more Egyptian stuff than anything. 
and it's got every, it's got all the stuff, and it's got rare photographs that I've collected over the course of the last 19, 20 years. It, yeah, and it's the picture pack, and it's unbelievable, and, 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 and all. So it is worth having. That means when you start having these experiences, you will have a reference of those pictures. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, and we also have the we also have the uh, last night lecture. We also have the last night lecture. So now, they were showing. I'm gonna still into this thing about the fairies. Oh. So they was. So they was. Um. She showed the fairies in. They the the the, the, the Ghanaians showed her the fairies in the tree. So uh, the, the fairies in the trees now. Um. Then there's a sister named Avit. Well, there was two incidents that happened recently. That was in the 90s. A, a sister that had a, a blog talk radio. She had one of the earliest blog talk radio shows um, in, uh, in the 2000s. She went over to Africa, and she saw the fairies. And they called her Kawi. The fairies are the ancestors. They call her Kawi. And so she saw them, and they got a book out on them. Then one of the sisters moved to Ghana, Back in 08, uh, I think 07 or 08, and she was in her in, in in her room or someplace, and the fairies told her to go back home, go back to Atlanta, go back to America. So now I'm in the guy's house with the Christmas tree. They said, oh, that's the fairy stuff. You see them lights and stuff? That's the fairies. Those are the answers. Those are the spirits. Mm -hmm. But see, now we're throwing all that out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of the Afrocentric stuff and all, because we now, you know, <laughs> you know, we don't want to be associated with anything Christian, but we don't understand that Christianity came after those traditions was already there and they're very spiritual. Mm -hmm. right. And it's basically the it's basically the uh it's basically the winter solstice. Right. right. And, and so all that stuff is in the opening. And one of the day, and one of the one of the days um for the winter solstice is they got a list of gods that be on those days. And one of the one of the gods and goddesses on that day is called the Free or the Fae. The Fae are the fairies. So it's proof that that was original fairy day. And stuff and, and, and all that all that type of thing. So that yeah, what's that? Mm -hmm. When you say Faye, you you saying um F E Y? I think it's F A E F A I A I I got it. F E E. You get fun short. F E E. F E E. Yeah. Well they they got different pronunciations for it. It's a Faye, the fairy. F there's one that's F E Y too. Okay. And uh yeah, that I know they got a um they were talking about in Ireland, they have them on video. Yeah. In the uh, in the gardens and in some of the older forests where they haven't had like prog yeah. prog you know, like, what progress. What we did, stuff. we built a fairy kingdom in the front part of our house when you first walk in the door. And we got everything in the house. All the Egyptian, all the Yoruba, all the Apollo, anything you want to name, Asian stuff. But we built a fairy kingdom in the right in the front part of the house. And as a result, they appeared. And at first I didn't recognize them because I'm from South Carolina. And if you ever go to South Carolina and people from New York they used to come to South Carolina and this is what they did all summer. Because of the gnats. So they be talking to you but they're not used to the gnats. And they do this and so, it, I, so, for some psychological reason, what I thought I was seeing was gnats. It took me a couple of days until Linda said, look at the fairies. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, look. I was thinking it was gnats because I grew up with gnats mm -hmm. down south. But there are no gnats in Georgia because Georgia is landlocked. Mm -hmm. So the fairies was there. Then it snowed the other day. And it snowed on Christmas. Right. And we saw little fairy prints in the snow. But we know what the cats do. We know they pass. It's right. not the cats. It was that, and, and Linda said, come in and look at, you see, it was too many of them. She said, look at them fairy prints. So there is a whole mystical dimension. You see what I'm saying? And they will, they will let you see when they're ready to let you see. <laughs> exactly. But you got to get rid of a lot of reason. Mm -hmm. 
you got to become a child. Because children see all this all the time until they get to a certain age of reason. And then they disappear. You see, that's that whole movie. Um, what's the Peter name Peter of that movie? The Andy Library? No, the other one. Um, Peter Pan. No, there's another one that came out that was off the chain. Um, Photograph of Fairies? Huh? Was it Photograph of no, Fairies? Photograph of Fairies. Where's the Terabithia? No, it's the one more. It's close. It's the one line? No, it's one closer. <laughs> this one here is the real deal. Not Pan's Labyrinth? No, it's not Pan's Labyrinth. No, this, this one here goes even yeah. further. No. No, not Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, the, the, the head something. Let me see. The head. Um, something script. Oh, I know the, about the owls and everything like no, that. No, no, no. This came out about a year before that. Oh, okay. The, um, it, it'll come to me in a minute what it is. It's some kind of script, so-and-so manual or uh, head something manual. Uh, it's about the, the about, about the fairies and the children moving the house. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, oh and they have to look through the thing to see the whole thing. other world. Yeah, see the whole world. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. another thing. I have that somebody's name. Um, there's something. Uh, the spider with spider with spider with spider with yeah, spider 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 yeah. go. And, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, the only way you can spider. see you gotta see it with a little glass. Yeah. Yeah. And unless a hog squeal spit in your yeah. face. Yeah. When the hog squeal fit in your face, which is a, some mystical um, entity, you can see the, you can see the your fairies and stuff like that. Now, so there's also dark fairies too. There's books coming out on the dark fairies and stuff, mischievous things that happen when you you get certain things happening. You're gonna be fairies and stuff. So we so you, but those kingdoms are now arising. Those, those kingdoms are now arising and stuff. You see, so we put up a, a nice Christmas tree. Been putting up a Christmas tree for the last three four years now. And all kind of mystical things, and we keep the Christmas tree up until the end of January. Right. Mm -hmm. Because this is because before it was Christmas, as far as the day of Jesus, which is actually the birthday of Mithra, it was actually a festival of the whole winter solstice. Right. And we are in that particular season now, so we keep the keep the Christmas tree up until the end of January, and all kind of mystical things happen. Mm -hmm. Use a real one. Hmm? Now we got a plastic one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. About you seem to be very knowledgeable in the Haitian spiritual voting system. How does that happen? If you don't mind. Oh, with me. Part study or what's out there is part spiritual. Mm -hmm. Basically, what really happens here is, see, you got to realize something. Although a lot of people that's in the tradition think that if you're not in the tradition, you can't have access to it. But what they don't realize, they worship these powerful beings. And how can you say the powerful beings that you worship only have access to one geographical point? You see what I'm saying? Or one geographical point? They're supposed to be gods, and that means they can contact somebody in Peru. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So mainly one of the aspects is and when you really think about it, when I get into certain things, I'm being contacted by certain deities. Okay. You see like that and, and also. I got, I got that. Number two. Uh, does um, Ezri daughter displace Ezri Freda? Is she displaced? Yes. Is Freda, is Freda still around or did daughter displace her? Uh, it's they have now come together. Ah, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. No, they used to hate they did. You right. <laughs> you right. And I, I had an experience with it. What's the question? We got a whole uh, the Erzuli Erzu Erzu Danta and Erzuli Frida. They don't get along. Two aspects. Uh, and they don't get along. The, 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 the Haitian god Erzuli um, Frida. We built a room to Erzuli Frida. But I had a, I had a, 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 a big picture with a woman with a big afro that I took from Ebony and drew. It was one of the last pictures I drew in, in 2001. It was a picture from Ebony in the 70s of Tamara Dotson. I changed her face up a little bit to make it mine. But it's an afro woman. And I took it and I put it in Erzuli's room, Frida. She kicked it off the wall. I said, oh, well, the tape, you know, the tape fell off what happened. Yeah. I take the thing reinforced with some duct tape on the back of it and a wire <laughs> with the duct tape and a wire. Then I took it and took a nail and hammered it in the wall and put the thing on there. She pulled that thing right out of the wall. I see. 
Oh, I get it. This must remind you of this must be the energy of Danta. Urzuli Danta, which is also called Marinetti. So Urzuli Danta said, well, no, just take me and put a red ribbon outside in the back tree. In the, back, in, in, in the tree for me. Up until this year. Because this all these energies of there's a truth. Everything in the heaven realms are now together. The angels, the demons, you see what I'm saying? The upper world, the underworld, the different, all that stuff is together now. There ain't no polarities or dualities. It's only man is the last thing. We are divided. Yeah. All that stuff is united. That's what these cosmos coming together. I put a dancer in the room this summer. So now you know you, you mean that you know you have both of them in the same room? In the same room, and they're getting along fine. And they don't affect you? No. <laughs> Why? Because, see, you got to realize, you have to understand anything. Even if man is changing, nature is changing, the gods are also changing. And they will, they, they are being separate from each other was based on certain cycles of certain energy. If those energies are changed, those gods are not changing. And the only reason why it's hard for you to understand it is because you're looking at the tradition. See, people's right. traditions make it hard for them to understand that these traditions are not meant for eternity. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what meant for eternity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they are, they, are, they are together. And like I said now, like I said, because I was in the middle of a war, a Apollo war. And a Yoruba wall. And all uh, and a Yoruba wall. And, and 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 stuff. You see, and I was in the middle of that, and they came together in 07. Mm -hmm. They came together in 07. Um and, and all and so all that stuff started merging. And I was literally in this in this particular wall between the Polos and the Yoruba, and the Yoruba was trying to kill my ass. Mm -hmm. And it, but they couldn't, I was protected by the Apollo. But like I said yesterday, I was messing with a girl who initiated in Africa on the Ocean River, and she and her father was a leg bar. At this time, a leg bar and them, you, we was in this family fight. This, so we can be in this family fight. They would have affected me if I, would come, if I thought that I was subordinate to them. But they couldn't affect me because I said, my soul is just as old as yours, so we equal. Mm -hmm. We the same gods. So therefore, it was a standoff. You know, they, you know, they talk a little shit and get some annoyance on them. They couldn't do nothing because I wasn't on the human level. You see, I was hanging out with the other crew. You see, so, but what happened was that the, dog, the, the girl, the, the girl uh, that I was trying to get with, she, her father was Legba, and Legba said, you bet not mess with that nigga right there. <laughs> you mess with that nigga right there, it's going to be hell to pay. You see, so she came over one night, and we, we started trying to get busy, and we got in the bed, and she said, huh, it, it just ain't feeling right. I go, okay, okay. <laughs> Another time, so she came back that next week, and shoot, it was on. And the leg bar got in there. He killed her son. She had a, she, uh, she had a son. She had three boys, the oldest son. She killed, he killed her son. She had a nice Mercedes Benz. He took the Mercedes Benz. She had a nice business. A Caribbean restaurant. Took all that. She led by messed her up on that. So my point, but the difference was she came in as a subordinate up under him. See, whenever you say, I want you to be over me, then you got to do what they say. Because you are the one that said, I want you to be over me based on going through the initiation. You agree to that. So if you agree to that, it means that you got to do what they're saying. When he told her, you don't fuck with that, don't mess with that nigga right there. Because we are at war. Well, you well, see, uh, my, my girlfriend, daughter will come and push her out of the bed when the husband's at home. Mm. Yes, he falls yes. off the bed for her to be on that bed. That's why yeah. nobody's saying that. No, you know, I had a, I had a, but see, I had a war like that too. I, when, when, when Ginger left, that was the sister I was with for seven years. So I, I started, you know, I said, well, I, I, I just went like a kid with candy store. So I had these several women. And some of the women were Yin and Yah women, and some of the women were Oshun women. And 
they had a little tussle. When the, when the Yemen y'all women would come through, uh, Oshun would be messing with them. And when the, you know, and they had these things, you know, so um, the girl said, dang, I think um, Yemen y'all is kicking me in the side. She was an Oshun girl. You see, or they would have some of the other women I messing with call and stuff and all, and there's a fight going on between that type of thing. And they had that, but that, so but you got to realize those were there's 24 Oshuns, there's 24 Urzulis. So you're talking about something that's on the lower level that behave that way. But see, they have now rose to another. They are they're, they're not the same beings that they were. They arose to a higher being. Now, what, what people is in the practitioner, the rituals that they're doing to them, they're still getting the effects of the old gods that rose up because they're getting the effects of their residue. See, they left an energy behind or a thought form or a residue. Yes. And so when you're tapping into the old traditions, you're getting the same stuff that you was getting when, it was, when, when they were a part of those traditions, but they are now rose up to the higher level. That's why they're getting along. So, so let me tell, tell you some, something now. So how do people you know, deal with those things now? Hmm? How do people deal with them if some people don't know what you know? Because I'm here with okay, so okay, many I, well, well, I'll tell you, I can, I, can tell you, I can tell you the formula on what has to happen. Mm -hmm. The only person you have to worry about is you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. This is given to you so you can change, but you're not going to be able to help the ones, you see what I'm saying? You see, because right now, everybody's path is related to them. <laughs> it's related to them. Everybody's path. That's why you can't even go to your family members about nothing conscious or whatever, because it's for you. Right. And, right, and so you go to your family members with that, and, and they beat you over the head, and rightfully so, because that path wasn't for them. They will wake up later. Mm -hmm. This path is for you. And, but, you know, but we, we, get, but, you know, we so arrogant. We done learned a new thing, and we want to go over there and, oh, I don't, I don't celebrate Christmas. I ain't going to eat your ham or whatever type thing here, you know, y'all. And you beating them up, and you don't understand. That's not their path. Right. And what they do, they beat you down, too. You be coming back, yeah, man, mom, you know, they didn't accept none of that. They thought I was crazy. No, you. this is for you, and you will find the ones on the path. So basically what you're supposed to do here is you have to take this particular information and, 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 and manifest it and embellish it based on what you're doing, based on your path. But the other people, you see what I'm saying, if, if they haven't come to this realization for some reason, that's not their path yet. Question. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Question. Well, so if they come to you, what if your family members come to you and they like, yo? If they come to you, yeah. they will be the ones that come. They'll be ready. Okay. And what about all these different spiritual stuff that you're telling me? Because I seen a tape you had. You had all these different spiritual entities in your house. Yeah. Can everybody do that? Because you have yeah. your bud. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. 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 Everybody can do it. it, it okay. For the mere fact that you want to do it. Mm. Okay. Means yeah. that that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you go about it? Yeah. They got there's a there's a they got a, a guy a got a, a, a they got a girl here named Donna Ma. They got a DVD. You get that DVD and you take care of. They got it all on the DVD. I think she spoke here. Yeah, they have one out there as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 She does a DVD. That she goes through everything what you need to do based on all. What's that? One? Yeah. Um. I I seen on one of your tapes you were saying that um some of the the gods from Egypt didn't really have the their powers anymore because we weren't really embracing them? No, what happened was is this. What happened was is this. Uh, well, there's two ways to access them. Basically, they exist in you. They're your DNA, they're yourself. But the outward ones, what had happened was we came, had long periods of time when Egypt, when it fell, you know, no one on the planet was actually dealing with the ritualistic aspect to those particular gods. In order for those gods to get the energy, they must feed. And you and, and they must feed based on the energy that the practitioner has given them. Mm. So since there was a the tradition run around for almost a thousand years, you see, um let me know you Yeah. Yeah, since the tradition wasn't around for a, a certain years, um they existed, but the power of what they would have been if you had been in ancient Kemet would have been different. 
So it, they basically go dormant, but the ultimate thing here is these gods are nothing but the formulas of you. You see what I'm saying? The formulas of you. And all. So that's what that was about now. But you, there's nothing that's completely lost. You see, there's nothing that was completely lost. And, uh, and what I was actually talking about when I said that was the, there is no system on the planet that is left complete, that's whole. All systems over the course of years, they deteriorate and we have fragments of those traditions. So there's no system left on the planet. You see what I'm saying? That's whole. Now the white boy got it. That's why shit worked for him. The white boy goes and say, look, first of all, ain't, ain't none of these systems I created. So I don't have to get into the traditional and cultural argument on being loyal to what little fragments we got. So what he does is he put all the fragments together. He call it chaos magic. But he put all the traditions together and he utilizes them. So where... Hmm? We're gonna take a break, Bobby, and then yeah. we'll come back. Okay, yeah, what we're gonna do, okay, okay, what we're gonna do, and he, I'm gonna just wanna say this, and then he utilizes them and he gets the stuff to work. So where something was fragmented, he can put another piece from another culture in there and make the bridge yeah. together. So with if you if you gotta think of these things as formulas, you see what I'm saying, ultimately. Because what they ultimately are, what we ultimately are of is energies. So we're gonna take a break. I got the stimulus package. How much? Uh, I got the stimulus package and, and all, and I got the, uh, the like I said, with the check. <coughs> and um, we also have the uh, Give it the up for last Put week. Put your hands together for Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. But then add your own energy in there, too. Okay. I had the house, my front of my, inside of my door go. Okay. I filled the check out in green magic marker mm -hmm. and put it on that gold door with a Ganesha to open out of the way. Mm. And sure enough, and you y'all brothers, most of them who know me, I'm not gonna tell you something that don't work. It worked. And I'm telling you, get them checks. Alright? Mm -hmm. Don't come to me later, because I ain't carrying them. <laughs> he was right here and y'all was right here. Mm. He got them right there. So right. so cause everybody always asks me afterwards. A lot of times things work in prosperity. <laughs> yes. And, and we be looking for monetary, and it works monetary, that's good when that comes, but there's prosperity things that comes. Yep. Somebody might give you something. Somebody might do this. You see, somebody might make a way for you to go someplace to get some money. Yeah. So it works yeah. in different things, like but ecology. One thing I can just say, to you, honestly, to sum it up, is kick ass. Alright? It's a kick ass check. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Alright? And the good thing about this, this check is it wasn't nothing that I came up with. The, the a angelic spirits. Um, angelic spirits actually sent us to a place to get the check. Then they sent us to a place to get a book that has the guardian angels in it to sign the check. You see, and then everything happened, happened it, 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 they came to us. You see, so that's how that whole thing um, um, went mm -hmm. down. And basically what it is, is there's been a, all systems in the last three years um, has come together. And, and so the angels were like, well, hey, don't leave us out. You know, because we just, we, we call netters in Egypt, we call angels, you know, and other things, and it's, it, and it's, you know, it's just different names for the same God, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, I'm going to put Bobby back on, but one more thing is, two or three people at a time, the food is ready now, so please don't pile up, at least one person, two people, then they come back, or two more go, make it nice and easy for everybody to get through and get what they want. What is yes, on the sister. menu? So maybe one I don't know. Well, somebody, yeah. well, when, they, when they send them back, we'll okay. know. I don't even really know. Okay. But I do know the sister have some good stuff. It should be all out right. of LIU. And definitely the juices, all right? Okay, so we're just going to kick it right back off with Bobby. Um, I don't know what you're getting into yet, but I can't wait to get home and watch yesterday's joint. Because I, I heard about that before I was opening. We got the key in the door coming up here. People be, oh, did you hear? Did you see? I said, I'm going to see tonight. <laughs> It's all good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so everybody, give it up for the brother Bobby Hammond. Yes. Thank you. Um, that's that's a good question. What what did we miss last night? Oh, yeah. I heard. Ah, I ain't gonna lie. Me? My Why phone was blowing up. Facebook was blowing up. Six hours, man. Yeah. This is the man right here. He's gonna tell you what you missed. Because we have the DVDs right here. Yeah. Clemson Brown. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay
Um, so yeah, uh, but um, I was gonna say something. Um, yeah, don't forget to get the third eye rituals. These things work. Let's give me give me an example on how these things work. Let's say you gotta go to court, or you got an appointment somewhere, and you need a certain amount of energy. You see, so this not only does this do things so you can probably see spiritually, but let's say you need a certain amount of energy. Well, if you do the third eye in a, um, um, ritual, just recite it with a candle, in order for the third eye to work, the kundalini has to rise and the melanin and all the fire has to rise up to the third eye. So that process alone gives you enough energy to deal with what you need to deal with when it comes to the, um, you know, to, to the people. If you want to invoke certain gods, you call on the third eye, then you might say, I want to talk to Ganesha. I might, I want to talk to so-and-so. And this is how this works. So this is only five hours, but these are real powerful. So, uh, you know, um, uh, before you get out here tonight, get that, too. Give me some questions right quick. Yeah, what's that? Mm -hmm. I've been studying a lot of black history, especially out of the 1800s with uh -huh. black Americans. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, there's a thread that keeps repeating itself. There's a trend that many of our great people from over here was not accepted by the so-called upper-class Caucasian you know, the the plan, you know, the South, in the South and in the North. Mm -hmm. A lot of them went over to Europe and you see in all of these stories with like Carver, Douglas, all of them <laughs> sat at the feet of monarchs. Mm -hmm. right. They all sat in the courts in France. Yeah, right. Then they, they it, it was like they be started taking tours and going to all of these different, they'll go to England, They'll go yeah. to the, 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 the courts in France or whatnot, and they were being treated by the monarchy. Right. Now, when, when I do my Moorish history, and like you were touching on yesterday about the Moors being the progenitors to all of that information, mm -hmm. even even that, that way of living, that monarch class, mm -hmm. would it, would it, do you have any information with that being tied in, especially saying that this race that got created in the Americas being a distinct race are they being accepted by the parents who are these Europeans who basically set this up? Outside of this country, we are still numero uno. They love us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? They love us. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Because they, because they know our history. Mm -hmm. so they, they know our history. And so, uh, we, you know, um, so yes, no, mo most definitely. And, and it is up to this country to... Deceive the world about us. <laughs> so a lot of, let me give you an example. One of the worst portrayals of us in human history <laughs> happened last year. And that was the movie Precious. Uh, Precious. 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 Oh my goodness. Oh, that was Absolutely disgusting. It was, it was one of the worst events in human history. Yes, yes it was. It happened last year. Yep. Now, we don't understand certain things. When they make those movies, they're not making those movies for us or for America to be deceived. You know black people with Mercedes Benz. You know black lawyers. You know black doctors. You know this. So whenever you see this derogatory thing, it goes, oh, it goes under the radar for you. Because you say, well, that's not realistic because we know we successful are. black people for the last 200 years. Mm -hmm. But what we, what we don't understand, people in Germany, people in France, black people in Germany, black people in France, black people on the continent, they don't see you as the doctors and the lawyers and the most educated black people on the planet. See they food. see you. Who wants food? Two more people okay. can come out and get it if they want food. They see you as precious. Mm -hmm. You see, and especially if you get that uh, Tony Broaddus thing on precious, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody should watch that. Yeah. But they see you as precious, and they see you as those pathetic characters, mm -hmm. and because they wow. gave Monique. Mm -hmm. All right. the, the Academy Award. They uh, solidified it. it. it Anytime you get the Academy Award, the world goes to see these movies. It solidifies it, but what it does, it brings more attention to the movies. Mm -hmm. So that, it, so the entire planet saw Precious, uh, these pathetic characters. Mm -hmm. And Monique, 
Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I told people, I, you know, I said, you know, I hate this motherfucker. I said about two, three years ago. And my girl said, hate is a strong word. But the spirit was telling me what this ignorant nigga was going to do. Mm-hmm. And she's not even aware of it. Mm-hmm. She's going to win the Academy Award, but it's going to, this stuff is going to go around the world. And so they use these things to just try to deceive the rest of the people who used to think highly of, high of us, you know. So, yeah, so that's a form of warfare. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's the uh, perception, or uh, it is the image warfare, which is more powerful mm-hmm. than just killing somebody because yeah. the image, le- the stereotypes yeah. last for generations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I just wanted to um, veggie back uh, right on that because not only does it, it uh, when they put the Academy Award winning, you know, yeah. uh, advertisement on top of the movie, does it make more people go to it? Yeah. But then. When you have a negative movie with negative portrayals yeah. about black folks yeah. with black stars in it, yeah. black notable stars already, right. it makes people think it has to be true. Yeah. Otherwise, more people are starring. Not only that, not only that. Um, I met two some black girls who came from England back in the late 90s. <clears throat> and they came to Atlanta. And they were very disappointed because we was taking them around to different clubs and different places. They were like, we don't want them old bougie niggas. <laughs> you know, I said, no, these are just regular black people. And what they thought, what they saw on the hip hop videos. Mm-hmm. They want that. They thought that we lived that way. All day. Like, 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 let's say I get up in the morning and I'm jumping up on cars with naked women and things. They wanted to see that. And they were very disappointed when they didn't see that when they saw oh. upper mobile black people. And I was like, that's videos. The people on the videos don't, those videos, they don't act, we don't live like that. But they, they walk up and down 125th Street every day looking for that. You know right. what I mean? That's why when the niggas walk by with the pants hanging down, right. the Europeans turn in, in unison and starts clicking away. Yeah, but these were black these were, oh, they're, they're, Well, they're you know what? Work. These were two black girls from England. Well, we no, seen I'm something saying, bro, yesterday, yeah. though. It was funny. Me and Sinetta. Yeah. Um, a young guy, maybe about 22 years old, Caucasian. And when I say Caucasian, I mean so Caucasian, it looked like he couldn't even come out early in the afternoon. He got to wait till the sun yeah. dropped. Like, he's still that light. He pink. <laughs> Pink light, like yeah. Harry Potter Caucasian. Yeah. Yeah. And he was going to jail, and he was arrested by four, what, three white officers and one Spanish guy for smoking a joint. Half a joint, too, they arrested him with. Right there on for, uh, between 7th and Lennox. Now, the funny thing was, not just that the white dude was going to jail on 125th, because he was standing around. <laughs> but the funny thing was his face. Because I study human nature. That's one of my favorite subjects. And his face told me the story that he just knew the one place that a white boy would not get arrested smoking weed at was on 125th. Because he watched them damn videos so much, he figured he knew he was good to smoke on 125th. Yeah. And if you're looking at Saturday night, at the, by the time he got arrested, it had to be about... 50 joints lit up on 125th at the time, but they got him because you were out of place and you didn't belong there. And he came there with those preconceived notions. So that's one instance where it actually worked against him. Yeah, so it's, but so, um, so yeah, but uh, this whole thing has been going on since Marcus Garvey. They decided after Marcus Garvey broke that many Africans in the diaspora together, and they were all together that they would make sure that we'd be separated from now on. And uh, separated from now on. And they were, for the last 80 years, they've been working towards that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Give me some questions. Mm-hmm. I have a you, so it's YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, with, with you and then with a lot of other people. But the mm-hmm. thing that was on there that I'm concerned with is that they had someone named Yaku. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Um, the Yaku was just a mythology to tell about some genetic gene splicing that we did do. Now, I, the thing about it here is, what you're talking about here 
is not all Europeans, but it was a group of people, mainly some Egyptians, because the Egy Egyptians say in the Hermetic text that our problem is we created a, another race of men. That's in the Hermetic text, Walter Scott's book, Hermetica. Um, so we got several, we got more text on the creation process than we do on the climate adaptability. Although the climate adaptability is true too. So you do have two aspects of history. You got climate adaptability, where some people got caught in the ice age, you see. And we, you got right now, you can go in certain caves and you will see albino bats based on being in darkness or whatever. So, so you got climate adaptability which all the Diop and the Afrocentric people explain, Charles Spence. But what we but <clears throat> we do have that. Now as far as text, the temple walls of, 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 of City One, um, the Hermetic text, they also talk about gene splicing. So the Yaku thing that is that's a the, that's a mythology that they do to explain it when they talk about the grafting, but they do have <coughs> Evidence of that, as far as what you call in the Hermetic text, um, in the book, in, in, a, in a text that never was translated into English in France called Abduction Extraordinary. They talk about the, the European coming from certain ancient Egyptian texts. Mm. And so we got several, we got several texts, even texts, um, um, the Astra Veda in India. And they talk about we have a group of people, but we have these races. And they are all nourished by the sun. Except one group of people who are who hide from the sun and are, are, are affected by the sun. You see, so they go into this, you know, so we got those particular texts. So it's a it's a combination of both. But are they doing the same thing today when they make those clones? Yeah, oh well, now they yeah, Oh uh, yeah, they, I mean, cloning knives with allergy. But the majority of the food we eat here mm -hmm. is cloned. Mm -hmm. Majority. Mm -hmm. It's cloned food. Cloned food. You know. And the feed from the people. Yeah, and so all of that. Mm -hmm. So Yaakov is mystical? Hmm? Myth, um, um, mythical. Mythical. No, well, no, 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 no. We did have to, some priests. Huh? It probably was in the period of Atlantis. Yeah. Atlantis has two periods. It has a, sim it has a, a spiritual existence, uh, semi-physical, then they have the physical existence. And they talk about gene splicing and stuff like that. Remember, technology, you go back in history, is very high in advance, and then the technology falls. And so the people that come behind and think that they're on the cutting edge of technology, you know, you just was discovering things that was lost. Right. But, but, like I said, the evidence on the temple walls of SETI 1 talk about the gene splicing and all that, and the hermetic text talk about that. So we do have two uh, aspects of history, but we also have climate adaptability and, 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 and stuff. So it's, it's, it's a variation of the two. Maybe the gene splicing might have been a smaller part of it, but it does exist. Mm -hmm. But what about Mother Ninti and like Arishna Yawur? Didn't they have a whole story on creating that other human being? Who? Um, Mother Ninti and. Where's that coming from? What tradition? Angel, I would think that's under the Sumerian text. And, or and, the Anunama Alish. No, that, that, that? Uh -uh. Worst thing you can do. That a new militia is thousands of years old, and when they was talking about that, the white man didn't exist on the planet. They were talking about creating humans. Right. The new militia and the, right. and we were talking about creating humans. Now people get the text, and because we don't have a time out here, no, that's creation of the white man. I got a big argument about five years ago on the guy. Then man, that, that text is the creation of humans with with Tiamat and 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 you know that's so it's, it predates. It predates the coming of the white man thousands of years, that text. And they were talking about, you see, because at first they talking about space, and then they're talking about, the, you know, right. you see, so that's, that's um, so the new mill list is not based on <coughs> creation of the white man. It's, the, it's, the, it's the based on the creation of humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you know, so it's it's on that particular level, you know. So, mm -hmm. so the majority of black people here in the uh, Western Hemisphere, then what you're saying, we are not human. Hmm. Yeah, is that what you're saying? As of now, based on the process that we have gone through, based on our DNA, we are closer to gods than the human. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Based, based on the process, the alchemical process that we went through. There's a, there's a story to talk about the white man will come and get Shanga Fawn, an uh, ancient person, and he will take him back to the white man's land and nurture him and nourish him by, and we know they nourish men in, putting you through all kind of hell. Mm -hmm. And then after he nourished him, this stronger Fong, this ancient person, will rise up and destroy the universe. The strong of the universe is becoming uh, coming to a new reality. A new reality. You see what I'm saying? And so, based on our DNA, that's changing constantly changing constantly and we're in the latter half of it it could be days off based on that we are more on the God level than we are on the human level the human level was the cocoon so a caterpillar at first goes into a cocoon and comes out a butterfly we're closer to the metamorphosis level you see what I'm saying? We're on the cuff of it. Then we are at a human level. That's why when you try to get back to do things what we've done, they fail for you. Because our DNA and our energy is not conducive with stuff that we've done. If 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 if, if it was to, if, if it was to get back to be resurrected in Africa, we wouldn't have had to fall in the first place. Exactly. You see. So what about a diet? Mm -hmm. What type of diet is there? This thing, ultimately, this thing, he ain't even talking about no diet. Mm -hmm. This thing is based on your DNA. Mm -hmm. It's like this. You was eating lollipops and now and <laughs> onions, <laughs> onions, pork, and all that. When you woke up one morning, and about 11 years old, and you found out you had some pubic hair down there. <laughs> or you found out your beard start growing in. This is what the DNA is like. We talk about a evolution to Godhood. Mm -hmm. It don't have nothing to do with what you eat or whatever kind of thing here. Comes up, yeah. What, whatever. Let me tell you something. I got stuff happening to me on the spirit realm that's unbelievable. You see what I'm saying? But I had that damn lobster last night. <laughs> but the junior and the got two. <laughs> Now, ultimately, <laughs> now I would suggest people, you know, diet is good for, you know, but that this don't have nothing to do with that on this evolution. Well, I don't think I'm trying to balance, you know, a little bit of Yeah, yeah, you know, on this thing, we're talking about something that's, we're talking about something that is the the cutting edge based on the DNA. Based on the DNA, mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to ask a question, actually. Um... Bobby, I'm like the only conscious person in my family, and I'm sure a lot of people here are. Is there anything that we can do specifically, like if we make our transition? Because I know if I died, they would just have a regular Christian funeral, talking about I went home to the Lord and all that bullshit. So is there anything specifically that we can start doing now? Yeah, you, 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 need, to, you need to write it. You, that's one, and you need to do two things. You need to write To bypass all of that. You need to write a will. Yeah. For specifying what you want to be done, yeah. or you need to get to an entrusted friend and have them to do a ceremony for you. And you don't have to have your body or anything; just do a ceremony for you. Mm -hmm. And all you know, I mean, like I already that. told my brother that I want a closed casket because my parents, both of my parents, are deceased already. So yeah. I told my brother if if anything happens mm -hmm. to me, closed casket. Yeah. But yes, but, but even on the other hand, you still need to have somebody that's, that's conscious to do a ceremony for you to go to the other side. And it's a nice when you can do it. It only takes a few minutes to document this. Only thing you have to do is stand in a room, 
Imagine that person beside you. You imagine a doorway in a dark room, a light. Then you then you call on a nubus. You can either call on a nubus as he's standing with the with the with the with the dog head, the jackal head, as he's standing as a god, or you can call on the anubis, the one that looks like a, 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 a in the full body of a dog. And either way, so the one that you call on, if you want to call on the one um, that's the dog head in the god's body, you tell the person, you said, grab hold of this dog's hand, or this uh, god Anubis' hand, and let him lead you through the door. And you imagine them going through the doorway with him holding his hand. Or you can say, <coughs> grab hold to this dog's leash and let the dog lead to the door. It's very simple. And, and imagine them going to the other side. While you imagine and you are creating a vision for them to see what you're doing, and you imagine them going to the other side, and it works every time. What mm. happens if someone doesn't do that? Mm -hmm. What happens if someone, you know? Well, you, well what it is, if, it. if you have a Christian thing, you go where all Christians go. You see what I'm saying? You go where all Christians go. But that's fucked up. You know, and stuff. Where, you know, what was designed for that, whatever that burial tradition was designed, you go there. You know, you know, you go there. Usually when you go there, you come right back. Then you, you're going to be, a, it's a reincarnation cycle. They go to hell for a little while, but they, they come right back down here to hell. Mm -hmm. Bobby, I, I have a story. I'm just dying to get it out. Go ahead. But, um... This happened, I can't even remember what happened, but I heard that something similar happened to you. I had hit my head, that's why I can't freaking remember when it happened. I think it was Sunday or, or Monday. But um, I went to bed, I was pissed off to the highest specific. And um, I got up like maybe about four o'clock and I went to go to the bathroom. I was running to go to the bathroom, but the piss was coming down and I slipped in my own piss. And I slid, and it felt like somebody pushed me, and it felt like I went flying, and I hit the freaking edge of the door. And I know I heard a crack. And I just, I knocked myself out. And um, I had to have been out for a good while. Um, what woke me up was my husband, as it was mm -hmm. snoring. It woke me up. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I, I finally went in, and I was like, I was hysterical. I was like, oh my God, I freaking bust my, you know, eight, letter, foot letter. And um, he was like, you got to be more careful. But, you know, and I noticed because I'm an avid hula hooper. And it's like if I don't hula hoop for like a mm -hmm. month or two weeks or whatever, I get a little off balance. Sometimes, not all the time, mm -hmm. but, you know, sometimes. But um, I know my head was like big. It was like huge, like water mm -hmm. head. <laughs> and um, it went down. But then I got like this really big black eye. You know, so that's why I was telling everybody he kicked my behind, you know, but you know, I just want everybody to know that it's not true, <laughs> you know, but um, I just thought that was like the strangest thing, you know, I was like, what was that sign? Because I know you fell and bust your behind too. Did no, you I was going to broke you... my neck, literally. Yeah, and, but I thought oh, I But I, I didn't know it and I went back to bed. Oh, see, I was scared to go to sleep. I didn't and I went back to bed, so. Um, okay. And, and so you I'll, broke your neck and yeah, went broke back my neck. to bed with But I didn't know it and I went back to sleep and the next morning. Mm -hmm. I had to figure out what happened. Yeah. Wasn't no pain or nothing and stuff like that. I just yeah. remember I was sleepwalking. Mm. Hey. And cracked my neck, broke my neck. And all, you know. But the only thing about it was I had died in the spring of 2001. Mm -hmm. I was talking about that yesterday, about the people dying. Right, right. Now, so, so the process is you got two bodies. One body has a heartbeat that keeps the physical body running. That, but you have another heartbeat that's developed through your heart chakra. And it's the heartbeat of your soul. It's the heartbeat of your soul. All this is in a book called um, Kundalini, The Energy of Depths. The Energy of Depths by Lillian Silburn. That heartbeat is there first before the physical heart. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's the one that incarnates down. So once, but once you become a certain level of consciousness, it starts to rotate. It's like a ship. So I could be... Um, especially in 2000 when we really started doing, yeah. I can run down. I can I can run down. I can do all kind of work and don't get no heartbeat or nothing. But lay down in the bed and the heart about to jump out my mm -hmm. body. So those heart palpitations is that other heart. What's that happening in 2000? 
it's just, it's just uh, my, 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 um, my heart, the other heart started coming through. Because it was going to be the heart that when I died in my sleep in 2001, this heart took over. So I remained living. How did you know that, though? Huh? How did you know that? Oh, uh, well, in this particular case, I got a, uh, 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 well, I knew about the two heartbeats. In this particular case, I had a nephew. Every time he see me, he would go, dead man, dead man, dead man. They would say, why are you saying your uncle dead? He's a spirit. So he called me dead man all the 2000. How then I, uh, one of the sisters. How old is that nephew? Is he uh, no, he's, he's about 13 now. Mm. And so, then I, and, and so, um, and by the way, they've never had any kind of meat, any kind of sugar, any kind of anything. So, you know, um, but I got a call from a sister. She was up here in, uh, at that particular time, she was up here in Amityville, where she's from. Um, she was in Atlanta and she moved back to go to nursing school at Columbia. She was at, and you know, so she was up here and she called and said, hey, apparently you died in your sleep, you know, a couple of days ago, uh, sometime in the spring. <laughs> So we, you know, on, on that particular level. But I realized what was going on. It's called life and death. It's called life and death. And what it is, is one body takes over the other body. I'm asking you this, because in 2000, right after the, um, the towers, like in that October, yeah. I was moving for the first time from New York to Georgia. Mm -hmm. And the day I was supposed to leave, it was a Sunday. We already had our Greyhound tickets and all mm -hmm. that. I had a stroke so bad. And my body shook so violently. They said I was out, physically flatlined for a few seconds too. Mm -hmm. My arms came out, the shoulder sockets and everything. Right. And then um, me just being me, when I finally came to, I was still in shock. So I didn't believe why I, that I was in the hospital on that. Cause the night before I was partying hard, you know, mm -hmm. drinking and everything. Um, I told them to put my shoulders back in. They put them back in, I could move them. I wasn't that much in pain. Mm -hmm. You know, needless to say, I wound up getting out of there, getting dressed, and moving. Okay, what happened is this. You, you didn't hear the move. You wasn't at the lecture last night. Mm -mm. He got it. I talked about a group of dead people amongst us. Mm -hmm. And you are a living example of it. I, I gave my experience, and I gave several experiences <coughs> of people. But when you died like that in flatline, that other spirit took over. Mm -hmm. And so, right now... You are one of the walking dead, mm. which means you can get shot or you can get hit by a car and you survive and you don't know why because you've already passed from the person that is affected by the physical realm mm. and that other heartbeat sustain you and then you become a superman. Mm. So then certain things start happening where you can eat stuff, you can eat toxins, and it converts the toxins into fuel. You see? Yeah. You can convert, no, 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 it, it's, it's, it's up. What is supposed to happen to us is your DNA is supposed to develop into a protein. That's a new protein. It's a God protein. And once that protein develops, I stopped eating in August, mm. <laughs> period. But I ain't losing no weight because the protein is what's nourishing me, you see. So this is what happens to dead people, mm. you see. Um, so that's what, what was happening, what they did with Bruce Willis in Unbreakable. Mm. He didn't get no colds, he didn't do this and all that and stuff. Because the, the, the mystery here is, is he's already gone to the Osiris realm. You see? And whatever's running his body is running it from another dimension. It's, his soul is running the body. Mm. So this sister that just mm. fell with her story, Bobby, does that mean that she is... More than likely. And you know, I, I, I got to be a dead behind because I've never had a cold or flu or anything like that in my life. I have no idea what Yeah, you stop like. having colds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Is that the same thing mm. that happened to the congresswoman who got shot in the head in, in, in Arizona? Yeah, that's why they stopped calling her Gabriel. And calling her Gabby, cause they scared. 
You see, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back there in a minute. Just okay. to touch on that Bruce Willis thing, is, that would be the same thing with the Sixth Sense, when he actually was a spirit. No, he was actually dead in the Sixth Sense. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a little bit different, right? Well, well, no, he was alive as one of these unbreakable people. They were talking a the story of, of certain black people. Okay, is that like in the Chronicles of Riddick? Uh, those dead the guys are alive. They're dead. It could be something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 got, I got to go back and watch the movie again to see the, the concept and all. Yeah, so that's what that, that's what that is. And more than likely, if you flatline and all this kind of thing here um, and stuff, basically, you died, you see what I'm saying, and then when you you came back, the your soul basically started running. See, most people's souls is dormant, mm -hmm. sleep, and that's what the sleep of Buddha is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Most people's souls are dormant. Conscious people means that your soul has started <coughs> to wake up. Mm -hmm. And your soul, when it's, try and it's trying to learn about itself. Mm -hmm. It's like a mummy. Yeah, it's, it's trying like to learn, learn about itself. Mm -hmm. Now that's why it is important that when you become conscious, and then all of a sudden you say, I'm through with this mess. I'm getting out of it. I want to go back to being dead. You can't. <laughs> you know, what will happen, you can do it physically and psychologically. What can happen, what's going to happen is your soul will start to whip your ass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what your soul will do, it will create all stuff around you to fail. Amen. And it will put your life in tur turmoil until you get back on it because your soul it's trying to develop itself to ultimately become God and come out of the body okay. and become glorified. Mm. And now you want to come and just be another handkerchief head, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and your soul is not going to have it after you. So you can't. It's an impossibility for you to forget it. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And if you just double back, your soul will whip you behind. It'll create all the things around you to get you back on 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 on, on the track. track. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to say, I think. When you do that, ancestors, the ancestors won't let you go either. Certain mm -hmm. ancestors that you may have evoked it or connected with or always been there, they won't let you go. Yeah, back well, yeah, you would have you would have that you would have things like that too. It's just like um when I was um you know, I, I, you know, I like I said, I walked away from the, the shoe deal. Mm -hmm. Already got it wasn't like I was inspiring to be this thing. I had already got the shoe deal. I had already had the company. I had, um, um, you know, gonna fly to Italy three times a year to do the shoes and stuff. They were gonna, they, they had, they had already Ebony set up and Essence set up. Them Jews said we gonna play that angle as the first black shoe designer. They was gonna play that angle while it was hot. See, when it, it, it's not a real big thing if if it's, it's if, if so many people have done it before. But the first one is always good, and I was the first one. They already had first black. They already had black fashion designers: Jeffrey Banks, mm -hmm. Willie Ware. Stephen Barrett. Yeah, oh yeah. But the, the shoe thing in the late eighties, I was gonna be the first. So the Jews were gonna make money off me. So, it, so it, when you're the first, uh, you're already in. So I had already made it. It was all set up. And and, and so now the first level of death was. <coughs> was consciousness. That happened at 29. 20, no, 20, I think it's 27 or 28. I think it's, uh, what, let's see, what did, what, what did Jimmy, um, Jimmy Hendrix die? Hold that thought. Mm, 26, okay. And so what happened was, um, I died. The only thing I could do is just to study this information. And all uh, uh, that's the first death. You died, the old consciousness died. Mm -hmm. And so, and then about a year later, I was sitting in the, about, about two years later, I'm sitting in the house and made all the deals, and I didn't even get in back in touch with the man. They had all the deals and all the stuff was laid out. You know. So I asked, why did I walk away from a million dollar deal that was already set? It wasn't like I was, you know, trying to get in the dough. No, they were like, yo, you know, we got you. And then they told me, I said, well, wait a minute, I need to ask you this question. Um, how, I don't have no money, so how 
am I going to make it with no money? And he said, well, look, first of all, I need to know something right now. He said, I'm going to go upstairs because what he told me. He said, uh, when I flew up to New York in, in, in 88, he said, you need to go back. He said, I'd like to go back to Atlanta and get some black investors. Get some black investors. And so he said, you know, we're going to do that. So I flew back. And in 89, I lined up the black, in black investors. So the first thing happened was with the black investors was, it was like, oh, that nigga lying. He ain't, he don't know no Roger Bone. <laughs> One of the guys used to buy to the trade shows because he had a store and he used to buy from Roger Bone. So I, they said, okay, we down with it. Because they didn't figure I was going to come through. You didn't get niggas saying shit every day. <laughs> so you said, okay, yeah, you know. So I called him up. With him and two other black investors, I called him up on a three-way with Roger Bone. <laughs> Roger Bowen said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I'm going to come down to Atlanta, we're going to have this meeting and all of this. So during, by the time of the meeting, he said one thing. He said, now, do you want me to come down to Atlanta, <laughs> fly down and have the meeting um, one week with you and your boys, or I'm having a, a family reunion down in Atlanta the next week, he said, we Jews now. We don't even have no people down there. He said, but well, we like Atlanta, so we're going to have the family reunion. We're going to fly from New York, and we're going to have the family reunion down in Atlanta. Down, down in Atlanta. So what happened was, he said, when do you want me to come? And something the Spirit said, you better have him come on his family reunion. Came on his family reunion, and I knew something was funny that day. Now, we got millions of dollars and stuff that we going to get ready to get into. And I asked the main guy who knew Roger Bowman and who was one of the main guys that had been in the fashion industry for about 20 years. I said, you need to come pick me up because I was, I was in my 20s. I, I was a college student. I didn't have no car or nothing. I said, you need to come pick me up. He started giving me this thing where, you know, now you're getting into the big times. You got to have responsibility to get your own transportation. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I just lined you up with a deal, <laughs> but but it didn't register first. I just said, okay, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll get a ride. Don't worry about that. So we go we go out to the PhD perimeter. I'm sitting in the place, and none of the doggone investors show up. Oh God! So he was planning on ditching because what happened was when I came through with it, it was bigger than what they. With yeah. bullshit, and so they got scared. Mm -hmm. They didn't. So a lot of people, they are big fish in a small pond, and then when something else comes, they will level it because they don't want to think that they might fail. Uh, uh, you know. So they didn't show up. So Roger came down. I said, "Don't worry about it, man. We're gonna start the meeting." Now this man, I met this man, and I met this man twice at the time up in the penthouse in New York, and uh, in Atlanta. Every time I ever saw this man, he had a glass of liquor in his hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we started going through the meeting. So I said, so how are you going to do this, man? He said, look, this is simple. This is how the layout. Then I learned the layout that Oprah and all the rest of them was on. Because I'm in the big time with the head Jews. He said, this is how it goes. We're going to give you some money. He said, what we're going to do is we're going to set up everything. And we're going to put... The investors that I'm going to give you, they're going to make money off your name, and the people are going to think it's your company. And you're going to get, they're going to invest in your company, and they're going to get all the money for five years, and you're going to get an expense account. <laughs> an expense account. He said, in that expense account, you know, we're going to set you up with the cars and the nice house and stuff that make, make people think that you got it. An illusion. Yeah. You see, that's what Oprah was on that hot until uh, then the, uh, after so many years, her, her company went to Harpo after, but at first you get on an expense account. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they say we're going to make it so that you know you're going to look like a designer, you're going to look like you live like. And they're going to make money for five years and get mm -hmm. their money out. And then after five years, the company will go to you. So this is when <laughs> Willie Smith dies. Mm -hmm. Remember Willie Ware? Mm -hmm. yeah. All of a sudden, five years or something, yes. he uh -huh. mysteriously died. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Kelly, mm -hmm. he mysteriously died. So what they do, if the company is valuable, they kill your ass. Mm -hmm. But with me, 
for some reason, the guy, he liked me. So he said, no, I'm going to make sure that you get your company. But the only thing about it with shoes and fashion, your shit might not even be in style five years from now. <clears throat> See what I'm saying? Then you get a company that's defunct. So it's all kind of ifs and stuff, but you do, but if it works right, you can get a company and you can be successful like an Oprah. So this is what the deal is. He said, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to get $500,000 today from my family members. Today. I said, now what kind of people can go upstairs and get $500,000 for those bunch of drunk ass family members? I said, shoot, you better not go to a family reunion and get some money off a nigga, period. $5. $5. He'd be like, yo, brother, where that $5? He owed me. Uh -huh. He want interest. He might ask you for six back. Right. So he said, I'm going to go upstairs and we're going to start the ball to rolling right now. That's, how, that's where, how I was hooked up. He turned around and he said, I like you, man. Do you want to go back to Atlanta and line up some more black investors? <laughs> he says, we got a store in Linden Square Mall. We do all the stuff. And, it's just gonna, and we're going to give you Ebony and Jet, and they're going to launch this shit in the black thing and the white thing. And because you're a novelty, white people are going to buy in black people. You're going to be the new Tiger Woods. He said, I like you, man. Do you want to go back and get some black investors? I said, I think I'm going to go back and get some black investors. I didn't, because he, he was going to put me in business right then. He said, now, if you don't get the black investor, don't matter. We got the money. He told me how this shit works. How, 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 this, how this shit works, you see. So, then I start studying so much, and the next day I was sitting in a room a year later, I never, I never heard from him again because I never contacted him again. In 2000, and in 1994, when, my, when Ginger had gone to the Native American mounds and they opened up her psychic ability and stuff, yeah, and, and the psychic ability, um, when, they, when they opened up her psychic ability, what happened was I asked the spirits, I had the spirits, <clears throat> We want to get in on the conversation. <laughs> when I asked the spirits, um, what happened to the shoe thing? The spirits say, we had to work around the clock to get you out of that, to get you into this path of what you were born to do. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times when you want to understand with the stuff in your brain that you think you want to do some stuff, it might be for vanity purposes, mm -hmm. and the spirit wants you to do that energy for something else, and you can't find out why you keep failing and failing and failing. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yes. You see what I'm saying? That's because the spirit wants you to do one thing, and once you tap into that, it opens up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you trying to do some other stuff for some vanity reasons. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to please some family member. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a girlfriend or, 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 or whatever, and that's what happens. What's that? Mm -hmm. what, who would be a good uh, source to begin studying Paulo Mayombe? Is there, is there, should I go from mouth to ear? No, you need to go from book. That's okay. the problem. Because if you go, see, they got these niggas now with the Yoruba and all this shit. <laughs> you go up in there now, you're going to have to spend down there $10,000. That's right. Mm. Get a book. Mm -hmm. The spirit know that we're lazy and we don't want to study. Mm -hmm. And that's why they have these motherfuckers pimp your ass. Mm -hmm. They had a nigga right. in Atlanta last mm -hmm. year. He came from down Memphis to Atlanta. They said, we're going to give you a woman. He got down there and the woman was so fine. He gave him $15,000 to be inducted into the Yoruba thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put the woman in the car. He drive out. Of, he got to the state line of Tennessee. And, it, like, and them niggas came out with M16s and uh, Mac 10s and all kind of stuff on his behind. Took the woman out the car and he got on back fifteen thousand dollars robbed. Ooh. But see, that's it. You don't mess with nothing. No ear to mouth shit. Read. Give me some. Get Carlos. Get, get, get the one. Get two. Carlos Gardenio Montenegro's book. Paulo Mayombe. Pa Paulo Mayombe. Carlos Gordano Montenegro. So you gotta learn how to spell it, cause I, I <laughs> Carlos Gordano Montenegro's book. 
Paula Manombe and Dark Side of San Julia. That's the first one. The other one get Book on Paulo. Book on Paulo by uh, what's the guy named Baba Raul Canazares. Baba Raul Canazares. And then start accessing the website. <clears throat> and then the first thing you want to do is, is you, because it's a new era, you want to go in there and learn the deities. And then you want to communicate with the deities yourself. And you can bypass Man. Uh, being initiated in something and got to pay $5,000 this time and all that kind of thing. It's about studying. And, and plus, when you do it that way, you magically open yourself up yeah, for yeah. stuff that's going to work. You see? Because it's a, it's a pimp game. And the majority of the people in Palo uh, 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 are Hispanic. So they ain't really going to pimp you because they don't have, you know, they, they don't have no respect for you and your culture. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. So it was a spiritual thing how this thing came out. Carlos Gardeño Montenegro was the first to translate the secrets of Apollo into a book. That's the book in 1990. And they, they, went, they went to war with him for 10 years trying to change rituals up and all this. But it, 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 the spirit world wanted it to get out. And then in 2000, I picked it up and introduced it to the, yeah, that's one of them, uh, Carlos Gardeño book on Apollo. And I introduced it to the, uh, I introduced it to the, um, to the Afrocentric world. So that's how you do it and stuff, you know. You just study it yourself and then add your own elements in it and make it new stuff. And also, you know, I, you know, I, you know, so I'm into all of this stuff, but I, I, I never uh, 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 respected going under any kind of Bible aisle or any kind of thing. Sure. You see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you um, elaborate on the thing that's going to go back to that? Okay. Yeah, um, she got shot in the head, and the bullet went clean through. That's an opening. So that's the reason why they knew. And so the concept is Gabriel, when the last trumpet blows, that's it. You see, now you had an eclipse. Right. Yeah. It was the first one on the solstice since the 1600s. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we was just coming into slavery. You see. Which rose up the god Kunsu, the moon deity. And uh, uh, the moon deity. So then you had. Then, so, so. Then you had. Um, all these birds and stuff falling out on New Year's night. And they're trying to explain it away. And then the next thing you got, you, then you got Birmingham, Alabama. Never had snow on Christmas since they started recording. Mm -hmm. Columbia, South Carolina. Never had snow on Christmas too, since they was recording. And Atlanta, last time they had snow on Christmas was 1882. And all of them got snow. You see. So then the next thing you know, some of that stuff they was inducing, but then the next thing you know, this girl gets shot in the head and lives, and what, six people die around her. Wow. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 so, uh, six, hold on, put your hand down, because I'm trying to go in. I'm just trying to explain, that distracts me. I, I get, so, six people die, or whatever, what, how many? Six. And then, then a whole bunch of them got shot up. But she survived the, the most severe gunshot wound in the head. Right. And it passed, and they said it's miraculous how she's recovering. So obviously, this is some angelic force, and that and her name, then they look up and her name is Gabrielle. But even in the book, the word uh, when they talk about Gabriel, they say feminine. You see. So they are. Uh, real upset about this because Gabriel started both not only Christianity but Islam. You see? Mm. But it rose up in Judea so the whole Judeo-Christian thing you see what I'm saying is a part of that and we can, must understand did it, why would it be Gabriel and not Osiris or Tahuti? Because we live in a Christian nation. These concepts of Egypt and all those are new concepts. You see what I'm saying? We this it's, this country is founded on a Christian nation, so it would be fitting that the Gabriel it would blow, mm -hmm. but because it's actually Tahuti, but it's actually Seshet. 
That's the feminine Tahuti, yeah. the wife of Tahuti. That Gabriel will blow, it would be Gabriel, and they know it. So by the time Barack Obama got up there, he started calling her, started calling her Gabby, and now most of the news thing, they might say Gabriel, but they limit the amount of time to say Gabriel, Gabriel, and they call her Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. They don't want to keep saying Gabriel because they don't want to invoke what's already inevitable. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You see. What's already in inevitable. So they're doing all this gas. But I just thought that it was just what the red flag went up when this man got on the podium at her memorial and called her Gabby. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn how much you know him or whatever. <laughs> the memorial, you're supposed to say the full real name. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't call nobody no no Gabby. Right. <laughs> but they, they had he had to set the tone. Then he make her eyes open up. Yeah, they say when he went to the hospital and after he left, she, her eyes opened. Mm -hmm. So my point here is, 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 this is a major sign because it's supposed to be when the last trumpet blows, it's supposed to be Gabriel's home. Trumpet. Right. And then the little girl, I'm going to cut you. Mm -hmm. The little girl that got killed was a 9 -11. She was born on 9-11, 2001. 2001. Mm -hmm. So she was the archetype of the whole 9-11 thing. She got killed. Right. And right. along with the other five, and then like you said, Gabe, Gabriel gets shot in the head right. to blow the trumpet. <laughs> so and then that's two sons, two sons, you know. And yeah, it's, it's interesting because Arizona been hard on the Mexicans all oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their land. But why is it that the person that saved her life was a Mexican? Yeah. Because if you didn't prop her head up the right way, she would have died. Right. That's right. True. Yeah. And stop the yeah. stop pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, so it takes somebody indigenous to the land to know what to do with them those those junctions like that. So that's it. Yeah. This is a major, major portal. Don't look less of district went down. Yes. Especially because you think it's a white girl. So right. no, no, it's the same girl that was wanting. John Lewis to be the head of the Democrats two days before. Mm. You see, so it's interesting stuff. Give me some questions. Mm -hmm. What about the new um, 13th um, symbols? Uh, 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 so yeah, that shit been out since 2000. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's book me about, now the book ain't no, they ain't thinking this is what it is, is the government is promoting it. Yeah. <laughs> what it is is the mystery the behind time. that is this. Yeah. They scared. Oh, fear. Yeah. They figure they can do they can buy time at the end of this year. Okay. If they can buy time at the end of next year, you see what I'm saying? They can make in some kind of way that they can prolong the twenty twelve thing. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, but they don't understand it ain't based on no dates. Exactly. This going on this is a twenty twelve event. Mm -hmm. right now. With the Gabriel thing with the birds. We're all speaking right now. Yeah, it's already <laughs> gone. The fish and the yeah, and, yeah, trips. all of that. So so, so what the deal here is is they can buy time with the 13th sign, which is, the book came out in 2004. Yeah, really. What's the name of the book? The 13th Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, 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 so Baba, I, I just want to make sure I got this right. You got Yoruba, you got Santeria, mm -hmm. then you got Pala. Mm -hmm. All right, Yoruba, West Africa, yeah. Santeria, Caribbean, Palo, Congo. Congo. Congo and... A little bit of, of Western stuff mixed in. Okay, so Palo is more original, and is that what you're saying we should embrace more? Mm -mm. You embrace what you want. It's all the same. Got it. Uh, it's all the same. Yeah. Uh, Palo has a lot of power behind it because um, um, it wasn't used as much. <laughs> Whereas you got three million white people in the continental United States is Yoruba. Right. Yeah. Not Santeria. <laughs> Yoruba. Three million white people. Yeah. Top dollar. <laughs> that ain't include Santeria. So it, 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 by us not knowing about Paolo, it was able to retain some of that energy. But now, because everything is rose up, not all of it is strong. So whatever it is, because using it now is only thing you're doing when you, only thing you are doing with uh, these these things now is you're only permeating and elevating your own energy. Mm -hmm. You are the conduit. So it don't matter what it is. Hell, if you if, if you knew the good Christian mysteries, mm -hmm. like go get that book of Psalms, mm -hmm. 
The magic of the book yeah. of Psalms. Yeah. Yeah. You can work some yeah. shit with the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am Apollo. Yeah, mm -hmm. you Apollo. Yeah, I should. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, so, so yeah. But, um, you know, but the one that you have an affinity to, let's say, you, you say, I just like you, but I, but I don't know why. I just like Apollo. That means the one you need to deal with. Well, that's mm -hmm. the one your soul is telling you, you know, that it want to deal with based on some ancestral line, you know what I'm saying? Or you might have been a high priest in the Congo. You see, or something, whatever. So that's that's how that goes. Yeah. So, yeah. Just a hand hand uh, can you speak to like um, Moorish nationality and the whole sovereignty movement? Because I feel like look, because <laughs> I feel like it's it's um, metaphysical, right? So no, that shit ain't metaphysical. What the fuck? No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> the that shit, more time. Uh, no, no, not that. I'm look, saying like when look. Let me tell you what's going on. Right? Look, look. Let me tell you something. Look. Sure. No Madrid Ali died in 1929. Mm -hmm. All right? In 1929. Y'all don't say what the hell. See, that's the problem. We are into too much entertainment. Mm -hmm. We like shit to permeate our ego. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, hell, you might have damn near 100 Lord Science temples and none of them motherfuckers agree on shit. <laughs> that's right. Shit changes from not state to state, but block to block. <laughs> And then the leader died, what, 80 years ago. You see what I'm saying? So, let me give you some shit on this, cause this UCC stuff. Let me tell you something. And all this stuff here, look. The nationality, where does it go under? The Moroccan Empire? <laughs> You ever heard of this before? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rocket Empire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let me drink, drop this thing down on you. When you sign all them goddamn papers to the Moroccan Empire, Moroccan Empire, as of 9-11, is a terrorist state. Mm -hmm. Now, they want a list of terrorist activity. When they arrested them three boys and get, and, and um, they're supposed to be in Florida, Miami they're supposed seven. to be Miami seven or what have you, and then they actually sent them to jail. Time up for the fucking moors, because when you sign up with the nationality now, you in the same shit with them three boys. See, let me tell you how the science go. To make a terrorist organization, we must create terrorists, then arrest them, uh -huh. and once we arrest them. Then the organizations go into a whole nother pile of groups and of groups. And now the Moorish Science Temple is now an official terrorist organization. So is the New Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now you're gonna run up with this nationality shit thinking, oh I'm the Mr. White Man with all my guns and my bombs. I can shoot a I can shoot a a, a, a bomb in your house and don't break a glass but kill your ass. All of a sudden, he gonna get scared because you got some piece of the damn paper. <laughs> Use logic. He don't. He don't give a damn about nothing but a standing army. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. right. That's it. You see what I'm saying? That's right. That's or whether well, you got some real deal magic. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Real yeah. deal magic. Now I done went to war with him on the magic and survived. <laughs> You see, and didn't have to even do nothing. I had they had my back. You see what I'm saying? Now let me explain something about the organization on how the energy and the metaphysics shit don't work. They got so many damn criminals in the organization until there is no honor among thieves, and then the energy level. The energy to back off from that shit. These niggas getting over on each other. Mm -hmm. Niggas having you sign up papers, you give them $5,000. Yeah. And they don't even submit their work. <laughs> Whoa. You see. So all of that stuff, that ain't nothing but just Joe jacking. No, because what I was saying about the metaphysical is because, like, okay, if we're in this system and it's all going to fall anyway, it's all illusion, so why do I need to, like... You know, go sign some papers or something like. If, Not for no nationality, you know. If I'm a sovereign, I recognize that in myself. It's a spiritual sovereign, right. but not no piece of paper. Right. These goddamn niggas out on this street. Agreeing. These right. damn ragtag bunch. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I agree with you. Right. 
Yeah. Go let them niggas. Them niggas, they wasn't even into that 20 years ago. And all of a sudden, the nationality, all this stuff here and all. Man, look, y'all run that shit that you want. Let me tell you something why you asked that question. Why? Because I'm different than most of them goddamn niggas on the street. Do you know I'm in different cities? So many cities each year. So I get to see shit that these niggas on this corner don't see. <laughs> <laughs> is. Let me know you, you know. Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> this is important. It is, because it's like, it has you confused, and it's like, I want to be effective and practical, and I don't want to, like, you not You don't work. even fuck with these niggas on there? I'm going to be honest with you right now. Black people are the worst example to follow anything. We are the lowest, but it has to be that way. That's prophecy. You want to run from niggas every chance you get from anything. <laughs> now let me explain what's going on. Break me down. Come on. They got hundreds of more going to jail every month all over the country. Serious. Hundreds of them. But why are they putting them in jail? They're putting them in jail because they're signing all these damn documents and they're doing all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? And they got so much criminal activity that went on under the documents and all this stuff. And you understand what I'm saying? So whenever you confront it with it and you go to court, you see what I'm saying? It's no different than the doings of a criminal organization. And they locking them up. They locking them up left and right. Don't sign nothing. And if you did, you can neutralize it. Say, spirit neutralize. I, was, I didn't know. But get out of that, because when you're signing those things, you're signing up to a terrorist organization as of March 2009. Listen to what I'm saying. When they arrested them boys, they tried to do it in the 70s with the L. Rookins and the Blackstone Rangers. Jeff Ford. Jeff Ford. He signed the thing with Gaddafi. But we weren't in the conscious organizations yet, so it, it fell by the wayside. So they had to do it again. So they was already doing it when they got those boys. <clears throat> it's now an official terrorist organization. And they got all these, that, that, that new Black Panther part and all them. Yeah. These are now official. You got to come out of these groups. I'm telling you. Is it, is it about the redemption of your own soul? Listen to no God but yourself. Mm. And the Spirit will tell you what you need. But these groups... And all these Morris motherfuckers and half these niggas is criminal motherfuckers coming up out of prison and stuff like that. Wow. Mm. They got you. The government designed this stuff. You know that UCC and all that paperwork? <gasps> we was the first people to get it back in 2000, back in 1993. Before any, all y'all got it, we was the landing, we was the chest thing. And when we first got, got it, we had to go down to learn in Mississippi with the militia groups. Mm -hmm. And the Ku Klux Klan. Right. This thing was started by the United States government. ATF. Yeah. Another quick question. Can you hold it, hold it. Let me finish finish that. That's, he did that. Yeah. Let him go over this before you jump on now something else. Finish that, brother. Yeah, it was started by the United States government. <laughs> this thing was all designed. It's to get you united under one single banner. And that banner start having cases of criminal activity. Meanwhile, you roll into 9-11 and they start creating laws. Remember George Bush said we're not we going after the, the terrorists. We're going to go after them with the money. He said that. So anything dealing with finances, dealing with money, and dealing with stuff, they get put on lockdown. But as of March of 2009, when they sent them boys to prison, that's the end of that Moore Science Temple. And, I ain't I'm, and, and I'm not talking about like what's going to happen in the future. I've been getting calls since 2002 of hundreds of more going to jail <coughs> all over the country for signing all kinds of documents and all that kind of Stay out of that shit. Because it can't be spiritual because spirit know you're greedy. You don't give a shit about nothing. You see what I'm saying? But greed. Mm. 
You wouldn't help them. You would even if you got a million dollars, you wouldn't help nobody. Mm. Mm. <laughs> most people, <laughs> most people, especially these niggas, walk because the ones that's in these ego producing groups. You see what I'm saying? So that whole UCC, the uh, uh, the, the sovereignty movement, that was started by the white man. You see? Mm. Come on, come on. How do these people get such a scare? These people. Let me explain something. Let me show you about the organization. Blavatsky died in 1888. These people started writing books. They started writing books so much and documents and stuff until they got volumes of books under the Theosophical Society. That's because they do the work and they reach the web. No Ali died with Circle 7 Quran, a fucking pamphlet. And that pamphlet is still in use from some shit, a pamphlet from damn 80 years ago. And you haven't done no work. Recently some books started coming out, but the books mostly coming out is on Noble Drew Ali and the historical aspect of him. But where's the more science? You see, mm-hmm. Now I was just asking, what's the need, what, what would be, because I, I'm studying Moorish history. Uh -huh. Like how you was talking about yesterday, yeah. the, the Moors in Spain, yeah, the Moors right. out of West Africa. So. Is that still credible? And what we because I'm tying in when I'm studying stuff from hundreds of years ago, I'm able to tie into a lot of stuff that's going. That's how I understand 9/11, and now I understand how they set a lot of traps. So I know what not to do and what to yeah, do this, by studying our past. Because when I see the Moors, I see the whole Christian Christian Dome versus the Moors versus the Corsairs. So I'm like, these are, we, we, you know, and I'm seeing how mm -hmm. slavery actually came out of the conquering of the Moors. So by seeing mm -hmm. that, I'm like, I won't run into the H system to try to identify myself because mm -hmm. I know that it's a war and it's always been right. a war. But studying Moors history is a personal thing <clears throat> to understand what you were. Of course. You see what I'm saying? What you, what, what you were in that particular aspect. But, um... The Moors didn't study no fucking Moorish history. Mm -hmm. They sure. studied the shit we talk about now. Mm -hmm. On this advanced metaphysical stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they the one that brought the occult sciences to the West. Mm -hmm. So you're not studying Moorish science by studying Moorish history. That's personal. Mm -hmm. I went through that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You know, but, but, but the point about it, to be stuck on that as a tool of somehow being valid as a... a, a uh, 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 valid as a liberation too now. You know what I'm saying? It's just a feel good. I mean, you can't do nothing with it. Yes, you got to understand, and that's the first level. So we do that, but my point here is we always coin shit into a damn religion. And a religion is doing the same thing over and over again, and that's called insanity. Mm -hmm. The more science, that's what I'm saying about what you call it right now. You study the history, but you say, what is the more science? So, when I tell a person to study King Arthur and the Round Table, mm -hmm. that was brought to them by the Moors. And then the British tried to usurp it and say it was an actual history of their country. <laughs> you see, but that came out of Kemet. So if you want to study Moors history, you want to study the science, study King Arthur and the Round Table. You want to study the Moors science, study Goetia, the Moors seals, the Greater Key of Solomon, mm -hmm. the Lesser Key of Solomon. You study Kabbalah. Brought to Spain by Moses D. Line. You study Kabbalah. You study the disciplines, mm -hmm. not the history. The history is just a doorway to say, okay, we understand where this education comes from, but you study the disciplines. The Tarot was brought into Europe by the Moors. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Brought into Europe. The Kabbalisticism brought into Europe by the Moors. All the metaphysical disciplines was brought into Europe by the Moors. You see, that's Moorish science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not Noble Drew Ali. And not the history. The history is one aspect. That's just a doorway to let you know to identify the people who's about the science. None of them niggas won't even touch nothing that's dealing with more science. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They saying more science, and you giving me a fucking pamphlet. A pamphlet is a chapter in a damn book. And the word university means a consortium of books. Yes. You see. So my point here is, you're gonna do it. The occult movement was made, brought to the West by the Moors. 
not the history. The Moors was in the Moors was not in Spain studying the history of themselves. Hey, <laughs> look how I drank this tea. That's what you see. So that's what that's about. Yeah. So just basically, what we're doing now is participating in the Moor sciences. Those of us who study the occult. Those that of is us the Moor sciences. We didn't get nothing right tonight. Yeah. This stuff that we talking about was brought up by the Moors. So you do the Moors, if you want to be a Moor, you would study astrological, astronomical, metaphysical, any kind of thing that's dealing with the occult, they had that's what they had. No doubt. So what they did was to, 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 to how this was done. They had regular academic academia and the seven liberal arts of education. That's the stuff you got now in the colleges, in the high schools, or what have you. They had that. Mm -hmm. But they also had, with the people that go through the basic education, uh, liberal arts training, they went into the occult. You see, now, they, now the Europeans now do the model of that by, on a ceremonial level. They'll do it by fraternities, which don't teach you nothing, because they don't want the masses to know. But then they, but they, then they will have other occult thing like the skull and bones or what have you, where they get into greater stuff and all and emulate the moors or whatever type of stuff. But 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 if you go back to Spain, you did the several liberal arts and education, but you also they also they also studied the occult and all what it is, and that's more science. See, see, not some shit, but I'm sovereign and because I got a piece of paper to say that I'm an asshole. <laughs> Yeah. I just want to know the science of the man with the golden voice. What's what's the ritual behind that? I mean, it, it doesn't really make sense. And Which one? The man with the golden voice. The man with the golden voice. What? It's a distracting sign. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? it no, I'm just it's saying. Just a, I know, but when something doesn't that. really make sense, that's a ritual. That's some guy, guy, I don't know. The bum guy. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it's, it, it is a remarkable. Yeah. No, no, it yeah. makes sense. When something doesn't really make sense to me, mm -hmm. I know it's a ritual. Is that something that they're doing? No, what it See, is, that is, it is remarkable to go up to a homeless person in the That's home. right. <laughs> and this <laughs> man start talking sense. like the newscaster. The news is always looking for a great story. Yeah, and he, uh, he said he fell prey to drugs and all that stuff. But my point here is it is kind of miraculous. You go up and you get this guy a dollar and he goes 91 on vines. Oh, shit. They just inducted him into a society of these newscasters thing. Oh, yeah, so they for his You know, so, you know, you know, now, because let me tell you why, I'm going to tell you why I say that. Okay, let me tell you why I say that. This guy is proof what the spirits told us. Why, if you notice, every time somebody asks me for something, I give up giving you. Mm -hmm. And even white people now. I used to even get a white people. And guess what happened? Look, I'm going to go back to this part. It's a good story while you're saying it. Let me tell you what, what it is. We start giving money. The more you give this money to these people, it don't matter. See, we always try to do the reason on what he's going to do with it. Right. That's not the right. thing. This is the, right. You're not giving the money based on what he's going to do. You're giving the money because you're training your heart to give. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, so, right. so don't worry about what he's going to do with it. Right. My little white girl, never seen this happen. Been seeing this for 20, 30 years. Black person come up and say, I'm not... My car just ran out of gas and I need some money. I know it's big down there because we got mostly automobiles. My car just ran out of money. I just need about seven dollars to get, 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 you know, I got, I got a guy gonna give me a gas can or whatever, and you give him the money. Then you come back the next day and you see the same guy. And he, he did it so much so he don't recognize you gave him money. My car, I said, damn man, your car broke down again. Or your car. I've seen black people do this shit for years, and every now and then I see occasional white guy. Saw a white girl. Now you know the white girl, she meth addict, she ain't got no teeth or whatever. Now this white girl looked like she came out of a college mm -hmm. dormitory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was running this thing. Hell, she got two dollars out of me. <laughs> she got two dollars out of another brother. And some black girls in the car was laughing at us. 
And I was saying, Joe, now, I said, I know that this girl here is snowing us. I said, but right. I'm going to give it to her. And then and I'm going to give it to her. And guess what happened? The black guy, he kind of noticed that uh, there was three black girls in the car. They were laughing at our stupid ass. <laughs> and what they thought. The black guy turned to me and said, if she's lying, we gonna be blessed. Yeah. Right. Right. If it's a lie, we gonna be blessed. Exactly. <clears throat> you see, like that, no. Now going back to this guy, he proves a point. Cause I asked, well, first of all, why uh, is it important to give these people the spirit say <clears throat> them people there is asking for the money is the angels. Mm. I heard that. Uncle Elijah Muhammad said there'll be an angel on every corner. Mm. Theology of time. Mm. And the only thing I see on every corner is a damn wall. <laughs> <laughs> and when the guy came down and he started 91 points on so and, and Linda turned to me, she say, that's the angel. And so what happens here is, is this here with the angel on every corner. What we find out is a system, it's an ecological system, it's an angelic system. What happened when these angels started coming back in 09? Said, don't leave us out. We was black. We got them, we got Ethiopian texts uh, at Natal, mm -hmm. the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian angel, and he's the father of the angels. So, so what happened was, because anything Hebrew, anything else, all that was black people shit. Mm -hmm. You see. Now. Yeah. When the angels came back, we started giving to these people on the street. Angel on every corner. We started giving to the people on the street. And this is how the ecological system worked. You want the angel to bless you. So you got to give to the angel so the angel can create a force to bless you. Because they still have souls. And the soul knows in another realm. So when you give, you see what I'm saying? It's a prosperity thing. So I break off everybody. And they say, no, don't be political. The white boys ask you now, because I used to wouldn't give to white people. When the white boys ask you now, give to the white boys. It's, you got to realize, I don't give a damn what kind of human. It's got to be a humbling spirit that you got to stand out there and beg people. That means if you done gone to a level that you can even create something outside of pride to do it. So therefore, you, are, you have surrendered. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we need to, whoever give, you see, for whatever reason, he might have surrendered to crack, heroin, or what, I don't care. Give. You see, give. Now, the reason why I know there wasn't a time to give before, and see, the reason why they did this, now, in 1994, every time, if I gave a, a, a person 50 cent, I would go in the store and be 50 cent short. If I gave a person a dollar, I would go in the store and be a dollar short. They say, stop giving. But I'm like, well, why was it necessary to me to stop giving 15, 16 years ago? They say because we're going to create a time when we say give, the money going to come. And we need to have the contrast between the times. And the time ain't not right yet because the angels ain't came back. You see, so that thing that happened, and it happened around the solstice with that guy, that's angel. That, that coincided with the Gabriel thing. And what is Gabriel? Voice, trumpet, Gabriel, sound. The angel, voice. Golden. Golden, sound, Gabriel. The woman, that's the spiritual ecology we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's that? Mm -hmm. I was in Bahia and uh, down in, uh, this was about, this was 93. And it was down in the area where you go to buy the uh, mm -hmm. stuff for the baths, ogun, mm -hmm. and all that. And walking with a Brazilian, he said to me, never look down on anyone because you don't know who they were. Right. Right. Or who they gonna be. Or who they were at this time, who they were. And right, they were yeah, manifesting right. in a different in a, in, in a different right, yeah. yeah. But you, 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 you hear about that thing in Indiana? Yeah. You hear about this thing in Indiana? No. Which one? This girl actually ran out of gas. She went up to the gas station and she met a woman that bought gas for her and took her back to her car. Okay. She took her back to the car. The woman bought two scratch offs. Oh, yes. <laughs> she reached in her pocket, because she was there to get the scratch off from the gas station. She reached in her pocket and said, Oh, by the way, I'm going to give you a scratch off. Mm. Mm. 
And the woman scratched it off, didn't think nothing about it, and a couple of days later she wanted, what, $100,000? Wow. And, and so she was all on the radio trying to find this woman to give her, that was a damn angel. Yeah. That's how that shit worked. Yeah. She said, I at least want to give you at least 10000 or 20000 for for yeah. giving me the ticket, because her ticket didn't hit. Right. That was an angel. That's how that shit worked. Yeah. That's what this angelic stimulus package thing is about. <laughs> it comes all kind of ways, but you got to put yes. it together. But you got to start trying to, you got to start being, start analyzing things outside of your everyday life and say, is this a spiritual moment or is this a spiritual moment? And, and if you do it enough, then guess what? Every moment will be Spiritual. You will bring it around you. Let me ask you what you want to say. When I was coming to the United States, I don't know that you're going to come out here. Uh, when I was coming here in 1975, uh, at the airport in Haiti, uh, I met a white man. She had to make a blue suit, whatever. And she told me, Oh, you have nothing in your hand except your, your pocketbook. You have to carry uh, that bag for me. I said to her, okay. She said, you are going to the United States. I said, you are going to where are we getting it? She said, no, then it's here for Things that I could understand in English. Then um, she, we got on the plane. I carried the bag for her. It happened that when I got on the plane, the woman was sitting behind me. It was my first time taking the plane. So there was a lot of children in there. Every time she would be moving my chair, whenever, but she knew I didn't know why she was moving my chair sometimes, put my chair on the uh, street. Anyway, when we get to the airport, she said to me, where is your passport? And I said to her, why? She said to me, how is your passport? Is it, is it, uh, how long am I going, going to stay here? I said, uh, my visa almost made it expire. She said to me, give me your passport. I'll take care of it. I said, but what, what do you need to me? Don't worry about it. Then you know, she said to speak French. Then you know, she said to me, give me the passport. She gave it to me. He said, no, no. I, I added some extension on your visa. She did. She did. So when I came, when you know, my sister was looking for me at the airport in my aunt, so I introduced them to the woman. And uh, they said to my sister, and she said, she's very nice, she carried my bag for me. So I took a passport and I took care of it at the airport so you can take her home. So I was here, uh, so my sister and I never had the woman for her phone number and we never hear from her again. So everybody in my family had a green card. Every time that I tried you know, to get my green card, Nothing happened. So one night when I got so upset, I was very upset. Mm -hmm. And some people, white men came in a dream and told me, I just came back from the immigration. Your papers were all the way down. I bring them up, they are calling me in next week. <laughs> <laughs> so when I woke up, I was telling my mom, I don't think we always have those funny dreams. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you know? But I saw the person though, the person was, was carrying a cane, was walking with a cane, and was limping. The person passed me on the street and said to me, do you know I've been looking for you? I saw how upset you were. I just went to the immigration. I'm happy I'm with you here now. Your papers were all the way down. Mm -hmm. I want you know, to look for your papers. I put them up. Next week, they are going to call you. Anyway, next week, the following week, my mother called me at work and said to me, you wish to be paid for, for the immigration for your, for your green card to go mm -hmm. to Canada. So I went to Canada. I was late for all of my interviews, all of them. Mm -hmm. So when I reached you know, the consulate, my people were talking. Uh, the woman is very nice. The man is not nice. So knowing that I have a lot of nerves, I said to God, I hope that it is the woman that I have because you know, if it is the man, I don't know what I'm going to tell that man if he asks me any stupid question mm -hmm. that I don't know. And it happened that it was the woman who called me. So when she said to ask me questions, I said something I don't know. She said to me, come on, don't get upset. 
I'm going to be with the big guy, you know. I have to do my job to ask you that. Okay, since you're all said just you know, stand up, you know, raise your hand and swear whatever. <laughs> I did and said to me, hell you up. They are closing the gate. I don't want you to come back. So I went to the uh, to the window. I pay I pay for that for that you know whatever it was, mm -hmm. and they closed the gate. So what was that? Was it an angel? Yeah, well, it was, no, it was spirits around these people. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Making them do those particular things. Mm -hmm. so, so, the, the woman at the airport, mm -hmm. when I was coming here, was she an angel or was she? That could have been. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times when we talk about these angels, it could be forces that surround these people. Or it could also be these people's energies, their souls activated to do a particular job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to know what um what do we feed the deity uh, Ochichi? I got two questions. The first Ochochi, Ochochi. What what do you give up to um that deity? Ah, uh, he's a he's, he's a hunter. What you want to do? You need to get a book called a dictionary. It's the, you know, the Encyclopedia of Spirits. Hmm. Encyclopedia of Spirits. Okay. By Judica, J-U-D-I-K-A. Hmm. Illis, I-L-L-I-S. Judica Illis. The Dictionary of Spirits. You want to get Encyclopedia of Spirits. You want to get that book. You want, you want to get that book because in there she will have any deity that you want. And this is a black woman that wrote this. Mm. But she'll mm. also tell you what to feed them and what they like and all that type of stuff and tell you how to go about it. Mm. It's, it's a monumental book, yeah. And mm. the last one. Um, do you know the number that corresponds to, to the deity? Because when I did the research, it came up to eight. But eight is traditionally a batala, so I wasn't well, sure. Well, he's up, he's up under a batala too. He's like his avatar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also, but but that book will explain. It gives a diagnosis on, gnosis on um, uh, all these gods. She has the Egyptian gods. She has the uh, the African gods. She has all this, but she has gods in the book that normally wouldn't be in nothing but botanicals. Okay. So, and the oh. Europeans in the metaphysical thing, they will, they won't, they, they won't um, talk about these particular deities. So she took every deity that you know of from every form of Canton Blade, Apollo, all that, and she put it in that book. So that's the book you need: the Dictionary, the Encyclopedia of Spirits by Judica Illis. It is a monumental work, about 600 pages. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention. I don't know if you're aware that the the, the last Million Man March. Mm -hmm. Washington, um, yeah. Just, just at the uh, at the end of it, the closing, uh, um, Mr. Farrakhan had suggested to the crowd and uh, people in attendance to join some organization. Right. Well, Scientology. I don't, uh, if every, I don't know if anybody yeah, has said yeah. Scientology. Yeah. yeah, he had said. He said, "I recommend to you know." He no, said, he did worse than that. He he told them in August. He told them in August. He said, if you don't go and get audited, audited is what they do to go and get in this, uh, the organization. You get go get audited. He said, if you don't go get audited, the entire nation of Islam, we love you, and we've had fun with you, but bye. You got to go. Whoa. And the entire nation of Islam they have for so long, and they have now been audited by Scientology. Ooh. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. You see, you see by Scientology. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah, so, yeah, so, no, that's, 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 that's the real deal. You go right on Scientology and Farrakhan or Scientology Nation of Islam and hear the speech. Wow. What is it all about? Hmm? What is it all about? What, 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 what they do is, is they give you, it's almost like a semi, it's almost like a semi, um, uh, uh, what you call it, a hypnotism. Where they go in, and it's supposed to be helping you, and, 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 and there's so many kind of words, it, 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 does, it does help a lot of people. Because he, you guys realize now, L. Ron Hubbard came out of Crawlers in them group, mm -hmm. and they was dealing with the whole Egyptian thing and all. So, but what it does, but believe me, I don't think that white people got our interest in, 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 in mind. <laughs> but what you do is you go in, 
and they start bringing up stuff from childhood, but they got to know your entire family and your background, and they start bringing this stuff up in the supposedly a clearing mm -hmm. of what they, they and all, and it's supposed to be one of those types of things. But my thing here is, is okay. Everybody go get this. Him and Al Sharpton went down in May. Farrakhan and Al Sharpton went down to Florida mm -hmm. <laughs> in April or May to get it done. Mm -hmm. And um, and so what what it is is this though. But my point here is, um, he's saying now that he's actually training people in the nation to become auditors. Now I I know organizations. There's no organization that's gonna audit you or whatever and do this thing in your service, and then give you the skills to audit people. If you're giving skills to audit people, it means that you are part of that organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, just be just deductive mm -hmm. reasoning. There ain't no organization going to give you their knowledge of what they do. Mm -hmm. of, of what they do. You see what I'm saying? You see. So, if they are turning them into auditors, it means that, in so many words, he handed up. Organization over to Scientology. That's right. Mm. That's compromise. You see, over to Scientology. Beyond compromise. Yes, beyond com compromise. Um, you know, this shit. That's a takeover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. That's a takeover. Yeah. Those, are new, those are new inquisitors in training right there. Yes. Yeah. Mm. The black ones this time, though. Mm. Yeah. What's that, brother? Uh, I was, was going to ask you about because you just mentioned Scientology and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know too much about it. I just know that a couple times that you know I met people that was into it. Yeah. And they were trying to bring me into it. Right. And uh, the things that they do to bring you in, like when I, they give you a test or something. Yeah. They call it a stress test. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when I took the test, it was like after I took it, they didn't they didn't really want to deal with me no more. <laughs> if you had a certain amount of money, they would have taken you in. It's a rich man's organization. Quality of memory. And so one of the guys from, that did a take from Syracuse said, well, if Farrakhan is doing that, tell Farrakhan, why don't he pay the bill for them to be audited? You got to be, but, but you have to pay your own bill. But that's just the first level. To continue in the organization, you got to have money. You got to have money. So the deal here is, is probably... In order to do it, although they order these people that don't have no money, but obviously Farrakhan has to get a percentage of everybody that he gets audited, oh, yeah. and that's how they're able to deal with him. Because it's about money. You know, you got Jamie Foxx, Will Smith, Foxx Whitaker, huh? Isaac Hayes. Huh? You Travolta. see? Travolta. Huh? Travolta. Yeah, Travolta. Yeah, Travolta. I'm just talking about the black guy, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, uh, Tom Cruise is his yeah. damn near spokesman. Yeah, yeah, what's that? Mm -hmm. Along the same lines, um, like with Madonna, because I've also, I've Started studying Kabbalah, the Kabbalah yeah, right. International. Do you have yeah. any about that? Because you mentioned Moses de Leon, and they talk about like their pedigree and why they're eligible to teach Kabbalah to the masses. <laughs> but um, it seems like yeah, money game too sometimes. Yeah, because um, they got about they got about thirty Kabbalahs published at one time, <laughs> and ultimately it's a spiritual system. Ultimately, it's gonna go on your interpretation. So why fuck with them? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get the initial thing in the yeah. course, let's say, you know. And how long you been with them? Well, I started studying there in 2006. Okay, and it's... it, I, it, it comes and goes. I don't you you pass over to it. now. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff, you see what I'm saying? Because you, you, it's your own interpretation. A lot of this stuff is money-making things. And like I said, if you can read... Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Common sense. But like, I'm teaching you now, and I ain't nobody taught me nothing. Because I don't have that much faith in humans. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm. Other than to give me the initial stuff. You see? You know, you know, the initial stuff. You see. So yeah. So yeah. And that's just one aspect of it. They don't teach magical Kabbalah there. You see what I'm saying? And so my point here is is that's the stuff that works. Right. You see? Yeah. Okay. Al Gore, you are a freak. I wanted to find out about, um, you were talking about the, the modern science and everything. Yeah. And what is this thing about the first... Hello, yoo-hoo! You got a <laughs> lecture going on. What is this thing about um, 
the value of the birth certificates and stocks and mutual bonds and all of that stuff. Do you know anything? Or can you speak on that? Or well, that's a big purveyor in you know getting all your papers signed. Oh, that's the UCC. Get, yeah. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. Could you just speak on okay, that? Yeah. Okay. The UCC. White people have been doing it for years. But they brought it to us in the early 90s to trap us. Mm. You see, to trap us. Mm. When we started getting what the, the of UCC? UCC, Uniform Commercial oh, Code or something. That's right. that's and they basically, they say that basically you, your name is being used in all uppercase letters and you are a straw man, right. but you are a business. Right. And your birth certificate is a business. You're not a human, you are a business. Yeah. Corporation. A corporation and all this type of thing. So you got to get back your corporation and all this stuff here. The only problem here is don't register for us ultimately because we are not United States citizens. Right. There was never a ceremony ratified mm. put together to ratify that. Right. Right. So we're not citizens. So ultimately, it don't work. And so what happened was it, with the people in Atlanta, I'm going to give you two histories on this thing. Okay. People in Atlanta, we started in the 90, in, 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 in 93 and we worked it all the way up to like 97. And it was winning all these court cases and they would just keep postponing the court cases until the judges got help to understand what was going on. <laughs> but, but the ultimate thing was, is the reason why everybody ended up losing it's because they came and said, uh, this can't work for you because you're not citizens of the United States government. Mm -hmm. So that's the extreme part. Okay. Mm -hmm. then the, but that was in the 90s. The 2000 versions was, um, they started giving out money, they started doing all kinds of things with people. And then, and, and so they let people go through the process and then they stepped to people and said, you tried to defraud the United States government. <laughs> or you tried to defraud the IRS. And then they started sending whole churches to prison. And they got these government agents with the preachers or whatever type things. You see. Mm -hmm. And all. Don't sign nothing. I know what I'm talking about, and it comes up again. That's the spirit telling you, don't sign nothing. So all these people talk, talking about do your paperwork, guess what? They don't submit their paperwork. They charge you $5,000, but they don't submit their paperwork with all this stuff. It's a scam. So even the, the energy behind the birth certificate, if you go look it up and everything, and you put your number in, and you see the value of it, and what is all of that about? It's just, it's just, it's, it's a game? It's a game. What it is is basically all the birth certificates <laughs> are owned by the Queen of England in England. Mm -hmm. Right. And all this type of stuff. My point here is <laughs> all of that is a distraction. Okay. That's right. It ain't got nothing to do with spirit. Okay. You see, it's a distraction. Now, the birth certificate could be important based on divination because it's based on when you can't when you incarnate. Yes. So, That's um, so you know, uh, you might change your name to Muhammad this or something so, that and stuff, but your birth certificate name is the most spiritual because that's the one you whispered in your parents' ear to give you. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And that's the one you incarnate on, so it's got a lot of energy to it. Yes. You see, it's got a lot of energy to it. Um, you know, um. Some of the worst thing on the planet is nicknames. Okay. Niggas named Pig and Cooter Pig. Dog. Timberland. Dog. 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 Nicknames. Because names have energy. So a nigga named Timberland. <laughs> okay. Name yourself after some shoe or bro band. Somebody <laughs> gonna walk all over you. Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't mean to take you off the subject, but it's interesting what you just said about what? nicknames. Yeah. You know, I was reading a book some time ago and it was talking about how Nick is another name for the devil. Or another way well, to say it. Well, if that's the name of the devil, we all need to get nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> the devil is 
way it's at. That's the rebel. So that, that, yeah, right. So that whole thing there is based on a religious concept because there is no such thing as the devil. Exactly. Never mind. Spell it in reverse, it means live. Yeah, that's what that is, you know. There's no such thing as the devil. You see what I'm saying? The devil is nothing but a polarity of God. You can't have God without the polarity. It's the yin and yang symbol. And that's what makes things work. So the devil is divine. Mm -hmm. And along the same lines of um, the, the names, because I believe that there's power in the names that you're given as well. There's validity in changing it to what you feel. But I was doing research on surnames because everyone's like, oh, black people's names are all slave names. And that's just not true. I was doing research and it was like, a lot of the names, like my last name is Brown, so my family could have, when they were freed or whatever, gave themselves the name Brown, because they gave themselves noble names. 85% of the English language is Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Right. Go get uh, Gerald Massey's Book of the Beginning, Volume 1. 85% mm -hmm. of the English language is Egyptian, is Egyptian. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, these names, he's, they've already tracked you back because you got your Celtic Druids which was a branch of Egyptians. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of that type of thing, you see, you know, they couldn't even speak. Who the hell you think taught them how to speak coming out of the caves? Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. And they come up with beautiful languages. Damn, Greek language is beautiful. Why? Because it was created in Egypt. Mm -hmm. You see? You see? They couldn't do it. They couldn't put together that. Yeah, they didn't even have a Greece. They were just warring tribes yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. Right, so so a lot of that stuff there, you see, a lot of that stuff there, and all, you know, like I say again, you know, we've not been a, a, a studied people, yeah. you see, you can tell them anything, you know what I'm saying, like that. Hell, Muhammad is more a slave name <laughs> than the British thing, why? Because shit, they started the slave trade, right. and still doing it, mm -hmm. yeah. you see, <laughs> yeah. you see. Now, I'm quite sure that was a, 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 I'm saying it was originally an African dialect. Because mm -hmm. that whole Arabia was, it, right. look, I went to go see the Saudi Arabia expedition in 1989. And I was in there scratching my head. I'm still trying to find Saudi Arabia. And the guy looked at me, he said, I know why you're perplexed. Do you know that 85% of Saudi Arabia is blue black? Yeah, blue and that was black. in 1989. And I saw it for myself. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I was in the West African exhibit and it was the Saudi Arabia. So we know that those names originally <coughs> were black. Mm -hmm. You see, but I'm saying if you're going to make claim about a slave master, about based on what somebody did, hell, the Arabs is the worst. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you see, and, st and, and, and as long as Marantanio and all the other places... Oh. They still got slavery, yeah. and they still the slave master. Yeah. You look at those things like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? Yeah, the Sidhu, um, Sidhu magic work? Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. Mm -hmm. That's why now, Sidhu, Sidhu you get a book called... That's working left and right. Don't you? you get a book called um, That's logo. Urban Prim a Primitive, they, yes. they bear witness to something I knew years ago. Um, the sigils is the different designs in the markets. They call them babies or whatever in, in voodoo. They call them signatures in Palo. You see what I'm saying? They mark you on the face in, 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 in Africa. And all. all those are sigils of spiritual things to bring down spiritual energy. Guess what else is a sigil? The graffiti. Graffiti. Mm -hmm. And so they got a book called Urban Primitive. And then they, they, got, they got the graffiti up in there. It's just not, graffiti now is mostly done by white folks. And in Europe, they got whole art exhibits with, with, with graffiti mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but Central Mag, yeah, it works. Yeah, because that, you know, it's, it's no different than the seals and stuff that you see in the ancient stuff. You see, it's, it's, it's just stuff to bring down certain energies. And, uh, certain energies are buying certain energies, you know, um, you know, buying certain energies. So yeah, that's 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 that, that, that stuff works. There's a book called Basic Sigil Magic by Philip Cooper. Yeah, Philip Cooper, the real good one. And he has one, of, like I said, one of the best books on magic, but it's out of print. And I often don't understand why a, a book that came out in the '90s. Is our print for most of the 2000s. And it was the best one. One of the best ones is called The Magician. 
The magician. The magician studies an effective magic mm. by Philip Cooper off the chain. Because it, it starts with you unloading your um blueprint or the stuff that you've been taught as a child that's wrong information. So what happens is the mind receives information. Then what the mind does, it processes that information and then it acts upon the information in your life. So your world is created based on the information in your life. If the mind receives the wrong information, it will produce the wrong world. But when the right information comes, it will reject the right information. So what you have to do is you have to talk to your spirit and tell your spirit, you know, I have received inadequate information and can you release this inadequate information so that I can learn newer things. So that's the reason why your family members and all the people that's dead have problems getting with this and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Because they still are holding the blueprint of wrong information. And the mind will reject right information. It's just like, like a bum if you give him some water and he goes, oh! Uh, 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 alcohol. Oh, what the hell is that? It's water. Because <laughs> he's training his body, you see what I'm saying? You see, so that's what, what that's about. It's the same thing when you get the right information. That's why you have problems grappling with this stuff. The concept I'm trying to figure out, you see, like that. Yeah, what's that? So that, that also ties into physics. I mean, two things can't occupy the same space at the same, same, same time. Thing, right. um, but, um, I, but, but the book, the magic book, I want to say the now. book, right. the magic, yeah. he right. goes into eliminating that blueprint. He tells you all about that. Certain information you was given by your preachers, your teachers, your parents. Mm -hmm. And once he goes into that chapter, then he starts going into the magic to reverse it. It's called the magician. The magician. Studies an effective magic by Philip Cooper. But it's out of print. You can get them on the internet, you know, you have to look, but it's, it's worth having. So, so is that like That's law of attraction? That's the one to start with. Hmm? Is that like law of attraction? It's, 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 it's in that particular aspect, too. All that come out law of the all of the, all of the magic, the laws of attraction comes from the Kabbalion. Mm -hmm. And the Kabbalion comes out of hermetic texts out of Egypt. Okay. So, you, and so, then they, well, so the only thing the people from the laws of attraction did is they took... The six was which one? The laws of attraction is one of the. It's, it's one of those seven hermetic laws. Yeah, but they say that's the most powerful one. No, it ain't the most powerful. It can't be. If laws, how the one law and stuff like that, that's how they got people trapped. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why even deep up Trump, Trump would say. So this whole thing of law of attraction now is people trying to get money. Uh, I was just right, about to say right. it's the most powerful for people that's greedy. Yeah, but what is that gonna do about more. your soul? Right. They're not feeding it. You see, so, but there's seven, but see, there's seven hermetic laws. Right. So how the hell are you going to take one out? Right. And it's supposed to be, you know, yeah. no, and so, so what it is, is, so what it is, is, you got to get the Kabbalion, which is a, which is the, uh, um, Sermetic law, and if you get the uh, uh, the Doreen Virtue book on the Kabbalion, she got a, the Kabbalion on CD in the book. Mm. And stuff. Doreen Virtue. Doreen Virtue book on the Kabbalion and all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if people can just uh, grasp the idea that everything happens twice, first in thought, mm -hmm. and then it manifests, right. they would realize how powerful they are and choose how they think and what they feed the mind very, very carefully. Yes. Everything happens twice. Even mm -hmm. this building that we're yeah. in right now, yeah, once in somebody, right, and yeah. then it was manifested. Right, yeah. Right. And so this, that book goes into all that, but the, uh, um, yeah, um, there's another book called, uh, uh, what's the, let's see, uh, what's the name of the book it's called? It's a book talking about these are the other seven her hermetic laws. But get the Kabbalion. That's the, mm -hmm. the seven, that's, where they, that's where they got it from. They access one, for, uh, and, and came with this secret. Right. The reason why it's a secret because they're getting one of the seven. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, in one of your DVDs, you said that one Bridget come from Ireland. Is she a white woman? Who? Bridget? Yeah. The Irish origins is black. Exactly. Yeah. The Irish origins is black. They call them the Negroes yeah. of Europe. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The Irish origins is black. Um, uh, you get a, a, a movie called Secrets of Rowan Ish. And it's a, the Secrets of Rowan Ish. And in that movie, they talk about how the Ireland people came from these dark, dark seals. You see, they're talking about black people. 
You see, it was probably inhabited by the Egyptians because Saint your boy, um, when Saint Patrick's is credited for running all the snakes out of Ireland. Yeah. Well, that's myth Island. You can't run the snakes out. That's like saying running all the grass out of Ireland. <laughs> he was talking about the snake people, the serpent people, exactly. the Egyptians, the Camites, mm -hmm. yeah. and all the, the Camites. So, so yeah. So um, Bridget, she came from Ireland. Um, she came from Ireland and probably uh, and all, uh, and she's incorporated into the voodoo ceremonies. It was probably somebody who was over there that was uh, during the time uh, when they were doing, when they was doing, um, when they had slavery, maybe one of the slave, it was maybe one of the gods of one of the slave masters. Because Bridget not only um, is in Ireland, she becomes throughout Europe. So it might have not been an Irish person, but Bridget was big throughout, and so they incorporated that and all. Based on the spirit, they understand that all these gods ultimately was of us. So it could be. To be a god, you gotta be of, the original origin, so therefore, Bridget would suffice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You finished touching on the Omex? Yeah, yeah. You, I think you got here late. Nah, I was here all the time. All the time. Okay. I just didn't know if you covered yeah, all yeah. of what you was. Um, yeah, what I was saying yeah. was that ultimately they were the Orishas. Okay. Right. So is okay. is there a way to begin to divine and evoke anything from the Omex? Ah, uh, yeah, you can do it through the Orishas. It's a lot of. As a matter of fact, what you can do is you should ask the Orishas to reveal more knowledge of the Omex. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that's how this thing comes. So you can actually have them say, I need a transmission to give me give me some of the history on this stuff that we're not getting. <coughs> mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the brother Horace Butler when rocks cry out? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right. With, with, yeah, excellent book. Tying in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent book. Cool. When yeah. rocks cry out. Somebody sent it to me in the mail. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Horace Butler when rock, when when rocks cry out. Horace Butler, excellent mm -hmm. book. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Bobby, uh, can you speak a little on what happens to us as a people? This economy, uh, according to most people, okay. Is over. Okay, right. This, this, this economy is gone. So what they're suggesting to white people is to train yourself to live without. Or live on a limited basis. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> if the flip is stripped, if the script is flipped, we're on top because we the masters of it. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what they're trying to tell white people to do mm. to spoil by the fatted calf. Get ready to be on the bottom. Is to is to try to acclimate yourself to not having cash every time you want it. You see what I'm saying? And even when it comes down to credit. Now let me give you an example of what I mean by that. When I go to cash some money orders, <coughs> the money orders, you know, if I go to cash some money orders, and I might have $300 worth of money orders, and they post the money orders, and I go to the white post office, they be like, we don't have it. I already know what to do. Because white people deal with credit cards. Mm -hmm. So they might not have it in the drawer but a certain time. But I can go to the West End, the black neighborhood, which they only deal with cash, and they load it. You want a thousand? This much? That much? I already know. So that means that we, here's the people that's learned how to deal without credit. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So I go to Greenbrier, they call it Black Bob Briar Mall. 90% of the time, they might, if you went in there every day with a thousand dollar money order, they gon' have it. Because mm -hmm. the, the culture don't deal that much with credit. Yeah, Whereas, exactly. we go up in Buckhead or we go in the risky part, they might go, I, I don't have it. Because everybody deals with credit cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a good one too. Y'all gotta do this. Anybody got bad credit? Most people got bad credit. <laughs> uh, anybody don't have credit cards? Look, just go uh, to a Walmart. This is the thing, uh, uh, go to a Walmart and get a pay-as-you-go. A pay as you go. What you do is you get this card and you put money on it. Yeah, it's called it's it's it's, it's this called a money card, Walmart money card, and you put money on it because the culture is designed to be set up with credit, so you can't rent no cars, you can't get in the hotel. You see what I'm saying? You can't do things. But if you got the card that's got it on it, it accepts all that because it's a Visa, so it's an actual credit card. So you can use it. You can use it anywhere, but you got to put the money on it. Right. Right. But you put the money on it to use it for stuff that 
only takes credit cards, and that's a smart way to go. Because the first thing, if you want to hook up some cable, they'll go, you got a credit card? And if you say no, they say, no, we don't hook up cable without a credit card. Right. So but if you got one of these, you see, you give them the PIN number, bam. You see, like that. So these are good to get the money cards and stuff like that, you know. And all, you know, and that's, that's the way you do it, because we got here the other night. And the hotel was paid for, but it was like, no, it's got to be, I know you paid for it or whatever, but it's got to be accessed through a credit card. <laughs> and I said, shit, I had $15 on the credit card. They <laughs> took 10 <laughs> But, but, now, so when I'm flying out, so I called them, I said, you better put another, I got five on there, but it's, it's, it's going to be 25 to fly back. Because mm -hmm. when they the check the bags, bags. Now they, 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 they charge for checking the bags. And so if you got the credit card, if you're playing cash, they're going to tell you where you got to go inside. You got to stand on the big-ass long line. But if you got the credit card, you, you can do it right there at the sky cap. You see, so I tell them to put 25, put a, put, I say put 20, I'll put, uh, she said I'll put 30 just in case. Yeah. New York might be higher. <laughs> for the bags, you see what I'm saying? So they charge you for check your own bags, but you still need a credit card. Yeah, you can go in and pay the cash, you might have to stand on a long line. So that's how that whole thing goes, yeah. How long does it take before a charge out? Oh, right, right there. No, yeah, yeah. No, 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 what you do is you buy, the, you buy the card, right, yeah. you put some money on it, on this. and then it, it charges up right then, but then you have to call a pin, you have to call a number on the back and report it to, to activate it. Gotcha. So as soon as, you, as soon as you call the number and it's 24 hours, it's activated. And you could also call a number to find out how much money you got on the card. You know, like that. No, you know, most of us know what we got on. You ain't gonna put it. Like, <laughs> put it like thirty dollars anyway. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's the no, 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 uh -uh. no. The martial, all that stuff, the martial law and all that stuff is scare tactics. Yes. Exactly. To keep you distracted. They, we supposed to be in a card with them. We supposed to be in, in martial law in the early nineties. The King Alpha plan was given to us by the government to create this thing, and it's all based on distraction. If they, if you think the white man could have did, he would have done it by now. You damn right. He can't do it. He can't do it because it will wake up too many people. You see what I'm saying? And Farrakhan had that right. He said, if your slave went to war with you, he said your slave will win. And I said that nigga crazy. <laughs> But he was right. They know it. We got latent powers in us that automatically come online and kill up everything just to survive. So they have to separate us, and they, you see what I'm saying, and keep us on lockdown, but not necessarily openly announce the day of battle because it'd be over for them. So they would never do the martial law thing. Hmm? It, it, they they dormant. But if you get shocked into it, if you get shocked into it, it might open up. You might go out there and get hit by a car, and you might open up something. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. You know. So many of these rituals are to open those dormant powers. Yeah, yeah, it's happening. It's going to happen regardless. There's the rituals was was the stuff we needed to do the shortcut because we had so many years to be down here. Now this stuff is happening. You see what I'm saying? As you sleep, providing you get enough sleep, providing you get enough water. Because the key is sleep deprivation. Number one kill in the United States is sleep deprivation and dehydration. So if you can get enough water or get enough sleep, you see what I'm saying? It's going to happen anyway because we are in that season and stuff. It's just on the cuffs. We're like minutes away from it happening. You see, give me some questions. How is the second son helping us? Hmm? The second son is actually inside of you. That's called a petty universe. It's a holographic universe. It's only, it doesn't even exist. It's all the stuff existing in you. You project in that. So the second son is your third eye and your pineal gland and all that opening. But all this thing, of, you know, the, the, the second, all this stuff out here is nothing. That's why you ain't never had none of them people come and visit you. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying? see, my point here is that we are the aliens. Exactly right. Now, what civilization gonna come eight light years away to come to visit the non-original people of the planet? See what I'm saying? We are the aliens. You see, so whenever all this stuff they preparing, they preparing for us. 
You said, well, I'm not an alien. You know, the stuff on the inside of you is the alien. Right. And it's getting ready to rise up, and that's the invasion they're talking about. <laughs> and that's what they say, you know, you can make cosmetics and things, not for the Caucasian. Yeah, 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 all that. You know, that, that's old stuff. They've been doing that since the 1940s. About 10 years now. What? They've been using the, the melanin for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Been longer than that. Mm -hmm, yeah, you know. But I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to say, um, uh, all this alien stuff they talking about is to get you to get scared of your own self and your own powers. <laughs> you see, to get you to, you know, get uh, uh, scared of your own powers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bobby, yesterday you were talking, I'm trying to make sense of my notes here, you were talking about healing illnesses and there was a ritual done on the third day, or, do you know, do you remember what you No, what I said was, was I did three days in London, the third day in London, it was called uh, something through rituals, um, the third day in London we did ten hours of rituals, but I talked about, I gave the people the Obatala ritual, which pretty much can heal anything. Um, <clears throat> It's, it, well, you got, got, got to order the tape because it's, it's long and it's detailed. Um, but what tape is that? It's, it's called the London series. That's the third day of the London series. Rising, African people rising through rituals. Something like that. It's 10 hours of rituals and everything is on there. That's last year. You can get it. You can call that number one eight six seven eight three five six seven eight three five eight one zero five five. Do it again, Bobby. Do it again, Charlie. Six seven eight. 358-1055. That's the, that's the number to order the stimulus packages, the picture package. You gotta really gotta get those. The reason why you gotta get the picture package is they're gonna be deities, and when these deities contact you, you have a record of them in these picture packages because it's 11 by 17. So it's 50. It's 52 pictures of rare photos. You see, so it's not you know, a rare photos. And so you really want to get a hold of that and stuff, right? Huh? They scary. Who? What? what? Yes. Are they scary? Pitch back. No, they they gods. You know they gods. There, there is no fear but fear itself. I shed all evidence appearing real. I never see the. The state now know how true it is. Mm -hmm. That we have solar plexus, solar plexus, our solar plexus, mm -hmm. and white folks don't. Well, see, this thing about it, we gotta can't generalize white right. as this one monolithic race. Okay. You see what I'm saying? We so mixed in, and that's what the secret is. We so mixed in. So we don't know who's what. Let me tell you something. <laughs> when, when my granddaddy died in 1971, white man came to the funeral. I said, who that white man? He said, that's your granddaddy, a brother. <laughs> so, some man crept to the dark side of town and my grandfather was born. Now let me show you something. His sister was blacker than you probably black as thing in here, and you look like a light-skinned person <coughs> based on the sister. Now, let me show you something here. Let me show you something here. He was raised in the black part of town. Probably raised real good because that yellow gets to raw your treatment. <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> Don't be funny with this shit. That's right. Make it play, make it play, make it play. <laughs> I know one nigga, my friend, you say, only the yellow shall see God. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was so damn insane. <laughs> this is the same nigga say, if the mothership come, they better have ACC basketball on <laughs> I ain't going. <laughs> that nigga, you say, only the yellow, and he was blacker than 150 midnight. <laughs> Got a psychological thing. And he got to the point where he just said, only the yellow shall see God. They had a nigga in college used to go to the bureau and go, I'll kill God for you. 
And if that, and it wasn't six million, it was uh, six hundred thousand. And they just say, well, we put the six, the six million for the for for our suffering. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. is that why Hitler put the yellow star on them to denote them as people of color? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, and so yeah, so this they they had this problem for years. All over Europe, it was getting kicked out all over Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that they, they created a final solution. Yeah. Because they, they couldn't really take the stage as this pure white Jewish race that they got these doggone niggas hanging around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the board, eh? uh -huh. There's a good book that goes into it. It's called, um, <laughs> it's a good book. It's called, it's by a guy named Arthur Kosa. Kosa, 13th tribe. The 13th tribe. tribe. It right. documents how yeah, they came down that. out of the mountains. Yeah everything and then yeah. um doing some research that i was doing i put it in my first book i noticed that the jews trying to chase trace themselves back to shem and they try mm -hmm. to turn the word semite right. into some sort of yeah. relation right. to where they are blood relatives right. of shem yada 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 but that's not where semite mm -hmm. comes from semite comes from the fact that they semi-black. Yeah. They got a little bit of that black blood in them. Yeah. So that's right. what the term anti-Semitism means yeah. is we don't like people that have that white. mud blood. Yeah. And what they're doing with the Harry Potter thing mm -hmm. is they're trying to put that same thought process into the children mm -hmm. in a fun way. You got the mud blood, you know, so you got the yeah. dirty blood. You're not, your yeah. blood ain't pure, yada, yada. And then you see the purest blood is the wow. yellow hair, you know, the blonde hair, blue eyes all over again. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's that family fight they were going through, but basically, you know, basically, that's, that's the Here's a question. Um, right here, you, you talked about entities before like becoming more apparent like sometimes when you see things out of the corner of your eye yeah. because it's like, I mean I'm starting to get that more right. I mean you know I live in a house by myself right. so yeah. sometimes it kind of freaks me out but I'm just wondering exactly uh, how far th is that really gonna go it, I mean is it gonna are we gonna get to the point where yeah. um, we can literally just start seeing yeah. other realms yeah. on like a regular basis yeah. that's what's gonna happen um, that, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, and the government is already seeing these things, and that's why they're proceeding accordingly. Obviously, there's some, something that opened up, a dimension that mm -hmm. opened up in the last couple of weeks. So all this snow and all this stuff mm -hmm. is to take your mind off of that. So, yeah, but that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Different dimensions and different planets, like you were saying before, are different energies, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being that this is the holographic, you know, yeah. universe, yeah. and this is the representation, when we start seeing different kind of peoples and that they, they represent different kind of energies, does that mean that we are getting in touch with different constellations and certain energies and they begin to manifest on this plane? Yeah, well, they actually manifest in outside of you. The constellations and all that stuff is inside of us. Those are your cells, your DNA, your chakras, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's the inner universe what we're talking about, and this that's just a projection from what's going on on the inside of us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the, um, because I'm starting to see people now, I study as much as I can get my hands on something, mm -hmm. because the, 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 I, when people ask me, I tell them I know just enough to know that I don't really know that much. Mm -hmm. So I was looking into this guy named, um, Something Wiley, he teaches breatharianism mm -hmm. that you don't actually need food or yeah. liquid. You could just eat um, yeah, yeah. light or McDonald's cheeseburgers. Okay. That's what he threw me <laughs> off at. Right. It was like you could live off sunlight alone or McDonald's cheeseburgers. So it was just like I couldn't see that. But he teaches a lot about the fifth dimension, and now I'm seeing a lot of information coming through on the web outside of the breatharian thing, mm -hmm. but just more you know specifically towards the fifth dimension. Could you touch on that? Yeah, well, the fifth dimension is that is the dimension that we probably slipped into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we probably slipped into. Now, what it is, I want to say something about the breath area. And basically, what it is, <coughs> your body after a certain round of minutes starts producing a protein. It's a form of DNA, and you eat from that. It's a form of melanin, mm -hmm. and you eat, you eat, you eat from that, uh, and all. Uh, and that's why I said when I this summer when I stopped eating, but I didn't lose no weight. I mean, I trimmed down a little, but I'm saying I 
didn't lose no weight, I, you know, is the simple fact was um, I'm eating from that protein. And that's what an actual breath Aryan does. He eats from he eats from the melanin produced in his body. Mm. And, and uh, you know, uh, and, and, and one of the key things with that is water. You just need water to activate the substances that's all over your body and to go into the, uh, the, the central nervous system. Uh, the the central, central nervous system. So, um, um, you know, so to get that going, you need water. Water is the key to life. That's what the whole doom thing was talking about. Um, you know, but, um, but now going back to the fifth dimension, uh, we, 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 we've um, pretty much, uh, that pretty much, we have slipped into it, but we gotta go a little further. They're talking about an access of universe A and universe B. This thing is turning over to universe B. Right under the people who are ruling us eyes. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? And universe B, you exist in a universe B. <laughs> but what exists in the universe B is your glorified <laughs> self. Your self has already become God. Mm -hmm. And for the mere fact you feel anything, <clears throat> means you are already God over on that other aspect. Mm -hmm. So what happened was is this, you had a world at first, when this world was young, that world became dismal. It's the uh, mentor. And it became dismal and it had a black sun. And it became, it's, it's an inner world and it became dismal. Over the course of eons and millennia, that world now has built itself up into the kingdom of God and the kingdom of glorified spirits. And so you exist within that kingdom mm -hmm. in, that other, in that other universe. You see what I'm saying? And that universe, that particular universe is using the energies from you to feed off of. But now it has, it has it all over there is elevated, so your your whole body is another you over there that's a glorified God. Yeah. And we get ready to slip into it. Mm -hmm. They know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Baba, we got about 15 more minutes. So yeah, okay. whoever got questions for this brother, you got 15 more minutes. There's yeah. also afterwards, the sister got some food outside left over for some of us free or whatever. So, uh, chew. Yeah. So, 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 is that what the 2012 thing is? Uh, um, That's what it's really about. Right. The, transition the, the, the transition 2012 is what it, they would let, like to get you to The only thing they're doing is trying to create fear. Mm -hmm. The 2012 is a consciousness. Mm -hmm. right. 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 So it's a consciousness that's getting ready to hit that even the people out here, this day is going to come into. And that is the 2012 consciousness. Right. And from that consciousness, will catapult us into that glorified self. Because it is the glorified self that is bringing the consciousness. We just are the first wave of it. You see what I'm saying? And all uh, the first wave of it and how long we have been conscious indicates how long this thing, how long it has, it has grown up. So it's a whole nother world that is already activated and we just own like the twitching of an eye from coming. So it ain't gonna be no uh, nothing physical we got to go through. We just gonna wake up from the dream. They said the seals was opened in like the 70s. Well, there's, there's, there's been things going on for, 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 for a while now. There's, there's been things going on for a while now, but uh, I would agree that the 70s would also be the first wave of the baby boomers coming of age. And that's what we would be now, the people that you see in the 40s, late 30s, the 40s and the 50s and stuff like that, you see. Um, so, you, so, so yeah, that's, that's one aspect of it. But what we're talking about here is it's an acceleration period. And that particular acceleration period that they're talking about um, um, is now on the cusp. That's why, so if you notice now when the UN comes out, came out talking about aliens, Mm -hmm. yeah. you see, when the UN came out talking about aliens, and Stephen Hawkins, their number one scientist, came out talking about aliens, you see what I'm saying? They know that we are right there on it. And the, you know that they know that we're right there on it because they didn't speak highly of aliens. They're always saying that they would be hostile. Right. Mm -hmm. You see? 
But if you don't know that much about the holler, you're going to predict something's going to be hostile. You can't tell what's going to be hostile on the other side of town. You be getting that shit wrong. So the point I'm trying to make here is that when they did that, that means that this thing here is on the cuff. But it's about us. And so the only enemy they have had was us. So that knowing that we the aliens, that's when the UN comes in and says we need to look out for the aliens and instead it's going to be hostile. And Stephen Hawkins. Yeah, this sister had a hand up, didn't you? Yes. Okay. Um, what can we do about the chemtrail situation? Oh. Uh, I mean, is it, you know, is it affecting our body? Yeah, yeah, you, get, you got to wear a hat. Is the, is the, is the first thing. Uh, is, is, the, is the first thing. You got to wear a hat. And also, you got to um, burn eucalyptus oil. So, you know, you get the tea. The, 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 the tea um, right. candle, yeah. and you get the little dish to go up under it, right. but eucalyptus oil is the stuff that um, gets all that off of you, because it's, it's mostly based on the inhaling. Ooh, so you got to burn the eucalyptus. Light particles, right? Mm -hmm. Light yeah. particles. Uh, it, it's, well, it's all kind of stuff. It's all kind of chemical. So you got to burn the eucalyptus oil. In the house? And, yeah, and, 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 all, and, and if you don't wear uh, a hat, keep your hair washed, because it enters through the hair. <laughs> Mm. You see what I'm saying? And also, it also is activated by fluoride, so no fluoride toothpaste and no sink water. Okay, right. Mm. You get like this oil off the wash your hair with? Um, or well, I guess you could put you could put yeah, I guess you could put something like that on it. Yeah. You see a little bit, yeah, but um, yeah, but um, you know um, so that's that's what does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you familiar? Are you familiar with him? Are you familiar with the works of Professor Gabriel Ebo, if you are? Yeah. Uh, okay. What I want to say about uh, uh, Gabriel Ebo is, <coughs> he's the guy that is, is, did he ever get a, a, a Nobel Prize? They ain't going to give him They're not giving him that. Right, right, yeah. And the reason why they wouldn't is because of they don't want to bring attention to that. Um, the problem here is, the key here is to stay on top is you got to have your completely foe, your enemy, always has to be perceived a certain way. You see what I'm saying? Now, because the Aibo thing will bring attention to something else. The number one academic on the planet is the Nigerians. Mm -hmm. They are kicking ass at Harvard, mm -hmm. Dartmouth, yeah. Cambridge, um, what's, the, uh, what's the other one in England? Oxford. 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 They just, they just level the playing field. But they still want you to think it's the Japanese, and they've been gone. Right. It's the Nigerian. Running marathons. It's the, it's the Nigerian. I'm talking about an academia. I ain't talking about no sports shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about academia here. We're talking. That's what they're ruled by. Not no god. They know that you can jump over the damn moon. <laughs> <laughs> But, but don't we do physical? I'm talking about right. the number one shit that rules the planet is the damn mind. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. And they've been giving that to the Jews with Einstein. We're talking some other high shit to some motherfucker running a basketball and shit. Even they told you in the movie Superman, they said you got something special. But it ain't a running goddamn touchdown. They were talking about black people. Superman won 1978. Wow. Glenn Ford, Toronto. I don't know what it is, you got something spirit, but it ain't for running no goddamn touchdowns. <laughs> that shit is over. <laughs> Fuck an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> they talking about academia, and they have had um, Einstein as the number one Don, and this talk, that's what they call the gods in their level. Now this Dr. Aibo has done took his shit to the next level. That's right. That's right. You see. And they can't give that to black so they prove. so even with it so if you notice most of the things when they did have it on TV was locally. Mm -hmm. They never did anything with him nationally or more people would know about it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it here is the number one academia, academicians on the planet is the Nigerians. They killing them all over the world. You know that's some shit. These motherfuckers are the biggest thugs on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Con artists. Yeah. And the damn 
most brilliant. <laughs> now that's a hell of a mix. But then again, on the other hand, that's what makes you brilliant. You gotta be both sides. So this nigga's ball will rip your ass off. But, but, but they give it to Barack Obama, the Nobel Prize. Huh? But why they gave it to Barack Obama? When in science. Right. They give you the Nobel Prize and peace. Peace. You know? peace. But not Martin science. Luther King got that. Right. Damn near 50 years ago. <laughs> it's the it's the uh it's the in science, you see what I'm saying? And this man here is done he was saying that hell, not only did he create science for a new dimension, he said that his, with his unified field theory, you can take all of the equations that was wrong for the past one hundred years and apply his shit to it and make them work. Mm, that is right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That. All he of the stuff for NASA he built. Not in the, and, and I don't know why he's talking about time travel. Yeah. Right. right. See. But they can't break that because his African way of saying it is this thing is given by God. Mm -hmm. So the arrogant shit got to go. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, you can't come up and say, I'm, 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 I'm this arrogant thing and I don't even believe in God. Cause he's, and in so many words, what he's trying to say he is this thing is coming through spirit. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So he's giving you the translation where everybody understands. He say inspired by God, but he's talking about this thing is coming through spirit. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, so we talk about a man that basically has broke all aspects of the mysteries of science to the point where as he's talking about taking bad equations and equation that, that was wrong for years and add the unifying field theory and making the equations work. You see what I'm saying? So, spoke. they can't they can't do that because it's a battle for the minds. Now can you imagine? Look what happened with golf with Tiger Woods and yeah. black people started buying golf clubs and the cheap children started playing golf. Now what about if you said there's a black man that's the top scientist on the planet? Mm -hmm. Then you have got black people being inspired and going into science because the key to keep you out of it is to make you think you can't do it. Right. And we would be inventors of the shit. So now that means if you say in a person going into science, it would be no different than somebody going into hip hop. He'll do it He'll do it outside of the damn classroom because he has been told he can do it. He can might break some equations before he go to the first damn grade because we are expected to do that. You see. So that's why they got to play him down on that particular level. You see, play him down on that particular level. And if he's, he, he, he don't have the, the complexion for the protection. If he was a light-skinned boy, Whoa. They might say it because they might yellow, say it. get to see God, right? Only the yellow shall see God. But if he was a light-skinned guy, they might get to say, well, when it all come down, well, he, he does have some of us in him. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the genius part. And he's carbon. So they make sure they got uh, the prototypical Africoid. <laughs> so won't be no mistake in this shit. Right. You see what I'm saying? Won't be no mistake in this thing. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna y'all enjoy Sunday school today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll Yeah. I'm not going to ask. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
dome-shaped domes on the Muslim mosque or the Masonic mosque that's patterned after spaceships. But this is the spaceship in Kemet and this is how it looks blown up. You see, that particular, that's a monument of the actual spaceship. Another spaceship by the Dogon. The Dogon shows you a spaceship, they say Nomo, which is in the form of the Christ. It will come back and this is Nomo's art. Surely a 10,000 year old people. This they're supposed to be primitive. They have a nomos art that they make out of a bread basket, which is a, clearly a spaceship. Now, clearly a spaceship. And let's deal with a couple other things right quick. To deal with some stuff. One of the name of those ships in Egypt was called the Ben Ben. Ben also means the Ben Ubers, the Phoenix. One of those ships was called the Ben Ben ship in Egypt, or uh, in Kemet, you'll get this in Stairway to Heaven, whole sections on that particular part, whole section. This is the spaceship of the Dogon. Now, breaking down things further, the white boy has made in the Metropolitan Museum of Art right here in New York City, the white boy has taken a particular temple, we'll show you the picture of the temple. He has taken a particular temple and he has that temple in the Metropolitan Museum of Art right here in United New York City, an Egyptian temple that he took from Kemet. Took it down in pieces and brought it to New York. Our stuff is all over the world as we speak. Now, as I told you before, this is the hieroglyphic symbol of Sirius which is the pyramid is in there and the star. Now I want to show you some things to show you where heaven was. We got proof on where heaven is. Also we know that this is the star system series. Now let me break down this hieroglyphic that's coming out of the, the coffin text and the tomb of the dead pharaohs to let you know. 
number one, recorded in the Serious Mystery and also in E. Wallace's Budge book, Egyptian Resurrection, Volume 1 and 2, the Pharaoh Pepe went to Syria. There's several people we know of in the history of the world who has owned the Christhood. Imhotep, Rose the Christhood, later on known as Asclepius by the Greeks, the God. Pharaoh Pepe, Rose the Christhood. Ramesses II, Rose the Christhood. Akhenaten, Rose the Christhood. Several ones rose to their Christhood. We know this now. This is the Star System series photograph, I think in the 19, late 1960s. And there's a photo, and there are only photo, one of the few photographs of Sirius B, which couldn't be seen by the naked eye, but the Dogon picked it up. All in the book, The Serious Mysteries, as well as the book called The Pale Fox. Pale meaning white, fox meaning slick fly. Also, we have a picture of a glider that they thought was a bird, but it's geometrically designed as a glider in Kemet. This is a picture of that glider. Aerodynamically designed, coming out of the pyramids in Kemet. Africa, African aeronautics. Now, show you two phases of what heaven was in the actual Kemet. Here is one. In Kemet, there's several levels. One of the levels, when you, when you see on your tombstone, you have when you're born and when you die. And in the middle, you have a slash, which is your life. You have the birth date and the expiration date on when you die. In the middle, you have the slash, that's your life. In Kemet, on the tombs, they had the same thing. They had down here, they showed what the Pharaoh did when he was living. Right here, this is the one they showed the birth, because you have Apet, which is the birth. And up here, it shows where the actual person went. And right here is a picture of, of, of Isis, and right here is the hieroglyph of Syria, which is the end time result of where you went. To give you a better representation, here's a better one. Here's a better one. Right here, it shows where you're born, coming from heaven. You see the goddess Hippopotamus, goddess Apis. Behind her, you'll see a crocodile on the back of her. The croc crocodile represents the triple blackness of space, and the crocodile in Kemet is, in, is, is called Sebet, which is also the form of Kim, and Kim means melanin. The crocodile in Kemet means melanin. So when you see the great mother in the crocodile, it means the constellation of Draco. It means the dra blackest part of the earth, the supreme melanin realm on where you came from. Right in the middle, you will see Chanus or cartouches. Those particular Chanus and cartouches that you see in the middle is the person's life. Birth, which is the first when you're born on the tombstone, you see that? Right here, you see the life. That's what happened in the Pharaoh's life, because only the noble people got recorded. Remember that. And right here is when he, di when he died, you see the heavens again. This is chaos. This is the light, and this is going into light. Right here, you see the heavens again. And right here, you see Heru. And right here, you see Isis. And up here at the top, you see the hieroglyph of Sirius, showing you where did you go in heaven. Sirius, the star system Sirius, the great realm. And this is proof of where the pharaohs went, right on the sarcophagus. And also in the pyramid text, and also in the actual burial tomb, or where the actual pharaohs went after they died. Proof of Sirius, right there. Now, deal with a couple other things, and we're going to get to the apex of what the mystery system is all about. Uh, Right here, show you a picture of this. I don't know if I, if I brought it. But right here on the back, you will see this is on the sarcophagus of Tutankhamun. They show the star system Sirius hitting him in the forehead. That also means in actuality that that's what was the aim, Sirius, hitting him right in the forehead. The pineal gland is a form of the star Sirius as well as the black dot. That's the star in you, the sun in Bethlehem. As above so below, as, with, uh, as on top, so with under, as within, so, so without. That's the law of correspondence in the book, The Holy Caballion. Now we're going to get into what
the actual pyramids, temples, obelisks, and tombs were built for. The main thing was it was aligned up for the star Sirius. There's an article in the British Museum, and that article in the British Museum, and a papyrus in the British Museum called Spheric Architecture. It is the astronomical science of the Egyptians. They put me a good old temple up here on the wall. It's the astronomical science of the Egyptians, or the Kemites. They put me a good temple on the wall, the Temple of Dendera, which is one of the most sacred ones. Then we're going to get into Edfu. Temple of Dendera, built to the star Sirius. Since we're talking about all of the, the temples were built to the star Sirius. The astronomical science of the Egyptians. The most conspicuous solar system near our own, represented in the heavens by the brilliant star Sirius, was of supreme interest. The cycles of the innermost importance were determined by it, and it in turn in, in it entered into the highest mysteries of the Egyptian initiation. Surely, the logical, surely logical to assume that Egyptian metho, met manetho, the Syriac land was Syria. Manetho. Now, where you get your when you when you deal let's let's deal with this right quick. Philadelphia is the second, which was the Greek Ptolemy. Asked Manetho, the high high priest Manetho, Manetho, to record the history of Egypt. He said there was 500 pharaohs in the dynastic, 800 in the pre-dynastic. 500 represents 3,000 years, and 800 represents 5,000 years. He said roughly close to 10,000 years, give or take. They said, who used to rule before then? He said, that's when the gods used to rule. Well, who were the gods? That was black people before they fell into the, into the actual third dimension, so, and all your stuff shut down. So the attainment of Sirius was to get you back to Godhood, you know, based on the mystery system, right? Now, this is the recording thing where Manetho surely states that that's when the gods used to rule. He was talking about his own black people. An Egyptian sage told Solon, which was, an a, Greek, which was a Greek, he told him when, he told him that the initiates had to get used to the idea that they worshiped the gods for about, let's say, about 30 years. And then, uh, then later on up into the initiation of the mystery system, they would say, guess what? Them gods you used to worship, they used to walk the earth just like you. And they would have to get used to the thought of this god used to walk the earth just like them. You see. And this was a supreme part of the initiation. You would have to deal with that then. And that's the whole part about the coming God. So Manetho told him that 8,000, 8, he said what? 8 to 10,000 years, and he said the gods used to rule. But Manetho, one thing in the mystery system he never did, he never did tell people your true origin or your lineage or time. That means a person can know when you came on the earth, he can dictate how long he can keep you. So they never told the time. So when he gave them the whole 3,000 year stuff, he was lying. He forged that. But it's in his book called Sothis, Sothis, which is named after Syria. Sothis means Syria. And Manetho, he talks about the Syriac land. He says, from Syros, so Syrius, according to the Greek translation. Mede refers, Mede is G-R-S, Mede, who wrote the book Sliced Great Hermes. Hermes is the god Tehudis. This is the god Tehudis. Tehudis simply says that I did not come from Egypt. I'm beyond Kemet. I come from the Syriac land, which means the land of the deluge of the flood, which is talking about Atlantis. But the, but the part of Atlantis that they were in was Egypt. Egypt was Atlantis, was a part of Atlantis. It's just older than the dynastic period. Now, Mead refers to the records of Tehuti, the now records of ancient time being self-registered. This is the key now. This is what your whole temple mean in Kemet. This is the mystery. The pyramids, obelisks, and temples 
while in their later, later times nearly all monumentous were built according to types of Masonic instruments of Egyptian astronomical science and astrogeological science. The science he continues is he continues, that's me continuing, is studied more in more recent times and by Egypt by Egyptians in result of research printed in a private circulation copy of them to be found in the British Museum. GIS Meade states in a, in a preface to Arthur Wright, the astrogeological science which gives birth to the monuments in Syria by means of which the fruit of the combination of observations, experiences of the human race, hue means color, the British word who man, which means God man, has been preserved outliving the writers and the outliving writings, inscriptions, traditions, and nationalities. So it's dealing with something with nationality. The principal monument has imparted to them the essential property of beings, and it says, land uh, beings of landmarks of geochronological nature, many of them recorded hydromathematically, what the hell that means, the knowledge in the astronomy, geography, and in the dimensions of figure of the earth obtained in the rare speculation of epic. There are Syriac monuments, which means that the temples, obelisks, and pyramids are spheric monuments because their magical lines were projected in a scale of revolution of the star Sirius in terms of the standard astrogeological cubit. He may read, he may read, or uh, here we may read an Egyptian scholar confirming the strong Syrian influence of the evolution of the development of his land in archaic times. I have so far been unable to obtain the further information regarding the document, but, this is the person, the author of this book, but, any, but anyone with more time to spare and gather the, uh, the aptitude of persistence might well meet with success. In antiquity, there were constant references to the pillars of Hermes, Tahuti, from which ma many ancient writers claim to have gleaned their information concerning the, pe concerning the periodic times, several of I have already in, in, in the chapters. This is the person in this particular book. Now, what they are saying here is this, basically, that pyramids, obelisks, and temples are all built around the star system, Sirius, that I just showed you that particular star system. It's called Spirit Architecture, based on an article that they got in the British Museum. Well, it's something that was interesting that started around 1986 in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, because the Syriac land is Atlantis, and just so happened that Egypt was one of the capitals of it in Atlantis. The white man just gives you the island of Atlantis because he don't want to connect it with Africa in one landmass because when he does that, connect with Africa, you would know that on this earth there was one people and one landmass and it was all black people and the other race came from that. So he always separates the island of Atlantis from the mainland of Atlantis, which is Africa. You see? That's the key to the whole thing. He separates the island of Atlantis that went down in the Atlantic Ocean from the mainland of Atlantis, which is Africa. But surely you know doggone well you can take South America and Africa and put them the damn together, and they fit like a puzzle. And it was all one landmass. And we also know that there was only one people, because wherever you go on Earth, you're going to find black people was already there. There's big old black heads built on Eastern Island. There's big old black heads in Mexico. Your Omex, 
your ass kicked. You see what I'm saying? There's black warriors on the vessels of the, of the samurai warriors. There's black Chinese. Your black ninja, the ninja that wears black because his original mystery system was started by black people. So he wears all black to symbolize melanin. The white fake Jew that came in during the time of Spain based on the 13 tribes, Arthur Cussell's book, who, who is a fake Jew that converted into Judaism, has nothing to do with the original northern Ethiopian at all. The Lababa witches up here wear all black to try to symbolize melanin. And they wear the Horace lock, the hair rouge lock to symbolize melanin that they don't have. You see. But the Syriac architecture comes from Atlantis, and the new Atlantis is Atlanta, Georgia, which in Atlantis, in Atlanta, Georgia's history, they talk about Atlantis reemerged from up under the water, as well as Haiti. And then in the, in the, in the mid-'80s, they started building Syriac architecture. You have the Step Pyramid of Saqqara that I told you, built by Zosa, and also Imhotep was the architect. The Step Pyramid of um, Saqqara that has this called a Peach Tree One building, and it lights up as a step pyramid, and they got beans shooting up. You got obelisk on the CNN, the, the, uh, the, 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 the CNS bank. It's called uh, Wachovia Bank now. And you got obelisk on the, uh, you got a big gold obelisk and pyramid. You got pyramids on the IBM building. You see, Georgia Tech has over doggone 50-something pyramids all over Georgia Tech as well as the football field with pyramids all over it. They have the Temple of Dendera down there. They have other temples. They got one particular thing, looked like the Lighthouse of Alexandria, two temples standing up right beside each other. It's all based on Syriac architecture out of the British Museum. And Atlanta is the new Atlanta. Why? Because also Atlanta has a big woman holding up a bird talking about the phoenix. There's two phoenix in the world, one the fake and one the real. The fake phoenix is Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, ain't nothing out there but white people, and they so racist, they don't, they don't even want to give Martin Luther King a birthday, and he was they say. The other phoenix is the black Atlanta, the civil rights seat, that's now coming with the black university complex, which is the other phoenix, which is the new, also the new home for the Illuminati, because the old home is New York, named after York Wright, old York, the old York Wright masonry, who ran Washington, D.C., whole conversation between George Washington and another concerned person saying how New York run things. He said, I know that, but they run the world. That's the home of the Illuminati. So the new thing is also Atlanta. They're trying to flock down there because you got to get out of the old city. But this whole thing is going down, and that's civic architecture. Now, let me go into a couple other things before you do, 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 your, do, your, do your answers. i got a few other things i got to deal with. Now, let's deal with Akhenaten and Tel al -Amirna. Very important. Akhenaten in actuality is Moses. The life of Akhenaten is the life of Moses, and the life of Moses is the life of Aaron. But Moses was a priest of Akhenaten, and after Akhenaten disappeared, or Akhenaten died or ascended, they took on, he took, they took the, the, the work that was attributed to him and, and gave it to Moses. Because Moses could speak the, English, the language of the people, and Akhenaten couldn't. But it was all black Hebrews at that time. And the Egyptians, the Hebrews, was nothing but a group of northern Ethiopians that broke away from the government with Akhenaten. You see. So they're saying in actuality they don't know what happened to him, but now we got reports that he did live and he retreated to the Sinai Peninsula. And that's where you get Moses going up on the Sinai Mountain because he was the father. Akhenaten was the final father of monotheism, or so what he thought because the religion was always monotheistic. In E. Wallace's Budge, the last book of his life, he said, I have been mistaken, which I thought was a polytheistic religion, was a monotheistic religion all the time. All the other gods that you see is just like the 99 attributes of Allah. It represented one god and a god one. And when you put the gods together, they put the fit together as one puzzle, as the one god or the god one. E. Wallace's Budge's book, Confederates to God in Ancient Egypt, 1935, the last year of his life. Akhenaten merely just re-emphasize the monotheism by just putting one particular symbol of the God. Right here is a fake particular picture of Nefertiti. The Berlin bust that was found on an artist's floor in Berlin, and we know that that's a straight up lie. Now, 
They said that she was a mulatto, but we got pictures of this particular sister. Number one, you know that this is the, the head of, of Tutankhamun. No, this is the head of one of his um, daughters. And as you can see, that particular head on her is that particular skull. It's only found in black people. Check. Now, I want to show you something. Number one, this is a, a lid, very key, because you don't see these particular pictures. But this is a book called King of Egypt by Cyril Aldrin. And this particular book, you're going to find out in actuality, Cyril Aldrin was playing tricks on his white counterpart. He would put the blackest pictures he could find. King of Egypt by Cyril, Akhenaten, King of Egypt by Cyril Aldrin. Here's another black picture of a black woman with big lips, and surely you can look at each if you focus in on that. Ain't nothing but a sister with dreads or braids. Nothing but a sister. That's no mistake, and he was good at doing that. Here's a real picture of Nefertiti. If you focus in on that particular picture of Nefertiti, and you can surely see, sitting beside her husband, Akhenaten, and one of the daughters, you can surely see that that is a black woman. And that don't has nothing. That has nothing to do with that fake Berlin bust that I just first showed you, that fake Berlin bust. Now, to let you know that Nefertiti was also a black woman, I want to show you something else. This is a picture of the, even though the head is going, I'm going to show you a picture of the body of Nefertiti. And surely, if you look at this particular picture, you will know that that is nothing but a black woman. Look at them glorious thighs, and look at that booty back there. Surely, the only thing that's got this kind of booty is a sister. And them kind of thighs. Akhenaten, yes, she was fine. Akhenaten, excuse me, wife, Nefertiti, yes, she was fine. Gotta hold that booty there. Look at that booty. Look at them thighs. It wasn't until Akhenaten time that you had the most explicit type of art in ancient Kemet. And that was one of the pictures, even though the head is gone, surely. You look at that. You know that this is something that, that transcends time because if you look at it hard long enough, you can say, damn, you might get one up on it. Now, I'm going to show you another picture. If you look at this picture real close, you're going to find out it is a picture of Nefertiti sitting on Akhenaten's lap. So Akhenaten was doing the pimp daddy thing where he put his woman on the lap. Never before in Egypt, you saw him sitting side by side, but in this particular broke off picture, he just showed up on his lap. Because that really knew right there the origin of how the black man serenades his woman. The sheer apex of black sensuality is the black man and the black woman. So these are some pictures also too. We want to deal with also too. Now, at this particular time, at this particular time, we want to get into the teachings, and we want to get into the science of earth, wind, and fire, which surely reintroduced as what we can say also, too, let me get this particular picture. One of the best pictures, this is the Sphinx with the head blown off, with the nose blown off. There's another picture here that you'll always see. It's this particular picture. And I think it's also in Diop's book, African Argument of Mystery Reality. You will see this particular picture with the Sphinx. And definitely you can see it's supposed to be been when the actual um, when the actual nose was still on it. It's a debatable picture for some people, but here is a famous picture of the Sphinx. You can blow up um, hone in on this one. It's supposedly with the nose still on it. But if you look at the lips, you can swear out it's a, a, a black person. Some say a black woman, some say a black man. But it's a both sex that you're dealing with at this particular time. So this is the science that's also going on. Now, let's deal with, let's deal with some things that I got from the spiritual realm based on a certain amount of channeling because what we do is we not only deal with... Um, Getting, when the actual scholarship breaks down and we want to find out a higher scholarship, we get things from channels also, too. Now, based on this particular channel, was coming from two sisters, one by the name of Shakura out of Coney Island and one by the, one by the, name, of, um, one by the name of Shakura out of Coney Island and also one by the, uh, the name of Sister Tassili out of Atlanta, Georgia. Out of Atlanta, Georgia. 
And at that particular time, I asked the question, I asked the question of the spiritual origin of a particular person. And that particular person was, a, uh, was an Egyptian priest of Ptah by the name of Ptah, who Hetep Sa. He was a priest of Ptah. Ptah who Hetep Sa was a priest of Ptah. It rose itself to Christhood, but what he did was that particular person decided to come back, reincarnate and come back to be in a later date to help people to get past the 70s through the art of music when the 60s revolution broke down. That particular priest of Ptah is none other than Maurice White of Earth, Wind, and Fire, as we've been showing different pictures. One of the pictures is the 1977 version. The first one where he really started dealing with was the name Earth, Wind, and Fire, right there is the elements of the universe, is, is the name within itself. But the first picture where he started dealing with the whole Egyptology side and the black science side was the Spirit 1976 album, Spirit, which features songs as Getaway and uh, Saturday Night and different things. This was the first one on the episode of Patah Who Had The Second one was the 19, this was 1976, the album Spirit, where you can see them clearly behind three pyramids, the tall pyramid being the actual great pyramids of Giza, and there are white pyramids also, too, and it's called Spirit. Now, we understand that he also first started out with Ramsey Lewis in the 1960s, and later on it started his own group around 1972. One of, the first, one, of the, one, of, one, of, one of the first albums was called Last Days in Time, which was the second album of 19... The first, the first Columbia record, Last Days in Time, and the second album, the first album also entitled Earth, Wind, and Fire. Now, one of the other greatest albums, also a great album, but one of the album covers, as we've been spotlighting on here, is the All in All album of 1977. Also, which you can see that the limestone casings on the pyramid was restored by the artist Sushi. At this particular time, he used a particular Japanese artist called Sushi. And our Asian artist, I think, Sushi would be Japanese. And also, you would see the Ramesses tomb, but right here, you see all in all, and you'll see a light that's coming from inside the tomb. That symbolized the light that used to hit Ramesses on the, in his forehead on his birthday. When the white boy moved the temple back, he could not duplicate that, and now the light comes a day late. But also, we understand that the pyramids, even by reports of Ivan Van Sertima, that the particular pyramids would have that particular light based on the capstone would shine, and you could see the actual, and you could actually see that light for miles around. It would shine off the pyramids, one of the great representations. Also, we want to break down some of these covers, because also, it also shows that it went into a technological age that you see with different pyramids and different things also, too, and it goes right through the middle age. But on the other side of the cover, you also see is the, the, um, the, the, the Great Pyramid with the Eye of Heru in it, and it's separating the cap, which is also, as also the capstone is also called the 13th man. We'll deal with some of that in a few minutes. You also see the Sphinx is there. Also, you see the symbols of all the other religions that came up out of Kemet, as well as the Helios Biblios, which is called the Holy Bible. You see. And they have all the other ones, and plus they still have Egyptian art. And, this, and, and everything else that's here too. Buddha, the Kundalini symbol is now the, 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 the form of the, uh, that is now the form of the medical association. You understand? This is the sign of Jupiter. You see. You see, now we're dealing with different things that's going on. You see. So these are some things that's also dealing with the actual sciences. Now, the next famous album cover that we would have would in actuality be a midway point for them would be the Greatest Hits album cover. That particular Greatest Hits album cover at that particular time was uh, the Best of Earth, Wind, and Fire, Volume 1. You see the Phoenix bird, which is the, the symbol of Heru, the Benu, the Benu bird, which is the Phoenix bird, which is a form of Ra Heru Kahuti rising from the ashes, or the reincarnation of the god Osiris in the underworld rising up as his son, Ra Heru Kahuti, and rising from the ashes as the Phoenix that's due to come right now. It's the reason why they would make the movie Stargate and turn raw evil because they understand Yeshua is not coming back. They understand in the form of the Phoenix or in the form of the Sphinx, which is the crown and conquering child of the conquering lion of Judah, they understand based on that is the Phoenix. The Sphinx, the Sphinx and the Phoenix is one and the same as Heru on the horizon of Haramaki. 
which means Heru on the horizon, or Ra Heru Kahutu. Based on the number 19, which also means Allah on both horizons. Ra Heru Kahutu means, Ra Heru Kahutu means God of the double one one. The double, double one one, or God of the both horizons. Ra Heru Kahutu means also God of the, uh, of the uh, both horizons and and number 19 is based on one and nine is completion, which means Allah on both horizons. And Allah also means the black man. On the back, you also see Tutankhamun, the, the, the pyramid on the back, as well as the sign of Jupiter on this gold coin. 1978 version of the greatest hits, volume one. Very key and crucial things that's going on. All right, then that leads us up to 1990. No, excuse me, 19. 1989, 1980, no, excuse me, I'm sorry, excuse me, 1979, they wrote the book called I Am, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And I Am, you can see also, you see an old black man and you see an embryo right there. And right here you still see the hypercell halls at Karnak. Now, it's interesting in this particular album cover, on the front part they show the pictures of, of, of Earth, Wind, and Fire, but there are different um, types of um, mythical suits on a mythical costumes on, and also you see their particular signs and different ages that we went through also too, you see. Now, it's interesting in the back of this thing because they got really deep in metaphysical with the great captain because if you can look real close, and I, I want to emphasize this, so this is one you're going to have to really go into, and I'm going to explain this. First, you see Kemet. Then you see the Middle Ages. Then you see New York City right here. And then also, too, you see the Roman Empire. And then it goes into what is called the modern ages of technology. And right here you see UFOs coming in and they're blowing up everything. And right here you see it's coming right back to Kemet or Egypt because you see the Ramesses tomb, temple right here. You see. Real key. I Am album, 1979. Now, 1979. Also, now, 1980, okay, 1980, they had the album, um, the double album set, faces and they had a different 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 types of faces and they had a white pyramid on, in the middle of them now one of the key albums is also 1981 you had the, the album raised and as you can see you see a picture of isis and on the other side you see some form of technology also here you also see a face of isis and some form of technology of where we're supposed to be going or where we have already been and right here you will actually see on the inside you will see a picture of the earth, a picture of the sun, and also supposed to be God's hand, which represents Sirius, and coming on the inside of the pyramid, which is also like the pyramid that you saw that went on top of, that came on top of the actual, um, came on top of the actual Stargate, which is also duplicated in Matrix 3 book, also too. Then we get a little more metaphysical. They had the 1983 album called Power Light. And in this album, you can clearly see the, the chakra centers as well as the actual sun. You actually see a man in there with the power light is the actual seven chakra centers that's in us, or the seven souls of man, which is also represented as the seven seals in the book of Revelation. Also on the back, you see gold. Gold is a form of the God's foot. And it's also talk about the black and gold ones that they talk about also. The black and gold ones is also representing us. Black, but we radiate gold. So this is the Power Light album from 1970, 1983. Also, this is one of the later albums. This album is called Heritage, 1989. Oh, actually, 18, 1989, 1990. Actually, it was 1990, which is the first of this decade, and it's called Heritage. And as you can see, it has the African print on it that you would also see replicas of this African print in cer certain, mud, certain mud cloths and also certain African women in certain parts of West Africa that do this type of print. And it's called Heritage, both on back and front. Also, we have the latest album, which you're going to have to key in. I'm by this time, you know, we go on the CD, you know, so that the album could phase out. And right here, I can show you this Earth, Wind, and Fire called Millennium. And they got a picture of the Sphinx, the Pyramid, the Black Bull, and a woman riding the bull. Right here, they got a picture of Luxor's temple. And they have different things throughout the ages of mythical things that's going on. But if you can clearly, clearly state at the end of the millennial, right at the last page, they got pictures of the UFOs coming in also too. 
So this was one called Millennia on the last one. We're just telling people to go out. Also, now there's a box set that came out based on Columbia because now they're on Warner Brothers again based on Columbia. The past 20 something years, there's a, a, a box set that came out in 1992. And this particular box set is all of the hits plus about seven or eight songs, about 40 something songs on the, on the, on the on three CD disc. And, and also you have about seven or eight songs that is also was unreleased as well as different interludes that was unreleased and all of that type stuff. Now my last particular, my last particular, uh, before we go into a good question and answer on here, my last particular uh, one is a serious temple called the Temple of Heru at Edfu. Now it's real interesting, this is the outside of the particular temple. This is the ruins of the temple and what you would see now is still, even though it's the most preserved temple is there. Now, what's interesting about this particular temple, what's interesting about that this particular temple is because here is some also some stuff that's coming from the planisphere, which is also the hieroglyphic writing is dealing with the science. And also, based on this hieroglyphic writing, you got two versions of papyrus, or two, di two versions of different mythical stories that's dealing with UFOs that's coming from the Temple of Edfu. Here's a side view of the Temple of Edfu. A side view. Now, I want to show you something in this particular book. One that woke me up because this is one of the greatest uh, um, drawings of David Roberts. So here it is. This is the one I need. I know that's one, but this is one with a bigger picture. This is one of the da greatest drawings of da David Roberts. And this is a, uh, one of his watercolors of the inside of the Temple of Edfu, even though they hadn't taken to clean out the sand because the Arabs were there and sand had gotten into these temples and it wasn't until the British came in and cleaned out the sand for years. It was centuries they had been there and the Arabs were just, it wasn't, it wasn't doing anything with them because they are savage people, the white Arabs. Now up here you can also see the winged disc and also you can see the red dot which is also represented as the black dot. And you can see the actual parts of the Temple of Edfu before the actual, the paint fell off but they, uh, the people were sitting on the sand, and sand had covered the temples, the tombs, the monuments, and everything until the British came in and cleaned it off. Even though they were savage, the Arabs were even savage because they sat on that knowledge for damn near a thousand years and didn't even excavate it at all because they thought they had the real thing, Islam, and didn't understand that this is where it all came from. Even the beast, the white man, figured that out. What a dumb people to not even research even the origin of their own religion. Because a person in a religion and don't know the history of a religion is a fool in the religion. So this is an inside part. Now when I saw this particular picture, I immediately died. Because I understood that this were greater people than what it is. And this thing here tapped into the archetypes of my collective unconsciousness and even brought me closer into the spiritual aspect of my history. They went underground. Now in the metaphysical sense, the occult tells you and the spirit world that we get, it was a doorway that also opened right after the Arabs invaded. And this doorway opened, and the last wave of the Kemites left and went to the subterranean world, which is a whole nother world up under this ground. Also, there was a doorway that opened, I think, um, 9,000 BC, that the wave of the Kem the waves of the Kemites that went through, the, that was the old Kemites of Atlantis went into the subterranean world also too. But um, so what happened was is you had some priests that go up underground and therefore there couldn't be no more teaching for white people until the Moors preserved some of that history and went up and started teaching them with the 16 universities that they put out in England as well as introducing masonry with your Knights Temple as it was taught by the Moors, that particular science also too in masonry. So now what we're going to deal with at this particular time is Abydos. And we're going to treat this real careful because this is very important. Now, Abydos is the first holy land, and I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to show you a picture of the Temple of Seti One, which they don't ever show too much pictures of the Temple of Seti One in no books, hardly. You can get a, 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 a rendition of the Temple of Seti One. You could actually get a piece on it, actually. A 1982 piece, the National Geographic, with a woman by a white woman that traveled to Egypt when she was real young, called Um Seti. 
There's a whole book out on in search from Um City, in search for Um City. White woman, um, they did repairs on the t on, on the, uh, the, the the temple of Seti One, which Seti One is the temple of Ramesses the First, Seti One, named after the god Sut. Ramesses the Second, that you know of as the Great Ramesses, uh, traveled there to 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 Abydos when he was 21, and he built the temple for his father after Seti One died, and he built the particular temple. And this particular temple is built in the first holy land, when in actuality it's the first holy land. It's actually the second holy land, but it's one of the oldest holy lands because you got holy lands that go all the way back to Atlantis and Lemuria. And it contains in the temple of Seti One the second creation story because that's the, see, the old Saurian drama that your pyramid text is built off of is the, was the last or the latest series of dramas that was, that was dealing with um, the science of ancient Egypt. Your first is in that temple of Seti One that I talk about, where you would have the temple of Dendera, where you would have this particular drama that was going on of the creation story of the god Apet, the hippopotamus goddess, which is the oldest. It's the Typhonian um, um, science that go all the way back to Atlantis, Lemuria, and right off the planet, which is your oldest. Your second would be your Osarian or your Amun um, your almond um, science and all, and that would be your second creation story, which is, is, is actually the same of this particular creation story. Instead of it coming from new, uh, Apid, it's coming from the primordial waters of noon, Ra is being reversed as that particular part also too. Now it's interesting about the Temple of Seti One, because the Temple of Seti One was a temple that at the particular time, uh, it housed at the particular time when it was built, the people, the Ramesside kings, all the way up to Ramesses V, was interested in the science of the races. So the Egyptian priests who had, who had the, the, the apex of knowledge on the planet knew what races were. And the particular science of races is what they were actually dealing with at that particular time and was concerned about. So as a matter of fact, some of your papyruses as well as your stuff was dealing with races. Now, it's interesting because at that particular time, Champollion translated hieroglyphics in, I think, 1834, 1835, and then later on, he, he immediately went to Kemet to study the temples to, to translate what he is, uh, translate the new stuff. And so he wrote a couple of letters back to Sam, um, Champollion the Elder. You can get that account in this particular book, um, Sheikh Anthony Diop's Myth of Reality, African Origins of Civilization, Myth of Reality edited and translated by Mercer Cook. Now the key to this whole thing is, is this. I don't know, maybe Diop, because he's married with the white woman, he didn't put the other excerpt in that's coming from Champollion's findings at Biblium el Manuk, and also the findings uh, at the, the Temple of Seti One. So he didn't put it in, and Champollion, when he went there, he was very upset when he, when he came up on the readings, because at that particular temple, let me show you this picture, there's a picture of four race of men. Let me give you this picture on this right now. At that particular pimp t um, um, temple, there's four race of men. Supposedly red, yellow, black, and white. Well, that red that they talk about, or the yellow they talk about, was only mulatto. It wasn't no other race. The four races of men is the different hues of the black man, and then you would have a created man. Now, he didn't add this particular part in, but actually Gerald Massey added it in. And what it is dealing with is this. Let me explain this. First of all, I want to show you two pictures. We, we, I was able to find a picture of Seti One not only in the, uh, in the uh, they don't show a lot of pictures of Seti One. I guess they don't want people to visit there because there's still some things on the temple walls they don't want to deal with because it's dealing with race. And when you deal with race, sooner or later in its antiquity, you're going to find out that the white man is not human. Hue means color. So therefore, they make sure that they don't show a lot of pictures. But it's interesting to note, and if you get the piece, the, the, the 1982 uh, Science on Egypt by the National Geographic put out a video. It's on video now. It was on the show of the National Ge Geographic show on the lands of the land of the pharaohs. And uh, I think it's called Fair, uh, Egypt the Eternal Quest or something like that. It was the name of the 19... Um, 82 uh, 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 documentary. Anyway, they show a picture of the Temple of Seti One by, by um, um, 
in, in Abydos, the first holy land, or one of the oldest holy lands, they show the particular picture, and it was given a, 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 a story on Um Seti. So she was at the Temple of Seti one, and they had just reconstructed it, and they were showing this particular picture. They didn't show any other picture. You don't see that much pictures in magazines for the simple fact they won't show them. I did get a picture of a 1989 picture of the mag uh, of Seti one, but you could also find pictures of Seti one in Dr. Ben's book. Uh, Dr. Ben's book. This is the layout of Seti one. And also, this, is, this would be the actual picture of Seti One, two pictures of Seti One, of the Temple of Seti One. Now, the art at Seti One is, is, is beautiful art when you ever see the inside of the art of Seti One. But the actual picture of Seti One that's new is totally different from the actual picture of Seti One just 100 years ago. It seems that the white boy totally reconstructed a picture. This is the original picture of the Temple of Seti One. Now, this is very important. This is how the temple looks. You want to zoom in on this, for, you know. Now, this is the original picture of the Temple of Seti One. Uh, let me see what it says. Uh, uh, we're going to deal with some stuff. I think this was in the late 1800s. The Temple of Seti One, 1849 to 1859. They say they shamelessly visited, because I guess that even the people that visited this, they wanted to reroute people. They didn't show this particular picture. Now, why? This is the original picture, and the picture I showed you before, and the picture, picture that you actually will see on the documentary of National Geographic in 1982, the picture that you're going to actually see other than this picture is a completely new temple. They actually tore down the temple and rebuilt it again. Now, why? Based on Champollion's findings, Champollion writing back, now you're going to get it in, 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 in Diop's book, African Origins of Civilization, Myth and Reality. Now, he's right, Champollion, Champollion, when he went to Kemet, he wrote back, I think, 14 letters to his older brother, Champollion the Elder. And as a matter of fact, he was upset about what he saw. Now, he was talking about this Tamil who, which was supposed to be this race of white people who was supposed to be savage and not depicted as human. Now, the key to the whole thing about this particular Tamil who is this. Even though she had to Diop that was taking the actual signs from the temple of Biblium el Manuk, which was the tombs of Ramesses IV and V, and also the temple of Seti I, and the tomb of Seti I, he did not record all what he supposed to record the final page of this book because he was married to this white woman. Now, Gerald Massey in his book, Ancient Egypt, La no, excuse me, uh, Book of the Beginning, Volume 1, page 27, gives you the final piece. And it's talking about the uh, four races of men. Now, the Egyptians identified themselves on the monuments as the root. A pictorial representation is found at the tomb of Seti I. Four races of people arranged in groups. This is what you see right here. Now, arranged in groups. Now, uh, and uh, now let's, let's deal with this particular part that I want to deal with. Four men each. There are the Nessie, let me get a pencil. There are the Nessie, which is the Negro. That's this black brother right here. Then the Negro, which is all of the Negroes, if you want to put it, that, 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 that word, you know, this is the 18th century. So the Himu, which is a man of light brown hue, that's a mulatto, because the Arabs and the Semitic that you see now is a white person. I would be a Semite back then. You see, this is coming from the wall. Is light, okay, light brown in hue. Okay, with hair in a bag. Then you would have the Tamahu. Now, this is the Ruti, which is the black man. They say red, but it was actually the Egyptian. Then you have the Himu, which is light brown, probably my complexion. Then you have the blue black man, which could, could, range, could, could range from the Egyptian to the West African and the South African, which is the Nessie. Ruti, Egyptian, Himu, which is the Semitic, 
which is a black person. And I'm going to show you one of the real pictures of this black person in a few minutes. And the, the, the Nessie, which is your blue, black, Ethiopian, and all of that particular part. Then you have what is called the Tamahu. Show you another picture of this Tamahu. We're going to put this up. This is the Tamahu. Same person up here is down here. This is all coming also excerpt in my book, The Human Artificial. Now, this is the key. Now, this is all in the temple. This is why they in the tomb. That's why they had to excavate and tear the stuff down. Then you would have the, then you would have the Tamahu are fair Europeans. The root and the root, which is that, are the Egyptians. These are typical groups that meant merely for, for conquered races as may be gathered from the, uh, the significance of their name. Tamahu, meaning light-complected people. The Egyptian Tama means created. Got that? This is coming off the wall. This is what? Who means white light ivory. Tamahu are the created white people. Coming off the walls now, Temple of Seti One. This is what I had to tear down the temple. Okay. Na means black, black ink. Na means the black bird. Shu means a person of birth. Neshu or Nasi means the black born, or the Egyptian phase of the black from the egg. That's the egg of space, and that's the black dot, and the black dot coming out of the womb. Him means rudder, or to pedal, to to, to fish, himi to seer, him who thus indicates the sea, the, the sailors or the seafarers, like your, which would be your Phoenicians and all that, which were just black people, co coming from blue black all the way up to my color, and the people of the Isles, the Isles are the Gentiles, which the original Gentiles were black people, might be rendered under an Egyptian Isles of the Amu of the Himu, the hieroglyphic him means the sign of the water. A frontier. The word root, which is the rooty, which is the black, is the various meanings of all significance applied to the Egyptians by themselves. Root means to, to retain from the card from the footstool a pair of feet caused to do with the plant or to grow or to repeat. Now, this is the key, the reason why they had to take that off, take this off of the wall, because it's dealing with the Tamahu. You remember the Tamahu? Get another picture of him. The three races of men, that's the white man. This is it. All the rest of them come from a lineage of the original people, even the Himu. The white boy is a created person. They specifically say that he's created. They said the other ones come from the black egg. This one is created. Created by who? Let me explain. Let me explain. It says, the Egyptians were from the true root, the one primordial people first conscious and told the earth to retain the knowledge of the fact. The land of Egypt is the footstool root. The people were the feet, the root, and which the human being first arose, erect, and attained its full stature. Identically, however, we learned that the Egyptians regarded the black race because that was a later form, first created man. Who, who, that first created man, not human, but man. Now this is the key. The people of Ra were born the great one who is in the heavens. Root is born of the eye in their persons, superior man. Also, the Amu, which is another form, of this white boy, and the Tamahu further confirmed itself. Now, this is the key that I'll get ready to say. This is the point. The root born of his eye, the eye is the black dot, which is the eye of Heru, or the eye of Ra, or the eye of Sut. And there are superior people are born out of the eye of that particular eye of the God, which is the black substance are the heavens, the cosmos, the chaos sphere. 
root is born of the eye. Their persons are superior, are superior. They are born of the heavens, of the superior men. He, the root people, the Nessie and the Rusi, also created the Amu and the Tamahu. Further has confirmed itself as the multitudes came from him in the shape of the Negroes. Now what it means is that the Tamahu was created by black people, this particular person who is the created man. Well, who created him? Black people created him. And this is the reason why they don't show the pictures of the temple of Seti One. Or they completely demolished the temple and rebuilt it and took out what they wanted to take out. Also in the vast relief of the Biblium El Manuk that you're gonna find from, from Champollion, they also talk about this particular science too. So this was the reason why they had to actually stop people from coming to that particular part at a certain point so they can remodel that temple and take the carvings off the wall. Because in there they talk about the created man. This is the historical document. Now in science, you have the theory and that stands as a theory and the best evidence until you find the archaeological evidence. But the archaeological and anthropological evidence of the white man being a created person is at the Temple of Seti I and the tombs of Seti I of Biblium El Maluk, who is um, um, Ramesses IV and the V. And this is very key. But check out the Diop, me and Matt, you can get most of the story in his book, African Arts and Myth of Reality. But he took out some of the parts and you can find the other part in Gerald Mass's book at the beginning, volume one, page 27, which is the missing page that talk about the created white man, Tamahu. You see, the created white man, Tamahu. Now we'll go a little further on this particular science, on this particular science. Now what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna, that's the temple of Seti One at the first Holy Land. Now, Mm -hmm. on the white man being a created man. Right. Is there any other places that we may find some evidence of this um, creation? Now, you, okay, you good. told us that it's in Diop. You've also told us that um, that we can get uh, in Gerald Massey, volume one, one page 27. 27. Are there any papyrus or anything like that? Yes, there is some papyrus. I'm gonna read you some right now to let you know that he is a devil in the British Museum, but I'm gonna go into some other stuff right quick. Number one, also, you need to get a book called Canaan, Israel, and Egypt. Let me give you now, the... Now, this is very important. I yes, mean, very, saying, very important. You are saying that the Egyptians... And the black people. Uh, the black people. Right. The black man created... The, the white man, and we have and the archaeological and evidence. You have, and you are now going to go in and yeah. explain to us, from this archaeological evidence, how it was done? Well, I'm going to give you the archaeological evidence. It's a greater, it's a greater deal. But I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll go, I'll go in and, and explain as best I can at this particular time in a condensed version. Mm. Now, the book you're going to get is Egypt, Canaan, Israel in Ancient Times by Donald B. Redford. He also wrote a book called Akhenaten and Heretic King. And this is the comedic records of the Yaqub in the collapse of the old kingdom. And in there, they talk about the Hyksos worship of God by the name of Yaqub Kerr the Yaqub Kerr, and it is in these comedic records. Yaqub, Y-A-K-O-B-H-A-R, Yaqub Kerr. Now, you know the Yaqub story of um, Dr. Honor, um, Honorable Elijah Muhammad talks yeah. about the Yaqub created the people. Right. But now we have the actual records of Yaqub in Donald, Red, Donald B. Redford's book that actually found some actual archetypes, arch, uh, um, um, documents in the fifth dynasty of this particular god, Yaku. So we also have that documented. We also have a book called Bright's, the, the author's called Bright. That's why I know Bright's History of Israel. It talks about the same Yaku Kerr that is um, a part of that particular, uh, that particular, uh, uh, um, um, the Yaku Kerr is a part that the Hyksos used to worship. Yaku, okay, so he was a god. He was, he, he, he was a, yeah, I'm going to tell you, yes, a temple that was built to him. Yaqub, um, okay, let me give you the actual archaeological number on that. Yaqub, let's say note number 69, Yaqub italics, let me get this right, uh, 69 italics, page uh, 349 to 50, von 
Beckerath, B-E-C-K-E-R-A-T-H. Von Beckerath, that's some, 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 um, the study of that Yakub Kerr is this British, no, excuse me, a German scholar. And it says, under Sir, Sir Bungen, some, 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 under Sir Bungen, some, uh, page 179, some, 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 it's a German name for this particular study on Yakub Kerr. So we do have that Yaqub. It's also a form of Jacob in the Bible also, too. I don't, you know, Yaqub is a, not saying that Jacob was Yaqub, but ja Yaqub is also translated Jacob in Hebrew. Not saying it's got anything to do with the Jacob in the Bible, but we do know that, and you can find that translation also in Charles French's book, Echoes of the Old Dark Land. So we do have the, the records of Yaqub. Now, let me go into a, a few other things before we get into that, because we want to give you some other sources for all kind of black people, for black people to look at. I want to give you the other Gerald Massey findings of this particular Tamahu, or this particular part. So bear with me as I get the particular part of that, because we want to give all of the records of Yaku and all of this stuff now. Check with me now. You can find this stuff in my book, the documents, if you want to, you can find this stuff so you don't have to go out and get them. I do have the documents in my new book called uh, Human Artificial, The Historical Origins of the Devil in the Human Artificial. So we do have that. Now what I want to do is I want to find the, the last little piece on that, on Gerald Massey, that's recorded. In the Book of the Beginnings, Volume 1, he says that leprosy was indigenous to the Egyptians and the white Negroes were produced by that. That's talking about genetic engineering and gene splicing. Now, you're going to get an article by the name of Kuna Moonchild Albinism, 1975 article by a white boy that is taken from Alistair Crawley wrote a book called Moonchild on the creating this mutant. Kuna Moonchild Albinism that you're going to find in um, the ISIS papers of Francis Cress Wilson. She, 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 she's She's got the article printed in there on this leprosy. And anytime you go through the Bible and you see leprosy is based on this white boy, he said that's the white man being created, or the white man, you see. Also, Gerald Massey documents that in Book of the Beginning at the first chapter in the part entitled, first, first, first volume of the book. Um, so now you, you're going to find that that particular, anytime you see that um, leprosy, they're talking about white people. Now, the white boys are documenting that also, too. Also, too. Um, and I'm getting ready to go into some deeper manifestation of that uh, uh, called the astral corpse right now, too. Now, listen. It's called the non-human. Now, what you want to deal with here is this. You're also going to get the story of an, in a book called Atlantis and Lemuria by Rudolf Steiner. It's dealing with the creation of this white boy, but he misconstrued. He's talking about Manu. Now, mind you me, he's talking about these things in Rudolf Steiner's book in 1920-something. Now, that is even before the time when, when Honorable Elijah Muhammad is supposed to be even taught by Master Farah Muhammad. The white boys even had this particular information. Now, mind you, in my particular book, I got 98% white scholars talking about this white man being the devil. Did, and did Gerald Massey indicate that he agreed with this? Uh, oh, definitely. If you read closely. I'll, I'll go into some other science also, too, at the end of the lecture. But now I'm going to read you two, two or three parts. Now, in, 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 um, in the book, Rudolf Steiner's book, Atlantis and Lemuria, he goes and says that Manu created a, Manu was a person who created a, based on genetic gene splicing, that the white boy now can splice genes. They got mutants and all kind of things. Based on genetic means gene splicing. Now, remember now, this is one of the lowest forms of civilization. We had the highest form, so you know damn well we could do it if the white boy could do it. Because we are doing all kinds of gene splicing. Right, now. and if he's doing things like with we are splicing plant and animal. animals and, pl and, and also fruit that is correct. with hybrid stuff. So if the white boy can do it now and he only has a smidgen of the knowledge, what you think we could do with a circle, a circumference of the knowledge of 360 degrees if you want to put it in that part of numbers? But I do want to emphasize again that today Mm -hmm. We are doing gene splicing. They're doing gene splicing. We're taking human genes and putting them 
together with pigs. Pigs. To make the meat more Genetic tender and hormones. more tastier. We're taking tomatoes and That's slicing right. them with animal genes mm -hmm. and et cetera. So we are crossing genes. So what you are saying in terms of our ability to have done gene splicing at the high point of Egyptian civilization. That's right. It's really quite feasible. It's right, exactly. If the priest had 360 degrees of knowledge, just to say old numbers, because there was no such thing as 360 degrees, but we talk about in terms of the knowledge that you can go on the scale of the 33rd or whatever in masonry. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about 360 degrees, you know damn well they could do it if they had the knowledge of the universe compared to the white boy can do it with limited knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we taught him. Let, let's, let's proceed. Okay, now. Really answers, uh, to you okay now. In the book, Rudolf Steiner, they say, Manu, uh, the, the book, they say, you can get this book from Health Research now because it's out of print. But Health Research is a book company out of California that, give up, that sell all the out of print books. Rudolf Steiner's Atlantis of Lemuria. He talks about Manu creating a new race of men by selecting a germ. That's the gene. In the book. But he misconstrued because it's actually Yaku because we got the historical documents of Yaku. But based on the spiritual channelings, Manu, which is also documented throughout of Indian history in India, Manu was a teacher of Yaku that taught him genetic engineering. And they first taught him this, they, they first did the genetic engineering off of the black boar, which is the original pig, which is a, 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 a normal pig. And just like they dissect, dissect frogs in the class, they dissect those black boars back then. And from the black boar, they made the white pig. And then after that, this Yakub learning this genetic engineering went and started making, experimenting on humans. But the reason why they couldn't detect it because the incubation of the laboratory, this Frankenstein's laboratory, was in Europe in the caves. So they created them in the caves. So by the time they came out and was taught by the Egyptian how to speak, you can get that out of Count Boney. Now there's no other people on the earth that is, is going into barbarism. And taught them how to speak then in actuality, the people thought in actuality it was another race of people because that was a particular history that was hidden of a creation. Now, Manu was the person that taught him um, um, based on the genetic things. Now, also, Honorable Elijah Muhammad book, The Theology of the Time, he said that in actuality, we know that the white boy, did, when he's out of barbarism, and even in Greece and Rome, they didn't live to 30 years. That 30 years was the average age for white people. And it wasn't until they all going to start um, um, making knowledge, um, giving science of the pig and started actually dealing with the pig so they created a medicine for them and that's why pork is the number one food of breakfast which is the most important meal of the day breakfast which is you break your fast breakfast is consists of a pig in the European diet and he used the pig as a form of medicine but the pig was un not unlike him because it's an unnatural species why? Because also we now know now based on melatoma, melanoma skin cancer, which the white boy catches skin from the rays of his, catches cancer from the rays of the sun because he does not have the melanin to protect him. And everything under the sun has melanin but the abnormal people. The only thing that catches melanoma skin cancer is the white man and the pig. Now, if the white man was a natural person, when he makes medicine in his laboratory, seemed to me he would use a normal rat. You ever seen a dog on white rat running around in your house? No. But if you're going to see a rat, it's going to be a gray rat. And a lot of black people got rats, as well as white people, because the richer you are, the bigger the rats are. I'm telling you, we used to go to the rich neighborhoods and see big ass rats, and we never saw them in the black neighborhood. We had poor rats. We had pretty big rats. <laughs> yeah, well, you did too. Well, you know. We didn't wet, so now, so, but you ever seen the white rats run around the house? No. If you live, you from the country, you a country boy like me. That's true. We never you ever seen a white rabbit running around you? If you ever saw a rabbit in the wild, it's a brown rabbit. But yet when the white man creates medicine for himself, and he creates medicine for himself, he used what? White rats. There's a, there's a whole company that produces these mutant rats. That's because he understands that his body is different than yours. He's an abnormal person. You see what I'm saying? He's an abnormal person. Now it's interesting because the temples, because we got the archaeological evidence. Now, I'm going to read you a 5,000-year-old papyrus in a few minutes, in a, in, in a particular few minutes, um, and all I want to do is stuff. Tell me when it's on. Now, you know doggone well that everything under the earth strives under the sun. And let's look at the magnitude of this. 
The, they put a sun as the central energy for everything on earth. And you mean to tell me there's something on earth that the sun kills? That means in actuality you don't supposed to be on the earth in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? The light right there lets you know that they're abnormal. Let's go into some key other documents on this white boy since we own here. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, it's the year of 18, eight, I think the year is also 1895. An occultist by the name of C.W. C. W. Ledbetter. C.W. Ledbetter is making a fantastic statement before the Theosophical Society that is started by Blavatsky. Now, at this particular time, they are interested in trying to find out how they can save themselves in the future by raising themselves up to try to become human. But they say, first of all, we must try to understand what we are first so we can know what to work for. for. So C.W. Ledbetter is making an address to the Theosophical Society in 1895. And at this particular time, he is interested in telling the people just exactly what we are. And he comes out with his information saying exactly finally, what is the white man if he's not human? What is he? So then this is what happens. Um, what happens is this. He, um, he goes in and he makes this presentation. Now, you can get this particular rendition of this presentation either out of my book, Human Artificial, or you can get it also in A.E. Powell's, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel A.E. Powell. The book is called A.E. Powell Astro Body, page 69, where, the, where he, he reprinted the actual address, led, led better address. Now, there's a group, the Theosophical Society got upset with A. Dyer Press and told them that they didn't want this stuff reprinted, but they it printed it anyway. But anyway, now the book is out. Most people don't read, because this is a non-literary society, so it's out. And the people who read it, fine. The people don't. Now, C.W. Ledbetter is doing this address, and he says, well, number one, we are known as Astro Corps. A corpse is a dead person. Astro Corps. Right. At that particular part, you have Asia. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, at that particular time that you, you have Asia, and I want to I get into the papyrus. First of all, let's go into the 5,000-year-old papyrus. Now, this stuff is coming from a series of papyrus of, 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 of um, stuff that was put together by, uh, by a, a, a white Egyptologist in the late, eight, late 1960s, 1967, T.H. Um, Valdi. Some, some research work that was done for research only. This stuff was never put out to the public. Now, as a matter of fact, what had happened was they, they was gracious enough to send, gracious enough to send some of this particular work down to, to uh, send a, some, some of um, this work down to the Theosophical, excuse me, the Theological Seminary in Atlanta, ITC, the black preachers. The black preachers sat on this particular work for 20 years and didn't know what they had. 20 years after they understood, based on the ASCAC and all the stuff, and black people getting into Afrocentricity, Emory University came to the Woodruff Library after they had um, Woodruff Library in, in the AU Center in Atlanta and stole the book. Now, this stuff was never put out to the public. I went to Emory and stole the book from them. You see what I'm saying? Stole the book back from them. Uh, uh, it's called T.H. Valley Set the God of Confusion. His role in studying mythology by, excuse me, H.T. Valley, I'm sorry about that, um, is coming out of um, Leyden. That's a part from it in London. You know. So we will know that this is authentic. The authentic. And we are now going to read some of them. Yeah. Now we're going to read. This is a series of papyrus. One is called the Homosexual Papyrus of Key. It's actually talking about the European is not only, he is bisexual by nature. New book that came out, Bisexuality in the Ancient World, um, by, um, by um, Yale University Press, fall of 1992. And they said that this book is put together for pure research. Only, only a, a few selected people are supposed to have this. And in there is a papyrus. Papyrus number, the papyrus we are dealing with here is the Egyptian papyrus of dreams. The heretic is the, um, heretic, let's see, the heretic papyrus of the British Museum. Chester Beatty is the name of the person who bought, who, who bought the papyrus from, Ke from Kemet. The Chester Beatty papyrus. And we can find that in the British, in the British Museum, Museum if, they'll let you, if they let you read it. That's the point. Yes. Also, they have stuff locked up in the university 
in the bottom of the University of Chicago Oriental Institute, mm -hmm. the main school of Egyptology that was funded by Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they're, gu they're guarding now. Now, Egyptology is interesting because there are no grants for Egyptology. Mm -hmm. Also, too, you got to have a letter of recommendation from some governor to go mm -hmm. into Egyptology. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. There's certain papyrus. Now, this is the Chester Beatty papyrus. Now, I've seen this papyrus, but some of this papyrus is in books. It's, it's carved up, so they don't put the whole thing because they want to take out a certain amount of things. Mm -hmm. Chester Beatty papyrus. Alan H. Gardner, who is the grandfather of Martin Bernal. He's translating the Heretic Papyri, 1935. 1935, Heretic Papyri of the British Museum, Chester Chester Beatty, who was the person who was the owner of the papyrus who donated it to the British Museum mm -hmm. after he got it out of Egypt, mm -hmm. or Kemet, and bought it. Mm -hmm. Now, in this papyrus, the 5,000, when you say heretic, you have Egyptian writing, you have hieroglyph that you see, then you have the script, heretic and demotic. Mm -hmm. Heretic is the early form, and demotic is the later form. Heretic papyrus means it could be first dynastic papyrus, going all the way back to pre-dynastic, about mm -hmm. 5,000 years. Mm -hmm. So this one is at least dates to e anywhere from three to five thousand year old papyrus. So this is heretic. Heretic papyrus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. translated by Alan H. Gardner, who was a hieroglyphic expert, and I'm going to get into some other things on the forgery of the pyramid mm -hmm. that he's dealing with. Hieroglyphic expert, who is the grandfather of Martin Manal, who wrote Black Athena, mm -hmm. that 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 teaches at um, Cornell. Yes. Right. Now let's deal with that. It shows that the Egyptian idea of the barbarians who are the barbarians white people now it says that they live in a miserable part of the world their water supply is wretched that forces them to lead a nomadic existence they are always and and although their ways of communication is poor because of the mountains that's the caucus mountain caucus mountains and the forest Hence, they have a restless nature, which means they have a restless nature. The nature is the innate soul of a person. I don't give a damn how much training you got. Your nature dictates who you are. They have a restless nature. They are always grumbling because they could not talk. Count Varney told you that in his book, Ruins of Empires, that the Egyptians taught them how to speak. They have a restless nature. They are always grumbling. They cannot finally be defeated since the days of Horus. So that means in actuality, the Kemites and the Africans was battling with this beast a long time. But could not defeat him. Reason why they couldn't defeat him, they say in actuality, they said that he they said because he is treacherous, he just does not openly announce the day of battle. So what they mean in actuality, that's a twofold thing. It means in actuality that he is not to be trusted. You see. He's not a fair person because he has a restless nature. He's the devil. Like these, they shun a united army. Army. So that's something that we need to go to today. When we united, they shun that. They thieves. The Egyptian Book of Dreams, which is another Egyptian Book of Dreams, coming from the chest of Beatty Papyrus. The Egyptian Book of Dreams. The characteristics as follows. Surely, by chance, we find the word Asiatic in this miserable packet. Um, um, passage in this corrupt corrupt passage you remember there was no Europe at that time it was Asia but they simply in the papyrus they tell you that they live in a miserable part of the world and they locate the mountains they're telling you what part of Asia the carcass mountains so they said so the miserable Asiatics at that time in this corrupt passage may not be going too far to to suppose that according to the Egyptian book of dreams and the followers of the devil, because at that time they indicated a form of set typon as the devil by the Osirians. There's an earlier set typon, which is the good set typon, is the archetype of Osiris. But the one in this mythology is talking about the devil. We, when we talk about the followers of the devil or set typon, we have the typical foreigners. These foreigners are, set, uh, are Sethian people, or i.e., the devil's people. Their sexual conduct is reprehensible. Going by. Uh, home, bisexuality in the ancient world talking about a race of people as bisexual even if they are masculine that's a form of male soberness is, is homosexual, a form of homosexuality even 
what you would call uh, homophobia is a form of homo bisexuality, hiding from themselves to try to cover up. Their sexual conduct is reprehensible. They are given to drink and quarrelsome and murderous. They will indeed reach the will not indeed re reach the west, which the west is the end time cycle where the sun starts in the east and ends in the west. So shall the son of man, which is talking about us, we are in the west which means the, real, the West means also the West, which means you will not reach heaven. But they will reach the neither world. That's the lower in, um, astral plane. You see what I'm saying? Even such a person becomes an, uh, an official of a, pharaoh, uh, of a pharaoh, still retains the personality is R-I-T. Person people divided into P-T and R-I-T sometimes in this category. PT is the true people. RIT are others. Surely come to the second phase and are uh, contrasted as PT. Now, it means in actuality that in Gardner's book, his conclusion, Alan H. Gardner, based on his conclusions of the heretical prize of the British Museum, he writes a book called Abduction Extraordinaire that never gets out of Egypt, never gets out of Paris never translated into French or into English for us to read. These are some fragments in there where he says, based on the heretical powers of the British Museum in his book, Abduction Extraordinary, in France, above Egypt, abnormal people, no, yeah, below Egypt in Africa, normal people. The above he was talking about was the actual Egyptian. And even if a person was married to a white person, they would get laughed at and yet scorned because they understand he was married to non-human. Now, this is the heretical prize of the British Museum. Now, we go into another form of Yakub that was translated, that was channeled by Annie Bazant and was given. Channel means that she went and got this particular, uncovered this particular science on who they were and was given in an address, 1895, by T.W. Ledbetter. And it's talking about astrocarps. Carps mean dead. Caucasian... Carcass means dead. Caucasian means dead Asian because there was no Europe at that time for that part of Asian, the dead Asians. It's called an astrocarp. They are known as a shade, which is an entity in a sense, not a real individual at all. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it bears his exact personal appearance. His, which is talking about the original man, possesses his memory, possesses the original man memory, and all his Little, little idiosyncrasies. Now, we understand that it's white. When they say personal appearance, they're talking about the head, the legs, the arms, and all of that in the shape of a human, but not the color. And certainly not the hair, which, not the hair, you know. And a lot of his, in his idiosyncrasies. It may therefore very readily be mistaken for him, the original man. You can mistake this thing for the original man as indeed frequently at seance, which means they go into seance to find out who they are. It is not conscious of its act of interpretation. So this is the reason why you can't fool it. It just acts, it just is in this area and just acts this way. It may act a little human because it was trained, but it's, it's not conscious of it. For as far as its intellect goes, it must necessarily suppose itself to be an individual. It is rarely merely a soulless bundle of all the lowest qualities. The length of its life of a shade varies, this shade, according to the lower amount of material matter that emanates it, the third dimension. As long as the third dimension stays around, the white boy can stay around. That's why he's trying to maintain this physical structure because he knows outside of the physical he cannot survive because he does not have the black dot. It, but it is steadily fading out. Now, it was, it's been fading out since, since 1895, which is almost out of here. Its intellect is diminishing quaintly. It may possess a great deal of a certain sort of animal cunningness, even though, though towards the end of its career, it is still able to communicate by borrowing temporary intelligence from the medium, the original people. So it feeds off us. That's the true meaning of the vampire. That's why you see this vampire movie out now and all these vampire books. 
The Yakub story is the Frankenstein sto story. But the vampire is what it is. Now, from its very nature, it is liable to be swayed by all kinds of evil influences. And being separated from the higher ego, the black dot, it has nothing in its constitution capable of responding to the good ones. That's us. If it responds, that's a master-slave relationship, even though you think we have arrived. They're still on top of things. It's never going to be even, or you be even better than them. It is therefore lends itself readily by various minor purposes. Some baser sorts of the black magicians. Now, what do they mean? It means that, um, it means that what's happening is the black magicians from Atlantis, or Yakub, created it for baser minor purposes and the experiment got out of hand. The mental matter possesses a gradual distinction and returns to the general matter of its own plane, which means it's gonna go back to its own plane. Once this, once this physical matter unleashed both the god and the mutant, the mutant is going back to the lower astral plane. It's where it is from. And that's what the deal is. One other part, you need to get the book, People of a Secret. The People of a Secret by Ernest Scott, where they say that, they, that, that, and also a book called Pathology of Dion Fortune's book, Psychic Self-Defense, Pathology of Non-Human Contact, where it says that non-human people in human bodies are documented. Another part is Ernest Scott's book, People of the Secret, where he says that the Moors went up into Europe to produce alchemy. Alchemy is the science of the soul, to make a non-aberrated man. Aberrant means unusual, abnormal, and not natural, as opposed to normal, usual, and natural. And he made it, so they wanted to make a non-aberrated man, or a person that was normal. And they said that the idea of the Moors going up into the Spain to make souls for those who did not have souls, try to give them the black dot, all documented by white people. All documented by white people. Yeah. Uh, and they are setting up all of these schools, schools they was, right. and higher centers of yeah. learning was to raise the consciousness of, of the, the white person uh, right. to, to give him a soul. Give him a soul. What happened was they said that in actuality, the Brotherhood of Melchizedek said, you all people back in the day cre created it, so therefore you got to do something about it. So they set up the society and gave them civilization and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how did they get the, um, uh, the, the mysteries in terms of masonry and um, the, the Rosicrucianism? Okay, th there was the cetera. part where the Greeks went into the mystery system. Mm -hmm. But after the Dark Age came, all that died out. Mm -hmm. Then it was a Dark Age in Europe. That is correct. Then the Moors came up and gave them masonry based on the Knights Templars. And then you have the York Rite, the Scottish Rite, and all this stuff started up based on they gave them the 16 universities. And they also set up the, mo the masonry. That's why most of now your the Moors set the masonry up. Ma for set the masonry up for white people. And that was to give them uh, principles and, and stuff and stuff like that structure on how to raise their themselves. Themselves up. Level. Also, if you notice, that's why in, in in masonry, they start off with the Bible, then they go into the Quran, and also in masonry, you see some of the shrines is Islamic. Mm -hmm. That's from the Moors of Spain. That's why when you get Stanley Poole's book, you will see the Islamic structures in there, which is some of the, the Masonic stuff. If you one of the base, best, one of the greatest Masonic buildings in the world now, that's left over, is in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Fox Theater, which was the Scottish Rite, I believe, um, first Masonic hall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the Fox Theater down there, mm -hmm. and it's and it's built just like the Moors made. If you want to see what the Moors did, you go to the Fox Theater. And if you go in, they got a whole Egyptian ballroom in there. They got pictures of the black man in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They got pictures of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that Masonic thing. Now it's the theater. They, they, you know, after they built another one, they turned it into the Fox Theater. But in there, they, uh, uh, on the top of the theater, they got all the stars, and they got one big star in there, one bigger star. That's Sirius, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. So this is the deal that's going on with that. Now let's go into some other things right now. Uh... What we're going to deal with right now is the pyramids in Egypt. 
The pyramids based on Alan H. Gardner, you need to get a book called Stairway to Heaven by Zachariah Stitcher. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole section in here on the forgery of the pyramids. Forging the Pharaoh's name of the pyramids by Alan H. Gardner that Zachariah Stitchin is printing in his book. Alan H. Gardner, being a hieroglyphic expert, has concluded, has concluded in the book Stairway to Heaven. This was the, uh, the earlier books. Now you can get the book for four dollars. I'm going to show you some other things in this book. And they forged the actual, um, um, the actual uh, pyramids. Khufu just did repairs. I showed you the limestone pyramid. Let's put the actual Earth and the Fire album back up. Khufu did repairs. The actual pyramid, the limestone pyramid, was older than that. We now have dates and actualities that that pyramid is at least one million years old. Even the movie Stargate bears witness to that, that the pyramids is even older than that. Now, supposedly they forged the, he forged the pyramids because what happened when a structure got too old, what would happen is the pharaohs would come in and do repairs and they put their name on it. So when the people start saying, the people say, no, that ain't right. When the people come in, they say, yo, Khufu built it. It's way older than that. The pyramid is a symbol of Sirius. It's a, it's a symbol also of Sirius. This is a symbol of Sirius. You clearly see the star and the pyramid. It's a symbol of Sirius. And when we get into it, your architect is built around the star Sirius. This hieroglyph means Sirius. It means Sept. S-E-P-T. -S -E Sept, which is the star system Sirius. And your pyramids is a, is Syriac architecture that is a symbol of the Sirius. Now, what's happening here is, by him being a hieroglyphic expert, he found out that they forged the pyramids. And those pyramids now is at least, based on spiritual channeling, is at least a million years old. You have your pyramids in Mexico. You see, that's, 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 that's quite old. Now, you know of your step pyramid of Saqqara. I'm going to deal with one thing right now. Remember this step pyramid of Saqqara because when I get into Syriac architecture, and I wish I would have shown the new out layout of Atlanta, Georgia. You know of your step pyramid of Saqqara. I wanna, that's the first one that M. Hotep built. M. Hotep built. Now, this one, the step pyramid. And you have other step pyramids on the Mexican pyramids. You got two good books, Secrets of the Egyptian Pyramids. Mr. See, what is it? I think it's the Secrets of the Egyptian Pyramids by Peter Tompkins. And the other book is Mysteries of the Mexican Pyramid, where he also goes into a group of black people who blew black men from Atlantis who saw Atlantis went, uh, uh, went, um, go down, they were from Sirius. And they saw Atlantis go down, and these blue men from Sirius recorded this stuff and left the actual recordings of it going down in the Andes, in, in the Andes. I think the Andes is in Peru, I think, you see. So you got a whole mysteries of the Mexican pyramids that's going down over in Mexico and that whole thing. And that's why Mexico is the double horizon. You got a pyramid on this east, on this, on, on this side, Kemet, and you got a pyramid in Mexico, which is symbolized the Americas. You got a Nile Valley in Kemet, and now we just located the new Nile Valley in Saint, it's called the St. John's River in uh, uh, the other, the western Nile in Jacksonville, Florida. You got the Nile that flows upstream in Kemet, you got the Nile that flows upstream in Jacksonville, Florida. And it's interesting that the white boy named it St. John. John St. John is the author of the book of Revelation, who is also Tahuti, Tut on, Anubis, a form of Tahuti. And that means the book of Revelation is the end time. And so the black, the, the son of man rising up in the west is rising up from the western Nile, as well as the western pyramid. That's what Rabbi Muhammad told Honorable Elijah Muhammad to look to the Mexican pyramid because that's where the black man gonna rise up in this whole Western Hemisphere. There's a whole book called The Lost Realms by Zachariah Stitchin. 
which he has the Earth Chronicles, and you can get all of his books. This is one of them, Stay Away to Heaven. There's the Lost Realm, Genesis Revisited, and the War of God and Man, and different books. You can get Zechariah 6, and you now can get those books for $4 a piece. Get the entire volumes of the Earth, Earth, the Earth Chronicles by Zechariah 6. Now, what's happening is this. Your particular pyramids, we know that it was four, so they're not at least two million years old. I want to show you this picture because this is very key. This is the lighthouse of Alexandria. After the actual Greeks took all of the actual stuff out of the, out of the, um, the temples, they put it in the library of Alexandria. This is the library of Alexandria, which is the lighthouse of Alexandria. This is the first building in Kemet. This is, this is in Kemet. And it's the first, uh, let's say, 40-story building ever. And it was in Egypt. And this is how, how it looked. There's a replica of this library of Alexandria in Alexandria, Virginia. You got how many? Five minutes? Seconds? Okay. Good. Good.